Hendricks jumper, no good. Spencer the rebound. Warriors will dribble out the regular season, and it's going to be on to Sacramento. Final score will be 123 to 116. Oh, baby! What is happening on my favorite day of the week? A Monday here on the roast. Tim Roy on the call right here on 95 7 the game, and it is all set up, folks. It is set. Warriors, Kings, tomorrow night at the G1C, 7 p.m. tip coverage. NBC Sports at 6 p.m. We got coverage here all day long as we break down this matchup and rematch last year's first round extravaganza between the Warriors and Kings, which the Warriors won is seven games. So we say good morning to everybody out there getting off the graveyard shift. If you're at work, what is happening? All the overnight dancers, cops, firefighters, students getting ready for school. Better crack them books, young boys and girls. Better crack them books. Get those grades. You mean turn on those surfaces, iPads, and whatever what, else, you know. You must, be talking about you must be talking about private schools. Well, no, nah, everybody's <laughs> phasing away from from, from Public books. school's got uh, iPads now? I, I don't, yeah, he, look, he's got a thumbs up I don't over know. there. I, public school's coming up then, man. Good for them. I mean, Good you know, for them. So it's we'll tax crack, week, too. We'll, this week. We'll, yeah, it is. Well, I, I got my taxes done a long time ago. Beep, 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 beep. Can't, can't stress over that to last week. Come on, man. What are you waiting on? You know what tax day is. I'm not trying to give the government my money so they can have interest on my money any any earlier than they need to. Yeah, well, I just like to get it out the way so I don't think about the damage. No, I, I believe me, I forward. get that. I hey, get we that. move forward. All right. Uh, Warriors Speaking of, Keys, of so the damage. Regular, the, the regular season is now, is now over. 82 games down, and hopefully this season extends past Tuesday. It extends past Friday, and hopefully we've got another week and a half of Warriors basketball, but... As we look back at the regular season, we're going to play a little word play here. Word association today on the Morning Roast, 888-957-9570. If you had one word to sum up the regular season, what word would that be? And I, I'm conflicted with this one because you think back to this last regular season, Shasky, they won 46 games. Warriors are 46-36. and 36. That's two more wins than last season. Last season, they were the number six seed in the Western Conference. They avoided the play-in tournament. They played Sacramento in a 3-6 matchup. And they invested the second round. They won two more games this season. And they're all the way down to 10th. What has happened? And there's so many games that we could point to. Say, boy, if you would have won this game, if you would have won that game, what happens if, you know, Draymond Green is not suspended? What happens if Andrew Wiggins doesn't go away for a little bit? What happens if all these guys didn't get injured? There's so many what-ifs and what if this happened with the Golden State Warriors. And then you see Friday night against the Pelicans and great opportunity to take the A seed and it gets smoked at home. So I, I don't know. What, one word to describe the regular season because it was a very interesting offer to go to St. Warriors. Yeah, it's just, you know, you, you were you were predicting things. That Colin Coward has this, where Colin was right and where Colin was wrong. Well, where right. Bonte was right was basically with the binoculars out, forecasting what was going to happen in the West. I mean, B, if the Warriors are, are 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 in the East, the Bucks with forty nine wins essentially, it's third place. Yep, third place. You know, uh, last year they win the forty four, which you referenced, and they had four guys over seventeen points last year. This year, the second leading scorer had seventeen points. Right. You know, so I think the word for me, I wanted to say frustrating, but I don't think that encapsulated it, encapsulates it enough. To me, erratic. And I wanted to use oscillating as the word because things have oscillated from one side right. to the other. But the reason why I'm going to go with erratic is eighth in points per game, middle of the pack in defense, mm -hmm. middle of the pack in defensive rating. When they played together, there were moments in time where they looked way better than last year. Right. And then they tricked off a ton of games that they should have won. Friday night, and I want to go back to Friday night, was one of the most frustrating games I've seen all year. Everyone's going to point to the second quarter, and they're not wrong. I mean, New Orleans went on a blitzkrieg, and they were hitting everything from three. To me, it was the fourth quarter. And the reason why the fourth quarter cut so deep for me was because Steph Curry looked so bad. They were blitzing him all night, and I thought it was a microcosm of where this team needs to look in the mirror for these playing games, if they get multiple, and into the future. 
Steph was getting blitzed. He turned the ball over left and right, and they were searching for that second person as a ball handler, as a primary scorer, to take a little bit of the load off of Steph. Steph hit miraculous shots yeah. in that fourth quarter, but it was the turnovers, B. Mm -hmm. The turnovers were horrible. What do well, you have, seven in the fourth seven, alone? Seven turnovers. See, that game to me, I, I hear you on the fourth quarter. I thought the look, Warriors were lucky to be in a game in the fourth quarter. Friday night to me was lost in the second quarter. Everyone was lost say in the that. second quarter. Because you're up 11 early in the second quarter, and the Pelicans had just lit up Sacramento. They were 22 of 40 from three against the Sacramento Kings last Thursday night. And we knew Trey Murphy the third was letting it fly. We knew C.J. McCullough was on the heater. We knew Zion was on this game. Now, Draymond Green played as well on Zion Williamson as I see the player play on Zion all season long. Zion, it took Zion 26 shots to score 26 points. However, when you blow a game open like that in the second quarter, they got 45 points in the second quarter. Every other quarter, the Warriors won. They dominated the points in the paint. They out-rebounded the Pelicans. The second quarter to me was the ball game. The Pelicans shoot 77% from, from three in the second quarter. 10 of 13 off the top of my head. 10 of 13. They score 45 points. CJ McCollum, he opened a game one of seven. He was ice cold. Next thing you know, boom, 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 boom. He's 5-7 of seven from 3 in the second quarter alone. You get outscored by 23 in the second quarter. You're down double digits going, you know, they were lucky to be down 14 going into the I half know. there. So to me, that game was lost in the second quarter. And all of a sudden, you're playing uphill. They're a younger team. They were more athletic. I mean, they were longer. You knew they were gonna, the whether it was Irv Jones or Trey Murphy the third, even though the last shot of the game in that game Friday night was Steph Curry, I thought he could have been a little more patient. I mean, there was 14 seconds left on the shot clock. Herb Jones, Trey Murphy for the third, did a great job of doubling Steph and sagging off of Draymond Green to make that double from the back and the front. I, that game to me was done in the second quarter. That to me was a microcosm of the entire season for the Go to State Warriors. That quarter alone. Where they've given up 40 plus quarters, where they've given up a barrage of three pointers, where they start turning, they turn the ball over in that quarter nine times. In the second, nine, in the second quarter, they give up 15 points off those nine turnovers. And although they've won, what is it, 10 of their last, or excuse me, yeah, they're 10 and 2 of their last 12. 10 and 2 of their last 12 to go to State Warriors. Yeah, but the two losses the, are frustrating. The fr it's frustrating, but even the form of these wins. They're turning the ball over left and right. Well, that's, I mean, I was just looking at, like, the raw data. And, you know, last year, Jordan Poole turned the ball over a lot. Just look at the, the turnovers across the board for this team. They're, they're right back where they were last year in terms of turnovers per game. Just totality of, of guys being sloppy with it. Yep. You know, be like, the thing that's frustrating to me is literally two games. Two games and everything else plays out differently. Two games. And we could pick apart, like, one game, you're in the 7-8. One more game. Right. One more game from that, and it feels like everything is different for you. And and I look at the game, like, for example, Friday night is one. I look at the game uh, against the Dallas Mavericks where Andrew Wiggins, who's already missed time for the last couple of years, does a maintenance day. I look at all the time that, that Draymond missed this year. I, I look at all of the different opportunities that they had with multi-double-digit leads and they squandered them over and over. I mean, we could pick a thousand games this year. And so that's why to me, like, frustrating is a word that I will accept from the audience today. Erratic. Like, my word is imperfect. It's been an imperfect season. And they've won 46 games. It's especially another way of saying incomplete. Because when they have had the roster wholesome, which has only been a few games. It's only been a few games. We saw them beat Milwaukee by 35. We're like, Wow. Look at them. They're finally coming to, you know, wow. Next night against Chicago, Steph Curry tw twists his ankle late in the fourth quarter. They're up three in that game. They're up three when he twists his ankle and leaves the game. 112 to 109. Then you lose that game. Then you get blown out by San Antonio. You think about all the home says they've had in which 21 to 20 at home. That, I just, I don't know what to say about After that. they flipped the road record, they were 17 to 4 in their last 21 road games. Yet they're 21 and 20 at home. Now they do finish with the winning record, but we were making in on 30 and 11, you know, 31 and 10, 32 and 9. The Warriors roll at home. Not the case this year. Everybody in and out of the lineup. Chris Paul misses multiple time. Gary Payton the second misses time. JK's missed time. And now you wonder about his rhythm heading into the playoffs. Where is he at heading into the playoffs? 
Pods and TJD, they've been constants, but they've had they've had their ups and downs. Sartz started off hot this season. I mean, he's been in Didn't a milk disappear. Carton. Yeah. Just absolutely disappeared. That coincided with the loss of yeah, Chris Paul because yeah. Chris Paul and Sartz had the two-man game rolling. Clay Thompson season, rough first couple months. It's been dynamic over the last few months. Andrew Wiggins, you see the flashes of potential, the flashes of brilliance, but you don't see it enough. Steph Curry, since the All-Star break, has not been efficient. He's shot close to 34% from three since the All-Star break. He is worn down because he's on a scouting report and these longer defenders are just pressing him and pressing him and pressing him. And you're wondering what the hell is going on here. So to me, just an imperfect season. I even started with Steve Kerr to coach in the rotations. Some games where we're talking about the Sacramento Kings, they pull a 24-point lead to go to one center. What was the topic of conversation after that game? Damn, you should have played Moses Moody. He was rolling. Steve Kerr admits it a day later. Yeah, I should have played Moses Moody later. I should have played him more. Hell, Friday night, TJD only plays 22 minutes. Everybody's clamoring for more TJD. What did Steve Kerr say yesterday? Yeah, I probably should have played TJD a little bit more. So for me, it's been an imperfect season. That's the one. I Because I, I, I'm, I'm playing with a lot of words in my head. Frustrated is a lot of words, right? Frustrated is a lot of well, uh, is a word that I think a lot of people will use today. I mean, like the reality, like just you and me having it. Are they a better basketball team today than what they were last year? Absolutely, I think so. Absolutely. Okay. By the time they ended that season last year, you're playing like six guys. And that's okay. You that, know, Kaminga felt completely out of the he rotation. Was out of the rotation. Jordan, Jordan Poole at the end of the year, even even though, like, I know people don't want to don't want to remember it this way. I think you should go back and Google 2022-2023 stats and just go acu the, the accumulation of stats at the end of the year. He had by far the most minutes played, the most two-point attempts, the most free throw attempts. Right. Like J Jordan Poole was way better than right. everybody remembers. I mean, guy averaged 20 last year. Yeah, in the bad in the bad season. Uh, a, bad season. A but, he was, season. but he was unplayable by the end no, of the season. I know. And I look at the turnovers. The guy's averaging more than three turnovers a right. game. If you'd have told me it was 17 turnovers a game, I might believe you. Right. But, like, they, they took a very different path this year. And what's frustrating to me is that, yes, the rest of the West got significantly better. But they had so many self-inflicted wounds. And I could point to so many individual games this year where – they pull out a couple. We're not even talking about five. Yeah. A couple of games, we're sitting here in the sixth seed. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's and that's the part that's frustrating. There's there's the slow games. There's Denver coming up on a twenty five to four run in the last seven and a half minutes, where Jonathan Kaminga doesn't play for the last eighteen minutes of that basketball yeah. game. And Jokic ends that game with a three. You know, there there's the Sacramento game where you pull a twenty four point lead. There's the OKC games where you don't foul Chet. <laughs> Or you do foul Chet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't foul him, you go to overtime, you lose. You do foul him, he makes all three free throws, and they win in overtime in Oklahoma City. I mean, there's so many games that you could have flipped here and there, and maybe you're looking at a top five seed. And I believe if the Warriors are a top five seed, or top six seed for that matter, and they're getting a the week off, a lot of people in Dub Nation feel a lot better about their prospects of totally making a deep run. Totally agree. Now the fact is, you do have a chance to get into the playoffs. And Oklahoma City sitting at the one seed. If you could just get there, take a deep breath, then you see what happens in the best of seven. But to get there, it's this long Doris Road where you got to go up to Sacramento. And then you got to go to New Orleans or L.A. to try to get into the playoffs. You put yourself behind the eight ball here where you have to face a double elimination game. And Friday night, to me, encapsul encapsulated the entire regular season. Friday night did. We got a little tease of how good they could be. And then we understand that, boy, if they don't take care of the ball, teams go out running. How many live ball turnovers did they have Friday night? I, 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 it's just, it was maddening. It was maddening. And then, like, you know, Draymond Green scores the 15 points the other day, the, 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 the five threes, and everyone's, like, talking about, hey, if he just takes a couple shots, look how everything opens up. And, and he comes out of a do-or-die game. Like, that was a must have it type of a game with not one shot attempt. You know, it, it's such a strange game for Draymond. Not one shot attempt? Well, well it's so strange because I got to give him credit, man. That joker defended v Zion Williamson as well as anybody I've seen okay, all year. Yeah. That one, okay, yeah. That one on one amazing. defense against Zion was as good as I've seen. And, and Zion's a load. He's a load. 26 points, 26 shots. And Draymond was in his, he was playing his left hand so well, he made him work. Then the rebounds. But I hear you on the shots. 
It was a little strange where he's coming off a five or seven game and he's talking about the shot. The team is talking about the shot. Steve Kerr is talking about, man, he's been working on his shot. Draymond's talked about his shot and he understands that, man, it's in the hips and I got to just let it fly. And then he doesn't let it fly Friday night. It was such, well, it's kind of weird. And then why, can you explain to me, what? why didn't Kaminga play Friday night? Uh, he took a bad fall against the, who was it last Tuesday? Took a bad fall against, no. Yeah, he took a bad fall Thursday night against the Portland Trailblazers. Saw him before the game, said he was a little bagged up there. Okay. Um, so he didn't play. Boy, but they you know missed what? Him. But you know what? It's funny, because as that game is playing out, is as Brian and Paula Alto's tweet me left and right about, Kamiga's unplayable. Kamiga's unplayable. I'm not scared. Well, you know what? <laughs> and by the way, Kamiga did, I don't think Kamiga shot yesterday. So we got to Draymond Green out shooting Friday. I don't think Kamiga shot yesterday. Well, yesterday's game. I mean, I, so, I don't want to be that guy, but yesterday's game was completely irrelevant. Yeah, no doubt. It is. It was irrelevant. And I mean, the Warriors will tell you, the only thing that was relevant is them winning their last home game of the season. And <laughs> Fezzi fell dancing he got the end of the third quarter uh, <laughs> with, their, with their Harwood Classic squad. But Kamiga didn't take a shot yesterday. And Draymond doesn't take a shot Friday. He doesn't play. But all the people that are like, Trey Kamiga, Trey Kamiga. In a game like that against the Pelicans, they needed easy buckets. They need a guy with athleticism and strength and a guy who can go to the rack and get easy buckets. You were missing that with uh, Jonathan Kaminga. Because I thought that game, pause was a little overmatch. With the long athletes yeah. that the Pelicans pose, they switch everything. They don't care about switching because they got a lot of athletes on that front line. That's where you could have missed. You know, the whole Trey Kaminga thing. Pop the film in for Friday night and tell me why you would trade Kaminga. You could have used J.K. in a game like that. Okay. Do you know who the top three leading scorers on the Warriors are this yeah. year? Yeah, I could take a guess. Go. Steph Curry. Uh-huh. Clay Thompson. Uh-huh. Jonathan Kaminga. So, Kaminga's third. Yes, you're right. Okay. Do you do you know who who is the top two free throw attempt shooters on the Warriors? Mm, let me guess. Steph Curry and Jonathan Kaminga. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And then, do you know who took the most two-point attempts on a team where th to balance the floor out? Hmm. Do you know, do you know I, who took I wonder, I wonder. most two-point attempts? I, I, I think maybe Jonathan Kaminga, who also led the team in dunks this season. So, like, all everyone wants to tell me what, what he isn't. And, and him and Pods, almost virtual minutes per game played. Just, like, 26-6 yeah. for Pods, 26-3 for, for Kaminga. Kaminga had a great year. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Look at the stats. Look at the numbers. Look at the rest of the guys on the team. Kaminga was awesome this year. Third-year leap? He was Third awesome year this leap? year. He had I the thought he took it. <laughs> he... he I mean, he, he started the fifth most games on the team, and I, I thought he was excellent this year. Anybody that wants to say what Kaminga isn't, like, y y you're just out here hating. Kaminga was really well, good this year. Well, and, really that's a good. Wild, and that's a wild card going into the playoffs. Exactly. And I could see this scenario happening tomorrow night in Sacramento. If Kaminga doesn't start rolling early off the bench, what does Steve Kerr do? Because you can't mess around with this game. I know. You can't mess around with the mistakes. You can't worry about somebody getting into the rhythm. You know, what are you going to do if he does struggle early? Right now, I think he's fighting it, the fact that he started 29 straight games. And how how can he not? He's 21 years old, and he sees the situation. Whether you think it's right or not, Wiggins left the team for three games due to personal reasons. And you got to respect that. you got to respect that because something's really going on, and it ain't our business. But something went on, and he left three games. But he came back, and he started. J.K. missed six straight games after playing some of the best bass actually playing the best basketball of his career and being the most sec the second most consistent player, which all the veterans said. You heard it from Draymond, you heard it from Clay, you heard it from everybody. JK's become our second option and he comes back and he's coming off the bench. So he's probably thinking, what the hell did I do wrong? I can't TJD's play it well, but why can't I start? I've been one of the most consistent players on this basketball team. And so now I think there is something going on in his head with that situation. Pick up your thoughts on the other yeah. side. We got a break here. Shout out to YouTube and Twitch. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we have added the QR code on both pages. Also, shout out to the Xfinity Mobile text line as well as shout out to our friends at Floyd Water Plumbing and Drain. If you're going to call into the rush, you better bring it because if you don't, you will be flushed. Brought to you by Floyd Water Plumbing and Drain. What's coming up in the game? Brought to you by Robert Half. Your phone calls, 888 888- 957-9570. Nick and Saddle say they're a 46-win team, dude. So how would you describe this regular season with one word, folks? One word. 
888-957-9570. One word to describe this regular season for the Golden State Warriors. We'll be back on the Russ. You reap what you sow, brother. Robert F. Research indicates...
trying to get a running start. Cannot. Jokic in the backcourt catches. Dribbles on Looney. Jokic Whoa. from the what chase the center side. Banked it in at the buzzer and Denver wins the game. And <laughs> I can't believe I just saw that. There's no way that just happened. The way this year's gone, I'll believe anything. Uh, you're right about that. The Warriors have now lost nine home games. One more than they did all last year. The Morning Roast is live on YouTube right now. Take it away, Bonte. All right, Steph Curry, Tim Roy, Tom Tolbert on the call right here on 95 7 the game. Jokic with the buzzer beater as the Nuggets beat the Warriors 130 to 127. That was back on January 4th. Just think about that homestand. That was a three, six, seven game homestand in which the Warriors go two and five. And they had a six game homestand earlier this season where they go one and five. You look at those two homestands, you flip those. Who the hell knows where the Warriors are in the Western Conference? But they lost at Denver, or excuse me, they lost to Miami to start that homestand December 28th. Miami really dominated that basketball game. Dominated. Then the Mavericks come into town a couple days before New Year's Day, and they roll the Warriors. Luka has his way. Luka just cooked left and right. And they beat the Orlando Magic in a very good win. Then you lose that game to the Denver Nuggets. And again, the Denver Nuggets going a 25-4 run to win that basketball game. The Joker. 34 points, 10 assists, 9 rebounds. He was 13-16 to 16 from the floor. There's no Draymond Green in that game. And J.K. doesn't play the final 18 minutes of that game. Doesn't play the final 18. And the Warriors lose, blow a double-digit lead, which we've lost count of all season long. So what is your one word to describe this regular season? <clears throat> I'm seeing a lot of, oh, wow, I see complicated. I see appreciative. I see damn. I see disappointing. Uh, inconsistent from the 209 and Xfinity Mobile text line. Exasperating on the, from the 415. There's a lot of good words here. 888-957-9570. <clears throat> Pardon me. If you have a word, how would you describe the regular season and expand on it? Let's, expand on it. Why would you come up with that word, that one word to describe this regular season? Let's rewind to the beginning of the year. If I polled 100 Warrior fans and I just said you were the 10th seed, and you're in the play in against Sac. Would they define that as a successful season, regular season? No. I agree with you. No. I agree with you. Um, I think a lot of people, and I'm not saying everyone, but I think a lot of people thought like, well, you know, just <laughs> having the chemistry right, you know, everybody being kumbaya, get rid of Jordan Poole. It's going to solve everything. And, I actually like the Chris Paul trade. I think a lot of people like the Chris Paul trade in terms of like Chris Paul being a really good contributor to this team. Yeah, he hasn't been the issue at all. No. Um, but I think we we diminish like Jordan Poole did bring things to the table. We act like he didn't. And Chris Paul's brought a lot of things to the table. Um, but their issues as a team from last year to this year were deeper than just Jordan Poole yeah. and his contributions. I think mo most, don't you think most people would say, the Warriors won the trade, even if it's just by a little? Um, Yeah, most Warrior fans, I don't know about that. Okay. I, I See, where I stand on the trade is this TBD. A trade is never won or lost in the first year. No. You got to look at what happens over the next four years. And over the next four years, CP3 may be retired from the NBA. Who the hell knows where he's going to be at? Mm-hmm. Jordan Poole will probably be playing. Jordan Poole did it this season on a high note over the last two weeks. He played well. He's very much a young man. We have to wait. Time will tell whether or not the Warriors won that trade. Yeah, but, but you would think that. But you, yeah, they, I mean, the locker room chemistry last year, you won 11 road games. There was a rift. We know what happened. It was never, somebody had to go. Uh, that's And you're not going to trade one of the core members of the big three, apparently. So um, that's, that's where that played out. <laughs> and so Chris Paul has been really good. Listen, the Warriors have the third rated bench in the league. The bench has not been the problem. The one constant coming off the bench yeah. has been Chris Paul. So Chris Paul for this season has been Jordan Poole is unplayable by the end of last season. I, I agree. Unplayable. I agree. So I think Chris Paul's been very good for the Golden State Warriors. Now, who won the trade? Time will tell. Time will tell. Well, I think for this season, right now, I would say the Warriors, but then I look up and I'm like, I don't think they won it enough for them to feel like it was worth it. Mm. You know, like uh, being the 10 seed's not good. Like that, just as a, as an organization, they have their sights set much higher than the 10 seed. Yeah, they want championships. Absolutely. 
Um, and, and a lot of things. I know you asked me a question. And I do want to get into like just this season. I wrote down all the pros and all the cons yeah. of the year. You asked me about Kaminga. And especially for this one playing game. And I know we got tomorrow to, to break down the game between the Kings and the Warriors. I can't answer a Jonathan Kaminga question without knowing the health status of GP2. Because I just know how this coach operates. And this coach, when push comes to shove, is going to insert GP2 in there. If if it's a Kaminga versus GP2, whether it's second quarter, fourth quarter, whatever, he he might give Kaminga the first crack, but if Kaminga makes a mistake, he's going right to GP2. Yeah. And so to me, if GP2 is available, I will look at Kaminga's minutes and whatever we guess the minutes are, I'd hit the under. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow night. It's definitely a wild card. It's definitely because Sacramento. He's going to go with GP2. Well, yeah. Sacramento is going to be buttoned up. You know, with Keegan Murray and Harrison Barnes. And they're veterans, and they know how to play the game. And teams started to think, I, I, you know, you, you're right. He, he probably I hate to GP say too. it, but like. He, and Jonathan Kaminga, <laughs> he just doesn't seem like he's in a good rhythm right now. And that's tough. When you miss six games late in the season, all of a sudden you come back, your job is taken. And look, you got to do what's better. Right. There's no. Di TJD in the front court with Draymond Green, it does make the defense it was, better. It was working. It's, it works. Yeah. It works. But how can you insert JK and make it work? GP2, we know how important he is. But he's also good. To, teams are going to say, go ahead and shoot the ball. So if he plays with, say, Draymond Green That's, or Pods, all of a sudden you're limiting your shooting and your spacing is compromised once again. What JK does with spacing is he goes downhill and he ducks on your head. He gives you an element this team hasn't and, had for many, many years. And goes to the free throw line. Free and throw slows line. things down in a playoff game where you can get into the bonus, which does change how teams defend you. So, like... We act like Kaminga doesn't bring anything to the table, and I just categorically well, disagree. I, well, not you. I, well, not no, you. no, no. It's just it's fascinating. Again, we always go through these cycles with sports fans. It, it bugs me. Early on, it was Clay Thompson's fault. And I'm watching Wiggins average 20, 12 and a half points a game, and people are complaining about Clay Thompson. And then Draymond gets popped, and he's not available. For 17 games due to suspension, he comes back, and he has to ramp it up, so he misses a couple more games. Then all of a sudden, we look at Andrew Wiggins again. Then we say, oh, the youngsters, J.K., get him out of here. And then all of a sudden, J.K. starts with 29 games, and he's a walking 20-point-per-game mm -hmm. score. Literal, a literal bucket. And all of a sudden, we're saying, oh, J.K., J.K., J.K. Then all of a sudden, he misses six games, and J.K. is the problem. I, I can't keep up sometimes. I just know Friday night against the Pelicans, there was a spot for J.K. in that basketball game. Oh, absolutely. 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 And, and it's the same team from the previous season – that was up. They were up 22, I think, against the Warriors to chase it. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Draymond and B.I. got into it. Mm -hmm. Draymond and Herb Jones got into it. And J.K. came in the second half and had 18. It was ducking all over everybody and shut down Brandon Ingram. That same team. Look, I'm not going to speak for Jonathan Kaminga. And, you know, he's a young guy, and I know Warrior fans, some love him, some don't think he's any good. Which I, it's He's somewhere in the middle. He, I think he's a contributor. I think he's a good player. I think he's ascending. I think the rhetoric wrapped around him is out of this world. It's just insane. How would what Dub fans describe his regular season? I think he had a really say, good regular cause, season. Because, listen, we always say with the uh, Giants and the Niners, you always say, boy, if I could get a couple young players a pop, knowing that I got somebody for the future, looking at Brandon Pajewski, looking at TJD, looking at Kaminga, I'm like, oh, there are some players there. Now, Moses Moody is an incomplete because he doesn't get consistent playing time. So I, don't, I still don't know what Moses I, Moody is. I, I, say, yeah. I think he's a shooter. I think he can help. He's always ready to roll, but he doesn't see consistent minutes. So the way I would describe John and Kaminga's year, as, as you phrase that question, is I think tremendous upside. I think he he was very promising this year. And to me, it, the question's always, I want to see more. Why can't I see more? That's, that's literally it. Yeah. It's, why, why can't I see more? And I just, I don't know, man. I, I think... We tolerate, like, GP2's made a ton of mistakes in the last three weeks. Because I've been charting it. A ton of mistakes. Missed shots. Um, you know, he's the guy that they lay off of in the in the half-court half offense, court. to your point. I think defensively, he's not where he was a couple of years ago. Still and we solid. bestow. Still solid, but not he, this. Yeah, he's not as elite know. as he was. I right. think he's lost a little bit of his strength, uh, some of his leaping ability. He's not rebounding the way he used to. And I just think that we're we're much more tolerant of a GP two mistake than a, than a Kaminga mistake, and I don't get it. Yeah, I just I just don't get it. When everyone in the league, I, I know I I get it. 
I get it. I, I know why. It's because fans see GP2 help you a high level situations two years ago to win the NBA championship. JK was your rookie racking up DMPs. So we haven't seen JK on the biggest stage in the brightest of lights perform at a high level. Yeah, we just haven't seen it. It's not his fault. I'm not saying it's JK's fault. Hold on, Chelsea. No, I know. I mean, it's not his fault. But we've seen, I'm, I'm just trying to explain no, I, why I, I think you. fans maybe trust GP2 a little more than Kaminga because we saw GP2 at a higher level perform where we haven't seen JK do it yet at that level. He just hasn't got the playing time to do it. And we hope this is the playoff run that he does get that opportunity. But the fact is, the season could be over tomorrow night. Two seasons in a row, Jonathan Kaminga, during the regular season, got you into the playoffs. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think you saved back-to-back back <laughs> so, like, seasons. I, I, I hear you. I don't but know. But I'm just I, trying to explain. Right. I'm just, trying to explain yeah, why, baby. Me. You know? so On his behalf. I, I totally agree. 888-957-9570. What is the one word you could de- you would describe? What words you would use to describe this regular season? We'll get to everybody on the other side. 888-957-9570. That's all coming up. Brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking. No compromises. Another happy Safe Light customer. Safe Light Repair. Safe Light Replace. There I was, driving down the highway, and a rock...
Ah, the Koopa. <laughs> Driving it on Jackson Davis. Goes up, blocked by Jackson Davis. He roofed him. Loose ball to Yass. Blocked again by the rookie. Paul comes out of the, the pack with it. Down the right sideline. The crowd roars its approval. Curry dribbles around Giannis to the rim. Lob. Jackson oh. Davis for the dunk. A no-look lob by Curry. Slams it down. Doc Rivers has to stop the noise. Timeout Milwaukee. And the rookie from Indiana supply the needed energy here as we take the break. The best part of waking up is morning roast in your cup. <laughs> Tim Roy on the call. That's Jeremiah Fremont, who I, I met last night. His entire family yesterday, his sister, his nephews, his mom, his sister. Um, met him at the gay house yesterday. He had it on his iPhone. Play it one more time. The it's best a- part of waking up. It's morning roast in your cup. <laughs> Jeremiah from Fremont. He was jacked up yesterday, man. So it was good to meet him. Had it on his iPhone there. But that was one of the highlights of the season. One of the highlights. Beating the Milwaukee Bucks by 35 points. And that was like a barometer for the Golden State Warriors. Remember that? It was a barometer mm-hmm. for them. A barometer game. We're like, all right, let's see how good they are. Can they play with the big boys? Can they ball out? And everybody was healthy for the first time since November 27th, 28th. And we thought, boy. Now it's takeoff time for the Golden State Warriors. Now they do win 46 games, two more than last season. But it's been a very, very topsy-turvy, turvy, topsy type of regular season here. Incomplete, imperfect, frustrating. Are you pleased? So I, I, I want to start here. I wrote down pros and cons of the 2023-2024, and I left some off the table so that you could contribute as well, all right? I have have mine on top of the head, so I'm glad you're letting me participate in this exercise. Well, then give me me your pros. I'll I'm I'm glad you're letting me partake in this exercise on the show that I co-host with you. (laughs) Give me your pros. Well, the pro is Jonathan Kamiga. There's a player there. Okay. He doubled nearly every stat this year. Most improved player. He's going to be a finalist for that. Trace Jackson Davis. Uh-huh. I found part? me a big. I found me a big who can be a nice role player moving forward for the Golden State Warriors. Is he a starter moving forward? I'm not 100% sure. But he's a guy who's going to contribute and play the right way. He's not going to make mistakes. He's going to defend. Mm-hmm. He's going to contest shots. He knows his role on offense. He's going to rim run. He's got great hands. He's not going to fumble any passes. And he's going to dunk on your head. And I think the, the obviously the blocks per game was was gorgeous. Well, contesting shots and being a rim protector. Let me add that the combination of him and Draymond Green felt like it did unlock something for that starting unit and enabled them to be able to throw Clay back into that starting lineup. And it just it felt more balanced and more traditional. I don't know if you have this, but Steph Curry's still elite. So still I, an all-NBA player. Steph's still amazing. Steph, Steph yes. is still amazing. Now, is he the same Steph from five years ago, ten years ago? No, he's not. He struggled after the All-Star break in terms of efficiency. Yeah, I say struggled. He averaged 24, 4, and 4. <laughs> Those are still some pretty damn good numbers, but it was a tick down from Steph and Curry. Mm-hmm. The efficiency number since the All-Star break just was not good. But I know I still have an elite player who's going to draw a lot of attention. Even when he doesn't have the ball, he's going to open up the offense for many, many others yep. on this basketball team. So that's another pro. Anything else? Road games. Ah, I didn't have Road that team. one. Didn't have that. They stabilize themselves away from home, showing that, hey, we could be a comparable basketball team away from Chase Center. Yep. Two. Uh, another one. Clay Thompson. I have Perspective. That. Well, this is Sacrifice. What I, this is what I put with Clay, and you tell me if I'm wrong here. Clearly, I had some issues with Clay last year, just in general, and I thought his attitude and everything, like, it was, there was a lot going on. I think Clay had a come-to-Jesus type of a season. He embraced his new role, went back to the old role. He became more endearing, more lovable, and I thought he was much more efficient and just a happier basketball player this year as opposed to last year. Yeah, he was happy. Last year, he wanted to be that all-star. Because, that look, a lot of people, after winning the championship, and people forget he led the team in minutes played during that postseason championship run in 2022, where they win their fourth championship in a decade. And Clay Thompson played the most minutes, shot a great percentage, and for some reason didn't get the respect that he deserved. And all last season, all we kept doing, and we knew had so many fights about Clay Thompson. <clears throat> and I get why he was shooting the way he was shooting. He was trying to do too much. They had the team meeting. He scaled back a little bit. But by the end of the season, it felt like the playing season in which it was Steph 
and Clay shooting, mm -hmm. and nobody else wanted to shoot. Mm -hmm. And so even though he struggled at times, and even though his attitude probably needed to be checked at times during that season, he still led the league at threes made and shot 41%. And I know people don't want to hear about that in the raw data. I got to throw plus minus and this and that. But I thought Clay, despite everything, despite the rift with the team, the rift in the locker room, Draymond Green said it after the season, it was tough to go to work every single day. Now, part of the problem was he helped create that with what happened at training camp. But it was. You, you could just tell the team wasn't clicking. They weren't all on the same page. Then you had Andrew Wiggins leave for two months due to personal reasons, which is none of our business, and he went away. But that it, the team was, last year, was it, it was incomplete. It was a, you just want to talk about a rocky road, and yet they still make, get to six seed and invest in the second round of the playoffs. So I think Clay Thompson coming in this year, and really that perspective happening midway through the year, and he comes off the bench a game before the All-Star break and doesn't even look back. I think Klay Thompson's stock, he made himself more valuable across the league, around the league. I, I think Klay Thompson had a dynamic season. I think he had a special season for him. Yeah. Uh, and he ended it on a high note, making six threes yesterday. Yeah, and, and playing in 77 games, leading the team in games played, leading I mean, come on. a second in the team in minutes per game. I think a lot of a lot of things are uptick, 38%, 39% from three-point land. Like he, he had a really good year, a really, yep. really, really good year. Um, and I think Steve Kerr deserves a ton of credit for that as well because it sounded like they had multiple heart-to-hearts. And, um, and yeah, so that that's it. Give me some more pros oh, for the 2023. Chris Christmas. Paul. I have that as well. What, remember, what about Chris Paul? Well, I just remember coming into the season. Because I wrote down three or four things. Yeah, I just remember, well, what his mentorship of the youngsters. I've got that. the youngsters. Yep, I've got that. Was special. Stabilizing the second unit. Uh -huh. Being asked to do multiple things. Starting or coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. And then, Chris Paul, we need you to push the pace a little more. We need you to shoot. Well, ever since he got back from the left hand fracture, the guy shot 40% from three. Yeah. Chris Paul was I think he was everything and more for the Golden State Warriors. And all the conversations coming into the season. Oh, it drove me crazy, Shasky. You know it drove me crazy. Oh, what's he going to do when he doesn't start? He's never come off the bench before in his career. Then it gets off. Yeah, maybe not on a great foot in Las Vegas when he gets asked by Kendra Andrews about the bench starting role. And he, sh he shoots back and goes, uh, you coaching? <laughs> we haven't had that conversation yet. But not one minute during the regular season did we ever wonder, boy, is Chris Paul unhappy? He put now he may be unhappy on the inside with his role and maybe not finishing games at times, but we didn't hear a peep. Yeah. Chris Paul was the total professional with this basketball team. And I think he's flipped the narrative for many, many Warrior fans. You talk about from going from the most hated non warrior in the last 15, 20 years to can we bring CP three back? I know. Most want him. I don't think he's coming back, but we'll see. I wrote down professional stabilizer. And I mean that in terms of connecting the young guys to the old guys, connecting the second unit to the first unit. And I just think being a consummate professional day in, day out in attitude, because last year it did feel like multiple teams. It, it just did. And this year it doesn't. And when I see all of the little conversations he's having on the floor, off the floor, I hear him at the podium. He's the professional stabilizer. How many times did the Warriors have a lead or – had a deficit, and he stabilized the game yeah, no where doubt. he kept it close. Last year, it was we're bailing water when Steph's not on the floor. Oh, my God, he's got to save us. And this year, it felt like the exact opposite. Um, and I think Chris Paul was a big part of that. What else do you wow. have written down wow. here? By the way, some breaking news with the Phoenix Suns. Grayson Allen just agreed to a four-year, $70 million contract extension. Oh. Cash out, Grayson Money Allen. Money time! Wow, Money time! $70 million. When does that money... Kick in. Yeah, we... we <laughs> no pun intended. Um, good for him. As the Suns played the Minnesota T-Wolves in the first round. They beat four. Minnesota. You like that? All, they beat you guys Minnesota, like that? They beat Minnesota all three times in the regular season. It blew them out yesterday. So, Phoenix feeling good about that 6-3 matchup. 6-3 matchup. By the way, the Suns' uh, payroll is now $206 million with another $104 million looming in luxury tax. So he's trying to keep this team. Think about that. They're a six seed. He's trying to keep that core together. They need they need a point guard. They need a point guard bad. All right, moving All right, on. So here. what else? What else do you have on your I, on I your pros? Pro, my, my pro is Draymond Green. In terms of this. And there's some cons with Draymond Green. I'm just saying it's all okay, pros. Okay. But no, no, the pro I, with Draymond Green. Asking. The pro with Draymond Green is still elite defensively. All right. The con is, I don't know if that's good enough for this team to be a championship team. And obviously the cons with him missing 26 games. We'll get season. to cons in a second. <laughs> we'll get to cons in a second. 
What else? What else? What else was a positive step forward for this team? Because uh, I've got a couple more that you yeah, have. Go ahead. You, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I think I think Pajemski was a revelation. I think most people thought Pajemski, like myself, I'll raise my hand. Uh, he'll play in Santa Cruz. We'll get yeah. a little bit of of him when when there's a big maintenance day and fifty people don't play. But Pajemski was unbelievable. I, I he leapfrogged so many guys. He was fifth most minutes per game. He was the second leading rebounder. He was uh, a, a hustle guy, a glue guy. I think there were some areas that he improved in the middle of the season. Shot selection, I think being a better facilitator. Defensively, he clearly had a ton of charges that he accumulated. Uh, I think Pajemski was amazing this year. Um, if, if we're just going like what I expected versus what ended up happening, Pajemski was a huge part of that. You know, I think about pods, and I like the resiliency. He okay. was just slumping. Okay. He was slumping, and a lot of fans started turning their backs on him. You know how it rolls. Oh, man, pods play too many minutes. Pods this, pods that, pods this, pods that. We well, had 17, 10, 5, and 5 games. He's going to make one of the all-rookie teams. Okay. I did not expect that coming into the year. This rookie class is loaded. Pods is going to make, he's going to get one of the 10 spots on the all-rookie team, first or second team. Probably get second team. TJD is going to be a candidate to win, all, to get that second team as well, all rookie team. So the rookies popped. Pods bouncing back and playing some good basketball. Now, Friday night wasn't his best night, but Pods, there's a player there. He's got some value. I'd also say this, too. Another positive, is Steve Kerr willing to do some things that he hasn't done before? And he realized that, boy, this ain't the same roster from 2022. I have to tweak some things. I have to have some uncomfortable conversations with a lot of my players. Did that with Andrew Wiggins. He's come off the bench. Obviously, you had the CP3 dynamic. And he told Clay Thompson, Clay, I'm going to need you to come off the bench. And Clay cursed out the coaching staff and Steve Kerr. But you know what? He embraced it. Well, there's and he one changed other, his role. There's one other guy you're omitting. I think pivoting well, off Looney and going to TJD was, get there. was, was the, the seminal moment in the season. Well, I think the similar moment may have been Clay Thompson, maybe Looney too. I, although Looney, you're going to need him, I think, at times to get some bonus tomorrow. That's something we'll talk about tomorrow. Uh, but moving off of Looney, but just doing things out of his comfort zone. Yes, I agree. He was willing to pivot, and also having that come to Jesus moment with Jonathan Kaminga, where Kaminga comes out and says, "Steve Kerr lost my trust," <laughs> crazy. and they had to sit down, <laughs> really and they had the one on one. J.K. gets the haircut, and he doesn't look back. Uh, Post haircut, J.K. has been unbelievable. So Steve Kerr willing to do things outside of his comfort zone. I saw Coach willing to pivot for the first time in a long time there. So I think that's a big positive moving forward. I, I was going to add to the Steve Kerr file that I felt like they did a really good job with the, uh, we've talked about it forever, but the after timeout inbound plays. But in particular for me, it's, Half court offense blending the CP3 style of play with the motion style of play. I thought they did a much better job. They were very like, oh, we're going to do the ball movement thing, you know, and they would never do the high pick and roll stuff. I thought that they did a really good job blending the two. Now, there are times I want one or the other a little more, and that's going to happen. But I think schematically on the offensive side, I think he was much better this year. He was good, he was solid. He was solid there. But it's time for you to do the legal. All right, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMG, FM, and HG1, San Francisco. Don't forget, you can also watch us every single day on our YouTube and Twitch streams. Just log out and search 95.7 The Game. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel while you are there. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we have added the QR code on both pages. Shout out to the Xfinity Mobile text line. Play in the set, folks. Kings, Warriors, tomorrow night at the G1C, the go to one Center, 7 p.m. tip-off. Coverage <laughs> all beginning at 6 p.m. We'll have Kyle Draper on tomorrow. We'll have Kenny Caraway on tomorrow. we got Morgan Reagan on today, uh, host for NBC Sports California. Also, the Deuce of Mo podcast. You know those Kings, all Kings, everything. She's ready to roll at 920 as we start to wrap it up for, towards a playing game. But 888-957-9570. I want to hear from Dub Nation. One word to describe this regular season in which the Warriors go 46 and 36. It was a winning record. They didn't win two more games than they did last season. Just crazy. But they're now the 10th seed instead of the 6th seed. So what is one word to describe 
this roller coaster of a regular season. Because that's what it was. You had some great stretches. You had some bad stretches. You had some incomplete play. There's a lot of dynamics here. One word to describe the regular season, 888-957-9570. This is more of an acronym as opposed to a word, but is TBD an acceptable response for some people? Absolutely. As in, I want to see how it finishes? Because well, more than any other team in the league, like they're all about the end result. Well, we're talking about the regular season here. The regular season will change. Our perspective on the postseason can change, but we're talking about the regular season here. So the even if, even if even if you hear because I I did see some rhetoric. Well, now with OKC in the one spot, you know you wanted to avoid the seven. Like I think that's a little that's a little well, like too schematic for well, me. Think about this: if you do get past Sacramento, you're either taking on Lakers or Crypto.com Arena, <laughs> and they're rolling, <laughs> or. You're going to New Orleans, a team that just dropped 45 on you in the second look, quarter. Looked a lot younger and more athletic and, and, and more they dynamic can hit the three. from the do outside. You know, yeah. Do you know the Pelicans are a top five team when it comes to quarter threes? No. They shoot over 40% from each quarter, oh. left and right. And then at the top of the block, where they're running and getting out on the break, you got Trey Murphy the third hitting shots from the logo. So that's what's on deck Friday, either the Pelicans or the Lakers. I have a hard time, just me, and call me a cynic, I have a hard time seeing the league not trying to do everything they can in terms of the whistles to get the Lakers into that playoffs. I well, just have a hard I, time I, I seeing think the Warriors, The Lakers are going to roll the Pelicans tomorrow. I have no doubt in my mind. The Lakers are going to roll. I mean, LeBron James yesterday was, I mean, the guy dropped. He, in the first quarter alone, he had like nine assists. I mean, they were, the, the Pelicans are scared yeah. of the Lakers. Come so. on! You know, uh, we'll get to Danny in just a second here I'm, in San Jose as we get one word, our one word uh, association here. One word to describe the regular season. Why are you using that word to describe the regular season for the Go to State Warriors? So I'm looking at some of the cons of this year. Right? I wrote down a bunch of pros, and yes. I think there's a lot of pros. There's a lot of pros. And then I wrote down a bunch of the cons. You should have probably did the cons first. I know. Or bad news first, good uh, news. I mean, and I don't want I don't want to like dwell on them, but I'll I'll rat a tat tat some of them. You could throw you get in wherever you want. I got plenty of cons. Blue huge leads, turnovers again, no clear cut second score on a night to night basis, Draymond's availability being all over the map, Looney's regression, Steph, although still amazing, not as efficient. The home record, I don't know what to make of it. Uh, the yo-yoing of lineups, specific games where they manage certain players, yeah. 27, availability. 27 different starting lineups on the season. See, that's the top I, 10. I didn't have that. But, but you know you know the Dallas Mavericks had 34 different starting lineups. The Dallas Mavericks. Um, that. 34 it, different starting lineups. But I look at their, like, three through five after Kyrie. They, they're a little more interchangeable. interchangeable. Yeah. yeah. So I guess I'm not that surprised. Um, What what other – what other, so 27 different lineups. What other cons well, did you – Well, these are T-specific. You, you got home record there? Uh, Well, I yeah, I put that home record, right before that. Blow leads. I put that – Points the very, off turnovers, turnovers. I, I put turnovers uh, in a big bucket. There's yeah. a big bucket of issues. Uh, do we get to the players? <laughs> Well, I just put, you know, Looney regression, Draymond availability, <laughs> Sarich not the Sarich starting hot and finishing absolutely ice cold. I mean, yeah. literally Alaska. I, I mean, he's just done. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot. There's a lot. Let's go to uh, Danny and Saddle say, Danny, what's happening? You're Wiggins, on the road. All over the place. Yeah. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Love the show. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, I think about. Thank you. I think about the Warriors. I think a one word survival. Ooh. Uh, I don't think that word would fit them a few years back when they won the few championships. It wasn't survival. They were dominant. Nobody wanted to play them. But this year, like the the last gentleman was mentioning, it's there was times when they everyone thought this is done. This team's done. But they survived. Clay Thompson losing his shot, wondering what's going on with him. People talking about trading him. Look at him. They survived with him. Kaminga, I mean, let's not go. Let's not talk about Draymond, right? It's just every. There's always been an issue, and then they, then they had that emotional grieving period with their assistant coach. Yeah, yeah. they survived that. Yeah. They yeah. survived that's that. I mean, really good point. that's yeah. real. Yeah. That's yeah. real. Yeah. So they they've hit some big bumps in the road, and I think this playoff is going to be a, a a series of survival for them. They're going to somehow survive it and get to the next level. I really believe in the Warriors. So. 
Keep surviving, Warriors. I love you guys. I like that. Thanks. Good, 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 good word, one. Daddy. 888-957-9570. That's a really good one. Daddy uses survival. Yeah, Decky. Uh, what? It, yeah, the Warriors had to take a week off there. Salt Lake City. They'll never go to Salt Lake City the same. No. They'll never go back to that restaurant. Wow. Wow. Survival. I like that word. I like that word a lot. Uh, 574 is who need mobile text line. Stressful. 816, one word. Right mysterious. Mysterious. Why? Why, mysterious? Yeah, why mysterious? Mysterious. It's an interesting word there. Interesting word. I think of the Ageism. South Park character. Mentality on YouTube. Yeah. Ageism. Ageism. A little too old. Oh, I thought maybe like like there was a hierarchy on well, the team. Or that, I, okay, that that could that would have been more last year. Too old. <laughs> Priest in Palo Alto, all time. I know he's all time. What's this up? fish is stinking from the head up. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Cadiz, bipolar. It's been an interesting year. Bipolar is a strong word. Yeah, that's uh, not sure. I would use that. Not yeah, not not gonna use that one. I'm out. Catastrophe. Serial connection. That's the second word. Of case, if they man. end up losing tomorrow, I, I think we can oh my throw gosh. the catastrophe around. I mean, you oh, lose it, to the Kings. I mean, this this well, this game against the Kings, man, I, I'd be lying to you if I said I was fully confident in this one. Well, the Warriors have been a grab bag this I, year. I, mean, I have no idea who's making quarter to quarter, lineup to lineup. I don't know what to expect. That's that's why I used the word erratic earlier because one quarter they could look like world beaters and then just a couple of guys check in and everything goes well, to crazy. The last two times they played Sacramento, one of them they blew a 24-point lead. And the next game they give up 134 points, lose by one. Harrison Barnes has the game of his life. 39 points in that game. 39 points for Harrison Barnes. He had seven threes in that game. Do you think Harrison Barnes wants another shot at ending this whole run? He had a chance last year in Game Four to put the Kings up three one. He missed it, and I, and I was the only one on this between the two of us whose heart stopped for a second. No, you, I did. Too. You knew immediately when no, Harrison had the ball that nothing was going to happen. <laughs> no, I did. I was watching at the gate house on the big screen, and because the big screen on the on the Chase Center board was uh right there at Thrive City was ahead of the TVs that we had at the gate house, and that shot went up. And I like lost my breath for a second. I was like, oh. and when he missed, I was like, oh yeah, that's Harrison Barnes. I'll be honest. The second he started pulling up for that shot, I was like, oh good, the Warriors won this game. No, See, I, exactly. no way. I knew no he way. is missing this shot. No it would have been bad. so fitting no for him way. to end the dynasty. I don't believe you. It would have been so fitting well, for him to end the dynasty. Well, you cannot believe me. It's true. <laughs> make sure you don't miss that break, bro. All right, what's coming up in the game? Brought to you by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. More of your phone calls, 888-957-9570. How are we feeling about the end of the regular season? One word to describe this regular season for the Go to State Warriors, in which they go 46 and 36. One word, your call's coming up. When it comes to your business, time...
Just did not in a hurry. Dribbles it up. They're going to try to get the ball out of his hands. Fox dribbles at the logo. Spins on. Runs into Draymond. Pass over to Barnes. Barnes for three. No good. Buzzer south. The Warriors escape with a win. Final score. Golden State 126. Sacramento 125. Now, back to the morning roast with Bonte and Shasky. That was game four. First round series in the Western Conference playoffs a season ago. Kings up two games to one. Harrison Barnes with a chance to end the dynasty, possibly. Misses the three-point shot. It really saved Steph Curry for a tremendous amount of criticism. Remember Steph Curry late in that game. Called the timeout that the Warriors didn't have. Did he miss free throw? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, did you know this year, Clay was better from the free throw line than Steph? Yes, I do know. Do you know that? Clay Thompson has shot better than Stephen Curry over the last 27 games this season. And it hasn't even been close. Why 27? Is that is Well, it's post All Star break. Gotcha. Okay, no, that's yeah. why I was curious. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Post All Star break. Very specific number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post All Star. Uh Clay has shot a lot better than that, but don't don't tell the Clay haters that. <laughs> Clay's watched according to a lot of people. So Sacramento. What's your initial thoughts on Sacramento? If we get back into the word My initial thoughts? Yeah, yeah. 888 My- One word to describe the Warriors' regular season game. But when you found out that, oh, the Warriors are going back up to the Golden One Center for a one game, we're to go home type of game, what was your first thought? My, well, my first thought was, I mean, really there's no opponent that the Warriors should be like, oh, yeah, that's who we wanted. Because they're just, they're, like right now, they're the 10 seed. <laughs> I mean, they're the team that's going on the road. Really? So, you didn't think, like, boy, we get the Kings? Perfect landing spot for the Warriors. I don't think, we're, I don't look at any of the other teams. I look at ourselves, and I, and I look at all the games they won. They blew a big game yeah. to, to the Sacramento Kings. They... I'm one of the few people that was like, yeah, I think that they should have and could have lost that series in seven games last year if it weren't for one of the great Curry games of all time in the playoffs where he dropped 50 on them, dragging them across the finish line. Like they, they could have, would have, should have lost that series last year, you know? So I don't know. They maybe shouldn't have lost the series. I mean, they won the series despite a suspension for Draymond Green, who missed game three. <laughs> blew, a, blew a lead of game one. I mean, I hear you. But that's what the great ones do. The great ones step up and they drop 50 on you at any point. That's what makes well, the great ones. Darren Fox ones. got hurt in that series last year with the with the finger. Oh, like there's yes. a lot that, that goes into it. Now, this this Sacramento team is is different than last year's. You said yesterday on our show called Hey, Keegan Murray, significantly better. I agree. Significantly better. But not having Malik Monk, not having Kevin Herter. Now Herter wasn't great in the series last year, but like Malik Monk. Killed the Warriors in multiple games. It was dominant in the fourth quarter in multiple games. That's a big loss. But this is a very different Warrior team. Is it a better Warrior team than the team the Kings saw last season? I don't know. I don't know. Like in terms of matching up with the Kings, I don't. I don't know. Like I legitimately know. I think Davion's better this year than he was last Davion year. Davion was getting DNPs. He got a spot taken by his place of the rotation was snatched by. Keon Ellis. I, but I think he's a better player than he was last year. He barely played for the last year. Kings fans will tell you Davion's okay, not better Okay, well, last year. I don't know. Have you watched a lot of Davion this year? Well, he was shooting better this year. He, he was barely playing. Sabonis has been better this year, even though he was good last year. He had a, a, right, an Sabonis. unbelievable stretch. I'll give you Sabonis. Keegan's significantly better. I think he's their second best. Well, Again, I think he's their second best player. They would say it's Malik Fox, Monk. then Sabonis, no, or then, one no, way or the other. You know what? There's a lot of people who say Fox, Monk, and then Sabonis. Okay. Keegan. But, but that's Monk's just... not going to be available. So, I don't know, man. Are you worried? Of course I'm worried. <laughs> well, I mean, we're the freaking <laughs> 10 seed. right now. No, I can feel the anxiety over there, man. Holy so geez. you're not worried at all? No, listen, man. No, I don't. I don't get worried. <laughs> somebody's gonna win. Somebody's gonna get loose. All right, there it is. It's a big game. This, this <laughs> could be reality. This <laughs> could be it. it we could have saw Clay Thompson play his final whole game yesterday. That doesn't you know? worry you? No, it doesn't worry me. It is what it is. This is the situation they put themselves into. The Warriors, that is. So, n eight eight nine five seven nine five seven zero. Let's get TC in Sacramento out here. You know what? Let's start the trash talk early. 
TC Sacramento, what's happening? Hey. Hey, man, listen, what's poppin'? Hey, first and foremost, what's up, Bonte and Shasky, man, my two bros. What up, my bro, man? What's going on? I don't know if we're hey, bros for the next uh, two hey, days. Hey, hey, Shasky, you, hey, hey, you, you, hey, listen, hey, you know what's going to turn up between today, bro, and tomorrow. Look, check it out. Listen, bro, the world wants to see this. I told y'all. The, the Kings Warriors, man, listen. But the, the world, listen, we, hey, look, y'all got us last year. We get y'all this year, bro. It's just, hey. This how the cookie crumbled, bro. We had a bad off season. Y'all was up and down like, hey, Bonte, I told you earlier, bro. It was just, it was a weird season for both of us, bro. Yep. But look where we at now. Yeah. Back in the playing game, bro. <laughs> Winner go home game, bro. It's going to be fired up. Hey, it's hey, Joe, let me ask you. Jesse, let me, TC. It's, it's fired up. Let me ask you. Talk it's Davion me. Mitchell. What's your thoughts on Davion Mitchell this season? Davion Mitchell, bro, stepped up this season for sure. Really? After all the criticism, bro. Listen, after all the, listen, lately, lately, listen, since month went down, I, I should say since month went down, yeah. Davion stepped up, and I promise you Davion going to get some tick. I promise you he ain't going to be on the on the bench tomorrow. He's going to be guarding Curry. Mike ain't going to make that mistake again, Bonte. All right, so off night will be on, huh? Off, listen, off night will be who, on. Who, who hey, off we? night going to be on, Bonte. Who are no, we I not don't. talking about? Who are Keon, we not talking I, I don't about? think we're talking enough about Keon okay, Ellis. Right. Keon Ellis is a problem. Yeah, Keon, hey, look, Keon don't be the sneaky one. Y'all got to watch out for him. But y'all got sneaky ones still on pods, you know, Trace Jackson. You know what I'm saying? We know where y'all coming from. Dre, listen, Draymond with the shenanigans. Hey, get out of here, TC. That's Draymond enough from you. Enough of you. Draymond enough of these kings. You feel a little too comfortable on this show. I ain't feeling a little too comfortable on this show. All right? The hell with the Kings. These one game. The hell with the Kings. These one game situations are. Oh my God! You gotta be first. That, 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 we're not, we're not even put that in the stratosphere. I'm getting arrogant here. Shout out to our friends at Flowing Water Plumbing and Drain. You don't bring it, and if you're a Kings fan and you don't bring it, you will get flushed Bonte, today. We're owing to the next two all time in these playing games. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the play has only been around for three years. I, and 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 all this. Right, is, what are you doing? I'm man. just telling you. Oh my God, History we never matters. won a playing game before. Oh my God, I'm just. Being ridiculously over the top arrogant against the nine. I'm going to be arrogant against the Kings. All right, I'm going to be arrogant in the one game scenario and have some fun with this. I'm not. The Kings have struggled. They were the three C last year. Okay, they're more disappointing than the Warriors. They went from three to nine. Three to nine. The Warriors were trying to last year. Don't forget, they were battling during the last week of the regular season. Did not make the. Did not be in the play in tournament. They had to fight tooth and nail just to not make the play in. The Kings are the three seed. That was last year, and this is this year. And they've dropped all the way to nine, so they've been more disappointing. They should be more disappointed about their regular season. So the season. team with the all-time highest payroll with, hey, with legendary players. Hey, man, we know what it is. Okay. We know what it is with the Kings, all right, man. I'll, I'll I'm listen not, to I'm that. Not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not showing these clowns no love, man. It's Sacramento. Tomorrow, <laughs> I'll build myself up for the game. Today, I'm... I'm fraught with anxiety. Yeah, I, I can tell. Uh, let's let's. let's Someone's get... got to be the realist on this show. No, yeah, okay. no, you're the worrier. That's all it is. RJ and Fair. The night the Warriors could have been seventy two and ten, and you'd have been. Oh my God, the West. Oh, oh, I, I just don't know. They're gonna get a week off, and they may get rusty. And oh my God. I, I know, know, I don't know if you know this. Championships are hard. The, the Shasky playbook. I got it down packed. Uh, RJ Fairfield, what's well, happening? I mean, if we're both arrogant, there's no show. <laughs> I mean, it's a secret sauce. Well, don't tell my guy. RJ, what's up, my man? Guy. What's up, RJ? Hey, hey, Bonte, you asked the question, one word to describe the season, and it's perfection, Bonte, because what has it gotten y'all right here in a one-game elimination game with the Kings? Perfection. I've been feasting for this. I've been waiting for this. This is our NBA championship. I don't care. What's going to happen in the season? I don't care about the playoffs. I, I care about this game. And nothing will bring me more joy to eliminate y'all in the playoffs, okay? And that dynasty, baby. All right, we remember the last year, what y'all said about us. Cowtown, Shasky, you call Sabonis a hollow man. Well, that hollow man is going to give you the people's elbow tomorrow, all right? So, hey, I'm just I'm a little nervous because just because y'all got momentum on y'all side, all right? But nothing will bring me more joy to watch uh, Warriors post game and seeing the tears on Bonte's face when we eliminate y'all. RJ, y'all RJ, real quick, no, 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 I'll stay, stay, stay. How are the Kings gonna win this game? Seriously, you, you, you know you're nervous. Oh. Hey, uh, hey, I think Bonte, you're more nervous than I. The pressure's on y'all. All right, y'all gotta <laughs> oh, make the next round. All right. Uh, 
Oh, right, please. Hey, hey, I'll tell you how we're going to beat y'all. Y'all got one player that scores a bunch of points, and that's Steph Curry, and we got the added, we got we got Keegan Murray to deal with that problem, all right? Keegan Murray going to lock him up. He's been defensively uh, one of our best players this whole season. Yes. And we got y'all, – y'all, y'all benefiting from the Malik. You, you lucky Malik Monk ain't playing because <laughs> – he destroys y'all every time, all right? January 2nd, November 28th. That's when we beat y'all, okay? So I'm a little nervous. I'm talking a little fast right now, but go ahead. All right, RJ. So I better hear from you. The, the one thing that does... Are you serious? The one thing that does worry me is that I, when I saw what the, the Pelicans did defensively, it just feels like it's been a... The book is out when it comes to how to defend Steph Curry in these in these fourth quarters. He's still going to hit unbelievable shots, and he's going to get his at times, right? But the blitzing where multiple guys, they're basically every team is saying, we'll let anyone else shoot the ball but you. And if Clay goes off, then Clay goes off fine. Let so be it. But like we are not going to let Steph Curry beat us. And I, I I hope that they have their their A game ready. I hope Draymond is ready to well, attack the basket because I think he's going to be the beneficiary of all of that. You know, focus on Dray on Steph Curry. Pretty funny, man. Because I don't believe Steph Curry had a great game Friday. The seven turnovers, yeah. obviously the second quarter Crazy shots though. But he was twelve of twenty three, seven and thirteen. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean, he was seven and thirty. It was actually one of his better shooting games post All Star break. And he almost willed him to a tie. Yeah, he but, almost willed him to to that in that game with thirty three points, five assists, four rebounds. And again, the raw data tells you it was a solid game. We all know that wasn't Steph Curry's A game. Was Probably wasn't even his B game. So frustrating, you know. But but teams they've been doing this for years on Steph Curry, where they take the longer defender, Herb Jones, Trey Murphy the third. Obviously tomorrow night it'll be Keegan. You'll get a little off night with Davion Mitchell. I even think you'll see a little Keon Ellis. That's where the others got to step up. Andrew Wiggins. Has to be on point. He's got to be buttoned up. He's got to be taken. He's got to get De'Ara Fox on the Wiggins Island and take him out. Shut his water off. Make sure he doesn't have two feet in the paint to pull up for that 15 mid race jumper. Sabonis, I, you know what? Sabonis, there's Draymond and Looney. Are you going to start Looney or are you going to start TJD? You're probably going to start TJD, but he may have a quick hook. Okay. May have a quick hook. Because I. I even though you've gone with TJD and it's worked really well, I think there is an argument to be said for Kavon Looney in this particular matchup. But the last time they played, I believe he got the best of Kavon. In the regular season. I mean, he um, had a couple of and ones. And, I it, mean, he, he had like 10 rebounds well, look, in the first it, quarter. Every, everything's magnified in, in the playoffs, obviously, possession by possession. And if you do start Looney, then you're going back to the two big lineup that struggled at times to get sacked in the first round of yeah. the playoffs last year. Yeah. You needed a lineup change to kind of flip that series where you went to the one big lineup instead of the two big well, lineup. When was the last time they played the Kings? January? Uh, it's been a while. Let me see. So, January. like, th I feel like TJD is a significantly more... January 25th. Yeah, I feel like he's he's more ingrained in what they're doing now than, yeah. than where he was back then. That was... What, three months ago? Yeah, wow. I mean, he feels like a totally ago. different player. And the Kings won 134 to 133. All right, Harrison Bard scored 39. You got Harrison Bard scored 39 in this game? Was that the game he hit all the threes early? Seven too? threes. Yeah. These one game play, like, you just never know what could happen. You just never know. Like, two possessions and boom, your whole season could be over. Let's go to. Uh... You know, foul trouble. Like, how are they going to officiate this game? Well, the Kings don't get a whistle. Did you hear Kyle Draper? Can you pull up that Kyle Draper sound for me? <laughs> what do you mean they don't get a whistle? <laughs> Sacramento doesn't get a whistle. They don't too much physicality whistle. in today's too much NBA. Physicality. Pull it up. Wait, Mike Brown. They're calling for too oh, much physicality. Oh, yeah. Mike, they said it's too the much. Team that that no, lowers the too, shoulder on yeah, every play. They, they say it's too much physical. Sabonis is crying. Yeah. Mike Brown is at the podium talking about foul calls, and we don't get foul calls. Might be the first time I've heard that take in like this era that it's too physical. Isn't this like the get, most unphysical get, era get in the, the history Kyle, of the sport? Get, get the Kyle Draper sound, please. We'll have so I guess tomorrow. both of these teams are just made for each other, right? Like we're just both going to whine our way to no, a victory. No, well, the Warriors don't whine. The Warriors, who's whining on the Warriors side? It's just fans. We're who's, always complaining about fouls. No, no, no. I mean, just, <laughs> do we not? Oh, we'll get the player, uh, the referee aside this week. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, when does that come out? Uh, probably tomorrow. Oscar and Stockton. Oscar, Yay! what's happening, man? They're You're sending the in Scott Foster. <laughs> hey, what's going on, fellas? What's up, Oscar? Oh, man, I hear sending 209 and all these fans. And, man, I can't believe all these Kings fans. You know, and they know I'm a Warrior fan, so everywhere I go, now they want to talk crazy. Like I told them, you guys are our B team. 
We are not afraid of no off night or light no beam. <laughs> That's what they don't understand. Like I say, man, we can we can go ahead and put the put the uh, the put the uh, not, not bad. We won't put it like this. The Warriors with Steph Curry. Everybody says Steph this, Steph that, but now the rest of our team has stepped up. Pods, TJD. We're not taking TJD out the starting lineup. If we do that, that's not going to benefit us. We need to stick to what we got and let the chips fall where they may. This is one reason why we brought in Chris Paul. And my word of the day is historical because for the Warriors to go 21 and 20 at home and flip on the road and go 25 and 16 where he was on the road and lose all these games close, that is the experience. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you right now, Steve Kerr, is, this is the reason he's got that $17 million contract. But he's one game situations. I don't care what nobody say. The Warriors are set up to win this game. I'm not moving on to the next game because we go going one game at a time. I'm and not. people can't step out. Don't count stuff out, man. This is the game. And this for all the, the Kings fans, it won't be lighting no beam. You'll be lighting a flashlight. Well, Go Warriors. <laughs> How's Steph's ankle after that that little like turn? Because that, that was not... It was not a good turn. No! But he finished that game. Uh, and I think he'll be fine. I don't think... I mean... I, he'll be fine. The ankle, like the whole yeah. shoe rolled. The fact that he finished the game puts me in good spirits okay. about Stephen Curry's availability. If that ankle is messed up or jacked up, I don't think he finishes that game. I mean, we're so late in the season, we're probably not going to hear the real, real on it anyway. Yeah, I mean, but I, I do worry about that that ankle, man. <laughs> How could you not? That the whole thing turned sideways. Cameron and Hediak, you are a jewel, man. What? You really are. What? Are you, what? Cameron and Hediak, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> no, hold on, Cameron. Are hold you on. calling from a hold submarine? On. Hold on. I just I can't get over the Shasky worry. Because last week it was, man, did you see Pod Pods hit the ground? I was worried he got hurt. I'm like, man, what does it worry but, you? But wait, time out. Kaminga hits the ground, gets hurt, and he misses a crucial <laughs> game that they lose, which if they won, they're but in the 7-8 seed. you weren't worried about Kaminga dropping. So you worried about Pods dropping. All these dropping. things matter. <laughs> I mean, like, stop come worrying. on. Jesus Christ, stop worried about everything. God, oh, you worry about everything. Man, if little LJ bumps his head, are you going to be worried he has a concussion? It's going to happen. Things happen. Cameron and Antioch, what's happening? What's up? What's up? Good morning, man. What's up? But, uh, yeah, my word is insanity. Because it's insane that Kerr got an extension when he got us losing all these close games with these 15, 12-point leads. It's insane that after all this time, Kerr is still playing three, four guard lineups where we're getting killed on defense, taking TJD out in crucial moments. He said it himself. He, like, he keeps making so many mistakes. It's insane that what the greatest player ever keeps doing dumb turnovers behind the back. Like, come on, Steph, you better than that. Like, you got, you got to stop doing that. Like, Kerr with these rotations, these – playing CP3, Paz, and Curry at the same time. Like, come on, man. Play some lightweight traditional basketball. TJD, Looney, keep them as big. Keep switching them out. Looney was ran through the ground. You see he got some rest. He doing his thing. He he, he active. He, getting, he doing his thing. So, like, we could win. We could go all the way if Kerr just handle his business and keep these stupid rotations out of his mind. There's no reason CP3 should ever close a game. That's what Curry is for. When CP3 went down, Curry was going crazy. And Steve Kerr talking about CP3 is going to unlock Curry. No, Curry don't need no CP3 to unlock. He, he do it himself. <laughs> CP3 is great. Thanks, Kev. Good call. All right, all right. Good so call, I wrote down all the words people have been throwing out yeah. there. Just for a quick summary of what we've had thus far. <laughs> yes. You asked for one word to describe. This one regular word. season, one word. survival, yep. TBD, frustrating, erratic, development, stressful, mysterious, ageism, emotional, historical, insanity. And yours was? Imperfect. Imperfect. I'm going to add that to the list. I still don't think we've nailed it. No, there's a lot of words. There's a lot of words out there. 
There's a lot of words out there. Uh, JK, career high in assists yesterday. Career high in assist. Uh, CP3 is not the closer. Well, you're going to make, you may need him to close it sometimes. To I have a hard time to, thinking that CP3 right, is not going to be heavily right. involved in a fourth quarter of a play in game. Right. Where it's literally, it's basically a game seven. No doubt. And CP3's been through the wars. He's been through the wars. Let's go to Woodson, Florida. Then we'll get the Oreo cookie and Alan San Pablo. Uh, Woodson, what's happening? You're on hey, the roast. Hey, you guys almost got me in trouble at work a couple of days because I wanted to call in, but I, I can't because I don't get so hyped watching you guys. Listen, you guys are great. You guys have a great show. Thank but you. But listen, here's the situation. I'm calling Florida. They might not. I'm a Celtic fan living out here, but I see you guys are hating on Clay a lot. Well, some of the fans, you guys have a he's, – he's playing a new role in the team, and I don't think everybody's messing up with it, but he takes the brunt of the problems on the team. And the thing is, I don't think he's lear learned – fully his role yet, but he's doing really good. And I've noticed that you, a lot of you Golden State fans really want to jump off Clay Thompson. And any other team in the league would love to oh, have him. Trust me, I know. Because he's not washed. <laughs> and I see a lot of people, and, and listen, I like you guys. I'm having my morning coffee right now. How you doing, babe? How you doing? Some thanks. <laughs> please, <laughs> please clip that. But uh, listen, I had to take a day off to call you guys. Thank you, Woodson. Woodson, Woodson, you Woodson, trying Woodson. to get a date? Was what that was a going on there? Hey, was that a cutie right there, yeah, Woodson? Yeah, what's going on? Hey, no, no. No, that was me picking up my McDonald's uh, at the drive through Oh, okay. Where you at? You in my, what part of Florida are you in? Oak. I'm in Boca. I can't say too much because they'll know me out here. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to get you. Yeah, yeah. What what's the order? order? What's the order? What's the order? <laughs> oh, two hash browns and my morning coffee. I'm not mad at that. Sugar. I love that. No, but listen, I love your show. I really love your guys' show. Thank you. Might get me in trouble Can I ask you a question? Hey, hey, no, but I'm not trying to get you in trouble, sure. man. Yeah, you're in Boca. Have Have you seen Doug Peterson or Lane Kiffin waltzing around as single men in Boca Raton? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I can't get involved with in that. That sounds personal. Especially like some of your uh, callers before. There are a lot of them are emotional right now, but they don't realize it's happening. Golden State, I'm rooting for you guys, even though I'm a Celtic fan, but that's all I can say. All right, what's it? <laughs> that was a great call. This guy's like undercover in Boca. Hey, he's on there, so he might be part of the mob, man. He might be part of the mob. Come he on, said man. he took the day off of work. And he's at McDonald's. It was great. Thank you, baby. <laughs> well, he, With his two hash browns? With two hash browns. Hey, McDonald's hash browns do go. Cream and sugar are. at the coffee? I, they I haven't are been there in a long time. And, uh, you know, one thing that I have to say <laughs> is Boca is where all of the newly divorced dads go to take their boat out onto the water. Yeah. And that's why Doug Peterson got caught there, and so did Lane Kiffin. That's why right. Uncle June went down there, too. Yeah, like Doug Uncle Peterson June. Doing what? He got caught just right in his boat? Well, there were a lot of these, you know. Wait, cheating or? Uh, let's just put it that. Um, wait, wait, what do you put? What do you put out there? So ask I'm not following. Well, here. Lane Kiffin admitted that he got the sunburn in Boca Raton. Okay, but he's single, right? Well, now he is. Yeah, he was divorced at the time. Oh, but he was not. Well, he, there was he, just a lot going Tony on. Soprano I don't on? think it was finalized. Let's oh, put it that way. Oh, was getting it Tony might have been Soprano in on. the works. Oh, he was estranged. Yeah, <laughs> he was estranged. So, so Doug Peterson saved did he? Well, Doug just looks like Boca Raton. Oh, all right. So it's the visor. It's the visor. It's the visor. It's got to be the visor. Be careful, man. It's the visor. These guys clip us, dude. And not everyone fine. is Urban Meyer, right. Joe Shasky. Yeah, I know. Like, don't, yeah, don't, don't do that. I'm not. I'm not involved in that. I don't know what's going on with Doug. I P. still can't believe Doug Urban living his life. I still can't believe Urban <laughs> Meyer did that. It was the grab <laughs> off, off a flight. Right. They took an L. He went straight to a bar. His like bar. Twenty-year-old girl yeah, in the restaurant. Like, like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, Dougie P, leave him alone, man. Like, when you out here getting in people's business, man, leave it alone. If Doug gonna, P, I'm, I'm, we're gonna get fired because of shows to ask you one day. Leave Doug P alone. He's doing what Doug Peterson down. I'm not getting into what he's doing in Bunker Raton. I don't know what's going on here. Uncle Why June, are you doing this? That's a great call. On Why Uncle are June. you doing this? Oreo cookie, Oakland. Get us back on track here. What word to describe <laughs> the Warriors' regular season? Jeez, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, my one word is blunder. Uh, the reason why I use that because it goes with Steve Kerr uh, his job this year. I don't get how you guys were praising him uh, about an hour back, giving him credit for these moves where all these moves were done just out of necessity. Uh, it took uh, you know that one guy to <laughs> that one guy, but it took him to complain to the media to get some playing time. Uh, the rookie that came in, man, he took. An injury and Draymond Green to get out of the lineup for him to start. 
please, I don't want to see that pods, dude, come in no more. Let him come off the bench. Give those minutes to CP3, and let's go, baby. All right. Well, so Steve Kerr. All right, then we take it to Steve Kerr. One word to describe his job this year. Since a lot of people are indifferent on Steve Kerr, I see a lot of – so during the game, Shask, mm-hmm, it has mm-hmm, been therapeutic mm-hmm. for me. I don't tweet a lot. I don't look at Twitter a lot during a basketball game anymore. Just kind of watching the game okay. and write my notes down yeah, and write my stats yeah. down and everything. Yeah. But I did go on Twitter Saturday morning, and the algorithms were so jacked up where it has the for you or following or whatnot. For some reason, it's always for you. Mm. And it's just nonstop slander. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why slander's for me. I'm not a negative guy. Negative guy. I like to think positive. But people were hammering Steve Kerr. Hammering him. I mean, not to mention Jim Park. It is insanity. I mean, it was just... For those that... Like, who, who is Jim Park? He's some dude who tweets nonsense about Steve Kerr. Okay. I mean, just like vitriol. Just, I, and I didn't realize how many people felt about Steve Kerr. Not, look, he admitted. Should have paid TJD a little bit more. But... It's also, I understand, like, his job is so difficult because you have so many players that are not consistent. How do you figure out a so, solid rotation here where you're like, I could bank on this guy game in and game out. I could bank on this guy game in and game out. The inconsistencies of the players have led to inconsistent rotations. Well, And also their, their status or hierarchy within the organization is a big part of things. So, like... To think that they're just going to not play GP2 for weeks on end, like that's not going to happen. Yeah. Steph and Dre and those guys, like they like GP2. So there's going to be a role for them. You know, demoting Kavon Looney the way they did, that took a long time. And you owe a little something to a Kavon Looney to allow him to see if he can play himself right. back into the into favor, to tinker with Clay Thompson in his minutes. Like, I, so the word that I would use to describe, you know, Steve Kerr's season is actually underrated. Yeah. I think he had an underrated year. I, I agree. I think he had a lot of, you know, role parts that he had to use as starring players on this team. And I think given everything that happened this year with availability and, you know, the tinkering of the starting lineups, and everything, I thought he squeezed the lemon pretty that, well. That's what I'm okay, saying. Okay, we could argue and, and about he, a couple and, of and, situational and look, games here and there, but. He played the young guys. Was this all, a, no, was listen, it, what was the talk last year? We wanted him to play the young guys. We wanted to play the young guys. Well, this year he played the young guys. I, Pods played a lot of minutes. Fifth most on the team. <laughs> you know? Fifth most. TJD started 11, 12 straight games. Yes. He started to see minutes. Kaminga started 29 straight games. So, like, he played the young guys. It's just when you have inconsistencies and guys are in and out of the lineup, think about how how much we bragged about that Milwaukee game. Wow, it's the first time they've been healthy since November 28th. They've not been wholesome all season long. Let's remove Steve Kerr. Whoever you think in your mind is the greatest head coach of all time, and I'll you can insert whoever you want or just make it p- Coach X, greatest coach of all time. What do they get? 49 wins out of this team? Maybe 50? 51? This isn't like, like we, we act like this is a 60-win roster and, you know, Steve Kerr's sitting here with 46, 47 right. wins. Like, I'm, I'm asking you, Bonte. Again, well, I don't know how many because the lineups were not consistent. You have 27 different starting lineups. Why? Because guys are in that. When Draymond Green misses over 25 games, you get Andrew Wiggins. It consistently plague, gets yeah. hurt, yeah, misses yeah. a few games. Steph actually played the most regular season games. He's played it since he was 28 years old. Uh, Clay Thompson played 77. But there's a lot of, and then you got youngsters who, they're learning how to play the NBA. There's going to be growing pains. So at some point, you got to pull the plug on them. At some point, you're like, can I really close with this guy? He's been inconsistent, but how can I not go to Wiggins? You know, it's just so many baked in, so many things that it happened, so many variables and moving parts that the win 46 games with this roster, I'm not mad at Steve Kerr. I think the the extension is deserved. I think for what he's had to deal with, and, and we talk about this all the time with the finishing lineup. We know Steph and Dre are going to finish. That's baked in. That's sold. But what about the other three spots? It's all over the place. Based on form, availability, matchup. Like, there's like 50 different, you know, ways that I could break that down. Exactly. I just don't see that. And again, someone could disagree with me. But I do not see this Warrior team as a 55-win team. Now, can we argue about the three-game difference between the 6th seed and the 10th seed? Absolutely. But I would put as much on the actual players as I would on the head coach. Yeah. 
Because I thought the, the players let the coach down at times, whether it so, was poor execution or availability or whatever you want to pick. So 510, Xfinity Mobile text line. Bonte, you're wrong. Inconsistent players are due to inconsistent rotations. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. There, there may be something. I think a lot of people agree with the 510 that the inconsistencies are due to the rotations and not knowing what the rotation is going to be like. I don't know. Let's go to uh, Al in San Pablo. Al, what's happening? You're on the roast. Hey, good to talk to you guys. Um, I would describe the Warriors season as mediocre. Mm. And I do agree with both of you about Steve Kerr. I would describe his uh, situation, his quality of adaptability. I mm. think he was perhaps the most adaptable coach that we could have had. In fact, without his adaptability, the words may not even be the 10th seed. They could be out of the play yet. Mm. But I did want to ask you a question about tomorrow's game and just a general, Bonte, because I know being with those um, NBA players uh, on your show, when it comes to turnovers, <clears throat> Um, I know the Warriors have a lot of turnovers, but there is a plus and minus because the other team have turnovers too. So um, when it comes to shot attempts, what is more important, the number of turnover differential Ooh. or the number of shot attempts that, differential? That, that's a great question. And how question. will that affect tomorrow's game, you think? Yeah, that's a great question. That is a great question. And I've learned about shot attempts from just Mully. I hadn't really paid attention to it as much as I have the last four years working with Mully and Fezzi and Darrell, right? Shot attempts are huge. Huge. You look at you look at the shot attempts they had against Portland, right? Which is why the Portland win was not a good win, as Steve Kerr talked about it. Portland had 20 more shot attempts. 97 to 77. You got Steph Curry, and you got Klay Thompson, you got Chris, Chris Paul, and you got Kaminga, and Wig, you got all these guys. You want to get as many shots up as possible, so turnovers allows you, or the turnovers... Uh, enables you to take a lot of shots. It takes away shots for you. That's less possessions for you when you do turn the ball over. But when these teams are getting 20 more shots up, you're you're asking to lose the game. You're asking. You cannot win basketball games consistently by getting 20 fewer shot attempts than opponents. Now, some of that has to do with pace of play. Some teams play a little slower, and I get it. You don't want the Warriors running up and down. But when you turn the ball over, it does lead to less shot attempts. And that's a bad thing. That's a terrible thing. Even Friday night. Friday night, you look at the Warriors and they're humming, and they had 16 turnovers, but they take four less shots to the Pelicans. Why? Because you turn the ball over too damn much. So it kind of goes hand in hand there. But shot attempts is a really intriguing stat that nobody talks about enough. I would when the agree. team When a team takes 10 or 15 yeah. more shots than you, that's a bad thing. Well, and they're usually getting second chance points and second chance rebounds. Like, But, but here's where I always fall down on these. Like, What's it look like? How many times have you watched the Warriors in the last three or four years? Just the last three or four. And you're like, oh, there's 40 seconds. And Fitz is like, you get a two for one here. You get a two for one here. And it's like, yeah, mathematically makes total sense. Yet the Warriors never execute the two for one properly because they take a poor, poor shot on the front end yep. and then give up a bucket on the other end and then don't get a good shot on the back end. So um, I'm glad you rushed you know, one of those possessions because you didn't get anything out of it. It's an empty calorie. And then it's a long rebound, and now we're going in the other direction for an easy bucket. So, like, I lose my mind on some of those, like, yeah. two-for-one scenarios, yeah, which no. every every mathematical person is like, two-for-one, two-for-one. Yeah, I'm like, but it's all about getting a good shot. It's all about getting a better shot. Get the good shot. If the good shot is not available, don't take it. Don't force up the shot just to force up the shot. But they do it. But they literally, they they like, if I looked at their efficiency in the two for one situation, I would love to. I would love to. Have I that bet it's down. not good. I would love to have that breakdown. Let's go to uh, Tyler and Oakley. Tyler, what's happening? You're on a roast. Hey, good morning, guys. Just real quick. Um, yeah, I mean, who would you rather have besides Steve Kerr? To all these crybabies saying he's a terrible coach. I mean, before him, the zenith was Mark Jackson, right? Yeah. Everybody thought he was a great coach. And these same people. We're saying he was a good coach. And then the guy saying that the rotations are inconsistent. I'm sorry, but you're a professional athlete. Like, he should be ready to go like Kavon Looney when he's called upon. So I don't care. I don't want to hear about that. You can't. Turnovers are on the players. Defense is on the players. Like, I tell my kids who play basketball, you can, you can shoot. You can be great on offense. If you want to be a great player and you want to get your playing time, you play defense. And – 
I'm sorry. They just, they haven't been doing it this year. It's been too inconsistent. And I think that's kind of the word for the season for me is just inconsistent. I mean, one day, one game, they look, you know, like they could be a top, top three team, right? They can, they played with Denver, right? They lost on a fluke buzzer beater by Jokic, right? That's, it happens. And then they go to Portland and they lay an egg. They got lucky to walk out of Portland with that win. There's a chance that, I mean, they lose to Portland and then, I mean, it's just, it, you can't, inconsistencies on the players. Yeah, yep. you can blame the coach. You can blame Kerr with his stubbornness, not want to play younger guys sometimes. That is on him, right? That's about the only right. thing I could really say. Like, man, we should have played these young guys sooner. But right. other than that, that's it, man. You guys love the show. Uh, looking forward. Hopefully, uh, Wednesday morning's a good drive home for it, or drive home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so too, Tyler. I hope so too. Good call. Kurt, Daryl, Horace, we'll get to you on the other side. Lot, lot going on here. How, how would you describe Steve Kerr's season as head coach of the Golden State Warriors? I think he did a damn good job. I really do. 46 and 36, despite not having, how many games was this lineup wholesome? Five? Seven? Eight? I mean, seriously. When you don't have consistency in terms of availability from your players, how can you be a consistent head coach in terms of your rotations? That's one thing I want to try to figure out on the show today. So how would you evaluate Kerr's season? Also, one word to describe the regular season for the Go to State Warriors. We're getting a lot of words here, a lot of words. Chemistry, I'm seeing a couple here. Facade from the 408. A lot going on here on the road. But we do know they're playing the Sacramento Kings tomorrow night. <laughs> Kyle Draper. Maybe it'll get too physical out there tomorrow night. All right, let's get to the injury report. <laughs> ow, ow. Boy, oh boy. The Oakland A's are on fire. That closer went from throwing 94 95 as a regular pitcher yeah. and then has now just blowing straight shed. Miller, it's unreal. His Miller, development. Miller. Yeah. What's his name? Mac Miller? Yeah. Mason Miller. Mason Mason Might Miller. as well call him Mac Miller. Yeah, I want to call him. I, I want to call him but Mac Miller. But he's blowing 102, 103. I mean, yeah, it's, he's it's crazy. And I was, anyway, keep going. He is nasty. Anyway, the A's have won three straight series. And they announced that designated hitter Britt Rooker started full body workouts on Friday. Rooker was placed on the IL last week with a rib injury that he suffered in their series victory over the Tigers. Rooker's IL stint officially started Thursday, but all indications are that he will be back on the field as soon as his stint on the IL is over. So the A's are getting healthier. They've got a better record than the Giants so far. Go figure. Giants get smoked at Tampa Bay. They lose two oh or three. God. That's two straight series losses for the Giants here at Miami, taking on the Marlins this week. The injury report brought to you by Boxer Girls in Northern California's premier workers' compensation law firm, helping get your workers get their lives back for over 40 years. What is coming up in the game? Brought to you by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. We got your calls coming up. Kurt, Daryl, Horace, and the rest of you stay on hold. We'll get to everybody here on the other side, here on the roast on 95-70 game. Have you been wanting to find a secret to...
Tim Jordan, wake up! It's playoff time! Fix some things around here, TJ. Morning, everybody out here. Get after the graveyard shift, TJ, man. The rail station's going down the drain. You're just sitting here laughing. Got a fire in the studio. Call 911. Uh, anyway, shout out to YouTube and Twitch. Shasky, what's up? Wake up, baby. Playoffs. Shout out to YouTube and Twitch. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class money market today. And you can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we have added the QR code on both pages. Xfinity to Mobile text line. Shout out to everybody out there getting out their graveyard shift. Uh, Monday. It's a Monday on the roast. My favorite day of the week. People don't believe me. Steiny Guru do not believe that Mondays are my favorite day. You know why? It sets the damn tone for the week. You have a good Monday. Cruising the rest of the week. It sets the tone. I would agree. And when I'm looking at this Warrior season, Bonte, it's I'm very conflicted <laughs> uh, because on one level, like, hey, we're here. It's the playoffs. Even though they're not in the playoffs, they're in the play-in, and you get to face the Kings. And I'm excited for that because I just I love high stakes anything in sports, especially a do or die, winner go home, whatever cliche you want to throw at it. And we're here. We're finally here. We wait all year to get to this moment. But on another level, I'm extremely frustrated because I can nitpick a moment here, yeah. a moment there. This happened. That happened. They didn't execute there. Um, a, some other guy on another team hits an unbelievable game winner. You know, Jokic, for example. So many little games. One more game, they're in the 7-8 seed. One more after that, and we would have had an opportunity to be in that six hole, right? So it's just like, gosh, the woulda, coulda, shoulda. I'm grinding my teeth here because I'm extremely frustrated. And so I feel like this year was a grab bag of results because there's so many things to be excited about, B. Yeah. Like so many good things happened this year. And yeah, a lot of bad things happen too. But there's a lot of good stuff. And now we get to face the Kings in a winner go home situation. And that brings its own level of anxiety. No. <laughs> the season series, uh, Kings Warriors tied at two games apiece. The Warriors were the first two games of the season against Sacramento. Um, the last three contests between the Warriors and Kings have all come down to a single point. November 1st, 2023, Warriors beat the Kings 102 to 101. November 28th, up in Sacramento, Kings rally from a 24 point deficit. They win 124 to 123. I believe Chris Paul left that game with a hamstring injury, GP2, calf. Um, he was playing really well. And then this January 25th, 2024, the Kings won by one at Chase Center, 134 to 133, which Harrison Barnes, I believe, scored a career high 30. Nine points and hit seven threes in that game. So last three matchups between the Kings and the Warriors have all come down to a single point. A single point. Now, was it physical? Here's the mindset of the Sacramento Kings. Here's Kyle Draper Friday night on NBC Sports California. I love him. I love Morgan. Morgan Reagan is going to join us uh, at 920 to talk about this and the Kings and the Warriors and what she was doing on the set when Kyle Draper went off talking about the physicality of the NBA. Here's where Sacramento's head's at. They keep bringing up the refs. Even Davion Mitchell yesterday. It's like, you know, hopefully the referees let us play and blah, blah, blah. So I'm worried about the refs, Sacramento. Here's Kyle Draper Friday night. The NBA has a problem right now, ladies and gentlemen. And we had Tim Kempton on the radio today. The physicality has gotten out of control. It is not basketball that's being played right now in the NBA. It is bully ball out there. The NBA has gone too far the other way. Like, this is this is not fun to watch. Tim Kempton said it. And this is a guy that played in the 90s, played bad boys, pistons, and all that. And for what I saw out there tonight, and it's not against Sacramento, Sacramento. It's not against Phoenix. It's against both teams. The NBA has to clean that up. I think there's too much physicality out there. And then to adjust to it middle of the season, I just don't like this brand of NBA basketball. It is not enjoyable to watch because so many times guys are getting fouled. They're throwing their hands up, sure. rightfully so, and these refs are swallowing the whistle. They're so-called letting the players decide on the floor. Uh-uh. A foul is a foul is a foul. <laughs> Make the calls, officials. So and this is not about Kings didn't get the whistle. That's not basketball out there, guys. <laughs> so... <laughs> There's so much to pick up. 
fart. <laughs> so I love Dre for me. <laughs> that dope. was Friday night? That was Friday night. Because I flipped over after the Warrior game to the, the Kings Sons, Sons yeah. to watch the, the, the final whatever, right. however many minutes of it, four minutes of it, five minutes of it. I didn't come away with that take. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> but again, I didn't watch the whole game, so right. maybe I missed stuff. No, no, they've been complaining about fouls for a few months now up in Sacramento. And I get it. Sacramento doesn't get respect because they're the Kings, and that's wrong. They should get respect. As any of the Kings have a good two year run here. Very good. They got some nice young but assets. Is that why, like, but, this thing but, that but we're the not whole too physical? Yeah. What would you rather watch? Teams jack up 60 to 70 threes a game, not playing no defense, and the scores being 149 and 148? Would you like a little physicality? But we the, need some physicality back in the game. The irony of your one of your best players who drops his shoulder on every offensive possession and you saying that it's too physical. I mean, yeah. come on, dog, read the room. I mean, it's a bonus. Come on, Drapes. I mean, I've been doing this a little longer than, you know, some people, but, like, I don't pretend right. to know every little detail. Oh, oh. But, dog, Wait, like, when your number one culprit Wait. on your team is Sabonis, who literally initiates contact oh, on every play, on. Let, maybe let, you should read the room. Let me stand corrected. We got the stickler of words. Matt Simons chiming in here. What's what it? Why? It ain't the playoffs yet. All right, it's the play a tournament. Sorry, Steiny. Well, but but if you, it's a winner go home game. Well, I mean, so the stakes are high. Can, can I be honest <laughs> with with you? I, I think he could call it not the playoffs. I think it is because we have wild card games in baseball to qualify into the playoffs and get into the divisional round. Well, Seriously. the wild card round is the playoffs. It's right? the postseason. This whole thing is the postseason. There we go. Thank That's you. What I call. Like, and the way I look at it, people are like, well, when they're in the playoffs, they never lose. This was up until last year. They never lose. I was like, well, all right. You could say when they're healthy, but they did lose to I to me. They lost to those were playoff games to me. The Lakers and the Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah. People can disagree. Fine. I thought those were playoff games, and they lost them both. Let's go to. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. I'm sure Steiny go did to the word police, though. I mean, Jesus. Daryl in Oakland. Daryl in Oakland. You're on the roast. You're on 95.7K. What's up, Daryl? Hey, what's up, guys? Good morning. You know, uh, there's an extra uh, little up to the uh, Warriors in Sacramento because Vivek is helping out my uh, nemesis, John Fisher, a little bit. And uh, I'm not too stoked about that. I'm a native East Bay guy, and I really, really despise John Fisher. And, uh, you know, I really would like the Warriors to just add that little extra chip on their shoulder to just beat down the Kings and say, Vivek, you, you, you screwed around with the wrong community. And as, as far as the coaches go, I think Steve Kerr did a great job. I think Warriors need to remember uh, the era uh, uh, of, like, uh, Dave Cowens when he had the second wave come in and how horrific that was. Uh, uh, Steve Kerr's done a much better job. The only thing that I would say is, uh, what are we going to do with Moses Moody? He's way too good to be on the bench. He was the most consistent bench player day in and day out, and I feel like if he played the entire year, we might have won one or yeah. two more games instead of Clay Thompson, but that's just my take. Yeah, I don't know if he was the most consistent off the bench. I go to Chris Paul as the most consistent. Off the bench, I, Pods is pretty consistent. TJD became pretty consistent. I, here's what I was thinking about with Moses Moody. It happened Friday night. Trey Murphy the third won 17 overall in that 2021 NBA draft. Moses Moody went 14. JK went seven. When Trey Murphy the third was getting ready for his, you know, he was going through all this pre-draft workouts. He was in the Bay Area, and he was here early in the Bay Area. He was here for about three or four days. And even before his workout, he just kept coming to Chase Center, getting in work, getting in work, getting in work, getting up shots. Guy wanted to be a warrior. And if you ask members at an organization today about Trey Baker III, they will bang their head against the wall. A lot of people in that organization love Trey Baker III, loved him. Well, he went 17, Moses Moody went 14. So I started thinking about it. Even more so Friday night as Trey Murphy III is hitting three after three. And he went six to 12 against Sacramento last Thursday. And you saw what he did last Friday at Chase Center. If they're not going to play Moses Moody, damn. Could have used Trey Murphy III and developed him who's longer, who's probably a better defender at this stage of his career and is more of a threat offensively than Moses Moody is right now. Now, Moses Moody could be a better player than Trey Murphy III. We just haven't seen it yet because he hasn't gotten consistent playing time. Now, the cynic... And people on the other side would say, boy, Trey Murphy the third would have played with the go to say Warriors. I don't know. Kid's a player. Kid's a player. You're saying you think he would have played with the Warriors? I just think I just think about that draft. I'm just like, boy, Trey Murphy the third fits 
better with the Warriors than Moses Moody does from what I've seen from Moses Moody right now. But I don't know sure, if I've seen sure, everything okay. from Moses Moody okay. because he hasn't had consistent playing time. No doubt. I mean, like I'm just looking at the totals here. I'm just giving you the raw, the raw stuff. Like his second year in the league, he had almost 2,500 minutes. You know, like I'm looking at Kaminga total minutes logged the last two years, and I mean. He doesn't even eclipse 2,000 minutes in any of those seasons. Is that 2,500 is Trey Murphy from third? In the second season, yeah. yes. In his second. So now, he got, got hurt this lot. year, yep. so he he's, doesn't have as many minutes as he did last year. But to your point, like he, yeah, he played a lot last year. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he would be. I don't know. Maybe he would earn Just, the trust more in practice and he'd play more. Because I'm surprised by how much Pajemski's played this year. Yeah, no doubt. And, and clearly he's shown them something. Now, maybe they've philosophically changed, pivoted, but he's been very productive. Trey Murphy the third is 6'8". He's 6'8". And see about times getting switched on to Steph Curry. He doesn't look intimidated at all. Played 30 minutes a game this year. Played 31 minutes a game last year. Takes about 11 shots a game. Last year, he averaged 14 and a half points per game. This year, nearly 15. Last year, shot 41 from three. This year, 38 from three. I mean, he's At good. Least, I mean, you know, we could talk about Moses Moody all we want to, but I kept thinking like, damn, a lot of people in that organization love Trey Baker for the third. And now you're seeing Moses Moody, he's out of the rotation. It's hard for me to envision Trey Murphy for the third being out of the rotation who, who's with he this team with the go to say Warriors. Who's he playing ahead of? Well, well who knows current. if they even draft pods if Trey Murphy for the third is here? It's so many okay. hypotheticals and so many moving but parts. But like last year, really... like let's then let me just real quick, like because it is an interesting. Like I I haven't thought of it that way, and I probably should. Like last year, he was going to play in front of Clay or Jordan Poole. No, but Moses Moody did get a lot of playing time in the playoffs, especially against the L.A. Lakers. He played. Okay. And Andrew Wiggins was a little bit consistent. I was thinking more of the regular season, yeah, but so, I, I get, okay. You know All what right. I'm saying? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's too many hypotheticals. You draft differently. Maybe you sign free agents differently. We don't know. We, we, it's just, it's hard to tell, but just going back to that pre-draft process, I know a lot of people in that organization love Trey Burke for the third. And you watch him play Friday and look at where he's at in his career. Mm -hmm. He's so much farther along than Moses Moody. Oh, like it's, it's not, not even, even close. Yeah, it's not even. It's not, not even close. It's not up for discussion. What would what some people and again he's able to play through his mistakes. I think that's a big deal. You're down to New Orleans. Expectations are low. Moody gets drafted to a championship team. There's not a lot of minutes available for you. So I get all that because I would love to see what Moses. I don't know. I don't know what he evolves into. I'd like to see Moses Moody in a situation where he does get 2,500 minutes right. a year. Right. That would be great. Just to see what he is. Because, look, he might not, he might still be a seventh, eighth, ninth man on a team or more. I don't know. I know there are a lot of people that really think highly of Moses Moody. And I think there's been a, a general just frustration with him not having a specific role carved out in general. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's a first, and that's what frustrated me about Friday. I'm watching Trey Murphy the third. Just I'm watching a warm up before the game. I'm like, wow, look at that stroke. And Corey Brewer's child. Corey Brewer's now one of the assistant coaches with the Pelicans. So he's getting on Trey Murphy the third. He's like, I dare you to make six in a row. You can't make six in a row. You can't make six in a row. And he missed a couple. Then I think he ended up making six in a row. But he's just like challenging. And he played 42 minutes. That was last night. Let me pull up his game log from uh, Friday. Yeah, 42 minutes Friday night against the Warriors. Eight of 12 from the floor. Eight of 12. Six of nine. He played the most minutes on the Pelicans. Six of nine for the three point line. Twenty four points, eight rebounds. That's big boy production. That's big boy production from Trey Murphy the third. So I just think I, I just during that game I was just like, damn, the Warriors are not playing Moody. He's out of the rotation, and Trey Murphy the third is out here soaring in back to back games in Northern California, and he's had a very good season, a very good two year stretch. I don't know. It's just. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know about Moody. Let's go to uh, Horace in Texas. Horace, what's happening? You're the roast. Oh, good morning, fellas. You guys all right? Yeah, we're doing. I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Shasky's doing well too. Good, good to hear. Good to hear. Hey, man. Um, Steve Kerr, uh, his grade. I'm gonna give him a B as in Bravo, man. Maybe even a B plus, man. Um, I, I think you know everybody needs to improve, you know. Uh, but he's not that bad. I think he's done an excellent job. Uh, I'm not all that happy with the rotations all the time. But, you know, we're sitting there watching the games, drinking wine and stuff. He's out there making it happen. He knows what he's doing. So he deserves the contract. I give him a B plus. Uh, as far as the team overall, mediocre, bro. Mediocre. And, and Shasky, I agree with you as far as players need to pony up 
and and take more responsibility for the team's uh, performance, man, and, and not all on the coaches, man. I've, I've been watching the NBA since the mid-60s, man, and I've seen players quit on coaches. I've seen players get coaches fired for no reason. I've seen players not show up, and uh, it, it, it falls on the coach too much. And the, the players need to the, need to need to pony up and and accept more of the responsibility. It's probably not going to change because players have all the control now. But that's why I like Kobe and Jordan and guys like that because they never made excuses talking about what they didn't have. Hey, they tried to do what they could to make things better. Yeah. And I say, can I say one thing about yep. uh, about the, the the physicality? Yeah. Real quick. No, absolutely. Physical physicality in the game, you know, I don't really have a problem with how physical any team plays. All I ask is that the refs just call it even. Call it on both ends, and then, and then the players will adjust to the physicality. Don't be doing all this whining. Just The only time I think you can whine about it is if the referees are not calling it on both ends. Mm. So that's my take. What you guys think? No, I would agree with you, but... You know, something Rick Barry said a decade ago sticks in my head, and it, it it's altered however I've watched the NBA. In general, they've called the game a certain way for six months, four months, five months, and then playoff time, everything changes. And Rick would always get just furious at how much grabbing off ball they allow on Clay and Steph Curry. And I obviously started paying more and more and more attention to all of that, and he's right. And his frustration was, look, I've learned to play a certain way for three, four, five months, and then well, just because the calendar switches to a different date, you, right. you allow the physicality to crank up to a level that's not right. not basketball off ball. Like how That's very difficult to adjust to as a player. Um, and so that's why you see certain guys in the playoffs, their production takes a taper. Yep. Um, so... I agree with the physicality within the game being consistent on both ends is a big problem, just in general. Moses Moody, I, I keep going back. I agree. Why with is you that? With it. The Moses Moody thing, it's very complex to me because he hasn't gotten the consistent minutes, but this fan base is clamoring for him. They just want to see him. So a lot of people with Dub Nation who represent the team or root for this team, do they believe that Moody can have a pop like Kaminga? Is he a guy who could give you 20 a game? I can shoot. You say pop like Kaminga. You and I agree that Kaminga's taking a big leap forward. I'm not sure everyone feels that way. About Kaminga? Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that are like, take, you know, if, if there's a better player down the road, staple Kaminga's contract to it. Like, I think a lot of people uh think I think it's split down the middle. Some think he's great and he's ascending and he's and he's and others are like, nope, get him out of here. I don't think it's just as the consensus is there. Because a lot of people feel like, oh man, you're disrespecting Moses. I like Moses Moody when a did lot. You dis he's interesting. I know, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah, Moses I Moody, when did. I see Trey Murphy the third and Moses Moody, just the projections looking forward. Trey Murphy feels better suited for today's NBA game. But then again, and I keep saying this, and I say it over again. I don't know who Moses Moody and Moses Moody is because. He didn't get consistent playing time. Now, well, last year, the second round against the Lakers, you know, Steve Kerr had him defending LeBron James. That's a mismatch. I, I mean, first of all, nobody could guard LeBron James, but Moses Moody to stay doesn't so, seem like the right match. Now, now you're bringing me to like a bigger point that I think. So there's like a there's a consensus of like GP two, woohoo, right from people like they right. love GP two, and I'm like GP two's fine, but here's where I have the problem with with GP two. It's not the player. It's that I know the players themselves and the coach is going to always pivot back to him when in doubt. When I see GP2 play, I go, well, that's at the expense of Moses Moody. Right. Well, that's at the expense of John and Kaminga because he's very redundant to those two right. players. And so my frustration with the entire Wiseman trade wasn't necessarily that you traded Wiseman. It's that you brought back something that I felt you already had to like. You had a couple wild cards that I wanted to see if they were any good already. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. and so to me, GP two represents what every minute he's on the floor is a minute that could have gone to, to Moses, Moses Moody, Moody or, or John and Kaminga yep. just to see if they're any good. Yeah, and I kind of know what GP two is, and I like GP two, and 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 he's fine. Well, whatever, maybe just shove him for three weeks to see what Moody and JK has. 
Now, but you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but you may sacrifice some wins in the process or some mistakes, and you're in that coaching so seat. So be it. You're in that coaching seat, though, and you got Joe Lacob sitting across the court from you, staring down at you, looking for wins after win no, after wins. You got to do no, what you got to do to win a game. I'm not coach. I'm saying from the roster construction, I think you set yourself up yeah. for this, for, for so suppressing this, one yeah, of the yeah, two yeah, yeah. youngsters no by having the redundancy of GB2. Then here's how it gets compounded. I'm forced to play a lot of three and four guard lineups right. because I, I I rely so heavily on GP two. I don't get the size out there. I don't get the length. I, all all I'm saying is like GP two is a useful player, but it comes at the expense of Ability. other players on right. the team, and then it gives you kind of clunky lineups yeah. where you have two non shooters or three non shooters or three or four guard lineups. No, I agree with that. I agree with that, and you, it's hard to knock GP two because at times he when he is things. in there, yeah, he's effective. Yeah. You know, Moody, I think the one thing with Moody that he needs to improve on is his lateral quickness. I see him get beat back door way too many times. At times. Where his he's face guarding someone. Yeah, I agree. He, yeah. Lateral quickness. I thought it. He gets caught flat Yeah, he's not but, as athletic that I think people perceive him to be. Well, you know I also, what I'm saying? I also think that on this team, there's a lot of, of you got to help a lot. And I think he gets caught in between helping and staying with his own guy. Right. He gets caught in no man's land. And then what ends up happening, he takes one step to the left. Right. Guy goes back door, boom, well, layup. Well, that's the thing. Like, Moody just, he just looks a step slow at times. And laterally, athleticism, I don't know if that's his, his strong suit. I think GP2 is more explosive. Yeah, no doubt. Clearly. He's, he's just, he just knows defensively. He just thinks the game better. His IQ defensively. I agree. And that's something that Steve Kerr covets. And a lot of people tell me about defense, defense, defense. Well, who are you going to play when you need to stop? Moody or GP2? Moody's three-point shot balances the floor. It does. Better than people acknowledge. But if you need to stop, who are you going to play? Probably going to play GP2, right? Yes, yes. And because so I, your best player is Steph, whose defense is a liability, you're more inclined to go with more, with a defensive person exactly. somewhere in that front court exactly. or back court. Exactly. But I do want to see. I don't know what Moody is. I think there's a player there. But I just think about Trey Murphy the third. I'm like, boy, I think Trey Murphy would be a factor on this team. I think Trey Murphy would have played so well, he would have forced Steve Kerr's hand just because of the player. 6'8", six, 6'9", six, he's a two-way player. He defends, he's long, he deflects a lot of passes. Boy, that... that so who's... I, who, I, I who hate doing on that. that. Who, well, somebody in the organization missed because there are some people in the organization who really wanted him. They came together and drafted Moses Moody. So I don't know who's that on. It's a group effort, right? That's what Joe Laker came to the studio and told us. Yeah. It's a group effort. All right. BPA Kurt in Oakland on the other side. Get the BPA Kurt in Oakland on the other side. That'll be brought to you by Pacific Coast Termite. I got a joke for you, Bonte. Americans pay about $5 billion.
Oh, that's a backbreaker. This is Clay Thompson, and you are listening to the Morning Roast on 95.7 The Game. <sighs> Speaking of Clay, wow. We get ready for the Sacramento Kings tomorrow in the playing game. Warriors at Kings, 9-10 matchup. Winner events is to play the loser of the Lakers Pelicans game. I wonder how many fans had this thought come up in their head. I couldn't help myself. It's Fitz and Buki interview. Clay Thompson walking off the court yesterday. It was the final regular season game of the season. Could have been a final home game of the season. If the Warriors want to have another home game, they need to win basically two road games to get to the first round of the playoffs to take on OKC. But did it, anybody, am I the only one? Where I'm watching Clay Thompson go seven to thirteen in twenty minutes, six to twelve from the three point line, make all five of his five of his free throws and score twenty five points yesterday. Was I the only one where in my mind it crossed? That could be the last time we ever see Clay Thompson play at home at Chase Center in a Warrior uniform. I've been thinking about that for the last month. <laughs> you know, like I I've been thinking about it a lot for the last month. I don't know how many of the fans are thinking about that. I think most. Fans have assumed they'll get into the playoffs and we'll, we'll get a playoff moment. And I think a lot of also fans are, are of the belief that Steph, Clay, and Draymond are going to be Warriors for life. I don't know how accurate that is, but I feel like that's the assessment that most fans have. Well, Monty Poole yesterday, he joined us on uh, Warriors Pre and Post. I, I love when Monty's on the set because he's always got an opinion and, you know, well thought out opinions. And he said, I'm not sure about Clay Thompson coming back on the go to say Warriors. I'm not so sure about that. And I'm not sure about that because anything can happen in free agency. And he's at a different point in his career. But look at the, look at these numbers since the All-Star break compared to Steph Curry's. And I'm not trying to pit one against the other. But at 27 games, and Clay played 77 games this season, most of the team. Since the All-Star break at 27 games, 19 points a game, three rebounds, two assists, but the efficiency 45.5%. From the floor, 41% from three. Now, if you look at Steph Curry post-All-Star break, it wasn't as pretty in 24 games. Now, he did average 23, 5, and 5. Now, I'm not scoffing at those numbers. Those are All-Star numbers. But for Steph Curry, he only shot 42% from the floor. There's a Steph standard. There's a standard for everybody else. That does not meet the Steph and Curry standard. We're talking about a 50-40-90 guy. Shot 42% from the, from the field uh, since the All-Star break. Now, his last couple games, it helped. It helped going 6-for-6 six six against the Lakers. It helped going 7-13 to 13 against the Pelicans to move that three-point percentage up to 38% since the All-Star break. But if you look before that Lakers game, before that 6-of-6 six six night and before the 7-13 to 13 night, he was shooting 36% from three. So Steph struggled with efficiency since the All-Star break. And if you take away the Lakers game and the Pelicans game, that's 41% from the floor. But we're not going to do that. We're going to add that zone. And those are still not numbers up to Steph Curry standard. So Clay Thompson played, I thought he played some good ball as a team defender. I thought he played really good ball offensively. But it did cross my mind that, damn, what if that's the last home game for Clay Thompson? I don't even want to put that out in the stratosphere, but it did cross my mind. Now, I think he's going to be back. It's hard to see me not see a number 11 in the Warriors uniform. Boy, he don't know what could happen in the summer. I don't no. know what could happen. I don't know what's going on through his mind. He told Draymond Green on his, on his podcast, look, man, I want to be a dub for life, but let me see what's best for my mental health. Let me see what's best for me. What'd you make of that? That he's going to weigh all his options. No, but like him saying that what's best for his mental health, what, what did you... What did you make of him well, saying that? Statement? Basically, it's just because that surprised me. Well, it didn't surprise me, but it's just like, hey, mentally, is this the best spot for me now? I know that some of the fan base has rode me hard, and he mm -hmm. listens all that. He admitted, mm -hmm. you know, Clay Thompson hears the noise. He hears that people say he's washed. You don't think that bothers him? Obviously, it did. It bothered him when he didn't finish that game against the Brooklyn Nets. It bothered him initially when he didn't start. And he had to come off the bench, but he embraced it. He sat back, said, you know what? I'm blessed to play basketball. So well, he's going to do what's best for him. It did sound like, I mean, again, I'm reading between the lines here, but from Clay and from what he said and from what Steve Kerr said, a seminal moment in, in Clay's career this year, or excuse me, in 
Clay's season this year was him and Steve Kerr having multiple conversations and and him coming to some sort of an epiphany. That that did feel like it was like the line of demarcation for him to kind of take off. And you saw it in shot selection. You saw it in him distributing the ball significantly better to someone like TJD. You, you saw his efficiency go up. Uh, I do think before a lot of the conversations, he really did care about starting. Absolutely. And I know you said long enough, guys don't care about starting, they care about finishing. No, no, no. I said they they care. Some people do, but they also more care. He went crazy because he didn't finish. Well, again. that is no no doubt. He, but yeah, I also think finish. it matters to him. <laughs> no, it did. I agree with the, the closing. But I also think on the front end, like both are true. I think he really cared about starting. And then once he allowed that situation to kind of play itself out, naturally now he's back into the into the starting lineup and, and everybody's better for it. But you know but, what though? When he came off the when he didn't finish that Brooklyn game on the road, that was the first time we seen him express it to the media. Like, ah, oh, whatever. Like, you know, we won the game, but it visibly f- bothered him that he didn't close the first or excuse me, the first half or the second half. For sure. That seemed like that put him over the edge. Like when he came off the bench, he was like, you know what? I get to find a rhythm with a team, whatever. Uh, it's fine. Look, he's an all-time legend. He's a warrior lifer, and it, whether he stays a warrior or not. But a big part of the last couple of years has been his emotions on the floor. Like that's been a big part of what they've been navigating, right. you know, whether it's individually with him or the, the greater team dynamic. Like that is a big thing. And so I think that, me personally, because I know last year I was very harsh on him. This year, as he's come around, I've come around on him. I find him to be playing a really good basketball. The The connection that he's had with TJD has been really, really good. I feel like his shot selection and, and getting his feet set before he shoots has been so much better. Um, in terms of what they do moving forward, we have to let that thing play itself out. Both people, both Clay and the Warriors, if they're going to go in a different direction... The Warriors better have an upgrade. Well, who is it that called us? Uh, your boy in Florida, Booker Raton? He said, man, this league values Clay Thompson. And I don't know his sources. Does does this but, team, but does this team, so like right now, with the team that they have right now, they're the 10 seed. And we can make all the reasons and why they are the 10 seed. Like I've been saying all morning, a couple games here and boom, they're in the six. Is that good enough? I don't know. I don't think so. Because that's where I, I get torn so. on the Clay I, I, conversation, I don't, I don't, I don't, where I'm like, well, he's a valuable player right. for this team, but, but like, how else are you going to find upgrades? And then, is there an upgrade out there? Yeah, I don't know. What's I don't he going to get? I, I tell you what, he's, he's, since he's not good enough, no, it's not good enough. Agreed. And, Agreed. and Memphis will be better next year. As much as I joke about the Memphis Grizzlies, they will be better next year. Josh coming back. Josh Josh's a problem. When he's on the floor, and he's a hard. He's a dynamic stretch. player. Where is Josh? So. John's going to be back. You don't think Wimby and the Spurs are going to get better? Well, yeah. They just beat the Nuggets on Friday yeah. night coming back from Twitter because of Wimby. Wimby's a one-man Wimby, wrecking Wimby crew. Wimby might be a top-five player next year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, mean, I, I don't want to go too ahead look, of myself here. The but Utah like, Jazz struggled uh, like crazy this year. They also won 31 freaking basketball games, which is surprising. So, to that caller's point, Brooklyn Raton, does the league value Clay Thompson? I know for a fact this league, Clay values Clay Thompson. I know for a fact they do that. Now, I don't know his sources, but I know my sources, mm-hmm. and I know my sources say, boy, if Clay's available, who couldn't use the shooting that he provides on a given base, on any given basis? Well, the Warriors could use the shooting. That's what I'm saying. But I guess this goes back to the price has got to be right, Bob Barker. Well, for the price everyone. has got to be right, and how much better are you going to be with Clay Thompson back next year? You're 10 right now. Well, no, I guess that's why I You're go back to right but, now. But, Bonte, that's why I go back to the price point. And I say, like, because of their cap situation, if they can get a good enough deal, you might be able to finagle another max contract, even though you'd be paying top dollar and all that. Like, I don't know what they're willing to sacrifice. I To get under the separate a- second apron is very important. But at the same time, if CP3 opts out and Clay takes half less, now you got a max slot. Well, you know? Well, the, pin, the price, and I'm not going to speak for Clay Thompson. But how does Clay Thompson not get the same amount of money per year as Andrew Wiggins and Draymond Green? Which okay, but that gives you the thirty plus that CP three would have plus the extra fifteen to twenty, and then you can move some other guys. Like you c- create a max slot, is what I'm saying. If he can take twenty five million a year, All right? 
But even then, we don't even know. But then, it, it, then and, there's got to be a guy available. And also, and also CP3 is a team option, not a, not a player option. So I, I don't know what you do there. I don't know. That that's, that conversation is for the offseason. Who knows when the offseason will start? Could start tomorrow night. Could start Friday night. Could start in two weeks. Who the hell knows when it's going to start? But the Warriors have to win tomorrow against Sacramento as we'll break that game down at nauseum tomorrow uh, here on the Morning Rush. Let's go to BPA. Brian and Paulo Alto, what's happening? One word to describe the season, BPA. I'm sure you got a doozy. Um... Uh, <laughs> one word, uh, not shocked would be two words, but, um, yeah, I, I didn't think, I mean, obviously I didn't think they would be, uh, the 10 seed, but I'm not, I didn't think they were a championship contender coming in. I think that all the other discussion around clay and other stuff, right. It's all about, <clears throat> it has to be, if, if you're going to move forward with Steph, it's about getting him a second star because every other contending team in the West has one generally. Some of, some of them have three. <laughs> so uh, you got, and he can't do it by himself anymore, right? You can't ride him for 70 games and expect him to score 30 plus points every night. I think, you know, he saw him wear down at the end of the year. He was less effective at the end of the year. So, um, I mean, to me, obviously you guys disagree with my Kaminga take on last week. Obviously followed that up, skipped the Pelicans game, then went zero and zero yesterday. But I think that's a big story because it looks like he looked mentally checked out yesterday. Um, and I, it's, you know, like, is he, is Kerr going to have him in the rotation? I don't know. It's an honest question. I think it's the quickest and hook is, of all time. That, yeah. So, like, to go from, I think, Kuminga, who was like two months ago was our second most reliable player on a night to night basis, to what I saw yesterday is disturbing. <laughs> uh, unequivocally disturbing. And, you know, like maybe when he came back and he wasn't put back in the starting lineup, I don't know. But something's off. And then he was hurt with tendonitis, and Kerr was like, well, we thought he was ready to go, but J.K. said he didn't want to go, right? Like he said that. <laughs> so well, who like, said that? I mean, he, 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 d- 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 go ahead, BPA. Said he, Jonathan said he can't go, right? He didn't say that. Did he say that verbatim? Did, he, did J.K. say that? He did. He said that he can't no, go? Ver- uh, what? Is that a yeah, problem? Said Jonathan said he can't. Is that a problem so, that J.K. Like, said that? Guys, He's got tendonitis. Uh, I've never heard Kerr say our training staff cleared a guy, but he said he didn't want to play, right? Never. <laughs> so something's off, guys. I'm sorry. I hate to break the narrative of J.K. <laughs> took this massive leap, but taking a leap means you got to close with the leap. And he hasn't closed with the leap. I'm right. I'm sorry. And, you know, we'll see how it plays. I don't think he's going to be – if he's not playing 25, 30 minutes tomorrow and you're going into the offseason with that, like, it, it changes the whole narrative because Kuminga is a guy that you, you opt in CP3 because it's the Warriors' choice to opt him in, by the way. It's not CP3. Yeah, no, it's the team option, you can yeah. Pack, you, can pack, you, can, you can package B- him out and expiring with Kuminga. With, with Kuminga will get you a top level guy. Are you, you see, it, come on, if you feel like that about Kuminga BPA, how do you think other GMs feel about Kuminga? Do you truly believe that Kuminga is going to net you a tier one player in the NBA? I think it will opt to give Steph a running mate for sure. I mean, look, who would that the, running the mate be? Got Bradley, the Suns got Beal, who I don't think Beal's the greatest player on earth. What did they give up to get Beal? Did they give Chris up Paul. like the soon and the 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 sun and the Chris, moon? Chris Paul <laughs> no, and they, they took on the contract. So it's pos- on some level, it's a choice, though, right? If they want to get a legit second guy with Steph, they can do that. They have the assets. So you believe you, you believe J.K. and other assets could get you a second star? What would those other assets be? Now I'm curious. I don't know. I'm not a GM, you know. <laughs> uh, well, you just said you're acting like you are. You just said that you get a second hey, star for JK. In, in, in some uh, alternate universe, I feel like you're like fits his, uh, you know, alter ego or something. Like the way that he describes certain things was certainty. I mean, I'm right. You're wrong. Kaminga's fading. What did, what did Kaminga say? The tendonitis obviously is bothering his knee. I guess I missed the Kerr right. thing. Yeah, I missed, I'm going to miss that too. Maybe somebody, uh, Run that back for me. Did Kerr say we cleared him and he doesn't want to play? One thing I do like, know what? about BPA is... I know JK wants to play. What are you talking about? That's he, part of the pro- That's why he had to meet with Steve Kerr in the first place. Because he wants to play. 
<laughs> like, that's the whole Kamiga rift. He wants to. Why did he go to CJ Holmes last year at a Chronicle? Because he wants to play. Why did he go to Chev Saradia midway through the season? Because he wants to play. Now you're saying that, you know what? He's got knee tendonitis and his job got taken, so now he quits on the team? Well, damn, if he's a quitter, then we can't have that. That's a bigger problem. Is he talking about Friday against the Pelicans? He didn't play. He didn't well, play. Well, Pelican contusion. Correct. Kerr mentioned that, that he's planning to rest some guys and that Kaminga could be a candidate there. So well, so if you want to ask me, like, uh, one of the hidden things that's frustrated me, and it's, look, guys are hurt, guys are hurt, but, like, these maintenance days and all these little, like, this guy's taking this day off. Like, I could point to so many games. The Maverick game in Dallas, for example, the one Wiggins doesn't play. Wiggins like, and Kaminga missed that game. It's like if one of those guys play, Boy, I feel like they win that game. And I could be wrong. Maybe they still blow the game. But, God, there's just so many of those throughout the season. Let's go to, boy, I, did Kamiga say that? I, I don't think Kamiga said that. Now, Friday night I was shocked he didn't play. And it had nothing to do with the tendonitis. But he is out of rhythm right now. And I know Kalina Azubuki yesterday on a cover shit, he goes, boy, he'll be good to get J.K. back into a rhythm that he was in before he missed the six games with the knee tendonitis. But there's no doubt tomorrow night, in my mind, that if he does make a couple of mistakes early, he Kerr will have a quick hook. You can't mess around with this game. You cannot mess around with this game. You lose this game, it is over. And we're talking about one of the most riveting off-seasons in Go to State Warriors basketball history, I believe. Look, I know we this is a tipping point this off-season. This will change. Every, this could dictate the next 10 years of the franchise. The biggest offseason they had was the year Durant left up until this point. This one feels even bigger because yeah, that, of because you got so many things up in the air. Like There's just so much. But, but BB, the Kaminga thing, I do, I do think this is very important. I do worry about his psyche and just where he's at and about confidence and all those things. Like there, There's clearly a frustration with what's happened to his role and, and his pecking order on the team, and I get it, and I also get it from the the team standpoint of why they're rolling with other guys and why they're rolling with the hot hand, and I feel like the train is going down the tracks, and he jumped off the train for a couple of weeks, and he's had a tough time jumping back on the train with where he was yeah. four miles ago. Does that make sense? Yeah, no doubt. And I and I, I, I see both sides of it. I, I see, see his frustration, sides. but well, I see the greater, you know, like there's the bigger picture, which is the team. Moody's also frustrated. You don't think Moody's frustrated as well? Yeah, but I don't think Moody has ever been a uh, as impacted winning the way Kaminga right, has. But you don't think show. he's frustrated? Oh. And you don't think that Moody deep down inside thinks he can impact winning too? B, I think CP3 is frustrated on the inside right. that he's not playing more that, and having more of his finger on. That's, that's why the whole finishing thing. Yeah. It matters to guys who's on the floor and winning time. But I also When think the cameras are on. Like there's a lot of people in the first quarter. Who don't get there by the starting lineups? They're drinking their beers. For they're sure. in the bathroom. They're late to the party. But everybody's sitting still in the last five minutes of cards time watching to see what goes down. Oh, that was nice. It was that? Was that? Conscious, not conscious. No, it was a, uh, a freak in the morning, man, man, a freak, freak in, in the evening. Is that, who was that? Uh, was it a, was it a, a Dean? A Dean? Da da yeah, yeah, Dina Howard. Yeah, no, Dina no, Howard. Dina there you Howard? go. Look at you. My hockey number three just went rogue, and I don't know where it's playing from. So I think we'll it's have to get Tim up, Jordan back in here. Maybe I think it was a Dina Howard. I think you're right. All right, right. Dina Howard. But, but one more thing. Let me just. I think when you're an established player and you've made hundreds of millions of dollars, just using CP3 as an example. I do think that you change, you mature, you're 39. Like, Kaminga has yet to establish himself in the NBA. I think there's a, a part of him wanting to prove I'm a starter, right? Because there's like, there's levels to each, each thing. I, I, am I an NBA player? Yes. Okay. Can I be a role player? Yes. Okay. Now I want to be a starter, right? Like, I want to be a starter and I want to get paid, right? And I think those, those two things are linked for him. So I think there's a lot of things at play here. And I don't think the Warriors' record or where they end up at the end of the year are at the forefront of his desires right now. And I also believe that he thinks that, and I'm not knocking him for that because I think I'd feel the same way at 21 years old. But I also think that, like, in his mind, he's like, yeah, we're better when I play and well, when I play well because that's the confidence well, he has in himself. Well, again, Steiny hinted at this, and I thought about it too. What's that? Right when it was happening. Right as he was in the midst of missing six, six straight games with knee tendonitis. Andrew Wiggins misses three games due to personal reasons. And he had been coming off the bench, starting, coming off the bench, starting. He comes back, 
he starts right away. Kamika takes note of that. She's like, oh, it's all good. We're still playing well together. The combo of Wiggins and J.K. and Draymond actually did develop a nice rapport and some nice chemistry. Mm -hmm. Even though Steve Kerr said, yeah, we're not going to go that route. These guys, you know, the whole narrative that they can't play together. Well, they proved they can play together. Wiggins and Kaminga and Draymond Green. And then J.K. misses the six games and he doesn't get his job back. Now, he mentioned it as he was answering questions after that Utah game a week ago. Where he's basically saying, hey, man, as long as we're winning, I understand TJD's playing well. But you look at last year and what happened last season. Wiggins misses two months of the season. J.K. helped save the season a season ago by stabilizing things, whether it was starting or coming off the bench. J.K. played really well heading into the playoffs. And then Wiggins comes back. Now, the first game, Wiggins comes off the bench against Sacramento. But what do you know? Wiggins is now in the finishing lineup. For the go to state Warriors in that game one against Sacramento. And from that point on, J.K. barely saw the court. So those are also big things to the equation. So is the young man mentals a little fragile by not playing? He's probably thinking, boy, what else do I have to do? I average 20 points a game. I get to the free throw line. Outside of Stephen Curry, nobody gets to the free throw line like me. We had to rename the segment flying above the rim to Eric Congo because he was on there ducking on somebody's head every single night. And he's playing well and rebounding. He's defending. Now there's going to be mistakes. you got to play through that if you're a young player. Trade back for the third. Brandon Ingram. They've had those opportunities. Obviously, they're not on championship teams, so it's a little different here. But you got to be thinking, if you're JK, he's like, what else can I do? And now here we are talking about the playing game, where if he makes a couple mistakes early, he may not see a lot of playing time. If I pulled 100 Warrior fans as we're doing a year in review here, who is better this year, Wiggins or Kaminga? I think Kaminga. What do you think the numbers are when you pull 100 fans? Don't know. It depends on the day. 50-50? Two, two weeks ago would have been 80-20. Okay. What's it today? I don't know. I will, I'm eager to hear from Dub Nation on that. I don't know. I don't know. I think Kaminga in a landslide was better than, than Andrew Wiggins. The last two, three weeks, no. But that doesn't encapsulate the body of the season. I think we, I think JK's been better. Yeah, I do too. I do. If I had to bet on the future... Yeah. I'd bet on J.K. over Andrew Wiggins, and I'm not trying to slander Andrew Wiggins. But J.K. does seem to have a lot of upside, but, that go-get-it attitude. But but here, here's here's where it gets tricky. As you like Again, we're just an eye on the on the offseason, just an eye, not both eyes, an eye. He is one of the few guys that has value and is an asset and a commodity that people covet. And he, you know what? Under a very team-friendly deal yeah, for one, for one no more doubt. year. And somebody's going to have to extend him and give him new money. For sure. So... That That is, it's going to be fascinating to watch how this develops tomorrow night if the Warriors can beat the Sacramento Kings. Uh, let's go to Kurt Oakley. He's been on hold the long and see if we get to everybody out here. Kurt, what's happening? You're on the roast. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking the call. Um, the one word to describe the Warriors this year is small. They just don't have enough size. Mm. And they talk about the Moody and Kaminga, you know, draft picks with Troy Murphy the third. Um, they could have picked up Sengun from Houston. That would have helped a lot. You know, granted, he would need to develop, but he probably would have known his role and figured out what, what needed to be done. Yeah. And that would have helped a ton in today's game with them. You know, the screen setting, you know, a legit big sets a screen and frees up Steph with two people hounding him. The staggered screen by Draymond or TJD, and then they can roll. It would work perfectly. But they were just too small this year. I'm glad they got to where they're at. I mean, it's the best they could have done. You know, sure, they missed a couple games here and there. It happens, but it's just they're just too small. Yeah. And as for the physicality of, as for the physicality of the league, you know, I love the more physical game. You know, as long as it's not over the top. And to quote the legendary Bill Russell, when Steve Kerr was a commentator and asked him one time, in today's game, how many points would you average? And Bill Russell said to him, "I'd average about ten to twelve points." And Steve Kerr says, "That's it." And Bill Russell said, "Well, I am seventy-seven." <laughs> And you know, it's a good one. Let's go to uh, Larry in LA. Larry, what's <laughs> happening? You're on the roast, Larry. I want to thank you guys. You guys are great. I love your show, and thank I you. listen to everyone else. So I heard you guys maybe went camping this weekend. I hope you had a good time. Oh, Shasky did. Idea. Shasky did. <laughs> I hope you had a good time. I hope Shasky had a good time. Well, Camping's it, awesome. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't camp. My brother set up 
the 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 trailer tent pop up thing in my driveway. Hey, that's camping. That's camping. That's camping. Well, no. we did have a eighty something inch television watching UFC fights. Is it eighty something hey, inches now? That's part of camping. It's gonna be ninety. That's part of camping, man. So, so you hear that, Larry? Last week it was seventy. Then it became eighty an hour later. Now it's eighty plus, something plus, inches. Eighty yeah. plus. Size. Eighty plus. Matter. Size does matter, Fitz. Yeah. And like the last call, we're not small. Okay, I kind of missed that. I kind of <laughs> missed what you were saying there, but yeah, whatever you got on the but, Warriors. But, 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 I just want to bring up one point, if I could, because all your shows have educated me, and I, I think this is great for the nation. I think this is great for basketball at this point. But we're all dreamers. If you're a warrior, you're a dreamer. You think they can go all the way. So, from all your guys' show, your show, everyone else, you gave me the idea. Of the oh, and just like that, he's gone. Damn. I thought there was going to be a payoff. I thought it was going to be a payoff, too. Uh, really curious to see what that idea would have been. Yeah, I, I am, too. Well, let's go to uh, Hoot and Marin. Hoot, there it is. Hoot, there it is. Hoot, there it is. There it is, Hoot, baby. There it is. There it is. What up, Hoot? Hey, guys, how you doing? Good, man. You're yeah, a Hoot. I, I, got a, I, got a, I got a kind of a bone to pick with you guys. I think you guys are being a little rough on Moody, man. Question is athleticism. That's a low shot, dude. No, I, I just mean, said his lateral guy, movement. I want to see more of his lateral no, movement. He's at place of hell of a more. No. What you said is his athleticism is something left to be desired. I heard you. But okay. anyway, what I'm saying okay. is, I, I'm saying I would rather have a guy who, like you say, maybe need to work on a few things, but have the hustle and the desire than some guy who, like you just said, I don't know why it's okay for Kaminga to power by not getting in time, but for Moody who hasn't, hasn't pounded a lick and who's been jerked around by the coaching staff more than any player that I could ever so, remember. Let, let me uh, ask you know something, that. who? Uh, let me ask you something. How good do you think Moses Moody is? What's his ceiling right now? Because I'm not nah, intrigued because I've been hearing about Moses Moody for the last two months, and I love okay. Moses Moody. I do. I think he's I, a professional. I Hell, I like that kid date my daughter. I would. That's how much I think about Moses Moody. That's how highly I think I'd of him. Wait a few years, but, but, but no, no, no. I mean, okay. no. Nah, I'm saying when she turns 21, yeah, I know, obviously. I'm but no, no, no. It's a terrible joke. But listen, who, <laughs> what's his ceiling? What is Moses Moody's ceiling? Since we're talking about it, this, you know, you know something. Bonte will never know because as soon as he starts to ascend, Curry yanks him. Do you he think the league? Do you? Th I'm going to ask you sincerely. Do you think the league as a whole, GMX, thinks that Kaminga or Moody has higher upside? Uh, I, I take Moody for his attitude every single day of the week. Well, I love Moody's attitude, but not everyone's going to have that attitude. And, you know, anybody who has multiple children, Joe, of the only one of all of us, you've got multiple kids. Are they exactly alike? No, totally opposites. I mean, Benny is very quiet, reserved. He's very sensitive, very more emotional. Nora will bite your head off and not even think twice about it. Within the same yes. family, right? Yep. Like that that that's everyone. Me and my brother are totally different. I mean, I don't know you guys haven't spent too much time around my brother, but completely different. I, I don't know, man. Like yeah, Kaminga is different than Moody. And I, I don't think Kaminga's done anything wrong. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't I don't think we've slandered Moody either. I think that all we're saying is like, here are some of his strengths. Here's an area where like like great example. I don't think Pajemski's the greatest defender, but he's been great this year. Now, a year, two years down the line, he gets a bigger role. We'll talk more about I, his defense. I, I said Moody doesn't have the lateral quickness that I would like, like in that position, and he's not as athletic as I thought he would be. Is that a false statement? I, no. You tell me if that's a false statement, Roasters. No. I mean, like, that's all I said. We're not slandering Moses Moody. It's a good shooter, but I don't know what he is yet because I haven't seen him consistently. And where's And again... Who are you going to play him ahead of right now? We we did this exercise last week with Steve Kerr, which was playoff rotation yes. with nine guys. Yes. Who are you going to play him above? You're going to play him ahead of J.K.? You're going to play him ahead of Andrew Wiggins? You're going to play him ahead of J.K. Uh, Clay Thompson? Are you going to play him ahead of, I don't know, Brandon Pajipski? On this team? Don't know. I You know, I don't the know. Pajipski thing's interesting. Because there have been certain three guard lineups where I actually would rather see Moody. Right. But overall, I, I think.
Pods has brought the element that they need, which is that other ball handler in the half court to facilitate more times than not. But there are times where I think like, all right, you're going with Pajemski here and GP2 and CP3 and, you know, whatever. Yeah, I'd, I maybe I'd like to, to see Moody out there. But, I, like, I very few to, and far between. I would love to see Moses Moody. Got to figure out who he is. He's going through year three. We still don't know who he is, but maybe the coaches know who he is. Maybe that's why he's not playing. Because maybe the coaches know something that we don't. They're the pros. Kenny Atkinson, Steve yeah. Kerr, yeah. Chris DeMarco, Ron Adams. Maybe they know something we don't. I don't know. Let's go to uh, Free the People. Free the People in Oakland. What's up, Free the People? He totally took me off my topic. Good morning, fellas. I was going to talk about these bigs, but I think Moses Moody could realistically average 15, five rebounds, and maybe a steal and a half a game if he got the requisite playing time. I love Brandon Pajemski, but I definitely think Moses Moody could cut into some of his minutes just because of his defensive prowess, his long arms. He's always poking balls. Mm -hmm. He always finds his way around loose balls. Those are things I value, and I realize that Brandon Pajemski is the best rebounding little guy probably damn near in the league maybe. He's the best at taking charges. He's a good player, and he's going to grow and ascend to be a better player. But I do think some of his minutes can be eaten into by Moses Moody. I think also some of those tweener clay minutes when clay is on the bench could be some Moses Moody minutes. From what we got from Andrew Wiggins, I think Andrew Wiggins right now today is a better player than Moses Moody, but his engine is not Moses Moody's engine. And I realize that skill over engine is a thing, and I'm not going to knock skill over engine because that would be preposterous. But when Wiggins is having those nights where he clearly is not engaged, when he looks like the guy who we got from Minnesota, who all the Warriors fans who really watch basketball knew who he truly would be, when we see Andrew Wiggins have those nights, those are absolutely nights that Moses Moody could mm -hmm. steal some minutes. My original point, though, was about the conversation about having a big, and that's why we get beat up and we can't handle a physical game. I don't know if guys are watching games at nauseam like I do. I watch every single Warriors game. If I miss a game, it may be a quarter at most, being a family man. We've been in, we've been in every game just about this year with all the elite teams. We've lost most of those games, true enough. But a lot of those losses were due to Draymond being suspended. If Draymond's not suspended for 25 games, yeah. we're top five seed easily. Mm -hmm. I do agree that we could use more size, but I don't know if we're watching the same game. Because when I see uh, Trace Jackson Davis on the court, the Warriors kind of look like the bogey Warrior days where he's allowing Draymond to roam mm -hmm. and the Warriors are free on defense to move how they want to. That's no knock on getting bigger. But we're able to compete with teams without the, so much of the, this guy's only 6'8". Trace Jackson Davis is eating up most centers. He's dunking on seven foot five guys. He's dunking on seven footers. Is he a superstar? No. But is he a serviceable big man? A lot of Warriors to play the defense they need to play to be a winning team and finish in a playoff spot versus a playing spot? He absolutely is. I just wish Kurt gave him that chance earlier in the season. I've talked a lot, and you guys allowed me to, so I just want to say I greatly appreciate you. Have a great Monday, guys. I'm a faithful listener. Have a great day. Thanks Thank for taking you. Call. Great call. Free the people. Great call. Knows his basketball inside and out. Bart, it's right. for you to do the legal. Okay, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC, FM, and AC1, San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Don't forget, you can also watch us every single day on our YouTube and Twitch streams. Just log out and search 95.7 The Game. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel while you are there. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. You can... Now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we have added the QR code on both pages and the Xfinity Mobile text line as well. We see you. We love you. And that's the thing with Moses Moody. I don't know who he is. He averaged 17 and a half minutes per game this year. What did, he, what did he average last Sh year? Uh, 13. 13. Wow. So this year he averaged eight points a game in the 17 minutes. One assist, three rebounds, shot 36% from three. 46% from the floor. Now, he did play some good defense on a lot of players. Like, somebody brought up Jalen Brunson game in Madison Square Garden. He was really good. That's a good call. Yeah. He was really good. He had, yeah. he had moments being a very good defender. He did. He did. But I don't know. I don't know who he is. He can't. And, and I don't know who he's going to play ahead of. I, I just don't know. It's... um. It, it, they're just there's just a lot going on with this team and when it comes to like the pecking order and everything the guy again if you're asking me who he'd eat minutes from a little bit of pods here and there but I go back to GP2 like I think a lot yeah. of the things GP2 is doing not all of them because he doesn't get vertical like he does but Mo Moody can do a lot of the things that he's bringing to the table I think GP2 is a better individual defender probably a better help defender as well 
Uh, but Moody, no. his, he rebounded way better this year. Just my right. eyeball. I'm not going off the stats. Right. The eyeball, he he had situational rebounds that were better this year than in years past. Um, but offensively is where he's the big separator between GP2 and him. It, for me. Yeah, GP2 didn't play Friday night. Moses Moody saw 19 minutes. Pod saw 23 minutes. CP3, 28 minutes in that basketball yeah, game. Yeah, you cranked him up the Pelicans. Yeah. Um, so... I don't know what to make of Moses Woody. Let's go to Austin Redwood City. Austin, what's happening? You're on the rust. We got Morgan Reagan coming up at 920 to break down and get into the Kings dynamic and the Warriors playing opponent against the Sacramento Kings, of course, at the G1C. Austin, Redwood City, what's happening? Hey, no, much on my way to work. Hey, I want to say this too. Hey, that mental thing is crazy. Remember when Moody uh, got in the playoffs that one time over our Kamiga and Kamiga set? Yep. Man, that's crazy. I had to give him a good boost right there. Other than that, I don't see Clay Thompson leaving. They t- they've been trying to break up the big three for years, and the big three been breaking up teams, and teams been trying to build, try to build on beating the Warriors, and they can't do it. They cannot do it. Look at LeBron, Kyrie; they're all on different teams. Me building on different teams, and, Warriors, and the three-headed monsters still sticking together. They ain't going. He ain't going nowhere. Let's go, Dubs. And and like last caller said. Man, y'all, we ain't looking at what the bigs are doing for the Warriors. We beat Giannis after we got thrashed by the Celtics with uh, Trey Justin Davis blocking three shots. And Pod need his minutes need to be, you know, reduced a little bit because he be running around reckless, making mistakes, and 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 doing good. Moody can be doing the same thing. That's all I got. Austin in Redwood City. What do you make of that? What do I make of that? I, I mean, Austin, I, I, I want to hear from you more often. That's number one. Number two, <laughs> they they have unlocked something with some of these bigs. When you know, we've heard multiple callers talking about, you know, having Trace Jackson Davis provides an element. And people are referencing Bogut. Bogut, better passer. But to me, it's that high-low alley-oop game. And the ability for him to set a high screen and be able to move downward and command help attention from the defense where they have to rotate over. Because not only does that get him easy layups in the paint, but then that opens things up for the shooters. So I I think that the TJD insertion has been monumental for this team. That's why I'm I'm curious to see how long they go with it tomorrow. Yeah, Like if he gets a foul quick, do you yo-yo him right away? But even if it gets sacked tomorrow and if GP2 is available... Don't you want GP2 defending Darren Fox at times to try to, to slow start him down? the game? I'm not saying start the game. I was going to start the game. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to start. Oh, the, I think GP2, if you ask me today, right. like Kaminga or GP2, who ends up with more minutes? I, I think well, Kerr's going to end up with GP2 having more well, minutes GP2, than GP2, GP2 has only been seeing like eight minutes, 13 minutes, 12 minutes. Spot duty. Spot duty. With the starting lineup, I think you got to roll with the same starting lineup. No, it's I agree. It's Steph, it's Wiggins, it's TJD, it's Draymond. But think about but, what happened in the playoffs last year. But you got to have all hands on deck. And Steve Kerr, that's where he is good in the playoffs series. He will adjust. He will tinker his lineup. He will tinker his starting lineup. He'll tinker his rotation. All hands on deck tomorrow. So I, I, I think Pods will get... I'd be surprised if Pods goes over 20 minutes tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know where he fits in against the depends Kings. Depends on the game flow. Okay. I think it depends on the game okay. flow. You know, like... Steve Kerr may start out five in the first quarter. You may see the starting lineup. There's no guarantee that same five will start the second half. I, see, How many I, times have we seen Steve oh, Kerr no, no, start a different five to, start to open the second half? It's a bunch seen of it times. All the time. A bunch of times. So, like, I, I'm thinking in my head, like, over the last month, we haven't gotten a lot of Looney until recently. I think Looney's a big factor tomorrow. Played eight minutes Friday night. Played big against Portland. I don't know where Moody. I don't know where Looney slides. I do think. I, I do think you're going to start him off. Minutes. Oh, I, I don't yeah. know about 15. But I definitely think you. Du- I think you dust him off and get some it. Trey Green showed that he took the challenge one on one against Zion Williamson and did a f- phenomenal job. I could Sacramento's going to go to the one big lineup a lot. Yeah, but I worry that Dre gets in foul trouble. That's what no, I'm I think he'll about. be fine. I think he'll be fine against the bonus. He'll shut down. He'll Sabonis. be cranked up. He'll be cranked up, ready to go against the bonus. But now the refs will be watching that. You don't want the whistle to blow on him. You know, uh, it's going to be interesting. But I like Draymond defending Demonis Sabonis tomorrow one-on-one. What he did against Zion Williamson. Zion, a lot of people are going to say, well, he scored 26. Zion was 11-26. to 26. Draymond Green did a phenomenal job defending Zion Williamson Friday night. 
when Zion was getting the ball, it was like a turnover for the Pels almost. Like the the worrisome thing about the Pels was CJ McCullough breaking down defense, giving it to Trey Murphy the third, and then coming back and hitting threes. That killed them, plus the live ball turnovers. All right, what's coming up in the game? Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Morgan Reagan, NBC Sports California, pre and post game show host with the Sacramento Kings on NBC Sports Bay, uh, NBC Sports California, plus a Deuce and Mo podcast. We'll break. We'll start to dive into it. Our first of three Sacramento King guests over the next two days. Draper and Kitty tomorrow uh, on the Morning Roast. But let's get to Morgan here on the other side on 95.7 The Game. I'm sorry. I hate to break the narrative. I'm right. Syntec Premium Full Synthetic Motor Oil is formulated for today's engines. Available only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, oh, oh.
the game seven. Now back to the morning roast with Bonte Hill and Joe Shasky. Take it away, Bonte. Uh, Bonte's still talking in the hall. It's Shasky, but here he comes. You know, I was thinking about last year's playoffs as a whole. Warriors Kings. It might have been the most exciting of all the series. Of all the playoffs. Maybe I'm biased because I'm a Warrior guy and you know, seeing the Northern California rivalry finally have its moment. I thought it was really cool. Uh seeing the the the, the come up of, of De'Aaron Fox and everything that happened in that series, whether it's the Barnes missed shot, the Draymond stomp, like everything. We're the Curry in performance. Miami, Miami Boston. Boston. Great series. Again, that's why I said arguably. Yeah. I said arguably. All right, all, right, all, right. all right. So, you know, uh, I think I think it's interesting that these two teams are playing I, each other in a know, playing game. Just talking to Steiny and the Higgin in the break room and, and and breaking out what we've been talking about all season. People clamoring for Moses Moody and people clamoring for more JK or less JK or less pods. But this season's always been about the big boys, right? Wiggins, the big money players. I always look at the big money players. What are the big like with the Giants right now? Who's struggling? Well, the big body players are struggling. Blake Snell is struggling. Matt Chapman is struggling. Jorge Soler, take away a couple home runs, is struggling. Big money players. I don't care about Yaz. Yaz mm -hmm. does a factor. Yaz, to me, is not dictating wins and losses. It's the big boys. And that's the same thing with the Go to State Warriors. Like, think about the way Friday's game went down. Think about the way, like, Steph Curry's got to carry so much of a load for this team. And we're out here. Talking about Moses Moody played Moses Moody played nineteen game nineteen minutes Friday night. Do you remember anything Moses Moody did Friday night in those nineteen minutes? Grab an offensive rebound. Okay. Do you really remember that? No, I'm just yeah. You I, don't. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> you don't. But why are you You're so kind of triggered about no, no, the no, Moses no, I'm not Moody triggered. Thing. I'm not triggered at all. What I'm basically trying to explain is Moses Moody is a nice rotational piece. But that's not going to determine whether or not the Warriors win a championship. No, I know, but that's this not going to determine whether or not they beat the Sacramento Kings. No, it's going to be about the big boys tomorrow night. No, I think I think most of us agree with you, but like that's why we spent two years talking about Clay, and that's why we spend so much time as a station talking about Draymond and Andrew Wiggins, right? Right, because those are the guys. Like to your point, those are the guys making the most money, and those are the guys that are going to be playing the majority I, of the of I, the crucial moments. I just don't spend a lot of time on social media like I used to, so I didn't realize that there, there was this this drum beating for Moses Moody to play a lot more minutes, or Paz to play less minutes, or J.K. I, to not be part the, of the, the rotation. The thing has been... Uh, right. It's been very uh, wildly polarizing, and I don't think it should be that polarizing. He's playing because he's been pretty good. <laughs> I mean, it's not to great me, to be for Pods, a rookie. Pods has ex he's exceeded all expectations as a rookie. Yes, rookies don't usually play with championship players. He's played. He cracked the rotation and has done what he's been asked to do. So anyway, let's get the Morgan ringing up in Sacramento. My home girl, my sister from another mother, uh, pre post game show host on NBC Sports California with the Sacramento Kings, the Do Some Mo podcast, the night chat, all that stuff. Morgan, <laughs> here we go again. What is this? What I mean. Deja vu, you guys. Yeah, reunited and it feels so good. Or does it feel good for everybody in Sacramento? Did, did the Kings fans, Morgan, as you talk to them every single night and every single day, is this the matchup they circled? Is this the matchup they wanted as a nine seed and hosting, their, uh, hosting a playing game up in Sacramento? Bonte, you already know the answer to that. I mean, when, when Steph Curry comes to your house and drops 50 on you in a game seven, it's what literal, literal nightmares are made of for any NBA fan. And that's why, like, even with this one, it's just like, what what are the basketball gods doing? Like, why, why, why is this the matchup? Why did this have to happen? And, um, yeah, it kind of sucks, but, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it sucks because it's we, we've seen this story play out before, except now it's one game, but it's one game where you're going up against a team that has guys that have experienced this type of pressure so many times in their career, and they have seen success. What's cracking with the hollow man? How's he doing lately? Which one's the hollow man? Oh, it's oh, Demonis Sabonis. Yeah. 
Yeah. Jackie, every single time, every single time I think of you, I just think, elbow, elbow, Well, elbow. you know what, Mo? Shoulder, Mo, shoulder, you know shoulder, funny? shoulder. It's funny oh, yeah, you bring yeah, that yeah. up because I thought I saw you on set as your co-host was crying tears of, of pain <laughs> because the league is too physical when the irony is... You have a guy who initiates contact on every single dribble he's ever had in his entire NBA career. Hey, Shasky, was that me with that comment, or was that him with that comment? Well, I mean, I, you know, I'm, Mo, I'm bunching Mo, you all together. Mo, you know? Mo, who are you thinking? You and Chelsea Gray are sitting there. Laughing your ass Japer, off. And I'm laughing at Chaper because I'm like, wait a minute, Chaper. What are you talking about here? What was going through your mind as you let him go on that minute-long rant? She was about ready to grab him a Kleenex. Saying it's too physical. It's bully ball being played. I don't enjoy this bread of basketball. I can stop you laughing. Guys, I cannot control... What anyone else says, Thank I don't you. control. Fonte what knows. I say. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and it is, you know, it is very important when you have teammates up there. You're not just going to crap all over what they have to say. So you hear them, you listen, and I definitely don't agree with it. But at the same time, it's like he's going to say what he's going to say, and um, yeah, I love how physical this league is, and I feel like tomorrow. Oh, I think it's going to be so physical between both teams. But, and don't, hey, no crying over there when I say this. And this is, this is just, I'm, come on, it's factual. I am afraid someone like Keon Ellis is going to breathe on Steph Curry and they're going to start calling that way too soon. And it's like, no, let's, let them let them play. You yeah. know what I mean? Like Keon Ellis is a pretty pure defender. Like he's pretty honest in his defense. And like if it just kind of goes in that direction, that's not going to be fun to watch. So hopefully it gets to stay physical and well, refs don't like allow it to be soft for certain people. I like Keon Ellis. Keon Ellis is playing well. well I really like him. What does the crowd have in store for Draymond Green? One of my favorite moments in Warrior history was when the Boston Garden had a very specific chance for Draymond and he was doing the Hollywood, you know, Hogan, WWE, to like cupping his ears to the crowd. The crowd's going to be fired up for Draymond, right? I, I guess I, I feel like, I mean, I should, I should honestly feel like I should know and have a pulse of that. But at the same time, I feel like it's the entire Warriors squad. It's not just about Draymond. And I'm sure he'll get booed when he gets the basketball. But I'm kind of like, hey, guys, don't waste your energy on that. You got to <laughs> save your energy for like when the Warriors go on a run and the Kings like need to feel some home court love and like, you know, feel the energy, the vibe from the crowd. Uh, you know, Mama Ma Reed, one of these chats on our YouTube here, Ernie Chavez, he's one of our award winners from our Doobie Awards. And he's, he's right on point with this one. Mo is catching strays like I was catching strays for what Shasky says. So I understand your pain for catching strays <laughs> for what Japer said last Friday night. Let's, let's just say, you know, they, they, it's just not Are fair. Are we a it's duo right. or what? Yeah, I, I he's he's going to leave me flapping whoa, in the wind? Whoa, whoa. He's going to leave me fired from one of these jobs, Mo. I got my own cause. Why did Shasky say that? Now I got to answer to it because Shasky stays at home in his little man cave and I got to go out there with the people and face the consequences of what he said. But anyway, Sacramento. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that off my chest. Um, I love it. Uh, is it as simple as the Sacramento struggles being attributed to Malik Monk being out for uh, four to six weeks, wherever the, wherever he's at with the timeline now? What has it been, three weeks, maybe four weeks? But oh. is it that simple that Malik Monk has been out, which has led to the struggles of Sacramento? You guys, it's it's no, it's not that simple. I mean, there's a lot of things. It's like, hey, you didn't do anything at the trade deadline. Hey, you didn't do anything in free agency. Hey, I mean, like, you know, hey, you lost these games against Detroit, Washington, whatever the law. Like, it goes down the line. But lately, absolutely, the style of basketball had to completely change. The rotations had to completely change. And it's not just Malik Monk, you guys. Uh, you look at Kevin Herter, and I know some of you are like, what? Did he suck this year? Like, all the people that actually just don't watch basketball yeah. and just look at a few box scores or something. And it's like, no, actually, you know, it's funny. He posed as a threat because he moves without the basketball. And whether he was going to make that shot or not, he was still a threat. Teams were still worried about him. And 46% of Sabonis' assists came from Malik Monk and Kevin Herter. So now Sabonis' game has to completely change. And it has completely changed. I mean, they've been doing a lot more pick and roll. De'Aaron's been playing a lot more off ball. So, there's not like guys just swarming him at, at first so he can actually be something within the offense as well. So, yeah, it's changed a lot of things, but it's not the sole reason.
when I look back at that series, like there was the pre finger injury, De'Aaron Fox, and there was post. He was still good, but it wasn't the same. And like I do feel like history is kind of forgotten. Time is forgotten that he did get hurt. Like, do you guys think about that as a fan base? The De'Aaron Fox injury, the woulda, coulda, shoulda. No, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's so much that. I think when you look at his game like last year and you think about the leap that he took with his game offensively as a leader, all these things, you know, you're, you you get excited about it and you do, you definitely have to factor in the injuries. I mean, Sabonis was playing with a broken finger, you know, De'Aaron had his injuries as well. But then this year too, Shasky, like looking at De'Aaron take a leap on the other side of the floor with his defense, it's more like, okay, this guy at 26 years old is, is kind of finally figuring it out. And I'm not comparing to someone like Kawhi Leonard, but it took Kawhi Leonard five years to really figure out and become yeah. the star that he was. And, and again, Darren's not on that timeline. Like, it's been longer than five years. But my point is, is just so many guys figure out their greatness at different points of their career in different primes. And so I still think he has a lot of room to be, it's not like shoulda, coulda, woulda. It's going to be like, What's going to happen? Yeah. Mo, uh, Mike Brown. What, how are the fans feeling about Mike Brown up in Sacramento? He won Coach of the Year a season ago. And then, you know, I hear some of the rhetoric about Mike Brown. How are fans feeling about Mike Brown and his job status up there in Sacramento? What's the word up there? Isn't it the same thing? Like, if Steve Kerr loses a game, like, everyone wants to fire him? Oh, yeah, like, absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's absolutely, it's comical how and where people will want the change. And when it is, there's been times with Mike Brown, people have complained about rotations or uh, let's say they stick to blitzing someone like Steph Curry. No, no, you do not blitz Steph Curry. He's going to make a quick decision. Like (laughs) these little things that Kings fans that like to really break down the game technique and everything, They have been frustrated with some of these things. But I think at the same time, like, Bonte, are you, and maybe maybe the answer is yes, are you amazing on TV every single pre and post game? Absolutely Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. Hell yeah, he is. Some some would say amazing never happens on that pre-game show. fake humility he's doing right now. No, 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 no. Mo knows. See, Shasky tries to protect out of me. I'm the most humble guy out here in the Bay Area streets. I really am. I don't brag about myself. And no, I don't have the amazing shows. Guy I don't even have amazing I'm segments. I mess up in every segment. I'm a tremendous you know, humility well. person. <laughs> you guys, my point to that though, it's like I know, like I know, I'm good at what I do, but it doesn't mean that like I'm going to be perfect every single night. And I guess my point is sometimes. These coaches, which, by the way, I love high standards, and I believe that we should hold them accountable for mistakes that they make, but it doesn't mean it's a fireable offense every single night. So, yeah, people are fine, but people were riding the high of last year still, and so they get down, especially when expectations change. Real quick, Mo, how do you look at the Warriors situation from afar? You watch the game inside and out. Also, your G League covers of the Stockton Kings, and you've done announcing uh, in the G League bubble. You know the league inside and out. I, I respect you and do so much because your knowledge of the NBA as a whole. How do you view this Warriors situation from afar here with the big three, with the coaches, with the youngsters? What do you what do you see? What do you, what what comes to your mind when you think about the Golden State Warriors? Well, I guess when I when I think about where they are right now, I'm like, how are they even? How are they a better team? How are they a better team than what they were at the beginning of the season? Like it's crazy to think about more mileage more time spent on some of these older dudes you got draymond being a loser out there at times like and and by the way when i say that this is also someone that i respect on the basketball floor that can achieve championships and make Steph better make his teammates better at times while also trying to make them worse at times but my point to all of this, it's crazy then when you start to see the developmental stages of like Moses Moody and Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis. I, I, it's frustrating at times because you guys are 90 minutes away and it's like, it's like, how, how do you figure this out? And really the answer is because of the culture, the, the, I guess everything, the foundation that has been laid down there and it's, a winning foundation. And that's why now when I look at this matchup against the Sacramento Kings, I'm like, 
you guys are different. The Warriors are different, but they're good different. And the Kings are different from the last time these two two teams played, but they're bad different. And it doesn't mean that it's impossible to beat the Warriors on Tuesday. It does not mean it's impossible. Anything can happen in the NBA, but that's just how I describe this situation and what the Warriors look like now. In terms of civic pride and the Northern California rivalry and what happened last year, even if it's just just this one game, would this be the biggest win in 20 years for the Kings? For the fans? (laughs) Oh, my God. I mean... Maybe for me and my soul. (laughs) Well, that's what I'm asking. No, I'm serious. Like, I want to get inside the psyche of, like, all games aren't created equal. I know that there are, you 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 know what I mean? Like, winning this one, it would qualify you for another chance to try to qualify for the playoffs, right? Like, it's not even a playoff game, but. Well, mate, and it may send the Warriors into an offseason. That's what I'm saying. Into a tailspin to where they break apart everything. Like, I, you know. Mo, Mo, I watched the game yesterday, and I don't. You could end this. I think Clay is coming back. But boy, I, I'm telling you, it crossed my mind multiple times after he hit six threes. Is this the last time I've ever seen Clay wearing a Warriors uniform inside Jason? Yeah. Like, that's a thing. Yeah. No, and, and that's why, I guess, like when you do look at this game from a Kings fan point of view, which is someone that covers it, whatever, it is. It, and Deuce actually said this last night on the podcast. He's like, this could be the end of the dynasty. This, like, you could be a part of that story of ending the dynasty. Like, obviously, that's a little dramatic. Like, you're not going to be the reason, um, but ultimately, you're going to play a part within that story if that was the case. And Clay, for some reason, didn't come back, didn't go in this direction. And so, yeah, I guess if you really want to make it dramatic, and who doesn't love a little bit of drama with all this? NBA talk, yeah, then it sure it would be probably the biggest game because of all the angles. And let's just say this too, Shasky, let's just say Kings beat the Warriors and then they and then they have to go on and play the Lakers. Yeah, this would be the biggest week of Kings basketball in 20 years. What about what about the reverse? What happens if they lose? <sighs> so if they lose, I know a lot of people had, you know, expectations at least get in the first round of playoffs. Um, and you don't meet those expectations, it's it's scary. A lot of people are let down. I I don't I don't think anything would happen within the organization. You know, it's like you never know in sports, so that always scares me. Um, but I think fan base wise, like people are just not happy. But it's you. Can I just say this really quick? It is insane because you guys, you guys over there in the Bay Area, you have dealt with winning for quite some time now. Yeah. Quite some oh good for all of you over there with all your two little championships. <laughs> so happy for you guys. <laughs> Us over here, we have dealt with pure dog crap for sixteen season and finally you get this glimmer of hope last year and forty eight wins. It's amazing. This year, what, forty is it forty six wins? Yeah, forty six wins. Forty six wins. If you told me that they were gonna win forty six wins the next year, I would be pleased. Now, 46 wins in the Eastern Conference, you'd be making the playoffs, so that (laughs) sounds a lot better. But my point is, is that there was still so, I would rather be talking and breaking down competitive basketball for the rest of my life with the Sacramento Kings team than ever go back to two nine-game losing streaks in a season. Yeah. Mo, you you weren't happy for us winning four championships. Why why you guys? Straight cap. Come on. Like, (laughs) keep it real. What are we doing? You know what? You know what's funny though? I've, I, I'm just, I am a huge basketball fan. Like I'm a way bigger Kings fan, like lifelong bleed purple, all that crap. But like I, I'm obsessed with basketball. And so when I like over the years with Warriors basketball, seeing some really beautiful style of play is just in some really special players have been fun. But now that the Kings are good, Screw you guys. Yeah. Hope you lose. Yeah, especially you got to work with me and hear my big fat mouth <laughs> talking to you. Yeah. I don't talk too much about Mo. Mo's a good. My, Mo's yeah, my, you ain't that's talking my, too much because that dog. DoorDash is no, getting no, delivered. No, 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 no. Mo, Mo's my dog. Jay Hill, and here hey, comes hey, DoorDash. Hey, hey, he ain't, hey, Mo, tell me this guy doesn't watch too much pregame balls. Take him play off, man. Take care of the Chase some diapers, Shasky. Stop I watching me actually, so hard. Some of us can multitask. <laughs> yeah, this guy can't, Mo. I'm telling you. But no, Kyle Draper, he gets all the smoke. He gets all the smoke. Mo's. Yes. Oh, Mo's my enough. girl. Mo's my girl. She's she's good people's. Mo, have fun up have there in Sacramento one. tomorrow night. I wish you no luck at all. 
<laughs> Same to you guys. No, and enjoy. Either way, let's enjoy the game. I'm sure we'll all be talking later. So thanks for having me, guys. Anytime, Mo. Anytime. You're welcome. Anytime, Morgan Reagan. What a she's, she's she's really she's really knowledgeable too when it comes to the NBA. I love talking to her about the game of basketball. There, uh, pre and post game show hosts up there, NBC Sports California, Do Some Mo Podcast. Also does her dues through the G League for the Stockton Kings. She is a superstar and and she's a star. She's a star. Let me just say that. She is a star. Um, let me throw this at you here. Dalt Johnson, Petaluma's finest. Daddy Dalt Johnson. It's got a little four month old baby girl. Dalt's come back to ABC Sports Bay Area. Just tweeted this out. Okay. Jonathan Kaminga. Uh-huh. I'm gonna read this tweet and I want you to see what it means. Okay. How, how would you I'll let it sink tweet? in? Let it sink in. Jonathan Kaminga, at 21 years old, in the year number three, averaging 16 points per game. Now, it's up to 20 when you take in what happened since January 5th at the Denver Nuggets game, 25-4 run, but 16 points a game, 21 years old, year number three. Pascal Siakam, how much do you think he averaged after year three, in which he was 24 years old? 11.2. 17. Okay. It's 24. I, I'm not playing the game no, properly. No, 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 no. You're fine. You're fine. I'm just asking <laughs> okay. you guess. It's not a game or anything yeah. like that. Um, Jalen Brown, year three. What do you think he averaged at 21 years old in year number three? Jalen Brown, probably 19. Averaged 14 and a half points per game. Okay. Now I'm playing the game right. Kawhi Leonard, 22 years old. Uh-huh. When he was done in year three, and you just heard Mo say he really didn't become that player yeah. until like year five, year six. How much do you think he averaged? In 12. Year 13, 12.8. And now, mind you, Kawhi was 22, Jalen Brown's 21, yeah. Siakam was 24. J.K. is 21 years old. Year three averaged 16 points per game on this roster with this core. What do you make of that? I, what I've been saying all year, I think if he was on any other team that was below where the Warriors are in terms of like having this many veterans... I think he'd be already a 20-point-a-game guy. Easy. I don't know if they'd be winning right. all those games because that's a different question, but I think he would already be that. I mean, Bonte, second most free throw attempts and the most two-point attempts on the team. Yeah. Well, that tells me this guy's getting to the cup yeah. and getting into the lane, and he provides so many elements of what this team desperately needs. He's one of the few guys that gets to the free throw line. One thing, as I was looking at the, the stats from last year to this year, we underrated how much Jordan Poole went to the free throw line. Oh, I didn't. We just can't bring it up in around here because apparently Jordan Poole sucked. Oh, you want to, you want to go somewhere? And then I got <laughs> Kaminga started uh, the fifth most games on the team, even though he kind of went all over the place. Him and Pods right around fifth most minutes. It's Kaminga seventh, Pods right. fifth. Twenty six point three for Kaminga, twenty six point six for Pods, uh, and he was the third leading scorer. I mean, I, I think he had an unbelievable season. He had a this great year. season. He's going to be in a conversation for most improved player. Tyrese Maxey is going to get that award, but Kaminga is one of the top five most improved players in the league. Now, speaking of Jordan Poole, I know they didn't win a lot of games, but he got his game right before the offseason. Okay. His last five shot 44% from mm-hmm. the floor, 37.5% mm-hmm. from three, 23.5 points per game, nine assists, four rebounds. Trade back in, for in him. In the month of March. Trade Kaminga for him. In the month of March, Jordan Poole. In the month of March, Jordan Poole, 44.5% from the field. 35% from three, five assists per game, three rebounds, 19 a game. So he started getting this game right starting in March 1st. Now, it's probably too little too late. Now, I know all people say, well, they lost a lot of games. But more importantly, and individually, he started to see some more efficiency, started to become more efficient. I mean, he, so he I wouldn't sense. I wouldn't close the door on Jordan Poole. He, he got, got sent, sent to NBA Siberia. Siberia. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. He's playing with, I mean, that, ro- that roster is terrible. Terrible. But don't sleep on Jordan Poole. They're, I wouldn't close the book on that. I mean, he's a great team player, Bonte. They were supposed to lose games, and they did that. And he also there got his go. at the end, so there you go. There you go. He understood the assignment. As you survey around the league, just for a split second, I am very interested to see what happens with Porzingis and the Boston Celtics in the playoffs. Because if he doesn't play well, I feel like he'll be the guy from that team that gets the most criticism. Um. Well, no, it all goes back to Tatum and Brown. You think so? We go to the top dogs, yeah. Porzingis can skate free. We kind of, 
the, the perception with Porzingis is he's going to get hurt or he's going to flame out. We I don't feel think like he's he had a really good year no, this he year. Di- he did. But when you're on that team and you're Jalen Brown making $300 million. Okay. And you're Jason Tatum up for a big time extension that could get him 250 to $300 million. It all boils down okay. to Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Don't get it twisted. I mean, that team, the Boston Celtics, they're definitely under the most pressure of all the teams 100%. in the NBA, correct? I mean, just how bad. The East, I was just going through the Eastern Conference People playoffs. are taking the it's Indiana Pacers against the Bucks. I, like, I'm looking at all these predictions, like these series predictions. Would you be shocked if they beat them? No, because That's like, the Bonta, what's the first thing Bonta said? Is Giannis even healthy? We don't no, know if Giannis calf, is He has a calf strain. Well, even, even in Boston... So you got Philly and Miami in a 7-8 game. And I think Boston is probably hoping for Philly to lose because they match up better with Philadelphia. They always have for some reason in the playoffs. But what if they see Miami again? Oh, they don't want to see Miami. They don't want to see Jimmy Buckets. What if they see Miami again in the first round? All right? Then you got Pacers, Bucks, as you mentioned. And then the New York Knicks. What if Philly drops to 7? What if they win that playing game and they play the Knicks? I'm taking Philly over New York if I know Embiid is healthy. Brunson's had a monster. He has, though. but oh so has Tyrese Maxey. I know. I know. That's like the worst matchup. No the Randall, Knicks. too. I know yeah. Randall's not. I know he's kind of I a meme I think Brunson's player. better without him. Well, you can still use his size and stuff, and he can be a bucket when he wants to be and when he's involved. He's but just, yeah. he, when he misses buckets or he doesn't get fouled, he stops playing. First team, all bad body. A hundred percent. He drives sure. me crazy. Drives me crazy. And if he was doing the same exact things in Washington, we would not bestow star status on him. So, yeah, so I, I believe I, the you know New York media has elevated I, I him. Also, look at the Western Conference. Minnesota seeing Phoenix in the first round. What, you like Phoenix? <sighs> Phoenix won every single regular season matchup and beat them down yesterday. Okay. And They're now gonna, you're trying to work back Carl Anthony uh, Towns into the, the equation. Now, Phoenix has a point guard issue. I worry about them late in games. But if they're rolling... You sure Minnesota wants to see Kevin Durant and Booker in the first round of the playoffs? No, no. no. Oh, my gosh. So if you're Minnesota, you're on upset alert. If OKC ends up playing the Warriors in the first round, that's a big if right now because the Warriors have to win two games. But you don't think they're going to be a little like, damn, we got to see Steph? Well, I don't want to be a, you know, Selsky Mr. Predictor here, but if... Big if the Warriors can have one of the nice weeks of all time uh, where they knock off the Kings and then the Lakers... I'm telling you, watch out, OKC, if the Warriors You're can You're not get allowed through. to say that after all the work you've been doing today. Well, no, once you're we not get allowed in, to look ahead. then it's different. No, no, then, then we pivot. Not, then you're you're we not pivot. allowed to look ahead. <laughs> you're not allowed to look ahead. Mark the tape <laughs> and then burn it if we you're lose. You're not allowed to look ahead. No, not you. Would anybody be surprised after if all the OKC lost doing. in the first round? I'd be surprised if they lost to... Sacramento in the first round of the playoffs. I wouldn't be surprised if they lost to the Warriors in New Orleans. What if New Orleans is the eight? What if New Orleans ends up being the eight seed? That's a scary matchup for OKC. New Orleans scares me. <laughs> the West is, hey, the West is good. I tried to warn you guys a couple years ago about the West. But these teams the West that were has coming, been good for thirty years. Yeah, but these, I mean, this, but these my whole life they've been. I good. mean, literally, I've but been trying to warn you about this no, one no, no, division. No, 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 no. I tried to warn you about Minnesota, OKC, and New Orleans. Well, that you, yeah, yeah. And they're here now. Yeah, and they're in the way. They are in the way. How's that Paul George trade working out for for the Clippers? I hate com- to see that happen. In contrast for OKC, I mean, within four years, Kawhi, yeah. they've completely. I mean, they've they've turned the entire league upside down. The Clippers may have traded an MVP. And Shea Gilgis Alexander. Yeah. Now, yeah. He, Jokic will probably win the MVP award, but Shea is going to be a finalist. The Clippers traded him and all those draft picks. Now, OKC is sitting on nine guaranteed picks over the next five to six years. Nine guaranteed first round so, picks along with that core. Remember what Pat Bev said when that happened? The next five next years. Five years. Yeah, who the next was the other guy off are. the bench? For who? Uh, for the Clippers that was, uh, he had the, the, the dreads. Oh, Montrez Harrell? Montrez Harrell, Montrez Harrell was talking so much oh, smack yeah, to the Warriors that was. year. So much smack. Oh. Uh, he he's, he reminds me of, remember the guy who was in Denver? Kenneth Fareed. Kenneth Fareed. The Manimal? The Manimal. The Manimal. I was tra- the, the nickname was the on Manimal. the tip of my tongue. The Manimal. I remember Montrez Harrell. The Warriors uh, played their first regular season game at Chase against the Clippers. They got beat by 30-plus. Honest to God, I wanted to put my 401k on the Clippers in that game. <laughs> they, were, they were only three-point favorites. And I was like, damn. I was I was 
like trying to figure out a way to get somebody into yes, my Vanguard. Vanguard account. I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to remove dude, the entire four hundred one k. I, was I will take the hit. I was trying to make a big time bet on that game. <laughs> like <laughs> he won six man of the year, Montrez Harrell in twenty twenty. He's out of the league now. He He's was out of the so league. good. Well, gone. I, what happened? Well, in the post game, I remember in the post game. We're all sitting 30. there waiting for uh, Montrez Harrell. He's only 30? Yeah, he's only 30 years old. He got caught up with something. Maybe he had like sweet thing happen. And you got to get off of that. He was driving around with a lot of weed. Uh, um, he ain't nothing wrong with a little weed. Yeah, he well, was come on. He might yeah, it was, I think it was like the intent to sell or something. He had like pounds in the truck. Shout out Nate Newton. Uh, uh, <laughs> listen. Shout out Dude, Montrez Harrell was in the locker room. That was Zebo. <laughs> He Jack was in Randall. the locker room. And that was the game where Pat Bev was talking uh, that talk. That was the same day. Johnny Depp and Blow. Montrez Harrell put on these chains, right? He had like <laughs> he had like eight different gold chains. Eight different chains with bezels and uh -huh, everything. Uh -huh. And one reporter goes, oh, man, so-and-so got that chain on the, I'm just saying the team, yeah, but it was, so-and-so yeah, uh, -and -so has that magic. chain on the Houston Rockets. Yeah. And Harrell looked up and goes, hey, nobody got this chain. <laughs> what you talking about? Ain't nobody. And like, got angry, like got snappy and sassy with the reporter. Nobody got this chain. I'm the only one with this chain. It's like, yo, dude, chill. Yeah, June 15th, 2022, Harold was charged with trafficking less than five pounds of marijuana, a felony drug charge punishable with up to five years in prison. What state? Uh, I forget the state, but in August 2022, the crime was downgraded to a misdemeanor. What state was this, uh, Lubbock? <laughs> was it Tennessee? I think it was like Tennessee. Give me a second, I'm pulling it up right say, now. It's either Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, somewhere probably there. So uh, Richmond, Kentucky. <laughs> Richmond, Kentucky. He was pulled up during See? a traffic stop yeah. in Richmond, Kentucky. Gosh. But if he had a box of bourbon, he'd be good. That's right. Yeah. Uh, he suffered an ACL injury, too, so that probably okay. was in training camp with the Sixers. He, he would throw down some crazy dunks. Yeah, he was nasty. He was nasty. He was nasty. So we're going to ramp it up. All right. We got we got play in tournament tomorrow. I'm excited. Kings Warriors. Can we take a minute to discuss UFC 300? Max Holloway. Okay, Gaethje's nose got exploded yeah. seconds into that fight. Right. Any normal human being is like, I'm done. I, you know, I just just get me out of here. The fact that they fought the way that they did for five rounds, and then at the end, like, let's go, let's just swing them, and then they get KO'd. The way he got KO'd as like a buzzer beater. That was an incredible fight. Well, incredible. Well, Max fight. Holloway had to fight one, and he still told Gaethje, "Come to the middle of the ring, let's throw down." And, and they, they just did. Hit to him. And, and they, they just did. knocks him out. Even the the fight with the uh, Chinese women? girls, the two Chinese women, were, it was an excellent fight. <laughs> well, the Chinese girl got murfed out, choked out. Well, she, she was passed out. Definitely passed got out. Got saved by the bell, and she got up and was like woozy. They were like throwing water all over her ice. She took. She got beat down, but she's <laughs> tough. Is everybody from Brazil too? I feel like every other dude is from Brazil. Like, is that is well, that just a big MMA, yeah. Jiu Jitsu, grappling, all that stuff? They I mean, that dude, that, that dude destroyed oh, another guy. Yeah, Hill, Hill or whatever. Yeah, he was trash. He was. I was watching some of his pre pre fight uh, interviews or whatnot. What a strange dude. Well, he had the the Hill had the double thumbs up. I think it was for Northside Chicago. Yeah, I don't know what he it had was. Northside written across his chest. It was a lot. He was going. waiting for him at the door. Like, all right, because. Alex, what's his name? What's his last name? Pereira, I want to say. I could be wrong there. But he walks into the ring. He has that music, and he kind of yes. does the bow and arrow. He always yes. does that. Uh, that was easy work. Need him just like looking like, really? That's that? Really? I mean, those guys are crazy. Yeah, they're, they're beasts. It was a good card. It was a it was great 300. card. 300 was really, really good. Really, really good. Well, and then UFC 301 almost broke out in the middle of the living room between two of my cousins. But we're good oh. now. They broed it out. They kissed it out. They were really? good. Yeah. Why they get a Shasky household? Yeah. Deli Boy, uh, we had our, our annual, we call it the Big Joe now. Uh, you know what? We'll do Fast Five. Yeah. Go ahead, Malloy! Crack, crack, crack. So uh, Saturday we had our annual, it used to be called the Disasters. Now we're going to rename it to the Big Joe in honor of my dad. Um, and so the whole family went up there. We kept it smaller than normal and, and didn't because it's just last minute and whatnot. And it was supposed to rain all day. And the skies opened up because Big Joe was looking down on us. And I don't know what the heck he put in the air for my brother. I was playing great. 
And I looked up, and my brother was out hitting me all day. And he, I, I putted out of my mind. I had like five birdies. Oh, wow. Okay? And it was one of the most uh, birdies I've ever had in a so round. Really, now, are these the Lucas Alexander birdies? No, or are these true no, ones? No, no, okay. no, no, no. These are legit. I'm sure this was, uh, legit. I'm sure it was three birdies, Spadotti. We know. We go from 60 to 70 Call to up 80 Deli Boy. to 85 Size. inches. Nah, call up Deli Boy. But I, I got to give credit to him. You I make a think he shot a 74. He beat by at least one stroke, if not two. I think he shot a 74 or a 73 out there. He was outstanding. Tip of the cap. And Tip then the, cap. the winner of the disaster, because we come up with the big job, because we come up with a different scoring system. My little cousin, Dennis Porter. In his first ever 18 holes, we put the balls down on the final hole in the rain. It was just coming down never so lightly. We said, you versus your brother, 100 yards out, get it in the hole. And we were cheering him on, and little Dennis won by one stroke. Good job. He Good wins job, the green jacket. Dennis. Good job, little Dennis. Good job. Spinotti, what you got? Uh, it's Jackie Robinson Day. Yeah. yeah boy. 77, uh, 77th anniversary since uh, he made his debut in Major League Baseball. So shout out Jackie Robinson. 77 years. Can't believe it. I love 42. Great movie. Very and, good movie. And everyone wears 42 today, which I know, is really it's cool. The best. Uh, my final thought is shout out to the San Jose Sharks clutch loss over the weekend against Minnesota to close out the home schedule. Yeah. Guys, they are assured <laughs> of the worst uh, record in the NHL. They will have the best odds in the draft lottery. 25% chance to land Macklin Celebrini. Oh, I love that. Good times coming for the Sharks, baby. Good time. My final thought is, sure. why the hell would the 49ers trade Brandon, Brock Purdy's number one target and Brandon Ayuk? Are you really, do you really want to go down know. that road in drafting a rookie wide receiver? I know receivers are equipped to make the transition smoothly into college, from college to the NFL, but do you really want to trade the guy who had the second, who was second in the league in yards per catch, had over 1,300 yards receiving in a run-first offense with an offense that had Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, and George Kittle. Are you sure you want IU traded? Are you sure you want to trade Brock Purdy's number one target? Yeah, I'm not with that. I'm not with that. I don't sign off on that one. I'm, a, I'm off that. It's a deep wide receiver draft. Next Thursday, by the way, NFL draft. Cannot wait. That was Fast Five brought to you by Xfinity. At home or on the go, you'll get the fastest internet to all of your devices. Warriors, Kings. The worst what? commercial I saw this weekend, which I've seen oh. a few times, the Carmelo Anthony one is just an odd one. Which one? It's, it's very pretentious. Which where one? he's like drinking ringside. You haven't seen that one? No, nah, I don't watch commercials. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shout out Scotty Scheffler, winning the second green jacket. Yeah, there you go. Scotty there you go. Such a beast. There you go. Only yeah, the fourth I, I ever the player to win under 30 years old to win uh, yep. two green jackets. Seti Ballesteros, Jack Nicholas, Tiger, Tiger Woods. Woods. There you go. Tiger Woods, y'all. All right, Steiny Guru next right here on 9570 Game. I'm right. I'm what you might call very good at hide and seek.
I'm out. All right. How we feeling? Been a long weekend. Warriors had a shot at eight going into Friday's game. They end up 10th. They play the Sacramento Kings tomorrow in Sacramento. If they win that game, they play Friday, the loser of the Pelicans-Lakers game. That'll be on the road. And if they can win those two games, then the playoffs start mm-hmm. on Sunday where they'll be in Oklahoma City if everything goes according to plan. What's up, good? What's up, baby? First, I hope you had a good weekend. Sure. And call me OC, your old partner. Because I'm overly confident against this matchup with the Kings. I guess I'm just down on Sacramento, Macramento when they had uh, Monk and company. But without Herter and and Monk, Stani, I think they're just mincemeat. They're chopped liver. So I need you today to, you know, appropriate fear. But I just like this matchup, the first of the playing for the Golden State Warriors. But I will say this. If this were a Saturday show, shout out Grandy and F. Um, who was with Grandy? Our guy, uh, you bald with all the time. Dan Devoe. The, yeah, my man. Um, they did a great job, but Stani, that Pelican game didn't sit well with me. But to hell with that game. It's about well. Operation Sacktown, Mactown, and I just don't think the Kings got the firepower. Well, I mean, we can we you can know? talk about whatever Warrior fans want to talk about today. Yeah, I mean, we went into Friday. I mean, that that was a disappointing loss. And I think that, you know, obviously you get Sacramento. I think that's a great matchup in the play-in game, regardless of the site. Sacramento's got a couple guys hurt, Monk and Herder. And I'm looking at their team, the Kings, and saying, okay, who do they got? Aaron Fox, Sabonis, Mm -hmm. Barnes, Keegan Murray. And I'm thinking to myself, well, can De'Aaron Fox win him a game by himself? And I'm not sure that he can. And I just don't see Sabonis and Harrison Barnes preach eliminating the Golden State Warriors because they're going to have to have big, big roles. And I, I know Barnes had, what, 39 last time they played against the Warriors? But I like the Warriors' chances tomorrow, no doubt about it. But I also think, think to myself, man, they had a shot to get to eight. Damn. And they didn't get it done on Friday, which was disappointing. But, hey, here they are in 10. How you feeling, Warrior fans? 888-957-9570. It's that, that simple. You know what? You just you got me thinking. It seems like nobody can deny the Warriors have been playing better basketball. But the one constant throughout this run here the last month or two, every time from a standing standpoint – that game is right there for you to take and really impact yourselves and move you up in regard to the slots they can't get. And that was the case Friday nights, Donnie. New yep. Orleans put it on them. You know, I look at that game Friday night Talk against me, the man. Pelicans, and I don't – like, this is this is where I'm at with Steph Curry right now. And this this is – not to he get ahead. A, yeah, not he had a get, good look. Yeah, yeah, not to get ahead of ourselves. But, you know, I look at that game and and – Man, if Steph Curry doesn't make three crazy threes oh, okay. in the in the all fourth right, quarter, all right. All right. that that game isn't even close. And it just got me to thinking, you know, yeah, they they lost another close game on Friday night, and they were lucky it was even that close because Curry has to reach into his back pocket, score sixteen points in the fourth quarter, all right. and I get it, he had a tough second quarter, but. I look at a game like Friday, and I say that's one where the Warriors got beat Friday. They got beat. They didn't lose that game. The The, the Pelicans were the better team that night. That's the way I looked at that mm-hmm. one. But anyway, uh, the Sacramento Kings come into town, and I guess the other thing I'm, I'm just wondering is, cause, and I'll just share with people, so before the show, you said to me, did you see Marcus Thompson's tweet uh, from The Athletic? Right. And I said no, MT. and it was a link to his story. And the story basically uh, was entitled that the Warriors have one last, they're down to their last gasp in a season of disappointment. And then you click the link and it was Marcus Thompson's story. And I was thinking, down to their last gasp in a season of disappointment. Is that the way Warrior fans 
kind of feel like this season went? Was it they're 46 and 36? I get they're the 10th seed. Has it been a disappointing season for the Warriors? <sighs> How, what, what, what word would you put on it if you're a Warrior fan? Uh, we don't have to necessarily go back and look at everything, but what, you won't let what me word say, or what phrase? Okay, you can right. use a phrase. You I got a few. Come Stein, down to a word. But, 888-957-9570. Yeah, but what if I ask you, what What if I'm, I'm doing one of your takes? Yeah. What if I'm still waiting, but you're like, no, the right. regular season. Regular you, season. Just reg, based on just the regular season. I would say inconsistent. Yeah, that's a good one. Inconsistent. And, I mean, everything is still right there in front of them. But you didn't ask that. You asked, you know, about the regular season. So, well, I guess what I'm saying is it does feel like a lot of Warrior fans are disappointed with, with where this team is and where the, the season's gone. But I, I was just thinking about this for a sec. If you think about everything, all right, they won 46 games. That was more than last year. For the first time ever in the dynasty, they had two rookies who contributed on a consistent basis, one all year long and one for the last 50 yes, games. Steph Curry stayed solid in his 36th year. May have taken a little Aged. bit of a dip, yeah, yeah. but he's still holding firm at 36. Right. Clay Thompson, from where he was at the start of the year to the where he was at the end of the year, he's figured something out. Maybe he'll never be the player he ever was, but who is at his age? But Clay Thompson, I think, has had a pretty good year, all things considered. You had Jonathan Kaminga. Jonathan Kaminga emerged in his third year. Might not have been as much for some as others, but I thought Kaminga had a really good year for the Golden State Warriors. In his third year, he's still only 21. Wiggins obviously struggled most of the year, but you could say right now he's playing well. He's playing well right now. And Chris Paul, solid addition. He's been a solid addition to the team. So, to me, the only real disappointment isn't it just what happened to Draymond and how that affected the season? And if it and does that kind of color the entire season of even some of the good stuff that happened? You know what? Great question. I think that would be unfair, but I do understand it. But what if I asked you, okay, explain to me why this team, including Friday night with everything in front of them to move up in the standings, why can't they find their mojo at home? We're way past Draymond getting suspended for that, right? Yeah, I'm just, I look at it as 46 wins. They had 46 wins. And if you want to point to their home record, I'd say, well, they were probably second best team on the road. Why did they win so many games on the road? Why did they lose so many at home? Well, I just look at it as it evens out. 46. Yeah. 46 is the number. Uh, and that's, that's a 10th seed. So, I mean, you tell me where we're at. How you feeling about the Sacramento Kings? Tomorrow, you split the season series with them, two games to two. But now they're out. Now they're out of, uh, you know, there's six mans out, herders out for the year. You don't have to double anybody, you, you like would the think, chances. right? No doubt about it. 888-957-9570 is the number. Um, the other thing I was thinking about in terms of the entire year and where we're at right now and... You know, over the last three or four weeks, I've gotten this sense from people. Oh, yeah, stop talking about the offseason. Yeah, it's not about the offseason yet. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what's going to happen. But the reality of the situation is Golden State Warriors season could end tomorrow. It could end Friday. It could end after that. But that's the problem with where we're at right now with the Warriors is you can't just talk about the game against Sacramento tomorrow without thinking about the ramifications of what one one loss may have. Great word. I mean, you just can't. And you go into sack tomorrow and you lose, that may mean a significantly different kind of offseason than if the Warriors can figure out a way to string two wins together and then you, you, you go up against Oklahoma City and you take your chances. Like... That's already a win to me. If but I you got to handle, you got to get there. You got to punch the ticket twice. But the fact that the Nuggets are not waiting for you, I do think Stiney, they figure something out collectively. Uh, I know we have Monty Pool joining us today, right? Uh, Monty Pool, eleven o'clock. Okay, uh, NBC Sports Bay Area. Because this is crazy. You tell me what you think. I'm at the, your doctor's office. You're my doctor. 
Stani, is there anything going on with Kaminga that I should be, we should be concerned about? Yeah. Or yes, yeah, th- sure. Because I was like, man, He's a young player who's going to play in the playoffs probably more this year. And than would you a, say his else? role has changed in the last week or two? Oh, and yeah. It's affecting him. Last two weeks, absolutely. Right. Okay. He was starting, and now he's coming off the bench. That's a big adjustment. They're going to need the the good JK. You know the. The one that's just attacking the rim. The interesting thing, though, and that's kind of one of the things yeah. we're going to talk about today is they do need the they knew they do need the good JK. No but doubt, the better Wiggins plays, probably the less JK we see. You know, yeah. So I, I always hated that, that and idea. I think that uh, I think that here's what we're looking at, and I want to know what Warrior fans think because. I think we know what rotation we're getting into the postseason. It's going to be, unless he changes the starting lineup, which would be shocking to me, Goo. He says, uh, I think it's going to be Curry, Clay Thompson, Wiggins, Draymond Green, Trace Jackson Davis. Chris Paul and Kaminga, the first two guys off the bench. Gotcha. Pajemski's going to have to play in yep. that lineup. Mm-hmm. And then... It looks like, even though he didn't play over the weekend, that Gary Payton the second, if he's healthy, Man, would, if. Be the, would be the ninth guy. Gotcha. So that's, that's gonna, it. That leaves Moody and Looney essentially out of the rotation unless something happens. Yeah. Foul trouble, an injury. And things do happen, Stiney. They do. Okay. But I hear you. If, if the Warriors come out tomorrow, play a good solid game, but don't, let's say they don't blow out the Kings. Moody probably won't play, or will play very little. Kavon Looney will probably play very, very little, just in emergency stints or something like that. Are we are we good with that? Yeah. I well, the, Stani, I don't want to go uh, Doc Rivers on you, Mark Rivers, but it's about matchups, and I do remember. And you tell me, I'm, I'm being real here. I do remember the game of the year for Moses Moody was the game prior to in Sacramento, the coach. Steve Kerr sat him down and told him, you know what? Your number's not going to be called for a little while. And just like you just echoed, things change. They needed Moody, and he had one of, if not the best game of the year. So does that mean anything tomorrow night? If you're Coach Kerr, does he remember that? Or is this Nagu? Everything's fresh, fresh slate, and I'll, 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 I'll substitute accordingly. I don't think he remember. I mean, I don't know if he remembers that game okay. specifically, all right. All right. but I know that when he looks down the bench, and if he needs to go to Moody, he'll know Moody's going to be right. ready. Okay, so that's trust. So I like that's the one thing. I mean, what to me, Moody and Looney might be out of the rotation, all things being equal. But you're right. Sometimes things change, and if he has to go to one of those guys, both those guys have proven they'll be ready. So he'll go to eleven if he has to, but. I don't think if everything goes according to form that he wants to, right. ideally. All right. I hear uh, from the 5 1 disappointing because of Draymond Green, but I love the rookies. Uh, this from the 6 5 0. Exceeded expectations considering their early self sabotage. I mean, here's the other thing. Let's just talk about the positive. Yeah. Where's your. I know it's not the playoffs. Wait, we can lump all... Did I hear Spadoni say earlier you can lump all this into the postseason, though? If we call it the postseason. You can call it the postseason because technically it is after the regular season, okay. so thus it is tell postseason. You what, do, you, tell you do you agree with that, sir? I'll meet you in the middle there just for the sake so of So what if not I say, arguing. Spadoni, hey, they, the Warriors are kings. Whoever loses, they made the postseason. You guys would be like... They, technically no. they did. Technically right. they made the postseason. Right, but if you go to... Basketball reference. Basketball reference... It's and not if there. you lose, to, <laughs> let's say you lose tomorrow to the Kings, then it says NBA Finals, then it'll say Western Conference Semifinals, and then it'll say Missed Playoffs. Damn! Unfortunately. Let me in! So, that that's... Uh, they gotta fix that. What was I gonna say about the postseason? Uh, I can't remember now. Oh, Spadone said it was okay to call it the post. I asked Spadone on this morning. So just, Stein, based yeah. off your point right there, I'm just sure. taking a look at the 2021 Warriors season. I'm looking at their basketball reference page. Yes. And in terms of where it says, you know, record and what they did, it simply says 39-33, and 33, shorter season that year, finished eighth in the NBA Western Conference. There is no mention of anything that happened after that. Why does that bug me, guys? Well, do you want them to be called a playoff team when they're not? No, I want... That would be fake news. 
but there are no games that are, are just evaporate in the NBA. Yeah, Raymond Renner, we talked to it's him. Playing game. What if somebody goes for fifty tomorrow? Then does their team win? <laughs> it should matter. What do you mean? It it should be logged. It's logged. You can find it. I bet if you want. <laughs> if you it just want. doesn't mean anything. All right. Uh, big smoothie. Big smooths in Oakland. Smoothie. What's up, big smooth? Summarize. I would I would call the season bipolar. But here's the thing, man. I was a little disappointed on Friday. Man, um, preach. I, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you, man. I, Curry's turnovers are why, why? Why are you flipping the ball, hook shot pass? I, some of his turnovers were bizarre, considering the magnitude of that game. I, you know, I, I, it's just weird. And then and then we need a heroic effort. It to me, it, it's to me. Curry dug the team into a hole with his turnovers, and then he had to pull them out. It's it's just like when he doesn't have to do nuclear curry in that fashion to win, it just expounds. It looks like it's too much energy being expounded just to – they weren't going to win that game, man. They got Molly Wap. Let's just call wow, it. Wow, man. And, and, and I don't think that without J.K., you need J.K. athleticism in a game like that. And listen, this is without B.I. So I, I, I don't know. Um, but I look on the flip side, silver linings, you got the best matchup against the Kings. You got no we doubt. wanted that. Yeah. Okay, cool. You got the King Kings. The Kings have a Warriors problem. Now, what happens after that? It's short of Denver. I think we can beat anybody um, on the slate. I'm not saying. I'm not even saying. I'm not even saying we can't beat Denver. I'm saying you, you all the stars have to align, and you got to you got to put everything. You got to have the best play you've played yet. We you you can't beat Denver with what we've seen thus far. It has to be the best that we could put out to beat a team like Denver. It's possible, but I'm just saying, I'm not, other than Denver, I'm not, I think the Warriors can beat anybody. Uh, uh, I, I think the Warriors can beat anybody else. Denver's going to take a Hercule, Herculean effort, but, you know, that's just. Big I Smoothie, think. I'm hey, with you. Go, man. I'm Please. with you. I'm with you. And I'll say this, Big Smoothie, I was in the house Friday. Nobody cares, but you're right. There was no Kaminga, so I know no excuses, Stani, but that's a big deal. But moving forward, starting tomorrow, going up on a Tuesday, they need Jonathan Kaminga, the the Kaminga that captivated us, Donnie. And I just, I know we got Monty at 11. That's my biggest concern for this team going into Tuesday and Friday night, assuming there is one. So, you know, the one thing I was I was thinking about, this is from, uh, this is from back in January. And this, because I think, I think when we talk about the war, you, you know, you say they got to have that Kaminga. Right. They got to have that Kaminga. And I just want to revisit some of the stuff that Steve Kerr has said mm. o- over the years. All right. This is what he said back in January. This was when, when Kaminga, I can't even remember if Kaminga was playing a lot or not, but they asked him about this unit Kaminga playing alongside Wiggins. Well, you know, we've talked about uh, trying to get them together. You know, theoretically, uh, our two longest, uh, most athletic players. So we have not been a good defensive team this year. So we've wanted to to try it. It hasn't, you know, connected really. It hasn't been good for all season. But we're we're experimenting. You know, we've Gary out, Draymond out. We're trying to find a, a two way lineup that can help us. But obviously, the um, you know that lineup didn't click. All right, that was after a January loss early in okay. January. Yep. So he's talking about Kaminga and Wiggins playing together. And that was without Draymond Green playing. All right? So the next day he was asked about that lineup again. Right. The reality is, you know, where we've been the last three weeks without Draymond, our defense has really suffered. I think I, I mentioned it earlier, 27th in the league, something like that. So in theory, you want to get, you know, your, your two most athletic wings on the floor together for defensive purposes. But we have, uh, you know, a lot of uh, things with this team that we're, you know, we're always trying to accomplish. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, so while that combination may on paper look like it might do something, it might, it might alter other, uh, other combinations, it, it, it might um, not work as well in a different area. So, you know, we, we, we have the tape and we have analytics. And uh, frankly, both of them uh, have pointed 
us in the direction of not playing those two together. And it's simple as that. So uh, it hasn't been very successful. Uh, we're trying to win games. We're trying to sort it, sort it all out. But um, we have to experiment. But we also have to be realistic about what we think is going to work. So that was, uh, that was <laughs> January 8th, about halfway through the season. And it was when Draymond wasn't around. So Draymond came back, and Wiggins and Kaminga played with Draymond, and they had a little more success. But it's clear that now with the games this important, that he likes the front court of Wiggins, Draymond Green, and Trace Jackson Davis better than or he prefers no. that to Wiggins, Kaminga, and Draymond Green. Got gotcha. you. So that's what I heard. What's going to happen in the What's going to happen tomorrow night? Like, what's going to happen with tomorrow night? How much overlap will those guys have, Wiggins and Kaminga? Like, what if I I'm say just no, I'm being real and I've been consistent? Yeah. The only time in my life, <laughs> damn sure not gambling, but Stani, it's TBD. It's to be determined. I think it's Bedoni. I really believe the first few minutes are for the coach and the coaching staff to decipher, and we'll be able to tell. We just don't have the the power to make the necessary changes. I think you know when Wiggins is on. And if he's not on or a couple early fouls, I'm not saying Kaminga wants that because it'll benefit him more. But, Stani, I think tomorrow it's going to be a quick trigger for it, you know, for for – that to manifest if, if one doesn't have it going. And that's why yesterday the Kaminga, I, I don't know what was, like if I'm Steve Kerr and I'm driving home yesterday, I know it was 0 for 4, it was Utah, but Stani, that was a game, not get 30, but shoot enough, to, you shot four times. Like, so I don't know what's going on in the melon with Kaminga, and it may be nothing could start tomorrow, but Stani, I'm telling you, I am concerned. And I got to be careful. I'm assuming the dub, no pun intended, tomorrow. So I'm thinking of Kaminga against the Lakers or New Orleans. Like, something's up. I mean, you... I hope, I, I, I hope I'm just being over... You know, I'm putting two on the 10. The one, the one thing I was thinking about, and you, you brought this up, it's like, okay, you start Wiggins, and let's say Wiggins maybe is just so-so. He's just so so. Yeah. Okay, at that point you say, "Well, we'll keep we'll keep Wiggins on a short leash and we'll go with Kaminga." I think the one issue with that is that the way Steve Kerr may look at it is when I get the best out of Wiggins and I get the best out of Kaminga, the Golden State Warriors are better when I get the best out of Wiggins. And so it's easy to sit here and say, well, if, if Wiggins starts out slowly, he'll have Wiggins on a short leash. By the same token, I think there's something in the back of Steve Kerr's head that says, I need to give Wiggins every opportunity in the book to play and to play through it and to, and to start becoming effective because that's the only way we can be at our best. So I get it. On the one hand, you could say you got to keep Wiggins on a short leash and go to Kaminga, but... I just think that's kind of against Kerr's nature, too, wow. because I think he thinks all things being equal, when Wiggins is at his best, the Warriors are at their best. When Kaminga's at his best, maybe the Warriors are still really good, but not as good as when Wiggins is playing wow. at, at his highest level. So 888-957-9570 is the number, 888 888- Nine five seven nine five seven zero Kings tomorrow. Hey, wait! Give me the thing you're most confident about going into that game tomorrow against the Sacramento Kings, and then give me what you're worried about. If you are worried about anything, and you want to get into the season and how that went, we can do it. It's it's just it's all things Warriors today as they play the first playing game tomorrow at the Golden One Center in Sacramento, and that's my question: What makes you most confident? Tomorrow against the Kings and moving forward. And then what worries you the most if we're talking about tomorrow's game and the season moving forward? 888-957-9570. That segment was sponsored by Alameda County Probation Department. It's a wrap! Want a career with purpose, great pay, outstanding benefits, and a promising future? The Alameda County...
makes me not want to be very nice. What do you mean? Well, I could say something like, Warriors, go, Warriors. All that work. They did all that work. And they got sacked. To go 27 and 12 down the stretch. All that work. Oh, they're the hottest team in the league right One now. They've won nine of 11. No, they are the hottest in the last 11 games. They've won nine of 11, the hottest team in the league. All that work. Well, yeah. and you're still in 10. Boy. And you got B Friday night. That bothered yeah. me. Boy. New Orleans couldn't miss a shot. I mean, I'm. Are you. Hey, Draymond people, didn't take one. Fa- let me ask. Uh, cause, let me ask you. Yeah. Are you happier today than you were Friday before the Pelicans game? I am. And wow. D- even though you had today, it, even the, though you had eight uh, yeah, in no, your no, grasp, yeah, yeah, you had we eight did. in your Joe Lake. We did was staring right down you, the middle Steve of a Young. home play-in well, game. No doubt okay. about it. But I the, this but changed right. a lot yesterday when I found out it was sack on ours. Uh, and that's who we were playing, Steiny. I don't care on the road, which may be an omen for the Warriors. So if this were us facing the Lakers in L.A., I would be mad. Okay. But this is, I'm sorry, Sack. <clears throat> I raised two kids. You've been good to your boy. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all but, ain't ready for but these you problems. Now, but you now missed the opportunity of beating the Kings. Beat, like, Give it to me. You were going to get the Kings once, probably. Anyway, think about that. You end up nine or ten and play the Lakers, and then you upset the Lakers. Imagine then, now we got sacked to make the playoffs. Oh, wow. Well, so, yeah. 888-957-9570. Harrison Barnes gets a mulligan to try to end the dynasty. <laughs> Remember, Barnes, he had that three. Dude, he Barnes, had, he had that three last year. He had a few things, man. Uh, let's go to, ooh, no, no, no. In San Francisco, it says he may want to call out some Warrior fans. Oh, no, no, no! You got to be careful. You know no, how I, no, no. you know how I, you know how I defend Warrior fans. <laughs> Fat Albert. Uh, hey, good morning, guys. What up, baby? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, love you guys. Love the show. Appreciate it every day. Listen, okay. So here's where we're at. Yeah. Warriors are going to get through the play-in, okay? Oh. And then we're going to have we're going to have some home games coming up in the playoffs. Oh. Warriors fans, if you are someone who's fortunate enough to attend these games in person. Get your ass into the arena on time. Be there before Uh tip-off. At the beginning of the third period, be in your seat, ready to go. It is so horrible. It's it's such an energy drain for the team to be starting these games at the beginning of the first and third to like a quiet, empty-seated arena in the playoffs. And a play in games and these games are this important, guys. If you have those tickets, honestly, if I would make, I would take them away from you oh. and put some people in there who are going to show up and like, cheer the team on. Oh, wow, wow! No, no, no! no. I, I just went in. I don't hope you don't mind, Goo. I, I just saw Spadoni. Now he is a diehard <laughs> Laker fan. He was shaking his head in disgust. I guess what he's, he's thinking on cloud. is, nah, he's trying to act like I guess he's what not. Spadoni's thinking is, I'd kill. To have Laker fans be like Warrior fans, right, Spido? No, it's... Oh, I'm... Did I misunderstand? When they won a championship, this was also a conversation. Oh, they're not arriving oh, in time. Oh, my goodness. This is the finals game, yeah. and it's starting at 530. You are people right. Are the, please, yeah. shut up. <laughs> shut up. Who cares? Hey, Warrior fans. No, no, no. We love you, but that's how I, I didn't saw say it. it. Yeah, Spido. No, I did. Joe Spadoni, 5 to 6, Monday through Friday, pregame show. I had John up. this morning, Spadoni. Thank you. I was in the shower. 888-957-9570 is the number. Warriors, Kings. If you're a Warrior fan, you, you feeling better than you did Friday going in to the Pelicans game. The Pelicans game. Pelicans were pretty impressive that night. I, I appreciate you keeping it real. And you know who else was, Donnie? 12 of 23, 7 of 13 from deep. Steph Curry, 32 minutes, 33 points. But I'm I'm being real with you because I'm hearing this a lot and I'm seated on the timeline. And you killed me just like Ghostbusters when they 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 you know whack a ghost. You said Curry's turn assist to turnover ratio. This is one of his best. He had seven. How much of that marred his 33 points? Because you're right. If he don't hit some of those Houdini shots at the end, they're winning that game easy. Keep it real, because I think a lot of people are trying to blame the chef into some turnovers. And there were a couple at the end, 
but you're not in that game without 30s heroics. To me. I mean, to me, when whenever a, like fans call in, and they have been a lot in the last couple months, talking about turnovers, and when they sp- specifically talk about Steph, but when they talk about the Warriors' turnovers, I, I kind of shut it down. And the reason I shut it down is because what it always gets followed up by is they're sloppy or, you know, they just don't, they're not, they're not thinking, they're not smart. And it's like, I actually, I I don't think that they're any different than any year in the past in terms of the Warriors turnovers. And I know you're going to be like, this is all you harp on, Steiny. This is all you harp on. But I think that when Steph and Draymond turn the ball over, it's a function of, it's a function of the other team's length and athleticism. Um, New Orleans had that. It's a function of the other teams speeding up those two players in particular just a little faster than they want to go. And it's also a function of Steph being 36 and Draymond being 34, and there's just a little crispness that you lose. Like, I do not think Steph is being more careless with the ball. I just think... If you lose a little zip on a pass that's right, going right. across the court, it may get picked off. It and they're may the get sixth tipped. best. That were, that was the sixth best rated defense in the league. Not making excuses, Donnie. And they got length and they got after it. The hardest thing for any offensive player to go against is when a guy is quick and they're long. And then if you throw smart on top of it, it's over. Especially if you're not, you know. Especially if you don't want to quite move as quickly as they want to make you move. It just makes makes you a little more uncomfortable. I think that's one of the reasons the Warriors just kind of overall had a little more disjointedness this year. Yeah. Because they had four young players to incorporate, and the older players are just struggling a little bit more with with all the responsibility they've had over that's the years. That's real talk. And you know what? I want to take a second to, because you know I'm Mr. Offense. How many did you score? How many did field goal attempts did you have? But I want to take time out right now and give Draymond Green love. And the reason I'm giving them love, Steiny, is Friday's show, you and I, Guru and Steiny, Steiny and Guru, wrestling was involved. We talked a lot about wrestling and the history. And Draymond Green wrestled a bear Friday night, and that bear was named Zion Williamson. Now, Draymond didn't attempt a field goal, and Zion Williamson was 11 to 26 from the field. Steiny, Zion is a bear, a bull. I I don't know, uh, all mixed in one. And Draymond did everything under the sun to go Joe Frazier, giving up, what, 30 pounds? So, Day Day, I saw what you did, and it didn't culminate in a victory, but I'm going to keep it real, Stani. I don't give a damn about zero field goal attempts. You did your job, and you made it hard for Zion and that's almost the impossible. So hat tip to one Draymond Green, Steiny. I don't know if you saw what he was doing in the paint with that Barracuda that was game. Zion. And Zion scored too, you know, a couple of them at the end. But man, Draymond, I got it. There was no double. He went toe to toe with him all game. That was. I'm, I'm just real quick. Zion was uh, George Foreman in his prime. That's who he is on the hardwood. And Draymond with Joe Frazier, toe to toe. So I saw it. I got some did, breaking news too. Did a great job on him. Zion's a fifty-eight percent field goal shooter. What? I mean, normally if he takes twenty-six shots, he's going to make fifteen. Man, so he was awful yesterday. They were awful. Yeah. What what's, the hell what's, happened? What's the news? Uh, so it's not. Uh, Spadona, can I get it? It's real. Five seven the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what it's going to be. I hate to see what it. Lakers oh. not playing tomorrow. Hey. What Laker is not playing tomorrow? Oh, who's going to break it to us, Fedoni? This is Google breaking about, LeBron news. LeBron about to play chess this week. Stani, I hate to disappoint you. It won't. There's no sport breaking news. This uh, is personal, our show breaking <laughs> Yeah! Oh, you're hurt. I can already see it. Yeah, no breaking news in the sports uh, world. Uh, but tomorrow, and this all started because Dr. Pangier, he was one of them, reached out on X, which you're not a part of yesterday. And a lot of people, Stani... Wanted a speech from me, and I'm going to give one tomorrow before we get out of here tomorrow. So that was the breaking news sounder. 
You guys will Unless get you one change tomorrow. Your mind. Oh no! I, we're warriors. That's a staple. I'm tired of getting pushed <laughs> around. Go. Tomorrow, Steiny. Look at my boy. Look, I, I just love you, the support, oh, man. Right. Um, yeah. But what time? He really thought it was breaking news, and I'm it? laughing. What time? What, do it. What let you set it up? Can you do it at two o five? And I'll listen to it on my in my car on the You'll way home. Still be here, baby. But we'll that come way, up with if, a dime. We'll come up with dime. 205 no. with the boys around. You'll still be here. Will you get nervous if Willard and Dibs are here when you do it? I don't or do you want to do it before them? Well, you got nervous at your father's birthday a little bit, you said. But you said it didn't sound like No, it didn't sound like okay, it. Okay, then why would you use that against me in a public forum? I, I, just, I, just wanna let, you I just want to let that. people know that you were nervous. <laughs> That's what you said to me. I just want to stick you with this pin right now. Can man. we get a time for this tomorrow? Uh, I'll go down to Chipotle or something. See that because yeah. his speeches are very long. LeBron had Dwayne Wade. You know, Dwayne you know what Wade Shakespeare had LeBron. said. What? You know what Shakespeare said, I, and I know he's your favorite author. Brevity is the soul of wit. I don't. So get let's nervous. keep it short. Tomorrow, <laughs> Lenny in Oakland. <laughs> Lenny's what confident in the Warriors. You know what, hey Lenny? You can't be too confident in the Warriors. You got, they got two play-in like I games. Say, I, I've been listening to your show, oh, okay. Shining Guru, for yeah. a long time. I didn't know if it was going to work out, but you guys are working out all right. Thank you, guys. Wow, Lynn, I appreciate it. I didn't, didn't either. either. <laughs> Still not official either. <laughs> Love you guys. So I'm really confident just because the Warriors are on the road. You know, I mean, I think to be in the 10th position, you know, they've been really inconsistent, like you said, all year. I feel like that that's hard when you're at home to be, like, not a good team at home. But on the road, I feel like yeah. they, they go into work like a trap. You know, they're traveling for work. They they get really down to business. They're going to handle their business in Sacramento this weekend or uh, on Tuesday. Appreciate the call, yeah. Lenny. Uh, the, Steiner, you asked the spread right now. Vegas is, has a warrior favored minus two and a half on the road in SAC. What did I say? Four and a half or yeah. five? Yeah. It's going to bump up. You watch. You think so? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. I just think we're looking at a Laker, a Warrior Laker Friday night. And that's when the season ended last year in six games on a Friday night. I don't like it. I know the one thing Warrior fans are concerned about. We, and, we and, talked about and here's oh the thing. God. Well, there's a lot. Kaminga. No, this is big. This is a bigger picture. This is beyond the Kings. It's bigger <laughs> than the Kings, as Goo would say. <laughs> Whoa. I know what the Warriors are most afraid of. It's LeBron playing chess this week. They don't want LeBron James to start thinking about playing chess. And that would be... Because if LeBron James starts thinking about playing chess, he just might say, you know what? What do you say we treat this 7-8 game uh, against the Pelicans yeah. as, let's just get a nice light workout. You know why? Because we don't want to play the Nuggets. Right. We want to play the Oklahoma City Thunder. Which you own. So you know what? Let's treat Wednesday yeah. against the Pelicans like a little practice. You don't want to do that. We'll take today off. <laughs> we'll take it. tomorrow off. Never. We'll get a little scrimmage in on Wednesday. We'll stretch on Thursday. And then on Friday, when the Warriors come here to L.A., in a winner take all game, you want a part. The Warriors will have just played a grueling game against the Sacramento Kings, and there sit Anthony Davis and LeBron James, fresh as daisies, fresh as daisies, thinking this is the one we got, and now we go beat Oklahoma City. It's easy. They're thinking nah. the same way as the Warriors, nah. ladies and gentlemen. It is just admit it that. That that does that would worry you. No, it's trifling that guys like us that sit on our keister if, with a microphone okay. in front of us, okay, just ignore the competitive okay. aspect if you don't and think, component. If you don't think you for do one minute, no, I'm just saying this. Steph? Here's my point. If you don't think for one minute, if the Lakers get down in that game 31-13, <laughs> okay, well, I'm and the Pelicans are playing like their hair's on fire. And they got their guys running up and down. And LeBron's it. They're getting ready for Friday. Which is a game seven, Steiny. If you lose oh, or somebody turns oh their ankle and you, or Anthony Davis' finkster muscle tightens this is, up. This is you LeBron James. You don't want James. any part of that. You want to win, get in. 
You and go Russell Crowe Gladiator. If, if you think LeBron James, that scenario isn't going through his mind, I think I think you're naive. I think you're flat out now, naive. Now, I'll meet you halfway. It's going through all their minds. But, Stiney, they're going to ball. And we'll be we'll able see. to tell. Did they ball yesterday? Well, I think it's one of their best games of the season. Yeah, they smoked them. But why? I, that I'm trying to. Why figure. did they? Why did they ball yesterday? Because Ingram was getting uh, reacclimated to the Pelicans. Okay. Right. It was well, bigger Anthony than him. Davis played with his hair on fire, but he Dude. left the game. Why, Steiny? Back spasms. Back spasms. Oh my goodness. He, maybe maybe he needs some rest. He might. Could you imagine? Yes. Adam Silver you wouldn't think, allow. He. he well, oh my they're goodness. They're not gonna. They're not gonna not play. But I'm just telling you. You think you? I you want a party. You're that good. Yes, Steph Curry I, comes to town I'm and Draymond. Be, I'm going to be honest with you. I think LeBron James thinks he's that good that if he has a choice between the Thunder and the Nuggets, yeah. and he thinks there is they a significant in a row, and they think there is a significant difference there. He absolutely, so it's in his mind. He absolutely, <sighs> he's the great manipulator. He, AD did leave with dude, spasms. He, he sits out. The, like the third to last game of the year when they're like, oh boy, that, that might be the difference between nine well, and eight. He, had an he doesn't care. He had an ankle. He did in game two of the playoffs last year against the Warriors. Exactly. He took two playoff games off last year against the Warriors. Well, right. I'm just saying. Baby brother saying loser mentality, Steiny. Um, but they're thinking that's, that. They, that's they a Bobby go Fisher, <laughs> Boris Spassky <laughs> mentality. Know about Bobby Fisher? Those are the two greatest Always chess searching. players of all time. Now, that's the doc you need to watch. Yeah, I never saw it. Searching for Bobby Fisher? Yeah, oh my gosh. Oh, I saw a movie. Uh, oh, you know what I saw? I saw a movie the other day. Cone Brothers. It's called A Serious Man. It's a little... little Guess what? It was a little quirky. You, you ever seen any Coen Brothers movies? No, I'm like, big, who? Big Lebowski. Oh. Well, yeah, I have. Okay, that's them. A they produce them. it. They're not in it. Um, They have cameos every once in a while, but they're not actors. I went heavy on uh, Miller's Larry Crossing. This weekend. Unbelievable. Uh, the Big Lebowski. Fargo. Fargo. So what was they interesting... They Kingpin also. Give us something. What was yeah. interesting about those guys? Like, they're just quirky. They're just, their movies are all, something happens in the movies that just, everything goes awry. Mostly dark, Blood dark Simple. comedy. Blood yeah, Simple was comedy. another one. That's yeah. a great one. That's more of a drama. Eh. No, no, there's I'm no just, eh. They're one of the greatest director teams of all time. There's no eh. Yeah, yeah just FYI. I went ahead and uh, Larry there's, no, David. there's no eh. I went ahead. That's who they are. No country for old men. Oh, my God. Jeff on Larry David. Oh my His God. buddy is the best dude going, man. Him and uh, his wife, Tony. Larry David. Hey, by the way, we may have a... We got Monty at 11. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. That's right. We got Monty Pool coming up at 11. Uh, not to get ahead of our, oh ourselves, boy. but... Uh, you frisky today. Do we have a... Uh, we got a market for Clay Thompson? Do, do we have a market oh, for Clay I Thompson? Oh, you five nice teams. Did you see who just got an extension this weekend? Now, boy, I love you. Grayson Allen. Now, how Grayson much? Grayson Allen got an extension this weekend. $70 million over four years. Yeah, that's pretty lame. About 17 and a half a year. Uh, He's a starter now for the Suns. 13 yeah. and a half points per ball game, 33 minutes a night. Grayson Allen, four years, $70 million. What are we doing? But that's Clay's production in three years or four years. What do you mean? 13 points a game. You know, fourth option. Okay. So uh, he's a be, damn good so player. I love Grayson Allen. North of that. Oh my God, C Clay's going to get thirty, I believe, Stiney. Oh, the new. But York let me Knicks? ask you this: Would okay. you rather have Clay for thirty or Grayson Allen for seventeen five? Now that's a that that's, that's a no brainer. That's that's the greatest no brainer in the history of mankind. I'll let you know before I get out of here. Yeah, but why do you to. think like that? <laughs> because that's a comp. He's a starting two guard on a team that's like the Warriors. What's up, baby? He's starting two guard on a team like. Is with the Warriors. Well, they just put that number, put in the cap. Brandon IU says 30 is too much. Not <laughs> IU. 30 is too much. Who says that? Uh, Brandon IU, not IU. Oh, wait. 30 is too much for Clay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we don't have to talk about that now. Um, but that's uh, just put it in the hopper. Put it in the hopper. Grayson Allen's a good player. 28 years old. Entering his prime. Entering his prime. By the way, Clay. Hmm. She'll, 
Should have left C.J. McCollum alone on Friday. Uh, Yikes. He hit the step back on the chef. Yeah, but... That was yeah, wicked. But Clay got him revved up. Dude, I... Clay got him a little okay, revved up. All right, but look at you. Don't I rev know up you C.J. McCollum. Have, are, By the way, C.J. McCollum, you see the minutes he played on Friday? Or Friday back I, can't back get, I can't erase yesterday's Ooh. stinker. Yeah. They just went and flushed everything they did Friday night. They would have been out of the play-in. Willie Green, I need you to call us. But here's the thing. Willie Green, as, I love you. That was as a good as the failure play, yesterday. As good as the, as good as the play in. They would have been yeah. out of it. They're Okay, so they're. you know what they're going to do? They got two games at home this week. They're sitting at home, the Pelicans. But you might have a rematch with okay, the Warriors. Okay. At and the that's, smoothie Then that gets back to my other point. I think we got to stop Stop thinking like the that's, teams are scared of the Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not saying... The Warriors have no chance, but Warriors did, did, yeah. the, did the Pelicans look like a team that feared the no, Warriors? I, I, no, they feared did Feared them. No, but they were down. Well, that's a young Early. team. Yeah. So you're telling me they a young team every three. with Zion Williamson, what'd they get down in the second quarter? I think it was 14. 14 or yeah, 15. Yeah. They get down. They came back. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can't come back from a 15-point deficit if you're scared. But I'll say this. They have the same problem the Warriors have, the Pels. What's they that? are better on the road. So if they do survive L.A., no, even if they lose L.A., uh -oh. they're going to host the Warriors. War is going to be on the road. Well, I, yeah, two games, no matter what. I just hate we're off Saturday, so we have to wait till Monday. Work. Go do. I told you. Warriors this week. Go tell them that he did. Right. You'll do Warriors this week Saturday. It's every Saturday. You come there, in with me. No, all four of us. Devone, no, Evan. No interest. Grandy, Spadoni. No, I have no interest. Signing did that for the show for a while. Thank it was you. It one of the first shows I worked on I, here. Thank you. Look at Spadoni. Him and Bontemps going Called at me it. six Dude, days a week I, I, I pulled the car over off CJ, of a bender Friday night. So 707. Saturday was a blur. And Steiny went at it. 707. CJ ain't half the player Clay is. Hit the pike, Steiny. Well, he's twice the player Clay was on Friday. But no, as far as a career goes, no, Clay's had a better career. Oh, but on. what I'm saying is, Clay got a little frisky, and CJ McCollum didn't like it, and I thought he got CJ. Now, McCollum what do you classify as frisky? Chirping, he was oh, chirping a little too much. I, I must have missed it. Yeah, Clay got in. Clay got. Clay <laughs> I got went in home again. and watched it again. Like that was a game to watch again. Damn, Curry had a look. Do you call time out there? Just a thought. It wasn't a good shot, but he'd made four of them in the third quarter. Yeah, or he fourth quarter, so what are you going to do? All right, coming up on the other side, we got Monty Poole, NBC Sports Bay Area Warriors. They are in the play-in game, and it is tomorrow night. You can hear it right here on 95.7, the game, 7 o'clock tip, 6 o'clock, Warriors Live. And that segment was sponsored by Fremont Bank, full-service banking, no compromises. Monty Poole. NBC Sports Bay Area covers the Golden State Warriors. He's right on the other side on 95.7 The Game. I'm a Warriors fan all the way. Now it's time for the Closer of the Week. Uh -huh. Presented by LiftMaster.
Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All righty, let's get right to it. Uh, let's talk to Monty Poole, NBC Sports Bay Area. Covers the Golden State Warriors. The man. done so for a long period of time. Monty, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. How you guys doing? We're doing well. If, if, if I were to ask you this question, what answer would you give me? What's at stake for the Warriors this week? <laughs> uh, well, let's not get into the dynasty talk because the dynasty is already over. Um, that, that ended in 2019. Yeah, they won a championship since, but dynasty sort of implies that you are winning. You're, you're in the thick of it every single year, uh, like the Spurs were. They didn't win, you know, 20 championships, but they were a dangerous team for all those years. So I think what's at stake for the for the Warriors is that they got to figure out what kind of, who they are as a team. You know, 82 games usually is enough to figure that out, but in this instance, it's not. And so, to me, if if they lose, uh, this team has been a disaster. Everything from the Chris well the Chris Paul uh, prior acquisition was all about the postseason. They didn't bring in Chris Paul because they wanted to win 55 games. They brought in Chris Paul so that when we get to the postseason, we have a guy on our bench who can lead our bench crew that's reliable, low turnover guy, high assist guy, an orchestrator, an organizer. And so if they get, if they're one and done, that's, that's a colossal failure. But to me, they got to get through at least two games. And I know the second game is going to be a lot tougher. But if they don't, to me, it says, okay, guys, it's time to start turning the page. Monty, great stuff, man. You stay keeping it real. And I got to ask you this question because a lot of people think, you know, we get out of bed trying to start something, and that's not the case. I love this team. I've watched this team this year, and I've seen the the strides that Kaminga has made. But I want to say this. As this team has jailed over the last month, Monty, since the bilateral uh, tendonitis in both knees and now Kaminga coming off the bench, I, I'm feeling a little nervous about him upstairs with his head game going into uh, tomorrow night's clash with the Kings. I'm at your office. You're my doctor. A am I barking up the wrong tree? Am I seeing something that's not there? Can you talk to us how you feel about Kaminga here over the past week? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I got to think, I kind of think based on conversations with him, uh, even before the neat thing popped up, that, that he's kind of past that mopey, pouty stage. Uh, and that he'll be fine um, because he understands it's really more about minutes than it is about who's starting. Um, and so I, I don't I don't worry about him. I, the thing I look at is that okay, uh, as long as he's healthy, will he continue to be assertive on the court? Um, and he likes playing with Chris Chris Paul. So I would think that those two would make, kind of make some nice things happen on the court. I don't think J.K. will be an issue. In terms of his his, uh, his attitude, his mentality, I think he's, he's good there. But again, you know, when you get to a certain point in the season, you, you ask yourself these questions. And the, the main question you ask yourself about a guy like Kaminga is, is he ready for the big stage? Because last year, he was a non-factor in the postseason for the most part. So he's come a long way this year. He looks look like a guy who can give you something in the postseason. I think he can. But I think there's a element, there's a part of me that says let's let's really you know see how it works. But I don't think the bench start thing is, a, is an issue with him right now. Monty Poole joining us on ninety five seven. The game covers the Golden State Warriors for NBC Sports Bay Area. Um, you know, I with the whole Kaminga and the tendonitis, and now he's coming off the bench. You kind of go back and listen to Steve Kerr from January when he was talking about the lineup of Kaminga and Wiggins together. And he was he talked about how, you know, there were some challenges with that that twosome playing together. As we, as we head into the postseason, do you think, how much overlap do you think those guys will have in terms of Wiggins and Kaminga? Because it seems like Kerr might lean toward one or the other rather than playing them both. Yeah, I mean, they were the minutes between those two were rough for a while. Um, they kind of got ironed out with Draymond, and for a while they started Draymond at the five mm -hmm. with Kaminga and Wiggins on each side, and it was good for a while. But it didn't work in the long run because I think 
Draymond had to do too much uh, in the paint. And so and they made the move to Trace Jackson Davis. That led, To me, the best Draymond is a Draymond who can kind of roam a little bit. Mm. He's not stuck to guarding one guy. And when Trace is there, Draymond not have a guy who's behind him that he trusts a little bit. I mean, it's not a Bogut situation where Draymond knows that Bogut's going to be back there and Trace is a rookie. He's not the same caliber defender that Bogut was when Bogut got here. Uh, Bogut got here. So uh, I think this is the best Draymond. You know, you've seen it in the past few weeks, some of the plays he's making, the way he just mucks up the, other po- the opposing team's offense in so many ways. Um, I think if he's playing with Kaminga and Wiggins, He's got to be a little bit more judicious about what he does because those guys aren't really going to be protecting the rim behind him. Yep. So it's a little different dynamic. But in any case, um, I think Wiggins and Kaminga played better because Wiggins got better. Mm. The Wiggins we saw in the early early this season, uh, you know, he didn't all really appear all fully engaged. And when he got better. I thought it clicked pretty well. When he got engaged and he was locked in, as we say, um, which didn't seem to be the case early in the season. But lately, he's been much better, um, much more intense about defense, uh, and even offense. He's more assertive. So I think that's been the key, is that when Kaminga and Wiggins weren't good, it's mostly because Wiggins wasn't very good. Good stuff, Monty. I, I've been consistent telling Steiny, you know what? If this team doesn't play Denver and somehow they qualify for a seven-game series, I like what I'm seeing. With that said, Friday night was just another example to me, standing-wise, Monty, that one game where, you know, they can gain some traction for whatever reason against whoever it is. They can't get it. Can you share with us your thoughts driving home Friday night from Chase um, after that loss to the Pelicans? Because it was bitter for me. Yeah, um, well... More often than not, when the Warriors fall flat um, in the postseason and often in the regular season, there are two causes, and they're kind of working hand in hand. It's defense and it's turnovers. And when you're committing turnovers, you don't really give your defense a good chance. <laughs> you know, in that second quarter against the Pelicans, they had nine turnovers, most of them live ball turnovers. They gave New Orleans 15 points in a quarter off turnovers. That's, that's incredibly bad. <laughs> you know, so... That's where the game was lost. I do think that, and, and Steve Kerr did, I asked him about this yesterday before the game. Um, you know, I rewatched the game when I got home, and I saw, uh, I thought Trace Jackson Davis was pretty effective, but he only played 22 minutes. And Pods was not effective at all, and he played 27 minutes. And so I, I asked Steve if he, if he, in terms of his rotational uh, flexibility, if maybe, you know, there could have been more room for Trace. And he said, I think the quote was. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to hear that. What was the quote? I wanted to hear it. Well, that's a tease. Because you you, 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 you texted Vine that uh, our pods plus minus took a beat in that game. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, uh, Monty, what did did Steve Kerr say about pods playing 27 and TJD playing 22? Well, it wasn't so much about pods, it was about TJD, basically, Clay. I said, you know, he was pretty effective when he was out there, but only played 22 minutes. And Steve said, I think the quote was, uh, to be frank, to be perfectly frank, I wish I'd played pa- uh, uh, Trace a little more. Mm. All right. And, and, I mean, I think that makes sense. I mean, this, which is why I ask about the rotational flexibility, because sometimes coaches get caught up in their rotations and, they get rigid about the minutes and who's playing when, who's going to go into a game at a certain time, who needs to be out there now, who needs to come off now. And I just thought, you know, Trace, you know, given that he had 10 points on 5 or 7 shooting, he had 11 rebounds in 22 minutes. And the Pelicans are, I don't know if you've noticed this, but they're a pretty long team. Yeah. You know, they've got a lot of – and Trace is someone who I thought could have been better used and certainly more frequently used – uh, in that game, and it, I didn't think it was a game for, for Brandon, for, for, uh, for Pajemski. I don't think it was a game for him, and, you know, he wasn't able to do what he normally does quite as much. I mean, he rebounded pretty well, but um, defensively, he couldn't do much at all. I mean, he couldn't guard McCallum. McCallum was hard to guard, and so, uh, of course, Trey Murphy's 6'8", so uh, it's, it was a tough goal for him. I just thought Trey should be out there a little bit more, and I think Steve, in retrospect, thinks the same thing. 
Monty Poole joining us on 95.7 The Game. He covers the Warriors for NBC Sports Bay Area. I mean, it was, you know, it was probably a month plus uh, ago where Steve Kerr was talking about Steph and uh, Steph maybe being a little bit fatigued. Uh, the second half of the season was solid by any standards, maybe not up to Steph's, but, um, you know, with the Warriors ideally looking at games Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and then obviously the rest of the first round, he played 74 games. Clay played 74 games. What what are kind of your expectations for Steph moving into this postseason, knowing that that Steve Kerr talked about fatigue, you know, weeks back? Yeah, Steph played a lot of games this year. Uh, you know, he, yeah, he had a couple of names, but nothing that kept him out for several weeks. You know, um, so I get that. But I think the great thing about the postseason, especially the first round, is that you got gaps between games. So the tough part for the Warriors is going to be getting through these first this first week. If they if they get through, um, I'm on the bridge here. It's got to get a little crazy. Oh, <laughs> we've heard. Yeah, we heard. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, Steph, if you can get if you get through this week, you know it's going to be it's a tough week weekend. Uh, I think Steph will be fine because then in the first round, I have. At least one day between games. Sometimes too, there's been instances where there's three days between games. Sometimes in the first round, so I think that's all good for him. I don't think Steph is tired per se, but I think mentally, you know, he might be. I don't think he's physically tired. I think it's more mental than anything else. Mm. And I think this will freshen him up a little bit. And I think the rest that he's gotten in the past couple of weeks has been good for him. Uh, not playing uh, yesterday, I think that was good for him and Raymond. So. I don't think that would be an issue going forward if, if they, but if once they get past these first two games, if they get past these first two games, I think they'll be fine. All right, Monty. Hey, we'll let you go. Thanks, man. Be safe out there. Thank you for your time as always. And it, uh, well, it should be a fun couple days. We'll see if it's a fun couple weeks. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. Take care. All right, it's Monty Poole, NBC Sports Bay Area. That opens up some phone line phone lines at eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. Monty was, whoo. Well, he always brings this to you. I mean, the two things he said to me was, I said, what's at stake this week? He said, well, the first thing, there's not a dynasty at stake. <laughs> the Warriors dynasty is no longer alive. I don't know if I'd say that. Yeah, because they go on to win it. But what if they get eliminated? Well, then tomorrow. he was right. And like you said, what was your, what was your metrics on uh, when a dynasty is officially dead? They won the last one, 2022. Last year, they got ousted in the uh, semifinals, six games. I mean, that's one of those. I have this my own definition. This would take a hit if you didn't get out the play-in. I if have my own definition. And yeah. other, everybody's got their own definitions of a dynasty. Yeah. So who's to say who's right? Yeah. But yes, if the Warriors don't make the playoffs this year, I would... I would tend to lean that it's over. Well, yeah, that doesn't help it. How about that? Uh, he said something to me, too, Stani. Um, You watched the game Friday. TJD was on the court when they were coming back, and I thought he came out too soon. Uh-oh. Yeah. And you thought Moody should have played more? This, it's funny. It. Dude, every, Spadoni, every game, I didn't every give game you a say, name. Every game. No, you said it on the Vine. <laughs> you didn't understand why Moody didn't play more. And, you I, know, it's funny. Every I had a couple every too. game. You know, there's, there's always <laughs> something it. Kerr could do better. No, come on now, shout out Kerr. I can't waste. I, I just I hate the Kings. Don't scare me. I, I really don't. But you know they control that. It'll be a raucous crowd, right? And but there's no Monk and Kandir and Fox beat just on it. You said earlier you started to show. Can he win a game? They. I mean they blew a twenty point lead to to Phoenix at home. So I just like what the Warriors' chances going in there to get to Friday. The Kings are four and seven in their last eleven. Now they've had some close games. They've Bo let a couple Bo slip Bo away. Boston's one of them. But yeah, the the reality is is the if you just look at it, the Warriors have everything going for them. Yeah, they're playing better. Warriors have won nine of eleven. The Kings have won four of eleven. The Warriors are as healthy as they've been all year. The Kings are minus two rotation players. You're playing them in Sacramento, which ordinarily would be a big advantage, but you've been damn good on the road this year. Yeah, no You're doubt. You're playing a team you feel more comfortable against, probably, You're than either the Lakers 
or New Phoenix. No, I hadn't thought of it. So, or the Pelicans. So, from that standpoint, I think the first round matchup is absolutely gold for the Warriors. The issue is you'd still rather have started from the eight spot, which they had a crack at before uh, Friday's game. Let me let me ask you this. Let me just throw this out at you. Does anybody watch a game on Friday against the Pelicans? And they're sitting there with Zion, who's 25, and McCollum, who I thought was older. He's only 32. And keep going. I got Trey some Murphy. Oh, man. And Valanchunas, Ingram. And Herb Jones, and all these guys. And Ingram doesn't even play. And you watch that game. Warriors get up 14. But the Pelicans are just, they're young, they're athletic, they're long, they keep playing. Does anybody watch a game like Friday and say, man, how are we going to win a seven-game series against a team like that that just is going to be coming at us in waves for the entire series? Like, does anybody else worry about the Warriors' durability in a series against a really good team when you see them on a night like Friday, when some of their shortcomings begin to show up. Like, I, like there's two things that I think, Goo, and you, you tell me what mm-hmm. you think. One is, I get it. Yeah, you'd rather play Minnesota or the Oklahoma City Thunder. Man. But I'm telling you right now, just because a team is young doesn't mean that you're going to have your way with them. These these young teams with their athletes and their length are really giving the Warriors trouble. And if you if they play hard, which they're going to because they're a young team, they may be able to make up for any inexperienced mistakes they make because they're just so athletic and defensive and get the Warriors out of their rhythm. Now, for a series. No hey, you didn't tell a lie. And I'm going to be honest with you. When I got in the car, Stani, I was lightweight mesmerized by the Pelicans' all-around performance Friday to win that game and stave off that comeback. But I got to be careful here. We got to be careful because I know yesterday the Pelicans did not play the Warriors, but they played themselves in a sense to where that was their B game. And it was just after 24 hours after their A game against the Warriors. So... I still go to what LeBron said on the podcast with J.J. Redick, just how hard it is to, you know, guard this Warrior offense as a whole. I still think that's there and on display. But, Stani, we're not all artifacts, the Warriors. We got some youngsters, and maybe it's going to take Kerr, like, leaving TJD on the floor a little longer or whatnot. But I feel like the Pelicans are still going through their playoff puberty as opposed to the Warriors, they've been there, and all it takes is one yeah. good thing, Stani, for know. them to get it clicking and going. And I thought that had happened for the Warriors, and then you come out at home against New Orleans and lay an egg. See, I don't consider what that, they did against wow, New wow. Orleans laying <laughs> an egg. I really don't. I saw a young team in here that Willie Green had thinking is better than the Warriors. And that's like the, that's the thing, man. I mean, it doesn't matter if the Pelicans are better than the Warriors. Willie Green has gotten the Pelicans to think they're better than the Warriors. That's half the battle. And I'm starting to think more and more teams think they're better than the Warriors, and they have the proof in the standings, which makes it a little bit easier to convince a team. 888-957-9570 is the number. Warriors-Kings tomorrow. Give me something that makes you feel confident about this Warriors team, not only tomorrow, but moving through the play-in and ideally for them, the playoffs, and then give me something that gives you cause for concern. What's your biggest concern as the games get more and more important? I mean, the one thing that I will say about the play-in game, and I'm not crazy about the play-in tournament, but the one thing it, it does do that I love is it puts more pressure on players. My feeling is with all this load management, like guys just don't, compete as hard as they used to. Mm, just, damn. They just they kick the ball, they kick the, the the ball, the can down the road and they just went but now it's hey, you win tomorrow, you advance, you lose, you're out. It, it, if you play a bad game, that's it. You're out. And I think that's that to me is always the most exciting type of game when 
their their consequences. And you know what? I'm not mad at that. And I just got to add this. You talked about you know Warrior fans. What's the what word would you use to describe how you feel about this season? But you didn't yeah. say postseason. And I don't know what we want to call tomorrow, but every, the world's going to be watching. You are the second game on the marquee tomorrow night. And I'll tell you this. Oh, Goo, you're making excuses for the Kings. If they lose this game, hey, we didn't have Monk. We didn't have Herder. We were down. But if the Warriors, who have played damn good basketball for a month and a half, Steiny, if their season ends in sack, I'm going to come in here with a bitter taste about everything Warrior basketball. You say, what is that fair? Because I'm going to feel it regardless of what you say. But, I mean, this is not where the season should stop health-wise with where the Kings are at. I mean, honestly, doesn't matter. I mean, when the Warriors lost the play into the Memphis Grizzlies I'll that never year, forget. It, 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 were they better? Yeah, well, they had a better record. So, like, the, the only thing, and I, only Warrior fans can answer this, I mean, does it matter if you get eliminated by the by the Kings, by oh, the yeah. Kings, the Lakers, or the Pelicans, or not the Pelicans, by the Kings, the Lakers, or, or the Oklahoma City Thunder? I mean, to me, it's it's a little bit all the same. But I mean, look, they the Warriors should they have an advantage tomorrow. No, They're playing better, um, yeah. And the Kings are hurt. I think you could rationalize losing to the Pelicans or Lakers. But not the Kings. That, I'm, That's the one. I hear you, but man. Just because of what you said, it's not hurt. But my question to Warrior fans is, in a week, will it really matter? Mm. If you got, I mean, or let's say let's say a month from now, will it really matter if you got beat by the Kings wow. in sack, the Lakers or the Pelicans on the road, or even if Oklahoma City got you in six games? I do think if you get to the actual playoffs and you lose to a very young and a number one seeded Oklahoma City Thunder... You can at least rationalize. A, maybe we're a little older, and right. we were, we were, yeah. you know, just we were fooling ourselves all year long to think we could go up against uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, and maybe, just maybe, that sparked some change in the off season. Right. But if you lose to a play-in game to the Kings, that feels disastrous. Does it really? And it, that's it what kind of does. Donnie, I think that's it's what a the nightmare. Xfinity Mobile text line says. Is it well the Xfinity Mobile text line? If the Warriors end in sack. The train is off the track, oh my Jack. God, yes, it is. And I guess what I'm saying is, well, how much more off the track would it be if you just lose on Friday to somebody? Is it still off the track, or is there one, uh, just a couple wheels still? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm just I'm, no, yeah. I'm asking Warrior fans yeah. at 888-957-9570. Yeah, go ahead. Go. I, I was at the game Friday again for the team time, and I always feel like I know what somebody's thinking. Stani, I was looking at the owner, Joe Lacob. He mm -hmm. was not happy. As the Warriors came back and looked like they were, they kept coming back and they just, the young team would just go get a bucket. And if it were three, a foul and one Zion. But Stani, I'm thinking to myself, if I'm right and he's not happy, maybe tomorrow has no, you, you know, bearing on what they're going to do or how they're going to move forward. Maybe. It's possible. All it's that winning and they still ended up 10th. And that's why it all. Comes down to Lakeham, not what the fans think. We can only speculate whether there'd be a difference between the Warriors losing tomorrow and losing in the first round of the playoffs. And then what if they sprung an upset in the first round? Would that be enough for Joe Lakeham? I mean, yeah. that's the other thing that makes this intriguing. I mean, could it be Clay Thompson's last game as a Golden State Warrior tomorrow? I mean, nobody wants to think about no it, doubt. but that's why the stakes of this game tomorrow and the game Friday, if they have one, are so high. 888-957-9570. Let's go, Warrior fans. You got the Kings tomorrow. Give me something you're super confident about and then maybe something that's worrying you, even if it's just a little. And Javier, call in, buddy. Yeah, yeah, we still right. got he the had his chance. Okay. He had his chance Friday. and um, Could have been working. He showed his Cindy Lauper. True Colors. That segment brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. It's truck month at your local Ram dealer with great deals on trucks that work hard, play hard, and break every rule on what a truck should be right now.
The Rock is coming out to play. This is Moses Moody, and you're listening to Steiny and Guru on 95 7 The Game. <laughs> Warriors Kings tomorrow, play in game. Golden One Center, Sacramento, 7 o'clock tip, 6 o'clock, Warriors Live. I got to check the uniform combo. When will we know that? I'm going to check now. We may have it. Okay. Um, Warrior fans. You got to Google it. You got a shot no, at eight. an app. You had a <laughs> shot at eight on oh, Friday. Boy. You're heading in as a 10 seed, but you get the Kings, which I got to believe most feel is their most favorable first play-in game adversary. What makes you confident against the Kings and what worries you about the Kings? And then you can extrapolate it to moving forward if you think they're going to win tomorrow. Uh, Jonathan's in Foster City. What's up, Jonathan? How you doing, man? What's up, fellas? How are you guys doing? Hey. hey. Good, good. Well, I was there on Friday. That was the worst second quarter I've ever seen them play. But uh, for, for, former Warriors employee, season ticket holder since 2007. All right. In the last nine years, we've got four titles. But if we miss the playoffs this year, in the last five years, we will have missed the playoffs three of those five years. That's a that's a dramatic change. I know there was a COVID year. There's a Curry injury year. I know we moved out of our home court advantage from Oracle to Chase. But, man, what, what do you think? Missing three out of the last five, that is that is a stat that has to just pain Lake up in the front office. And Steph. I mean, there's one chip in that five, though. I, yeah, I but, hear you. But that, see, that's, and I'm, I'm with Jonathan. That's the way I kind of look at the big picture. I it, it's it it's just the way I look at the big picture, and I and the reason I do it that way is because I do think that's kind of the way Joe Lacob looks at the the big picture. Is yes, they did. Of course, they won a title in twenty twenty two. That was the anomaly. But yes, wow. If if you, I I always go to the basketball reference thing. I really do. It's just, I mean, if you go from NBA champions to Western Conference semis to miss the playoffs, like that's a that's a big drop in two years. So, hmm. how do you how do you view it all? And I and listen, I'm not. I don't think there's one way to to view it all. How about this? And and I didn't necessarily want to want to really go back into this, but our guy Harry. Yeah. All right. You ready? Send me a send me a text today. It said uh, the tenth seed. <laughs> wow, that's the title. Wow. Why? Question mark. Because Draymond Green got kicked out for twenty plus games. You don't think they would have won three or four more games with Draymond? That gets him to six or maybe higher. They're going to deal with this again and again. It's not worth it to the team. It's not worth it to the players. It's not fair. And I, here's what I, I don't necessarily want to get into it, but I was just surprised that that was his season wrap-up wow. text, kind of. And we talked about it here. They're, you're really not a 10th seed well, if you allow us to well, and I would that say, to the jury. And I would say, you're really not a 6th seed if you think Draymond oh, Green damn. is going to be somebody who doesn't go through this year yeah. after year after year. So if you think this is a one-off. So I, I, I you just kind of surprised for that deal, me. Stein. Yeah, you did. You did. Now, what I mean, do you do around it, though? Because that's the right on the table brought to you by Atco. Well, there are going to be some questions and things you can do and wiggle jiggle, but what is Joe Lakeup willing to do? And like you said earlier, it, what where does he really think this team is at? Like, does that stat mean anything to him? And I got to believe if I'm a billionaire, Stani, that does. But then on the flip side, not being negative, if you think this is not going to happen again, well, it didn't happen last year. He punched a teammate and threw off the season. So I would tell Harry he didn't miss those amount of games. What did he play? 70-some games last year. So he was mean? available. Draymond. No, but he... Right. He punched pool. Right. <clears throat> but, excuse me, there was no suspension. And right, you look he, at his get the game log, right. uh, games played, right. he was there. Right, but I think you could... 
So what are you saying? He you didn't. Know, he didn't negatively no, oh, impact no, no, not, last I'm not year. Not saying that. I was just right. So what he's what what Harry's saying no is no suspension. If you look at the last two years, he's hijacked. That Draymond Green has cost the Warriors yeah. the last two years in some that. way or the other. Yeah. And I, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, I was surprised that was the first thing he said because I, to me, outside Draymond Green and the suspension. I, I think mostly it was a very good year for the Warriors. Yeah. We talked about it. I, I do. Yeah. So I, I was just you hit on your two rookie. Draft so you telling picks? me Draymond Green has taken away the positives of this season? Like how can you not talk about the rookies having a great year, great first year in the NBA? Well, you how can you not can talk say, about well, would you be without him? How would you? Ta- you know, how can you not talk about uh, Kaminga taking a jump as a third year player? I mean, there was a lot of good stuff that happened this year. That's why when when I heard, you know, Mar- uh, even even uh, Monty, yeah. Monty Poole saying they lose to the Kings or the Lakers, I think he s- said this year's a disaster. Well, damn. I mean, I I I guess. And if Joe Lacob's thinking that, then all bets are on. What do you think? What do you think about what Monty Poole said to us just a half hour ago? To me, if they lose, uh, this is a disaster. Everything from the Chris, well, the Chris Paul acquired uh, acquisition was all about the postseason. They didn't bring in Chris Paul because they wanted to win 55 games. They brought in Chris Paul so that when we get to the postseason, we have a guy on our bench who can lead our bench crew that's reliable, low turnover guy, high assist guy, an orchestrator, an organizer. And so if they get, if they're one and done, that's, that's a colossal failure. To me, they got to get through at least two games. And I know the second game's going to be a lot tougher. But if they don't, to me, it says, okay, guys, it's time to start turning the page. Interesting. He said colossal. So I think, I, to me, it sounds to me like what the differentiation is. And I, and I, this is where I think there's a lot of solid logic. If you don't get to the playoffs, that means your four young players don't get to experience a seven-game series. When two of them were rookies and they were going to play a significant role, and Kaminga, in theory, was going to play more than he's ever played in the postseason the last two years. I There is something about that that is a delineation point. You, you got you to gotta find a way to get your young players into the playoffs, yeah. into a seven-game series. So I, I kind of subscribe to that theory about you don't get into the playoffs, then it's not a good year. You get into the playoffs, and you can justify a lot of things. And we'd be what, do, full, what do you think? No, I, I agree, and we'd be fooling ourselves, too. Tell me if Monty didn't have a little sprinkle of this. Again, health is, health is wealth. We know this, so SAC doesn't have that on their side. But, Stani, this ain't last year in regard to – how scared I was of the Kings as a whole. They are missing two big parts of their team. This is the closest thing to a layup that there is. So you can lose to me, New Orleans or L.A., and I'd be despondent and hurt, but you can't lose tomorrow. You oh, just, man, I, I, I don't you think don't there's... Like, no, I don't oh, think my God, Spadoni, I, I mean, we I talked about it. I there's much of a difference. The fact I, that they're missing their heart and... Like, it's just... But but it's to me, it's it's one game. You can't expect to win 10 out of 10 one-game series. Then we're not very good then if we can't. With Steph, Clay, and Dre going but, into that building but, but this is to the, end their year? But this is the again? issue. This is the, like, this is the issue. You might get knocked off by the Kings tomorrow. You still went 27-12. and 12. Like you've, you've put yourself in a position where one bad game will get you beat. It'll get you eliminated. So... Like that's and and I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer to it. But to me, if you can't get to the playoffs, I just don't think a week from now there's going to be a big difference between oh god, can you believe we lost to the Kings or can you believe we lost to the Lakers or the Pelicans? I I just think the disappointment and the assessment of the season will still be kind of the same that it that it wasn't very good. Okay, I got and, that, and now where do we go from here? As a non-playoff okay. team, I gotta be eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. Let let me because you 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 brought up the yeah. pass. I'm gonna do it, and this may not be you may not like it, but tell me what you think. So, are you telling me Steiny had the San Francisco 49ers, and I know the Warriors aren't the Niners, but had the San Francisco 49ers season ended at home in the rain that Saturday night against Green Bay, 
the Niner fans wouldn't have felt different than losing the Super Bowl. The See, San Francisco me, 49ers went into the playoffs as hands down the best team well, in the NFC that and as did. Super Bowl favorites. The Warriors have entered the postseason as the 10th best team in the Western Conference. Well, they're not even in the postseason. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, but I, mean, I, I guess what I was trying to illustrate is, it, all right, throw favorite out, you can't. But a loss to Green Bay is a whole hell of a lot different than a loss in the Super Bowl. I mean, this is one of those where you, you've taught me a lot. If that's how you feel, yeah. as a fan, <laughs> yeah, that's I how you feel. It, I appreciate that. If, if you're telling me that for a loss... Me, but don't that a loss for me, to that's the, a difference. That a loss to the Kings is, oh. ca- is a disaster. Oh, man. Well, then what's a loss to the Lakers on Friday? A team that has two to future me, it's Hall still of kind Famers. of a disaster. Yeah. Who beat you last year? The same team that you're facing in the one-off. Right. So... Uh, we could understand it, but De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis. I mean, what if I just said, well, you know what? The Warriors upset the Kings last year. There's a six seed. Maybe this is their turn to. I, don't, I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, I, and uh, I don't play. So people telling me, Goo, you got to be careful and take them serious, but I don't play. So the Warriors will be locked in. K in San Francisco. What's up, K? So I have a different take on why this is not a, a bad season for us. I think there are four people who need to reflect on what happened this season and try to make amends next season because, number one, Steph Curry. Steph Curry should think about his fantasy passing and bringing up the ball and say, people are going to gang up on him, two teams, three teams him, so he needs to not handle the ball as much and keep running around and shooting. Two, Clay needs to think about how do I succeed in this new role. Three, Dre needs to keep himself in check and not put the team and himself on the line every game. Four, Kerr needs to decide different plays for this older bunch of legs that he has to handle for the next two years. That's what this season is about. Thanks, Kay. Appreciate the call. Yeah. And if I'm Sacramento, they're going to be the King fans. They're going to be booing Draymond every time he has a ball. Stani, if I'm a King player, let's put another rat on the table. I'm trying to bake Draymond. Well, so will the Lakers, and so will the Thunder. That's just coming with the territory. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, if you want to go game within a game, within a game. Oh, my goodness. If the officials are letting them play more, does that mean Draymond, Ooh, you're right. when he gets called for a foul, will be more highly charged? Monk puts it up. It's a postseason now, game Curry's Jared. got the board. Three gets t- Technical has been assessed. Uh, Sabonis is down. Let me, that was some fun. Well, we love Dre. I just pictured that in my mind, Donnie. The stomp hurt. Yeah, he world. did. Stomp the yard. So there's no world where he didn't stomp Sabonis. I don't know what you're talking about. That was the play where he his King's foot hit Warriors. Sabonis last year. No, no, no. What do you mean? What do you What do you mean? There's no world he did. Some he stomped say, on his chest, like, and he got my suspended. My son thinks he was getting ready to run, oh, so did okay. his mom. Oh. So he happened to okay. <laughs> take a step he in the He was running on his and, chest. What? Yeah, no, okay. I, I didn't even know that was up for debate. <laughs> I mean, what, he people didn't. believe what they so want to believe. They hit, think Drake can do no did wrong. Did he hit Nurkic, or did <laughs> I miss that? No, he hit Nurkic. And what about Gobert? Did he choke <laughs> he Gobert? He was just pulling Gobert I mean, this is the kind of thing we laugh about. No, I'm laughing because some people really ride with him to... You know, the yeah. step was a misstep. Yeah. They <laughs> rode with him last year, and he, he didn't not, really help. Yeah, we love with you, the chemistry We last call year. those ride or dies. There you go. Okay. Shout out 50 Cent. Uh, Mike's in Oakland. What's up, Mike? How you doing, man? Hey, good morning, Steiny. Good hey, 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 hey. How you doing, baby? Oh, I got a problem Uh-oh. if we lose to Sacramento because I'm hearing everybody say, Let's get sacked. Hopefully sack. Hopefully sack. I got a problem with people not paying attention. Sacramento give the Warriors hell every time they play them. <sighs> that is not going to be a walk in the park game like people think. <sighs> don't be surprised if the Warriors <laughs> Boy. lose. Boy. I'm, just, I'm just throwing that out there. All right, wow. I don't want them to lose. Yeah, but either don't do be we. shocked. And that's kind of where the Warriors trouble. That's kind right, of now where you guys at. getting me a little nervous now. Like you know, I mean, in a way. Like you just played the whole season, you're 46 and 36. You think you could have won 49 or 50 with Draymond, yeah. but you didn't. And I'm, I mean this seriously, but you didn't. So now you're in, now you're in the NCAA tournament, and you have to advance 
to the Sweet 16. You have to. So I I do get the other side where it's like you're telling me Steph we're you're telling me we're one Steph Curry like bad shooting night at the worst time away from making drastic changes because they got upset by a team that maybe you know what if what if the Kings have the game the Warriors had from three point range against the Lakers it's possible okay uh, all right what if, if what if the Kings then they're have going home, Steiny. All right. I, you know what? I'm, and I'm how checking much good, myself. How much good does that undo if there was any good to this season? Okay. Now, I know the both of us are not doctors, but give me this. I think from a Sacramento Kings standpoint, player-wise, you wanted to play any other team but the Golden State Warriors that I, not are just your know. rival here in NorCal – that ended your season in your building, right. and here we go again with the option of Big Brother to come slap you, pep you. you keep talking then, like this. It's no, still a coin flip game. That You're right. So, but, see, I guess I'm talking to you, Stani. I feel like that matters when they go I, when I, Sabonis goes up for that rebound or that shot. Like, there is a what were, uh, inferior complex to the, okay. to the Warriors the Kings play harder. have. You could be right. Because they don't think they're as but good But the Warriors can't allow that. Well, but I don't know why I'm acting like Monk is not there so they have no chance. When you look at every score of the game, the games this year, they've been close. Yeah, I, I to me it sounds like, and this, again, it's, have it's, it's major fine. Turnovers. It's Go fine. Yeah. Talk to Warrior, fan, like, Warrior fans just don't want to be eliminated by the Kings because it's the Sacramento Kings. Oh, but a week from now, I don't think it matters. If they don't make the playoffs... Yeah, okay, it might sting more with the Kings, but I'm just saying it does not, to me, it would not change the big picture of the Warriors if they lose tomorrow as opposed to if or if they Friday lose night. Friday. Yeah. I mean, they're still a 10, they're still a 9. Well, let me ask you not, this. Do you feel right both, now they're, they're better than the Kings? It, no, shit. you know I'm doesn't not doesn't matter. Shit. I think they're a better basketball team than Sacramento. But it does, it's one game. Like, I, that's it's the NBA one game you you left it up to one game so wow yeah I mean listen if if okay if you're telling me I mean what are you telling me the difference between if we lose to Sacramento big changes if we beat Sacramento and give the Lakers a good game on Friday but lose well then you know what maybe we do run it back. no I think that like, this, I don't no, think there's Joe any Lake difference already that's knows. what I mean. right, okay yeah, that's why I don't think it's a big deal but, but from a basketball standpoint if you're the better team and you know it's win or go home you're right Stani. Yeah. anything can happen is 48 minutes but come right, on it doesn't matter if you're worth your salt you got to put your impose doesn't your will doesn't and, matter and and get to New Orleans to buy you or LA Friday night I don't think it matters I don't think I don't think it matters if you don't get into the playoffs I don't think it matters if you beat Sacramento tomorrow. Mm. In the in the grand scheme of things, what do Warrior yeah, fans think at eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero? Let's go to uh, James. James in Vallejo. What's up, James? How you doing? What's up? What's up? How y'all doing today? What's hey. up, baby? Can I ask y'all a question real quick before I get started? Yeah. All day. What is the definition? Or what is y'all job description? To give our honest takes Take on, uh, yeah, to give our honest assessment on the teams. Okay, I don't. I, I think y'all working for Kurt, for Steve Kerr or something. Because why are y'all not calling this man out for these horrible lineups? Why is he playing three guard, four guard lineups, and we're getting killed on defense? He's taking TJD out. People are saying Kerr put playing a playing the rookies. Playing the young guys. No, he is not. He did not play TJD or Pods in the playing tournament after Draymond said, We need these young guys. We mm. need their energy. And Kerr sat them and we lost the, we could have won a playing tournament. I mean, it really don't mean nothing because we want real chips. But Kerr has been a detriment to us this whole season for years. He does not call timeouts. He does not make adjustments on the fly. Mm. He realizes the day after after the media and Twitter talking to him, telling him what he did wrong. And then he realized, like, oh, yeah, I should have kept TJD in. I should have played Moody. Why is Moody getting DMPs? Why is Pods got more of a leash than Moody? Moody been here three years. Moody should be getting way more playing time than Pods. Pods, Pods is good. Don't get me wrong, but... 
he didn't earn nothing. Moody been doing this thing. If it wasn't for Kaminga going well, to the media, he'd probably be riding the bench right now. Maybe that's what he should be doing. Oh, I didn't mean for that to happen. But what you mean, Stani? I mean, maybe you found out that when you, with more limited minutes from Kaminga, your team is better. That's a possibility. The well, other thing yeah, about the we, other thing about we, Moody is let's come on. I mean. We talked about this. Who's a better three-point shooter, Moody or Pajemski? Pods. That's what the numbers show. Who's a better playmaker for other players on the team? It's Pods. And who leads the team to that caller's exactly. point? I What he said is not all invalid because at different junctures of this season, people didn't know if Kerr was going to come back. I kind of said, oh, Kaminga should be playing earlier. But Friday, I did see TJD go out a little earlier. But it... it, it I just again, Stani, I could write a book on I love Moses Moody. Moses Moody's biggest problem is not Brandon Pajemski. If you understand what I'm saying, the plus minus for Pods is everything. He's earned everything he's getting, man. I I, I don't know. And Stani, you talked about it all season long. I'll leave you with this. When you were on X or Twitter, you said, Guru, I can't believe it's a large contingency of fans coming after Kerr. And I get the dude's got four rings. The team's played better. Nobody's on the payroll. By the way, Bonte brought something up this morning that I thought was interesting. He was talking about the the Pelicans, Trey Murphy the third, who was drafted 17. Oh, I love him. Moody was drafted 14. And you could say, boy, what are, Trey Murphy. And shooting from I, oh my right, God. But, but like, this is one where, boy, with Trey Murphy, look, this is the way I look at that. Trey Murphy and and Moses Moody. That's that's the cost of having a dynasty. Plain and simple. You drafted Moses Moody 14. He could not get on the floor. He was drafted by a championship team. And you wanted to go for championships. And so he didn't play a lot. Trey Murphy got drafted at 17 by the Pelicans. And he got to play a lot because he wasn't on a championship team. So Murphy may be more developed than Moody. He may have more experience than Moody right now. He's played more. He's got a bigger role. But, like, that comes because you won four championships in nine or ten years. That Like, that's – you can't turn that around. Like, if Trey Murphy would have I, – I don't believe that if the Warriors would have drafted Trey Murphy – that he would be having the same role now for the Warriors as he is for the Pelicans. Would he have played more than Moody? I don't know. Well, physically, he's, I don't he's, know. he's different, Stani. Well, I'm yeah. just telling you, yeah. you can't draft guys and expect them to play right away if you think you're going to win titles. And they've only played one year uh, one year of college. 888-957-9570 is the number. Warriors-Kings tomorrow, if they win that game, then the Warriors play either the Lakers or the Pelicans on Friday. So we got uh, ideally two games for the Golden State Warriors. And my question is, what gives you confidence heading into that Kings game? And what gives you some cause for worry? 888-957-9570. That segment sponsored by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Tiny, you're more like me than you think you are. Replace your warning.
Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Our Warriors Kings tomorrow, 7 o'clock in Sacramento. Warriors enter the play-in as a 10 seed. They got to win two road games to get into the playoffs. Got to win one tomorrow against the Kings, and then one more on Friday against either the Lakers or the Pelicans. Both those games will be on the road. If they get to Friday... I saw Spinone like, like hit it. Like, oh no, he was. Oh, yeah. Shut Some up. would say mind your own business. With, 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 I got Price you. pick, Steiny. Yeah. Steiny was making sure he wasn't in my way. That's my part. That's my quarterback. And I was making sure that if you had something to say, you would have the opportunity. No, I because know. Spinone was, went like that. No doubt about like, it. Like hit it, Goo. No. And then Goo didn't say anything. So, do you want to talk now, or should I take a call? No, that's Spadoni and I. We have okay. uh, telepathy. We communicate with, and All sometimes right. it's hand gestures. Well, but thank you. You know, try not to to be like Draymond Green and be so histrionic. Just you know, because I thought you had something to say. That's all. I do. Last but, chance. Yeah. You mother. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell. I have nothing that come on, that was in house. Right. Uh Raj is in the North Bay. What's up, Raj? How you doing, buddy? Hi there, you guys can hear me? Loud and clear. Raj. Cool. Hey, uh, uh big fan of the show. Thanks for taking my call. Um what I wanted to say was you you asked us to call in and say if the Warriors don't make it to the playoffs, do we consider it a bad season yes. or sure. or are we feel optimistic about winning these two games. Right. So I feel optimistic we can win both games, but I do honestly think this season is a letdown. Um, just, I mean, the facts are right in front of our face. All the blowing leads, Draymond being Draymond, um, Curry's, I wouldn't say lost a step, but he's showing he's 36 um and to me something that's bothered me i'm surprised i've never heard it like on um on your guys' show or bonte's show 
or uh, the show pregame and postgame the past few years with the Warriors is I heard another caller mention it earlier was if we miss the playoffs this year, that will be three out of the last five years. Right. And that, that's a huge thing to me as well. Okay. Is, is so many of these years I've seen us, we'll drop a game to the Magic, Charlotte, to the Pacers. Sure. Um, I remember like the year we lost to Memphis in the play-in. Right. Like we lost to Minnesota right. and the Rockets in that last, 20 games where he went 15 okay. and five. So what's your bottom line, Raj? Is, is if we want to be that team like a Lakers that always is about winning championships, and that's our standard, we are severely underperforming with the exception of the 2022 championship post essentially KD leaving and his Achilles and right. Clay's uh, right. injuries and, Thanks, Raj. All great facts. The game, breaking news. Uh, Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr has just announced no Gary Payton the second tomorrow. He's out. You got to be kidding. That's fine. Moses Moody then will be playing tomorrow. I think it's obvious. What's what's up? With, what's the injury with GPT? Nagging. Real quick. Uh, also, he would be out if they advance to a second game as well. So he's going to be out for the next two games at the very least. What did we All miss? Right? Nothing. He's been injury prone frequently over the last two or three years. GP two. Oh. No, Gary Payton. The set. Well, l- listen. I am not going to sit here and listen to five hours of people saying, "Why isn't Moses Moody playing more?" And now, uh oh, Payton the seconds out. We're done. Well, he was like the secret, right? You but know, now you Moses want to Moody made him in the in the play in in the playoffs. Well, okay, congrats. You got your excuse. I'm not happy. Yeah, if you get beat, yeah, you get beat tomorrow, it's because of Gary Payton a second. Run it back. <laughs> what are you? Moses saying? Moody's going to play tomorrow. Yeah. Good. No, good, but good. Yeah. Like seriously, good. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to how all those young guys are going to play this week and maybe into the postseason. That to me is one of the more, more fascinating parts of the of the Warriors uh, season. You know, we're talking about three. If they don't make the playoffs. That would be three in five years. And somebody said, well, it's two of those years were because of injury. All right? So couldn't you say that makes it more alarming this year if they didn't make the playoffs? Mm. Because you want to put a rat on the table sponsored by Atco Pest Control? I don't think this team is going to be more healthy than it's been this year in terms of big picture. I mean, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson played 74 games. Draymond Green only played 55, but it wasn't because of injury. Right. Kaminga, healthy. The youngsters, healthy. Chris Paul missed 20 games. Good. Good. That means he's ready right now. Like, they have not had injuries this year. Like, you, you cannot blame it on injuries. And it's, to me, when the Warriors say, well, you know, Steve Kerr had a lot of figuring out to do. It wasn't because of injury. Don't say it was because of injury. It's because of Draymond's suspension. No, no doubt. That's number one. Well, that, that I mean, I put that into the equation. I look at a team that's pretty old, and they rely on their core, and that core was healthy. That core was very healthy this year. So... I, I believe it or not, I do put that into the equation, and I have to think to myself. While other people may say, "Well, if Draymond plays those twenty games, they're oh, five man. games better." Oh, that, yeah, no doubt. Okay, what if Steph and Clay play ten fewer games because they played full seasons? Can you really expect next year for Steph to play seventy four, Clay to play seventy four, and then Draymond will bounce back with a seventy seventy five? Like I don't. I, yes, I absolutely put that into the equation that this team was very, very healthy. And they're still a 10. How do you guys uh, see it? 888-957-9570. Uh, Max is in Napa. What's up, Max? Hey, how's it going? Thank you guys for having me on. Sure. Um, first, I want to say um, I got to do knockout 
in uh, November. And Congrats. It was, it was really fun. You didn't yeah. finish last. I lost. I'm out. We know that. Did you make any? Um, uh, yeah, I, I got, uh, I think I made like seven. I felt pretty good about it as someone who's pretty unathletic. And, uh, I brought, I brought shorts to wear, but, uh, I saw a guru in his jeans. So I kept my green socks on that I'm wow, wearing right now. Look so. my oh, uh, I should have had shorts. <laughs> uh, Go ahead, baby. <laughs> anyway, um, a couple thoughts. One, I, I do generally uh, or overall agree with, Steiny that it's like if they lose tomorrow or lose on Friday, you know, who cares? It would it would feel a little bit better not to get bounced so quickly, but it's all the same, really. Um, um a couple thoughts. It was uh God, sorry. Um really disappointing end because of how good they were doing right at the end and then coming right up to the chance for the eighth seed and dropping it there. And then of course you have to look back and think like they dropped, I think the other listener mentioned it too, like how many games did they drop that were very winnable and, you know, they lose three fewer, four fewer, they're in sixth place and just so yeah. many um, pointless losses this season. Um, at the same time, on the other hand, they had a better record this year than last year, right? Yep. They, went, they won like 42 last year. Um, so there's like notable improvement um i don't know just a lot of mixed emotions on that front i don't have anything i appreciate really it inspiring. thanks max appreciate yeah. the call congratulations on the uh seven made shots during the knockout tournament well still we got gobbled up practice he still got gobbled up by grandy at the end well our own mark grandy it was a dominant performance. That trophy used to be in here. Is it still? He must have taken. Oh, it was right there. Congratulations <laughs> to Mark Grandy. You took oh, it five God. times more seriously than everybody else. <laughs> and for winning a listener. At least Bonte didn't win. <laughs> yeah. And winning a listener. Because <laughs> if Bonte would have won, we'd have never heard the end of it. I was rooting against Bonte like you were rooting against me. He's out. Tell the Guru Johnson's out. You cr- you're mistaken. Yeah, you're ex- that's how you sound, dude. You're. Ex- you're Completely mistaking my enthusiasm for the event <laughs> with some kind of glee oh, over your boy, losing. What, now Every great lying. announcer sets the stage, and the bottom line shout is, out Vern Lundquist. Right. The bottom yeah. line was it was like announcing Dre Greenlaw coming off the sidelines in the <laughs> Super Bowl. <laughs> what, what else can you say? You're done. He's out. He fell down. Dre Greenlaw is falling down. He's hurt. I'm out. And it's a non-contact. I mean, how do you... Well, you didn't have to repeat it over and over. (laughs) For the people in the back, his ass is out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was absolutely... It's a shame. Uh, First half of the season, we struggled due to Kerr's figuring it out. Well, let me tell you what he did figure out, and it's this. Well, number one, I think, uh, you know, they're all playing well at the same time. So when we're putting them together right now, we're getting great ball pressure from Wiggs. You know, it, we're get, we get rim protection from, uh, from Trace, and it allows Draymond to play a little bit of center field, you know, where he can kind of roam the, the paint and, and, you know, thwart drivers and, and uh, force passes back out to the perimeter. And I think there's a psychological component, too. Draymond, Draymond loves having a shot blocker next to him so that he can really kind of patrol and, and, uh, and, and take care of everything that's out there. When he's the center, and he's really good at it, and we play him a lot at the, at the five, he he just doesn't have as much help at the rim. And so there are times where I can see him get a little frustrated. And you know, those are the times where we kind of can sense, like, let, let's get another big in there. Let's let's help Draymond out a little bit and fortify our defense. Little Ed Reed, safe, free safety, Stoney. I just... Ronnie Lott. When, when I hear that quote, and I know the Warriors are going to play a game tomorrow where it's do or die. Yeah. And then they may play another game on Friday where it's do or die. It leads me to believe that that three-man front court is going to be the one that he relies on. Wiggins, Draymond, and Trace Jackson Davis. And if Trace Jackson Davis is in foul trouble or he feels like he needs experience... I, I think he'll go, he'll end up going to loony. I don't know who would argue so with you over that. You know that's oh that's what it to is. Me, that's the number one point of curiosity for me heading into tomorrow's game. 
is how does he use Kaminga? And how does Kaminga respond to being used the way he's yeah. going to be used? Because, okay. I, I mean, look, Kaminga, he was he looked a little out of sorts the last I, three games. He just I, did. And I thought Friday we might, before the game Friday, which he didn't play, Stoney, we were just talking about uh, what was going on, and I was like, maybe we were just honing in on it a little too much, but yesterday revealed a whole lot. Monty said he doesn't, he, he doesn't think it is pouting, so that's a good thing, but... I mean, Stanley, they need him. Forget tomorrow. Well, you got to win tomorrow, but they need him to have confidence, man. That's what it's about. I think what we're finding out is they think they need Wiggins more. 888 957 9570 is the number. Let's go to Fleek in Oakland. What's up, Fleek? How you doing, man? What's up, man? Y'all always get my name wrong. Fleek. Hey, and that's Steiny, not me. Come says on now. Fleek. Yeah. F-L-E-E-K. <laughs> you know I know so my family. So it's Flea is in F-L-E-A. Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But yeah, what I was going to tell you, man, we up in the barbershop. I just left. Oh. You know they got 95.7 on in the barbershop, man. They ain't got ESPN on. There they got y'all go. show on, man. Yeah. What's the name hey, of the barbershop? What say is, uh, What's the name of the barbershop? Yeah, uh, Oh, Studio 106. Studio 106. On a Monday. What's up, Studio 106? Thanks for listening, man. Appreciate it. But what I want to say is uh, we got to really realize Trey Jackson is a youngster on the starting squad. I've been hearing y'all talk about, yeah, they old. I'd rather have four champions, five, six champions on the squad playing against sack guys that ain't never won a championship. And we talking about the Kings. They mentioned – uh. Two of their shooters. Yeah. So we ain't, we work. And another thing I want to say, I'm going to just skip past that because we're going to beat Shaq. The thing is, Pel- we're going to play the Lakers because right. the Pelicans, they looking at LeBron as the big homie. They not really, Draymond Green already didn't fought LeBron and let them know we here to play y'all. But the Pelicans, they look, they look up to LeBron too much to beat them. Every time they play them, it's like they playing them soft. They're not ready. They're not mad or anything. They're just accepting them L's. Mm. So Warriors got to really get past Sack, which is we're we going to get past Sack. And this game against the Lakers is going to be for uh, who going to the championship. There you go. The conference championship. Because if oh. the Warriors get past the Lakers, right. we're going to beat Sack. But if the Warriors get past the Lakers, we're going to get out that, out that first round. Because who we playing in the Minnesota. first Minnesota. No, OKC. It'd be OKC. Come on, man. You know we're going to be. Well, see, look, and, and my thing is, Draymond Green, when all these young guys play against Draymond Green, it's like they playing against the junkyard dog or or, or old-time player. Draymond Green going to throw some elbows. He's going to be real aggressive. Uh-oh. He's going to get in their head. And most of them guys is youngsters, man. They ain't, they don't play that type of basketball. We got a couple of fullbacks on our team. So if we get him, we going to beat Sack. If we beat Lakers, I'm, I'm, mark what I said. You said we it will already. Make it to the conference championship. Yep. Right. I heard him a, co- a week ago. Thanks, said. Flea. I was going to ask him what type of haircut he got. But, yeah, probably I mean, taper me. Settle. Yeah. Settle. Thunder, by the way, have won three straight against the Warriors. Yeah. After but, but, the they're, but that was early in the year. Oh, and they were worse, and now they're better. You mean the Warriors? The Thunder. Oh. Uh, nobody's better than the Warriors in the last 39. How did Denver blow Boston? a 23-point lead to San Antonio Friday night? When Benyama. What, he says he's playing know, they 15% tri- of what he could be right now. I they tripled hit- the record for comebacks of 15 or more points wow. in the NBA. This I need year. to hear... Uh, who was our guy? Priest say the fish is stinking from the headline. What did Denver get dropping to the three seed? See, to me, it's a that was incredible. Fish is stinking from the head. I mean, tomorrow's a dangerous game. Oh, because he's too to me, old. it's winter go me, home. I'm I'm looking at the Kings and just on paper, I don't think the Kings can win the game. Ah. I don't because I'm with their, you. their best player's Fox. Okay, so he'll have to be great. But then, who's going to get the Warriors beat on that team? It's got to be Barnes and or Sabonis. And I just what about Keegan Murray? He can get I, hot. I, no, we no, don't he's the fourth three. best player. Oh, they okay. they All got right. to have or third best player. They got Barnes and Sabonis have got to play well. And then there I don't, it is. And that's I don't why necessarily going. trust yeah. them to do it. I'm with but you. the problem is, I'm with you man. when you play one game. Sabonis just needs to play one good game, and he can exercise all the demons. Yeah, and then you know what we'll say? Well, look, Sabonis got over on Draymond and the Warriors. Yeah. 
They ended their season payback. But but you know they got a guy. They got they're playing a rookie, Keon Ellis, and he ain't the biggest guy. He's been standing. nice. Yeah, he's been, he's been he's been okay. But you can't go down to Keon Ellis, right. and you can't go down to Barnes and Trey Lyles. Like I, that's what I don't see happening. But if it does happen, it will have meant that the Sacramento Kings, the guys that haven't gotten it done for them in the past, they got it done. And that, you know, that's what you got to worry about. That's why you don't want to play in a play yeah, game. At all. And you're how, still not playing at home. How confident are you guys in Stephen Curry right now? And his ability, if they need him to have a big game like they did in Game 7 last year against the Kings when he had a 50-burger? Because I know the stats show on Friday. Like, if you just look at the box score, it's like, oh, he had a pretty good game. But that, t- he had seven turnovers, like... Something's amiss with Steph right now, offensively. Is everyone just assuming he's going to be fine in this do-or-die situation? I'll go first. Uh, <clears throat> let me go first. I, I've been watching him. Steiny, there is fatigue. But every damn moment that you talked about that game really could have got out of hand, Spadoni, he went to Chef. He hit the shot. He hit the shot. He hit the shot. And then as I watched him miss the one that really would have, you know, tied the game, I'm going home like, what did I just want? Like, how clutch was he? So I don't know the checks and balances, but there is something, Stoney, to what Spadoni's saying because when it's all said and done, he had over 30 points again, but there is something to miss just a little bit this off with the chef, and I do wonder if it's fatigue, but to answer Spadoni's bigger point, his bigger question, I could see him going up there tomorrow with all the confidence in the world, Stoney, and, and showing out. Yeah, so can I. To me, it's not about... Can Steph have a game? Of course, he can have a game. To me, See, it's wow. Okay, he has a game tomorrow. Mm. Okay, can he have another one on Friday? Well, how soon? Then can he have another one in game one? Like he's gonna if they get to the playoffs, I he's gonna have him. some Come big on. games. It's it's not the it's not the thirteen for twenty twos that he's gonna have. It's how many eight for twenty twos does he have? And he's had more and more of those this season. Like that's the way I look. I like Steph Curry can win him couple games, but he can't I don't think he can win him a series against a good team alone without a lot of help. Mm-hmm. So eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. I'll I'll springboard off that though, Spadone. What's your biggest worry about the Warriors heading into the Kings game? Is it Steph Curry and his fatigue? Is it Kaminga dealing with a new role coming off the bench? Is it the two rookies who are probably gonna play a fair amount? Tomorrow, and if they win Friday, is it Wiggins? Are you worried about Wiggins' effort level at the time of the series, Goo, when it's the most important time of year? Is anybody worried about Wiggins? I'll ask you before I go. What? What's? Your, how would you answer? Because I got the, my, my biggest worry. Yeah, no for doubt. the Golden State yeah. Warriors yeah. going in tomorrow. It would be night. Steph, and then it would wow. be the two rookies. Our minds Kaminga. Like Steph cannot. Damn, Steph's got to pick up his play. Cons- he, Steph has to be more consistent. That's the biggest thing to me. Can he, when he when he has a thirteen for twenty two, can he come back the next day with a nine for seventeen or eighteen? Yeah. Right. And it's not fair, but that's the burden of being the best player on a team. Then the second thing to me is more uncontrollable, and that's how are Pajemski. Trace Jackson Davis and Kaminga going to play because uh, they might struggle. Like I could see something like that happening. But what the, if we, Steph is in Fuego? I take I take them struggling over Steph because Steph's going to shoot them. You, and that's and that's my point. You need them both. Mm. You need it all because they're not good enough. They we've they've shown they're not good enough when they're not all clicking. Four one five. Good question. What's the status of GP two? He is out this week. Gary Payton II Friday, will not play and Wednesday, Friday. and if they win tomorrow, he will not play Friday. No Gary Payton II. I wonder what happened. Yeah. I mean, it's Gary Payton II. And it's, that, he's, wow, got, he's had that nagging is, injuries man, for, what, three funny. years yeah, now. He just but, The more you play him, the more he's going to get banged up. But when you went on your run in 2022, you could count well, on him. Well, that's two years ago. I mean, he was healthy two years ago. Then he had the year in Portland where he didn't play at all. And, I, and now he's I playing go. half the season. Well, I see a scenario tomorrow if the Kings had the ball in the last possession and you need a stop. 
outside of Wiggins, or I think I'd want GP2 on De'Aaron Fox more than I'd want. Like, that's how it may not come down to that. But Friday, it may. Yep. Gary Payton, I just, wow, man. I just assumed he would be available. All right, 888 We're talking, yeah, 888 is the number. And uh, it's time man. for the call of the game. Warriors will dribble out the regular season, and it's going to be on to Sacramento. Final score will be 123 to 116. And the Warriors come up with a 46 win season. Two wins better than a year ago when 44 got them to number six. And this year, it only buys them a spot at number 10 in a loaded Western Conference. All right, that was a call of the game. Tim Roy, 95-7 the game, and that's sponsored by Xfinity Internet. Get a consistent and reliable connection so everyone can work, stream, and game all at the same time. Warriors over under at the beginning of the year was 48.5. That's what Vegas said it as. They won 46, but Draymond got suspended 20-plus games. So how come it was such a disappointing year? 888-957-9570. I see Big D. It is the lunch hour, so we'll get on. To, we'll get his call on the other side. I see Rich in Fremont. 888-957-9570. Let's go, Warriors. I was rooting against Bonte.
Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. What are you doing right after work? I know what I'm doing. What? You're kidding, right? Today is the day. The WNBA draft. <laughs> yeah, a lot of drama there. We got some heavyweights coming into the league, man. Yeah, Caitlin Clark's going to Indiana. Ah, who told you that? Who didn't know that? Oh, you asked me the where she was going. The fever are basically done oh, to Grandy, her what, they did, what the Knicks did to Patrick Ewing. No, no, After David they won the Stern lottery, they held up the, yeah. I'm excited I to see. I got some bad news. Go ahead, Grant. Yeah. Well, there's, already, there's already WNBA teams promoting the, playing against Indiana <laughs> next year. The, the Phoenix Mercury, Diana Taurasi, who's like yeah, thought of yeah, as the no GOAT doubt. in the league, yeah. they're already promoting the GOAT versus the Rook. Dude, wow. When, Let's the, go. Indiana, uh, when the Indiana team is in town. In Do Phoenix. we know where Angel's going? They, you just said the draft is later this afternoon. Right, but we know Indiana yeah. was taking. She's uh, not good enough to know where she's nah. going. Grandy. What about Cameron Brink, Goo? Yeah, yeah, she's a baller, sure. too. Well, yeah, the, we'll we'll see how those puzzle pieces shake out. I'll be watching. I'm really upset because I said I had some bad news, and you you've put me off. <laughs> you know yeah. when I have bad Dude, news. Dude, you got some new glasses right away. He's stunting right now. I like him. Go ahead. No, ten seed in the history of the play-in has ever even made it to the playoffs. Oh my goodness. I know the Warriors are owing too. No ten seed. Damn. That I hate has that. Ever gotten out of the play in oh, damn. and into the postseason. That means no team <sighs> has come from where the Warriors are right now and gotten even into the playoffs. I hate that. I hate Let everything about it. Let me ask you this, it. Goo. What are the odds that a week from now we're sitting in this studio saying and the Warriors take a 1-0 lead over the Oklahoma City Thunder in the first round of the NBA playoffs. Oh my gosh. What are the odds? I I got that at 70 I got that at 74%. So that means to get to the playoffs they're like at 95%. Yeah, no doubt. I'm not what worried. What if they play the Lakers? I'm not worried. And I think but if they play the Lakers, then but both the Warriors gonna, and uh, the Lakers cannot make a run okay. to, uh, to but listen the how it's gonna play out. Conference final. Yes, they can. Listen. How? The Lakers are gonna take care of business and kick the Pelicans' oh. ass tomorrow because the Pelicans just showed you they can't stand prosperity. Yeah. That's one. Lakers go up to Smoothie Center, excuse me, Warriors, take care of the Pelicans, and the uh take on OKC. I really like that matchup for the Warriors. That mm. now, if you say, hey, Tim Calcani and Marcus Thompson. Well, who cares? No, I'm saying Go athletic. Uh, OKC's more athletic. Oh. <laughs> That's a far off boy. Hey, they're more I don't a- think of both those guys as particularly athletic. <laughs> right, well, they're, they're both they're a little writers. past their primes. Right. Great guys. Yeah, don't no get doubt. Me wrong. Hey, but I saw him Friday at the game. I let him just work. I didn't go, you let go mess with him. Hey, so I know all the athleticism and this and that. But the pedigree would be on display. Yeah, I'll take and Stani, we got an infusion of youth now with Pods and TJD and Moody. So I, I, I'm yearning for that, but I got to slow my roll. Yeah, you do. Because I'm, hey, Grandy, take this to the bank. The Warriors are going to beat the hell out the Kings tomorrow. It's about Ice Cube. It's about Friday night and who they play. That That's where I'm at. Only Guru I will be so would take for granted, <laughs> a one-game nah, playoff nah, I've been watching between sack. two teams that are separated they can't by two point five front points. door. They, I'm, they got their own issues. That's you know all what, I'm Goo? saying. Our season I is not it. ending in, okay. at, at the G okay. uh, at right. Golden One. All right, let's go out to uh, Rich in Fremont. Rich. What's up, Rich? How you doing, man? Uh, Atco. What's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Y'all know where to get your pest control need. You go to Atco. Look you at know that. Guy. Yes, sir. So, so. So, my whole deal is this. In order for them to win Friday night, they got to balance two sides of it. Number one, take care of those turnovers. You can't be doing that. If you do that, you're out. The other thing is you got to play some defense. You want to win games, you got to stop the other team from scoring. And I'm going to tell you right now, Steiny, mm-hmm. I know you feel the way you feel about the Warriors being 10th and all. Mm-hmm. I'm going I'm to take a quote from the great Nelson Mandela. Oh, Uh-oh. give it to me. Okay, and you know what he said? No. He said, everything's impossible until it's done. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow, Rich. So, so, 
So so don't don't take away the possibility that the Warriors can I, get out of the play in the Oh, playoffs. I would never I would it's never possible. take that away from them ever. Until until it's done. Yep. I'm All right, just, fellas. Thanks, man. Yeah, take it easy. Well, that struck a chord. Just it's just a fact. Yeah, I get it. The play in's only been around since twenty twenty one, but the Warriors will have to do something that no play in team's ever done. And they played in it more than any other team. Nope, oh. I believe them and the Lakers are tied. Because mm. last time they're in it, Lakers run it too. I can tell Grandy's got something. Uh-oh. No nine or ten has also ever won a pl- playoff <laughs> series. Well, no ten has ever made it, no, and no nine or ten has ever won a series. Mm. One nine did make it, actually, maybe a couple. One of them was the Grizzlies at the expense of the Warriors. Correct, correct. Uh, 415. Steph Curry has spent his entire career achieving the unachievable and besting the odds. It's time for him to do it again. Yeah, right. Who wrote that? That's why I wouldn't rule the Warriors out. The way you read it, though. Of course they can win two games and get to the playoffs. Yeah. But it would be so fitting, man. I mean, to me, the one part, and I'm not going to sit here and say that's impossible. Nothing's impossible. Right. But... Again, when when I look at Friday's game... That bothers me. How can they win a seven-game series? And then how can they win another one? Well, I and then just, another okay, one, right. and then another one. If you allow me, they, I just, just group that into the 12-point blown leads all yeah. year long. There's just too some many teams time. that are giving them trouble on a consistent basis with athleticism. I just I just think that's the case. I you mean, know? they and just seen turn how, the ball over and over but we got to tip the cap. New Orleans, j- they made some threes, Grandy, that I I was like, is this a video game? McCollum. <laughs> j- I mean, seriously, it was like even the one McCollum hit over Steph at the dagger to put him up six when they were down three. Like, that was a hell of a shot. Trey Murphy the third. He's named appropriately, he isn't he? He was shooting from Fairfield, as Fitz would say. He hit that one from Fremont. Yeah, Union City. That's, yeah, that put me on the map when he said to you, what you doing? I'm looking at uh, the sound I want to play. And a lot of people have kind of talked about Steve Kerr and how he was late to the party with some of his uh, rotations. And, uh, this is important. Take a listen. Well, you know, we've talked about uh, trying to get them together, you know, theoretically, uh, our two longest, uh, most athletic players. So we have not been a good defensive team this year. So we've wanted to, to try it. It hasn't, you know, connected really. It hasn't been good for all season, but we're, we're experimenting. You know, we've Gary out, Draymond out. We're trying to find a, a two-way lineup that can help us. But obviously, the, um, you know, that lineup didn't click. Yeah, I, the yeah. the one I wanted was when Steve Kerr talked about uh, going with Looney and the older guys as long as he could. And, and for everybody that says... He did say that. Trace Jackson Davis should have been around since the start of the year. The, the reality is that Steve Kerr, whether you agree with it or not, said that he gave the championship team, that unit, essentially half the season well, he did. To, to gel. And he felt like he owed it to him, and that's kind of the big picture thing. Is two years ago they win a title. Last year they get to the second round, but everybody looks at last year and says, "Well, it got compromised because of the punch and Wiggins' absence, Bob Myers, this, that, and the other thing." And so they come back this year and they still considered themselves a championship core. Yeah. And Steve Kerr still gave him the benefit of the doubt, even after last year, that they were still a championship core. And he went half the season, and he said, you know what, we're not, this this isn't working. Let's try something else. And that's when he got Trace Jackson Davis in there, and Pajemski started playing more. So, I can you know, I don't, do nothing but respect f- that. Funny thing is, is had he, had he not given that group a chance, and they got off to a slower start, you know how it goes. People would have been, how can you forget about Looney? Yeah. How can you forget about the champions? So, I think Steve Kerr's done a real good job this year. Um, and they had a death in the family we hadn't mentioned, Sonny. They, they, they navigated through that. Players have talked about how presidential he was in that. So, uh, you know, like I said, everything is, is before you that you wanted to set out and accomplish you know, if we just focus one step at a time, tomorrow's the first step. 888-957-9570 is the number. Warriors Kings tomorrow from Sacramento. 7 o'clock tip. It all starts with Warriors Live at 6 tomorrow after Willard and Dibs. 
And the Golden State Warriors have to do something that no play-in team from the 10 has ever done. They're going to have to win tomorrow, then win Friday, and that would give them an opportunity to play the Oklahoma City Thunder on Sunday in Oklahoma City. And I'm asking Warrior fans right now, how confident are you? How confident are you that the Warriors can win two elimination games? I kind of look at them like a like a four seed or a five seed in the NCAA tournament. Mm. And the tournament's starting, and they have to get to the Sweet 16. They have to somehow come out of their regional to advance in the tournament. You think they can do it, Warrior fans? 888-957-9570. What makes you confident? What gets you worried? We're talking about all those all those things. What what worries you most about the Sacramento Kings? Go. Uh, you you guys are probably going to laugh, but it's Keegan Murray, and the reason is Keegan Murray, Stanley. I think he can shoot when he gets hot with the best of them. I think he's one. Like he is a must for them to. I won't even call it an upset. I know the Warriors are favored by two and a half right now, but I've seen this Warrior team just for whatever reason not be able to guard. The, the three-point line, I've seen teams manipulate them. So I could see a scenario to where Fox and, and Sabonis got it going and they kick it out. And if for whatever reason, now we know we're down GP2. If the Warriors are not clicking on all cylinders and getting out there, Stoney, you could get a uh, you know a can of hot, hot from the outside. And I don't like that. So I'm assuming we keep Fox in front of us. But my, to answer your question, my biggest worry is Keegan Murray getting hot. If they have a so-so thing from three, then, Stoney, I think we got him right where we want him. I mean, to me, the only way he's a factor is if you can't handle the other two guys. If you can guard, if That's Draymond not. can guard Sabonis <laughs> can. and Wiggins can defend a- De'Aaron Fox, well, the, then Keegan Murray can be guarded. That's that's why I do think the Warriors have an advantage tomorrow against the Kings. I just think they're a better team. I'm with you. They're a better team, and the, and... You know, I look at I look at the Kings. They they lost their one wild card in Malik Monk. I, I don't like the Herder thing. I'm totally That's not with a huge you. Deal it's the me. Monk man. But Malik Monk's the kind of guy who can come in and and kind of change a game. And man. without him uh, against the Warriors, I think the Warriors have a big time advantage. And what about that game? They uh, I don't know if you're watching. I know you stay watching. I think Friday night. I that was so riveting. Got out of the Warrior game and watched the rest in the car. They blew a game to Phoenix. I mean, it happens. I know. Well, I mean, the bottom line is the Kings are four and seven, but they have played a lot of really close games. At Boston, had to they ball just didn't with win. Chest to win. Yeah, they just didn't. They just didn't get it done. Um, Steiny from the six one nine. The Warriors have found creative ways to lose all season. It's hard to trust this team tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, what that like that is one thing. He's a creative. And I, I mean, I, to me, all bets are off in the play-in games. But by the same token, every time the Warriors have kind of had to win two games like this, they don't win them both. Oh, wow. And See, so, now you're going both. I well, hear, you, hey, I hear you there, but well, that's all I, I thought it was one, is it, one at a time, though. I mean, again. But when you look at it through that, which you can, it's your prerogative. Any Warrior fan will tell you you're correct. And that's why Friday was another opportunity that really was a long shot before tip. And then there it is right before you, and they can't close it. I mean, I get that this is officially a one-and-done situation for the Warriors, but somebody uh, put this, uh, the 718. If they can't win Friday's game, I have no confidence. And basically what the person on the Xfinity mobile text line is saying is, Friday was a must-win game. Oh, there's no... We talked, okay, we said the what? biggest game of the well, season. Okay, where was their pedigree then? Right, right like, where's their pedigree and experience? That was a must-win game Friday. That bothers And a me. young team came in here yeah, yeah. and kind of turned you upside down yeah. in the second quarter. 46 points in the set. That scares me when you say... I'm being real. When you say where was that Friday, because you we Thank said you. it was the biggest game I'd rather of have the you, season. I'd rather have youth... In Maybe I'm in of, denial, man. I until mean, I see it when it's with the finality. But you are right. Where was it at? Now they were without Kaminga, Stani, the Warriors. They weren't whole, and they were without Ingram. Wow. So and they, you were at home, but like that's, man. I don't know. I just there have been a lot of signs this year, positive and negative with this team. So I don't know what. 
What do Warriors fans expect tomorrow when this team goes to Sacramento? I mean, what like what what can we expect? And that's kind of one of the things about this team, Goo, that I think's been a been an issue is even Steph. What can we expect out of Steph tomorrow? Well, he's going to be good, but is he going to be efficient? What can we expect to Clay tomorrow? He's had a wow. lot of great shooting that's nights wow. lately. Oh man. Like, that's the problem with a one-game playoff. What if he doesn't shoot well tomorrow? Let's throw it to Grandy. Grandy, real quick, what's your biggest concern going into this game? Going into this game yeah. tomorrow? From a Warrior standpoint. That's how you slow down De'Aaron Fox. Uh, right. I think Draymond and Sabonis, the, the Warriors will be fine with that matchup. But well, De'Aaron Fox goes off like he did at times in that series last year, scoring 35, hitting threes. It's going to be tough. Huh? Let's put the rat on the table if you're Golden State Warriors. Brought to you by Ad- Adco. Yeah. If you're a Warrior fan, I want you to to put on your, uh, I was going to say put on your crystal ball. You can put it on the top of your head. What wins the game for the Warriors tomorrow? And what gets them beat? What would get them beat tomorrow in Sacramento? And then flip side, what wins them the game in Sacramento? Well, Here's how I would answer that. Go ahead. What'll get them beat? What'll get them beat oh, tomorrow? Know. Yeah. To me, the only thing that gets them beat tomorrow is if Sabonis somehow has kind of a legacy game. I, I really believe that. Because I think what, it, what's a legacy game for like, him? Like 25 and 15? Well, I don't care about the numbers. Oh, oh. I, I his numbers are a joke. I mean, I tell you right now, I looked at his numbers. He averages 20, 13, and 8. He could have 20, 13, and 8 and be the biggest liability on the court. I've watched him too many times. It's not about the numbers for Sabonis. It's about how big of a factor he is scoring and then because he can pass, getting other guys involved. But to me, the biggest reason I feel confident that the Warriors will win that game tomorrow is because I can't see Demonis Sabonis being the second best player on the court. And I think that's what he's going to have to be. It's going to have to be like Fo- Fox is going to have to be the best player on the court. And somehow well, Sabonis has to be the second best player yeah, on the court. Nah, man. And I, I just I just don't see Draymond allowing that to happen. I, I just don't. And so that's that's why I'd feel most confident in the Warriors. I think they got more weapons, and I think their defense can can do a better job against the Kings than the Kings can vice versa. I know we're not in sack, and we got some guys joining the morning roast yesterday, and we'll have some guys on from, from down there. But isn't it funny how sports work in just a year ago? Mike Brown was the uh, conductor to what they built. They had a great season. They had a great run in the playoffs, lost in seven games. And here we are now a year later, a year removed from that, Stiney. Win or go home, and the Warriors are still favored, and the Warriors are the 10th seed. Like, I guess I, from a, a Kings perspective, what's really changed? You're at home. But I just feel like the Warriors got that, not where you're daddy, but some of that. You know, Steph popped off for 50. It may not, hopefully he doesn't need 50 tomorrow. But, Stiney, I guess I'm wondering, like, how are they in that building where so much good was last year, or do you say what you said to me about the Hawks a couple years ago? Goo, that was the year before the year. It's obvious. I mean, or if Monk's playing in this game, I, I believe I'm shaking in my boots more than I would be now. Look, and I mean that through to the re- they went through the regular season last year, and the Kings won every an dude. indescribable amount of games that maybe they shouldn't have won. It went their way, and they won their 48 games. And they were a good team. They got to the playoffs, and they got exposed a little bit. They came back all this year, and people They expected, ran it back. Yeah, and people ex- knew what to expect, and they won fewer games. Happens a lot in the NBA. A lot. And now, you may have less of a chance. Like, basically, this is the game seven. When the Here's what I'll say. Here's, here's something to feel good about if you're a Warrior fan. There is absolutely no doubt, if I'm a Warrior fan... I feel better about tomorrow's game at SAC than the game last year, game seven wow, wow. at SAC. That's interesting. The way Warrior fan after the Warriors lost Friday night, 
at home. Oh, the sack game was just a flip of the coin. Warrior fans, I don't care what you say. There, there was danger there. That's just, wow. But I was nervous. Tomorrow, they are far more to me of a favorite to win that game tomorrow than they were in Game Seven last year. Doesn't mean anything. Well, what about to the people that say what you just disagreed but with every, earlier about an agree. hour ago? That makes it that much more of a failure if somehow the Warriors slip slip up tomorrow. It's one game. It's just one game. You, you absolutely could lose it. I mean, if you're telling me like that's the one thing that I I just don't think is a big is a big deal. If you think it's a big deal, it can be. But to me, if the Warriors win tomorrow and lose. Friday. It's still the same. There's very little difference wow. between that and if the Warriors get beat tomorrow. I don't think it changes. That particular difference, to me, doesn't change one thing headed into the postseason in terms of the offseason moves. I mean, if you go into sack and you don't play well and you win by three, then you go to New Orleans and lose by 11, everybody's going to feel miserable. 888-957-9570. What wins it for the Warriors? What gets them beat? Uh, Judy's in Danville. Hey, Judy, how you doing? Hey. Hey, I'm good. How are you? Doing well. I, I, I'm i an avid Warriors fan. All and right. I think what, what loses it for them is if the turnovers. Mm. Turnovers killed them oh. Friday night. Killed them. And, and they swarm staff. They... Got to give him some kind of outlet when there's two or three people on him. He doesn't sometimes have any place to go, and he turns it over. So I think turnovers are what loses it for him. What wins it for him is to play as a team and to have all those guys that contribute to do their part and commended to do his part because he hasn't been lately. So that's right. what I think. That's right. why Oops, I'm sorry, Judy. I didn't mean to cut you off there. My oh, bad. Good stuff. That was my answer, Stani. Well, you know what? Okay, I got... Everybody want to take a deep breath? You guys think I'm negative? Let me tell you what will not get the Warriors beat tomorrow. Turnovers. I was... Now, please no, explain. They will Roxy not Burns get them team. beat. Yeah, please they will explain. Not because the Kings don't have the kind of team that can pressure the Warriors into tons and tons of mistakes. They, they're just not good not enough Davion defensively. Mitchell is, he can, he can okay, pick up 94 feet. Right, and then you give the ball up to somebody else. Like, if he wants to dog Curry, then you let somebody else bring it up. But I, I, the reason, like, to me there's a reason the Pelicans turned over the Warriors because they have the kind of team that oh turns teams over. Oh, man. I mean, De'Aaron Zion Fine, I mean, looked like Alvin Robertson. Yeah. He's so tiny. He take from just, every Wiggins. Give it here. He take it from Curry. I mean, I just don't. Man, that was impressive by the Pels, though. I got to give them their credit for Fridays, Donnie. I mean, I just I was you in know, the car you, you like can show, you can show me numbers that may, you know I don't maybe the Warriors average twenty nine turnovers a game against the Kings this year. I just don't think the Kings are going to turn them over tomorrow. Wow, I just don't. They they just I mean they they're just not a great defensive team. I don't look at them as a team that pressures on the perimeter a lot. I don't see them as a team that makes you go faster than you want. They're just they don't to me make you uncomfortable enough offensively. I got I know we're up against it, yeah. but what about the familiarity with Mike Brown? Since he's been there, Stoney, these games if they come in here, remember Clay hit a game winner. Well, do you early? own the Kings or not? Do you have some, do you have a psychological edge over your little brother? No, I'm, I'm asking you. Does his familiarity no. with the team mean anything, Mike Brown? I don't know. You beat him in a series last year. But went seven. Okay, and you beat him two out of four this year. I mean, I, you tell me. I mean, I wonder you if I'm all, you all that. The, you yeah. all of the guys here saying, "Oh no, I'm oh, telling this and I, easy. I've been saying it too. Oh, Warriors have an advantage over the Kings. Advantage over the Kings. All right. Well, does Mike Brown scare you? Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. What's coming up next is brought to you by Safeway. This week at Safeway, get more savings when you buy more with your Safeway membership. Buy one, get one free on mix and match berries when you buy two. Also, stop by for mix and match soda. Buy two, get two free.
95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM in HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch, and YouTube. Powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All right, one, one piece of news to pass along regarding this week's games, if there are more than one. No Gary Payton II. He's not playing tomorrow, and he won't play Friday if the Warriors season stays alive. No Gary Payton II. Do we know what's ailing him? <laughs> He's been out with a calf injury. Yeah, wow. Oh. GP2 mission, man. So Moses Moody, next man up, yeah. obviously. He becomes part of the rotation, and... That means the Warriors are going to go with the starters they've been starting and Chris Paul off the bench, Kaminga off the bench, Chris uh, yeah. Pajemski, and then Moses Moody will probably be that ninth man. I, again, Stanley, I told Monty when we had him on, I don't even have the power to start nothing. That, that's not my style. But I'm telling you, I was watching that game yesterday, a game that meant nothing, but Jonathan Kaminga started. What do you make of the o for four, the four field goal attempts? He's out of sorts. I think he's out of sorts. How do you get that back? I, or how do mm -hmm. they get it back? Today is practice, well, I'm sure. And I mean, Bastani, that was I, I didn't like it at all. He he wasn't good against Portland a few nights ago. No doubt, good and, call. And he didn't play. That. And then yesterday, he didn't really shoot. I mean, that's one thing where we, as it relates to Kaminga. And I, I'll say this for the eight millionth time. It's got nothing to do with his attitude. It's got to do with even if he's got the greatest attitude in the world, even if he has yeah. the best of intentions, he's now 21 years old and he's got to deal with coming off the bench in the most important games of the year. He just does. That's the situation for Jonathan Kaminga. And... If, if he plays well, they'll have a better chance to win. If he doesn't play well, they'll have less of a chance to win. But he, he's, he, he's their sixth man right now. He's not starting. He's got, to, he's got to figure it out. That's all. That's, I don't know. What else is there to say, do you think? If, and here I go, Stani, and I mean this. If a stranger walked in this studio right now and said to the both of us, to you, I feel like Jonathan Kaminga – in this last month or couple of weeks, has got the short end of the stick. Regardless of what you do with that, would you say that's a valid assessment? Could you see how somebody it, could come to that? I'm it, not saying that. Why but, not? Because I feel like that's what he's thinking when but sure it is. somebody could be like, Google, it was Utah the last game of the but you started for they they wanted you to get a lather, they not be better without him in the starting lineup. I mean, like, but they need him for the game. Do they? Oh, there's no doubt. Well, they went five and zero in the first yeah, five but games. Yeah, but okay. we could. Get, I hear you. I'm just playing devil's but yeah, advocate. Yeah, I can tell you. Well, who did they play? Well, and I and I would tell you that what we're finding out is Steve Kerr thinks he's less important than Wiggins. Well, I guess what I'm saying, Stan, is you can't better. win Friday without contributions from him. Getting to the free throw line, playing D. We'll see. I don't necessarily believe that. I really don't. Now with no GP two, I, I've man. I mean. I feel like I got the. He's given us the answer. He's not moping. It's not that. I'm well, hoping I don't know that, he, that we get the I, best from him. And I don't. It okay. started. How'd in you Portland. like his body language the last no, two games? It was doubt, and okay. I guess that's well, then, where, well, then, that was awful yesterday. Okay. Well, then, like maybe he is moping a little. I I don't know what I don't know what you want to call it. He's out of sorts at the most inopportune time. Well, no, because the team's playing great. I mean. Like that's the catch twenty two. It it you know what? I'll I'll meet Kaminga halfway, and you tell me if it matters, Jonathan. You know what? This actually has nothing to do with you, nothing. But when you got hurt, we found something with Trace Jackson Davis, Wiggins, and Draymond Green. It's nothing against you, but that unit, that three man front court, gotcha, is now. Our best front court. Okay, it coach, gives so us are, the are most you done playing me? What's or, that? 
Are, I'm just of course not. You're going to be our first big off the bench. So, Stani, so I'm still a part of it. Of then. course you are. You just, so he yeah. needs to be in a mental space to where he can go be the best he can be. That's what's worrying me. Because it ain't That's like they him. got him in the bottom of the wine cellar. He's still but, a big but part. But clearly you're worried about him coming off the bench. Yeah, because. So why? I mean, if all the, if you if you weren't worried about Kaminga coming off the bench, wouldn't you be excited about an explosive sixth man like that coming off no, the bench? No, and that's what we had okay, saw. So for, why, are you, why are you worried? Because I'm worried about his psyche. Okay, well, and then that's he can't why play. yesterday for me, then I he can't play six for eight. Give me six for eight or four for. Well, well, there was oh for four. He didn't seem engaged. And you know what's funny? Here's the, here's one thing I think. Just this was one of the funniest things I've heard. Like I don't like this. If if we're oh, right, you know what I heard. I looked at the box score. I was like, what's going on with Kaminga? He didn't shoot, didn't score, didn't really shoot. Be... Oh, he was getting others involved. That's what Egan said. <laughs> My boss, Matt, he was getting <laughs> others involved. I don't know why I it laughed. Like he, yeah, I you know it. what? Oh. Yeah. Remember when Durant did that? No, we called his shot gate, and I fought you left it all day long like it meant nothing, but it did. Hope. Well, and again, we'll find out tomorrow night, man. I'm rooting for the kid. And what if the like what if Kaminga's just better as a starter and he's just not as good coming off the bench? Well, they got like, a problem you, then, okay. Stoney. Well, they can't beat well, uh, OKC in a seven game series. And if Steve that's Kerr fat. thinks they have a bigger problem when Kaminga and Wiggins play together for long stretches. Oh, man, maybe that's what we're gonna see. Like that's I don't know what the answer is. That's what I can't wait to see tomorrow. In a one-game elimination game, uh, go hit. Ooh, who goodness. plays? Who plays and how many minutes? <sighs> I'll throw that out to Warrior fans. 888-957-9570. I mean, what, what are you most interested in seeing tomorrow? It's an elimination game. If, if Curry has to play 43 minutes tomorrow, go. he's got to play yeah, 43 no, minutes. Thank you. So what do you want to see out of Kaminga? When do you want to see him get on the floor? Uh, Maxine's in Concord. Hey, Maxine, how you doing? Oh, good. Hey. Good. How are you guys? All right. <laughs> Thanks for taking the call. So, listen, I don't agree with Steiny. About? You know, turnovers, can, oh. turnovers can be an issue because I've seen the Warriors turn over the ball Not with tomorrow. no pressure. Not tomorrow. I mean, Take it to the bank, Maxine. Okay. Not tomorrow. But what I really want to say, but what I really want to say is what, um, you know, we got to have confidence. You know, if you go out on the court and you're afraid or you're shaky or you're doubting yourself, you're just going to hurt your team. You know, even Steph lately, you can see him get shaky. He's not himself. You know, back in the day, we had so much swag and we just believed in ourselves. We didn't doubt ourselves. Watch, when you see Jokic play, he looks so confident. He looks so fearless. You know, and you got to carry that mentality with these elite athletes. They're all really good. But what, what separates the good teams from the bad teams is believing in yourself, having confidence in yourself. You know, you don't hang on to that bad call. You don't hang on to this bad pass. You play in the present and you believe, believe, believe in yourself. And that's what they got to do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Appreciate call, it, Maxine. Appreciate it, Maxine. Um, but forward. he's at the height of his powers, yo. Who? Bitch. You know, no doubt. Uh, this is from the 415 and the Xfinity Mobile text line. And again, I'll stress for the 8 millionth time, it's not about his attitude. 415, maybe Jonathan Kaminga sees how well the team played without him, and he doesn't know exactly where he fits in right now. Yes, that could I think that's completely and, what and we're to talking the about. Point, Stan, he did have seven assists yesterday. That okay. I did know, but all right. And they, you know, a 128-point game against a team that didn't <laughs> care or play thing. defense. Um, but no, and, and that's why, like, if if we're going to talk about Kaminga moping, like, that to me is an outlier. Because if he's really going to mope and he really isn't ready to play, then in a way I look at it as, well, we don't have a problem with Kaminga. Because we can't play a guy like that. And that's why I don't think he's moping, Stanley. I think he's right. confused. Okay. Now so with the minutes. That's going to hurt you, too. Yeah. The you can't the win if he doesn't know his role. Or you, I should say this. But you, I guess how the hell games. did we get to this point? Because they've. And, they've, they, and they, they show up now. because They believe they're better with yeah. him not in the starting The tendonitis lineup. was the worst thing to happen. Well, but it might have been the best thing to happen to the Warriors. <sighs> it might have given the Warriors a second life in this 
postseason slash playoff. I guess I want to res- I want to say I'm cool with that. If you told me they went away from Kaminga in in its enti- in his entirety, to where, but no, you still got to depend on him. Do you? See, that's what well, I'm he's saying. He's the first guy off the bench, right. or one of them, right? And I'm not saying that's a big deal, right? But I'm not saying he's not going to play. Uh, of course, he's going uh, to play. Uh, okay, but what I'm saying is, if he doesn't play well, I, I he it. may only right. play right. 15 no, minutes that against I get. the Kings. Uh, that I get. Right, and I'm, I'm proactive say, that he's going to. You can know, you know, when we see him right, he's ready engaged. Okay, it ain't so, just making shots; it's engaged. They need that. They can't man. play both those guys thirty minutes a day. Yeah. I think is what we're finding. I, I just all that'll be my my one thing I'll take away from this year that disappointed me. And I don't know who to blame. Maybe there's nobody to blame. But man, Stoney, there I, are a lot of teams that would love to have that right. problem with Kaminga with two athletic no, they wouldn't. wings. No, they wouldn't. These two dudes Disagree. not cancel each other out. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm again. I don't say it. Steve Kerr said it, and it's been a theme of the season. Cali Flavors and San Leandro. What's going on, Cali Flavors? No, it's a big, big yeah, game for on. get big game for Kaminga. Hey, how you it's doing? A big couple games if they play them. All right, I'm all right. What's up, Guru? What's up, uh, hey. One quick, um, one quick statement. Um, for some reason, I'm just over everybody ca- gassing up Kaminga still, and it's and it's kind of sense and it's obvious. If we can get play playoff wigs back, and um, on this eight game. Yeah. We are a completely be- uh, better team with Kamiga coming off the bench with CP3. Also, the lack of hustle, the lack of like a junk junkyard dog, like Centos, you can see it. With Kerry Payton, you can see it. Like they always hustle. What, what was this move? They always hustle. You can see it. Kamiga, you don't see nothing, never. And that's my statement. Take these wow. guys. Go Pre- with it. Appreciate it, man. I- and I see it from Pods. He left Pods out of there. I'll throw him. Those dudes. Bastani, they're young. They, 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 I mean, you see them giving well, why, it. Why are you so confident they're just going to go in and win tomorrow? They got a lot of young players. Because I don't big, think, big, and I know you're. Big, I'm looking at games. you. I mean this with the red light by your face. Steph won't let them lose tomorrow. All right. This is this is okay. this is more to his legacy than anybody else's tomorrow. And you know what? I, that that might be unfair. I'm gonna add Dre and Clay to that. This could be the last ride of the big three, and to end in Sacto. With, with them missing Monk and Herter, I mean, Stiney, I'll be distraught if I come in here Wednesday and we're talking about, I mean, I know you could be like, goo, it would Michael, be the same. very good at hide and seek. Yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, what I'd like to see from Kaminga tomorrow is, what, like, I'd rather see him get into the game tomorrow and go two for nine than run up and down the floor Looking confused man, and trying man, to figure man, it out. Man. I'd rather see him just play with his with his hair on fire. Yeah, I'm with you because we've seen it. And but he, yeah. it doesn't look like he's got the confidence to do that right now. And it's, he had it when things were set up for him. Now he's got it. Like to me, when Kaminga plays, the Warriors kind of adjust to his style a little bit. Huh? With him out, they play a little bit differently. And now it's up to Kaminga to reintegrate himself with the unit that's been successful. But Stani, how and I'm it's asking not that hard, really. no, but how can you not find a way to include his athleticism and his gifts, the things he does well? Because the things he does not well get you beat in important games sometimes. I'm again, I'm it's not no, hard. I, I under, it's, hey. Like it's not me saying it. All you have to do is watch the games and watch how Steve Kerr handles Kaminga. And I'm not the bad guy, or I'm not saying anything we don't all know. Kerr does not trust Kaminga like he trusts some other guys on the team, and that's just obvious to me. And my question is, why? Why should he trust a 21 year old? like other guys on the team, when other guys on the team have been around for decades. Mm -hmm. So he's got, again, Kaminga has to figure out how to come off the bench right now and be a positive. He has to. And we're talking about in a win or go home. So, Like, this was the theme all year, I guess, Donnie. And now we're, here we are, it's bigger than him. It's about the team. We're say, we're kind well, of saying the same record, if, playing so, the play the records. Okay, the so, same song. But it feels to me like you're so worried about Kaminga 
Okay, then just start him over Wiggins. No, move Wiggins no, to the I'm bench. Not, no, I'm not. Or move or go back to the original Kaminga. I'll just ask no, I just fans, want him to why, flourish. Why in is his Steve role? Kerr? Why did he not put Kaminga back into the starting lineup I, I you after he got hurt? I gave you that all day, okay. and I think the fans have. But that's but, your answer. But I think Steve you're taking the that focus unit's okay. better. But then, Period. if you allow me to talk about, okay, I get what you just said. How do we get him, to Kaminga, That's to perfect to or master tomorrow night his new role? You can't get him to master a role that he hasn't had all year. Like, it's going to be a challenge. Mm. It just is. And it's up to a 21-year-old. Yes, you're asking a 21-year-old to the be fly. super mature. Well, he dealt with it last year. He started at the end of last year well, for the last month. I, I guess since he back. went out with the knee tendonitis. Can I'm I, sure he's I'm not thinking sure what I, you want here. No, I, I just want the best out of Kaminga in whatever role. Okay, well, to the, help this team. Okay, that would to, be the best for Kaminga to would be the start. No, it's what's best for the that's team. That's not going. That's not reality. That's right. That's that's so right. So you're saying quit hoping for anything positive from him then? No, I'm not. I'm saying you can't. What? Why? If you want what's best for Kaminga, start him oh, and play I, him 35 no, minutes. I want what's best for the team. Okay, well that. To, is there anybody out there, and I'm dead serious, that thinks right now what's best for the Golden State Warriors is to start Jonathan Kaminga? I can't raise my hand. So then, at that point, if he's coming off the bench... Now, this is where I'm at. It's up to Jonathan Kaminga to figure out with 18 or 16, 18 base minutes a night, because he's coming off the bench, how he can be... A good enough player right. off the bench. There it is. Where he gets 25 minutes yeah. a night. There it is. It's not on Kerr. Yeah. I mean, you can't, like, here's the other thing. You can't be spoon feeding Kaminga when the games are this important. Like, it, it may not be fair to Kaminga, but it's about what's fair to the team and giving the team the best chance to win. Yeah. And I, and I hope I don't sound like I'm trying to uh, change his diapers or pamper him or spoon feed him. I just, you got to back me up here, Stani. You've watched every game. We've talked about every game. Regardless the reason or not, the knee tendonitis came when it came. I would have bet this never would have been the scenario. Why not? Because he was starting. Okay. I didn't see it, and that allowed them to find something. Right. But we're talking about had he remained healthy, I, I, I look you in the eyes and bet he probably would still be starting. Probably. They'd still be a 10 seed. And they might be in a worse spot. That's just spot. amazing timing, like crazy timing, though. That's all. I'm, I that, mean, that's all that came out. Like that's crazy ass timing. Well, can I just put the rat on the table? Yeah. Sponsored by Adco. I mean, why hasn't anybody one time thought that it's better for the team if Kaminga comes off no, the bench? That's obvious, Donnie, and that's how the coach. Well, feels. if it's so obvious, why are we wow. worried about having? Kaminga get his 25 or 30 minutes. Because he was stellar when he when he was getting them. But the team wasn't. If we all agree, like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I and I'm guess, not trying to rip the no, kid. When, when, when I guess when I take the cake, Stani, you finish second in the cake baking contest, you're still a 10 seed. So when we talk about Wiggins being the better the, the better fit to start, you I'll say to you, hey, you're still 10th. So how how can that not work for Kaminga okay. but be a positive well, you, for Wiggins? Okay, and I, I, like I'm being dead serious. No, it's a real question. Well, that's then, all. Then put Kaminga back in the right, starting the, lineup. But he's not as seasoned as is a guy that played this role. Re- Wiggins, who's playing better I, basketball. I just don't understand what's so hard about. We're better with Kaminga coming off the bench, even if like to me. Here's what we've discovered: we're better with Kaminga coming off the bench, even if Kaminga isn't great coming off the bench. Like that's what I'm that's what I'm well, hearing. Well that's what our reality Steve is now. Kerr right. saying. And and no, I'll put it this way. I'll put it this way. I don't even want to put it negatively. You know what? As good as we are when Jonathan starts, we found something better with Trace and Draymond and Wiggins. Gotcha. Okay. Well now it's up to Kaminga to handle that. Yeah. And he's still got that important ass role. Yeah. To be the first guy to come off a bench in a game, right. which is a big deal. Right. But, but if he's having trouble t- dealing with the, we won't call it demotion 
Or it like is you a said, demotion. It's well, an absolute see, demotion. And that's what that's my fear. Well, that's he's looking thing. at it like that. Well, like you look, can, you look at like it's not one thing. It's like, well, it's not a demotion. Yes, it is for him. Of course, right. it is for him. Okay. Wow. Well, can he handle it? Well, we'll see. I'll tell you right, right. now, and that's he, what I'm hoping. I'll tell you right now, if he can't handle it, he's not going to play. Like he's not. If if I, I haven't, yeah. if he is moping or he's not mentally ready to play, I don't think Kerr's going to. Give him leash at and all. I think that helps whoever the Warriors are playing beat him. That's why I'm so you know like hoping we we see the best from everybody, but him included. Yesterday was just odd, Stani. I just I just thought it was odd. It feels like, and I'm yeah. Some texts coming in the Xfinity Mobile text line. They're Dude. suggesting you're worried more about Kaminga than the Warriors. Just suggesting, like. I just could no, and you're not saying it. I could just I don't know what I need to do. I just want to rip the mic out and jump from the tenth floor. What I'm saying is Kaminga cannot be ignored. Whatever role he's in is as important as hell. And I think right now, with this change in his specific role, which I understand, has me thinking upstairs in his his head yeah. is he's he's dealing with a lot. Well. More than the game. Yeah. So he's out there, but right. he's not really out there. Yeah. So I'm hoping I'm wrong right. because that won't be the best Kaminga that we've seen. That's mm -hmm. all. It ain't no, it's, so, and the worry is and losing. Would, and that's would, the worry. And what I would tell you is, yeah, that's what happens when you rely too heavily on a 21-year-old uh -huh. with no experience who, who starting most of the year, and now you got to ask him to come off the bench and he might not be as effective. Yeah. yeah, those are the kind of things that get you beat in the postseason. And we don't know how fresh those knees I kind of agree are with feeling. This. I kind of agree with this 415. Give it to him. What, what is this obsession with Kaminga? How did he get to obsession? It, it, there really is. No, I just... He's not ready to ask, play right now. But... As a starter. Yeah, oh, oh, gotcha. But, According to Steve Kerr, not but, me. But tomorrow... Not me. I, I, but can I just say something? I think it, I'm like, taking offense to the word, not from you, starter. Damn it, he's going to have an impact on that game, or he's not. Hopefully, and right. for them to be the best version right. of themselves, right. we need him to be on. So admit I don't, it. I don't care. Admit it. You're more worried that he can be impactful off the bench than as a starter. Right, and okay. I think we, we've been lost the last couple of games. And that's one where there's only two choices. Jonathan, we'd love for you to be more effective if you can come off the bench. Yeah. But if you can't, you're not oh, playing. There's no, and, and I hope I don't sound like I was lobbying for that. I understand what's going on. I'm wondering if he can grasp it at 21. I'd like to think so. But if you think it, he's looking at it as a demotion, that worries me. Well, and again, there's two parts of this. To me, it's less about him feeling like it's a demotion. He can rally from that. Uh, okay. It's more uh, about the practical difference between a guy who started for the second half of the year, who's 21 years old, who now, as this we approach the biggest game time. of the year. Right. Okay, you're coming off the bench. And let me, oh, I know where I'm against it. And last year, deal with him it. not being a part of, for whatever reason, the Lakers series, and here we are now, and, you know, he, there's not, I'm not saying it's exactly last year, but all the stuff he's built this year to kind of not go all the way away. If I'm him, I'm like you're those right. ghosts are coming back a little bit. Okay. Well, how are you going to handle it? Go out of there and play some okay. good ball. Like, to me, th this is money time for Kaminga. No. Like, if he stinks tomorrow but plays hard, I'm okay with it. And this is where my feelings get hurt. I'm okay Dude with likes it. likes Kaminga because he jumps out the gym. What does that mean? It means you like him because he's super athletic and he dunks. Wow, Grandy. And you ignore any possible... <laughs> oh, Grandy with weak. a three. He doesn't have the ha-ha. <laughs> Who? That's the problem. Who don't have the ha-ha? Kaminga. He got the ha-ha-ha. When he goes... Ha -ha is a change of direction. <laughs> He does <laughs> not change direction. But That's the highlight. Oh, his problem. You know, he can't the, change direction the off the dribble. Oh, That's boy. why he needs to work on but his he's handles. A Steiner, he's a show when he's going. Right, but air. he's not ha-ha. <laughs> he, ha-ha is for, reserved for guys who can handle the ball. 888-957-9570. That segment brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. I'm what you might call very good at hide-and-seek. This one time, my parents had to round up the whole neighborhood to track me down.
Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Return of the Mac. I just don't for the life of me. You know how you say, Steiny? Is that and how and I sound? And then, and then you go, or is there nothing to see here? There's nothing to see here. I mean, seriously. Unless you value individuals over the team, there's nothing to see here. Like, and, honestly. You know I'm not one of them. Well, I don't understand what the discussion is. There's Is there anybody out there right now that's advocating that Jonathan Kaminga starts? No. Okay. Right. Then there's only one thing to see. How does he react coming off the bench tomorrow, possibly no Friday? Doubt. Okay. That's all I was saying. That's right. what has me nervous. Okay. Especially well, the caveat don't of you if think, you allow don't, this. Don't, don't you ever look at it like, well, Jonathan's going to show us a lot about himself in the next wow. week. I Maybe I he'll show us so much, we'll know whether we want to keep him here long term or whether he's not in our plans. Okay. And I'll just tell so, you this, I'm being real. Go out and play. I, I cited the Portland game. Which wasn't a tryout for him. Okay, he had an off game or what have you, his first game back. And then I thought about yesterday, oh, for, it just seemed odd to me. That's all. So I was trying to connect the dots, which I'll never know if I'm right. But, Steiny, for this team to reach its heights and, and cause some noise and even he be needs sacked to come tomorrow, off the bench. No doubt, okay. but be effective coming off the bench. He can't be a zero. That, that was my whole thing and what we talked about last segment. That's all. I get where he's at. I'm just. Asking you, did he think you think he has the the know how, or is he feeling some kind of way? And Monty said, we, Monty Pool joined us earlier at eleven. He said he doesn't think this is pouting or anything. So maybe he's Might just getting be. reaccustomed or accustomed maybe he to won't. this new role. Maybe and, he won't, and, and that's what maybe he'll come him. off the bench well. tomorrow, be lousy, and the Warriors lose. And that's my and then nightmare. what? And then do, and then what will we say? I'll tell you what we'll say. Kerr. Oh, we got a so super chat. Kaminga's yeah. confidence. Wow. And that, of yeah. course we will. $1.99 Please. from the wisest guy. Trey Kaminga become a better team. And that's why I'm sure he don't mean that. $1. I mean, that's where there's nothing to see here. Yeah. They are better defensively with Trace Jackson Davis. I hope you know I believe that. All right. All well, right. then, I guess, I guess that's the part that I think is interesting. Is we all, 90% of the people out there see... Why it has it's to, going it, like right, it's going. Right. But yet, oh, well, we got to have him. And that's what Steve Kerr's saying. No, the guy we have to have is mm -hmm. Wiggins, not Kaminga. Well, I guess it I was hurt, looking at it from all but hands it makes on sense. deck, too. He's 21 yeah. years yeah. old. Yeah, but he's going to stand Kerr it? doesn't think he's ready yeah. for that. But if Being he falls out, he, he, can, he can turn what we think 18 into 25. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. Like that, when he checks in the game tomorrow I mean, here's, night, Stanley, Here's the bottom line. He, he here's could, what he, it really sounds yeah, like. He ain't going you don't try, You don't believe in Kaminga coming off the bench. Like you're worried he can't do it. No. And if you're worried no, about no. he can't do it, well then no, shouldn't we no. worry about the long term? No. See, I'm just following the paper trail. And right or wrong, what we do know is Kaminga will not bite his tongue. Somehow we'll find out how he's feeling. And he excelled to great heights this year. I can't take anything away from him. I'm not trying to do that. Steiny, when you say I don't trust him, I don't. Because I feel like a 21-year-old who was playing his ass off up until him getting hurt and cracked the starting lineup might be, not on purpose, fighting himself. And then when you go out on the court and you're playing against something okay. other than the opponent, okay. maybe your best doesn't show. Okay. And well, I do start care about him this so that team. he's happy. I didn't say start him. <laughs> I, no, you can't do that. That's when you say, I am who you think I am. Oh, you, Guru, you, you know, want him to start. No. You know all the answers to the questions. No, I don't. We, we don't do. know what we're going to get from him come uh, tomorrow night. And I'm right. telling you, starting or not, it's still hella important that he play efficiently. Well, That's what I'm saying. And I guess what I'm telling you is I wouldn't expect Kaminga and Wiggins to log heavy minutes from this point on together. Yeah. And you know I know that. So right. and and that ship is sailed. Listen, I, I could be wrong. This is what we're going to do all day tomorrow. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And what I think is, if I had to make a prediction, Steve Kerr will give Wiggins a longer leash, maybe even the normal, if the game's a higher stakes game, 
than he will Kaminga. Like, I think he'd keep Wiggins on a long leash and Kaminga on a short leash in a one-and-done type situation. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we come in here Wednesday and Kaminga played 36 minutes and he had 25 off the bench. And I'll tell you what, Wiggins was inconsistent that game because the right on the table is he had been. Wiggins has figured it out. And there's no, Stani, when you talk about a guy that's helped a team win a title, whatever number important he was to Steph Curry, as opposed to a 21-year-old, I was always going to lead towards the Wiggins that when he's on. That, I mean, that's conventional I mean, wisdom. I mean, Steve Kerr could get in. Hey, what do you think about playing? He's like, he might say, I can't play them together tomorrow. I can't yeah. play them tomorrow. And like, I, I would not be right. shocked. How come? How come, Steve? Well, because neither of them rebound. So I've got to keep a. I've got to have one of my forwards rebound. I just have to. Oh my god! So yeah. it's like there'll I'll, be reasons why Kaminga plays or doesn't yeah. play tomorrow. Alnetta Harrison on the YouTube chat, Donnie. Can we say something positive about J.K. with a smile face? We've given him. I've given him all the love. So have you. I'm just telling you, Alnetta. The biggest compliment I'm giving J.K. is whatever role, and it's probably going to be coming off the bench. They need him at his best tomorrow. That was my greater so, point. So when you say probably coming off the bench. Well, he's coming off the bench. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Why? Because they're, they're better. All right. If all that, right. Yeah. So, like, that's that. Yeah. That's that. They're better with him coming off the bench. Okay. So come off the bench, Jonathan, and make an imprint. What? Like, that's, okay, gotcha. That to me is, like, I got my, a question my, for my little 11-year-old used to say, period, end of sentence. No, We're better when Kaminga comes off the bench. Regardless of how he plays. Well, you've been better when he wasn't even an option. Exactly. Were, so, so deal with it, Jonathan. Yeah. Make yourself valuable as a sixth man. Cause if and if you're true if you're right, we, we need Kaminga. Well then if he doesn't deliver, they're in trouble. Yeah, that yeah. And well, I'll, say the this, NBA. I'll say this moving forward. Uh let's not act like there's no pressure, and I'm not saying you are or we are on Andrew Wiggins to continue for it to be this way. Because if Wiggins were to start to, let's just, I'm being proactive. You win two games, you get in. And in game two, Wiggins were, were coming in here. He's like, ah, oh, it's just K-Wig. Wiggins could get that back. I mean, Kaminga could get that back. I think there's a really good chance that Kaminga, let's say the Warriors get to the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a very good chance Kaminga would be more valuable to the Warriors in a seven-game playoff uh, yeah, that'll uh, be tomorrow okay. or Friday yeah. because it's one and done. The minute totally. you get to game one, if you get to game one oh, against man. Oklahoma All City, are, okay. now you have wiggle room. Yeah. Now you can live a little more with Kaminga, or you can See, I give guess him a that's what we agree on. Without We didn't bring up if but they got to the But never at the seven. expense of a team. Never. I'm sick of this bending over backwards who, for this 21-year-old. you hear it at? You! No. Stop. Like, seriously. Stiney, if they're stop. better without him, if they're better with him coming off the bench, then he comes off the bench. And that's that's how I feel, too. But you're too worried about how he'll react. Oh. Well, that doesn't mean I'm lobbying for, for that not to happen. I'm if like, he, you got to show up. If he can't handle coming off the bench, yeah, you gotta he's show telling up. you everything you need to right. know about him moving forward. Right. All right, coming up on the other side, crossover. Steiny, Guru, Willard, Dibbs. Is everybody here today? All right, we got all four on 95.7. Oh, the game. That segment was brought to you by Alameda County Probation Department. Want a career with purpose, great pay, outstanding benefits, and a promising future? The Alameda County Probation Department is seeking dedicated people to make a difference as a juvenile...
all clean. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All right. Uh, Crossover time. Steiny and Goo, Dibs and Willard, 95.7 The Game. You guys never cease to amaze me, man. Why? What we do now? I'm just, I come in this morning, uh, Chipper. Shout out Chipper Jones telling Steiny I kept my Ooh, foot on the pulse of the Masters. Chipper Jones. I watched it all solo dolo. Yeah. Scheffler's won two of the last three. And I just throw his name around, and all I hear is he's not Tiger. He doesn't have a personality. Well, and nobody, like, nobody's Tiger. But I guess what I'm saying is we like the Draymond Greens in. Everything is wrestling. You can't just go about your business and be Tim Duncan and be a stud, and we come in here. Like, Tiger used to win by 100 strokes, allegedly, right? So what's the difference with Scheffler, who... Kind of one going away. I mean, what? It's kind of like what we were talking about last week when when I was saying that uh, you know a lot of people after the Caitlin Clark thing are like, you know, women's basketball is here, and it's like it is in a different way. But but no, this is actually about Caitlin because she's a TV character. Scotty is going to struggle to be a TV character. He literally got finished with the Masters victory and went to a press conference and said, "I really want to just." Does go that home. affect right. his greatness? Right. Now, no, no. Okay. No, uh, and 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 Steiny just brought up the name Tim Duncan. It's a very very TD. good comp. Great call. Scott Scotty's not there yet, but he looks like he's on his way. I mean, no. he's legitimately fantastic, but he didn't like. I watched his <laughs> eyebrows the entire day, and neither one of them ever raised. He was just on a Sunday stroll. Yeah, and if you know the sport, you could tell at the eighth hole this thing's cooked. Oh wow! They're all tied, and this thing's cooked because he is a robotic destroyer. Yeah. Oh. And like the rest of the guys, we're not going to be able to hang. Well, I just can't wait to get home and see my <laughs> wife. You know, she's gonna have a baby, and this is nothing like the wrong fourth. With that, nothing dude. wrong with nothing that. Nothing wrong with it. But like, oh, this is like you know the fourth most important thing in my world. You know, oh. this and. Oh my God! Didn't Rendon say that? And we came oh, down his road. Me. I thought so oh happened. boy! Me too. I thought People Curry don't, was but, out tomorrow. Geez, you can <laughs> say that when you're amazing exactly. and you win. You can't say that when you're okay. hitting a buck ninety eight. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Well, I agree with you. Yeah. That's that's. It's just the way it is. He's not a great TV Blue character. Jones. He's a hell of a golfer. Wow. Yeah. Hell of a golfer. And I'd rather he wins than someone named Ludwig, who we met four days ago. I'm sorry. I hope that doesn't yeah. rub that anyone wrong. Or someone way. named Bryson, who oh. I was rooting against well, uh, of with course, that, all my heart. But that's different. I'm talking about wow. golf is the only sport. It is the only sport where you can go, okay, we're, here we go. It is the weekend of the year. Let's sit down, yeah. and we're going to root for the champion of the year, and someone shows up you've never heard of. That's It'd be the like the, the Niners played the Chiefs like in the Super Bowl, right. and they introduced you to their quarterback that day. Wow. You're like, who? This person's going to win the whole thing? Ludwig? With a little dot over his last name, and oh, I yeah. don't even know what yeah. the hell that means? That's golf. That's only golf. Wow. I always root against those guys. I'm I like, it's not your turn yet. I text Evan last night, can you get the sound where I told Stani I got Scheffler this morning? He goes, that's like saying the Jordan Bulls were going to win. Totally. totally. <laughs> no, it was like that. I said, oh, oh, the God, walking in. It was like, a favorite. It was the a Golden favorite. State Warriors have just signed <laughs> Kevin Durant. I think hey, they're going to win it this I year. I predict Warriors. I was just walking in yeah. like my man won. Yeah. He goes, not exactly. You asked me on Wednesday, and I told you, you uh, my two picks were Rory, and R.I.P., uh -huh. and uh, Scheffler. So, you also you thought I, uh, you thought Spieth might be ready to roll. Yeah. Jordan. Whoa, whoa. Spieth's not Jordan. ready to roll. No. Yeah, that wasn't no. good. Not that ready to good. roll. Nope. Let me ask you this. Uh, you feel, when we left for the Warriors game on Friday. Oh, boy. If you remember how you felt on Friday, you feel better or worse today? Uh, worse. Worse. <laughs> worse. Uh, worse. That's what worse. But, yeah. but the funny thing is, is in a way, this is going to sound silly because they got to win two games, which is crazy hard. But there is the path to the matchups that's... being the absolute best they could be. I, I would say I could, I feel worse, but I could feel even worse. If this game tomorrow night was in L.A., I'd feel way worse than I do with it being exactly what your boys say. Yeah, they should win tomorrow night. <laughs> right. They should. 
Right. Someone can get hot. Someone get hot. What about Friday? (laughs) That's a probably not. If it's New Orleans, you got action. What was that yesterday? You got no action. You got no action. New Orleans came here and they took you apart systematically. They took you apart piece by piece, and you played everyone, and you tried for that win. Oh no, Kaminga! Oh oh, yeah, my fault. Well, there'll be no Kaminga tomorrow either. Maybe, well, right? Maybe 11 I'm minutes. We get him in there. No, no, they better. Is that where Guru we are? Thinks, Guru thinks, and I wonder how you guys think on this. I'm proud he of feels, you. Hope, hopefully you got it. No, <laughs> <he's>, <laughs> I don't think I, 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 Hold on. I'll listen. Okay, I think, on, okay. okay. He thinks it would be discernibly worse if the Warriors lose tomorrow as opposed to win tomorrow, lose Friday. And I said... I think a week from now, nobody will care Right, that it was right. either to sack or the Lakers. Ah, uh, can I, can I? Other than, other than, God, we just don't want the little brother Kings oh, to do it. Can I split the two yeah, points and go can. right down the middle? I don't know if I would use the word discernibly worse, but it's worse. <laughs> at, at, well, he didn't, I use discernibly. Okay. Right, it's right. De- it, it's no monk or two, you're missing two of your guys. Yeah, you're like, you're favored. You're favored. You're favored. Two and a half, two and a half. But you're favored. You are a road but, favorite but, against a wounded but, non-DNA team. Like to me, when you put yourself in ten, how it yeah. how you don't make it. I, I'm with you like four years from what now. About, it'll just be like they lost uh, in the play in tournament. Again. Right. But but again. you do oh, it too. Yeah. Think about the last yeah. time they were in this. You remember. You remember that there were two losses. Yes. You remember each of them separately. 16-point lead on the Lakers. Yeah. And blew it. So, like, I, 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 you know, if they were to win tomorrow night and, and then let's say they go to New Orleans or L.A. and, you, you know, you lose by three, wow. I mean, it'd be gut-wrenching. But <laughs> what about for the big picture? Yeah, probably this, probably yeah. pretty similar. You mean as far as what the Warriors do yeah. next? Right. Yeah, it's flat I mean, out not good. I told them I think they already know, Dibs, what they're doing. Probably. Of course they do. Okay, that's Probably. what we yeah. are. What do you think they're doing? Well, I mean, Chris Paul, bye-bye. And Kevon Looney, thanks, but we're going to pay you the 2 or $3 million, apparently. What about uh, Clay? That's the question. And, you know, Clay, they have a number, and they offered him 24 and he said, no, thank you. So what do they offer him now? 24 and a quarter? Mm. I mean, they're not offering them 30. Chris and Allen just got paid. It yeah. was 17. Dibs. Exactly. You you don't pay as much attention to the text line as some others. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. I ignore the text line. Okay. okay. I've been doing that. Why are you a textist? I'm not a textist, Dibbly. but the people who text on the text line are normally trying to get you. Oh, and I don't need to be got. How is that then you get them. Is that different than Twitter or YouTube? or? T- <laughs> yes, uh, yes. It is? Yes, because on those <laughs> platforms, you have to actually put your name on it, on on the text uh, line. And, uh, oh, that's interesting. I mean, read the number. It's 925. <laughs> you don't read it, Stan. You don't have to it's... put your name on it. You have to put a <laughs> name on it. Correct. At and ZZ Zwick Zoo Zaza Boo Boo is like, he thinks fine. you're an idiot. Yes. Like, who can't? I mean, and that's anyway. fine. That's what and they're there I for. believe that <laughs> Uncle Looney is not first name Uncle and last name Looney. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but at least those people have to, like, put some, some put sort of an identity on it. Somebody just took exception to the word dismantle. Right. They did not dismantle. They went crazy in the second quarter. The Warriors had nine turnovers. Oh, Friday night. And Zion largely was useless. He says dismantle is a huge exaggeration. Did I say dismantle? (laughs) You might have. They they lost by five points. But if Curry had a close game of those threes, they win that by 50. What would have, could have, should have. But it was like that. Close basketball game. New Orleans showed you yesterday that, that, that they are not infallible. Like, the beauty of these Western Conference playoffs just go in the last, Steiny, since we all them. left here. Yes. I could count five games where you look at a team that was on their home floor and you go, what the hell are yeah, you doing? Well right. What was Minnesota doing yesterday? Yeah. Oh, Even that's Denver, Denver on Denver Friday. Denver lose yeah. to the oh Spurs. Yeah. 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 New Orleans, you do all that work last week to build into the sixth seed. And, and then you go out there at home and you're down by Thirty or something, but they're yeah. better on the road, just like the Warriors are than at home. Okay, fine, but like I I, you know, there there were a bunch of games where you're looking at teams going, "Come on, man, are we afraid of this? Like what on yeah. earth?" <laughs> right. So everybody's capable of that in the West, and everybody's capable of an amazing game, which is why this playing tournament 
is pretty damn sexy this and week. And you don't get Denver if you win if you get that. That's eight. big. Right. That's big. That's well, crazy, I mean, let's you not even talk about uh, that. You get the team that I wanted. Right. I you want. haven't you <laughs> haven't earned the right <laughs> to <laughs> talk about no. a no. playoff team. <laughs> but yet. tomorrow night you have. If yeah. you win tomorrow, then you're one Friday. game away from OKC. And I will talk about it because that's the team. I'll meet you halfway. All right, fine. Well, you'll Uh, be five point dogs no matter who you face on Friday. I disagree with that. I would be. That's if it's the the same same texter says. Depends on how they look. I'm really sorry. I've thanked and agreed with Dibs many times in the past, but he's never read a text once. So. That person actually has been super complimentary towards you in the past. Appreciate it. Prove it. Yeah, I Truly, believe. It. I'd like to see the screenshot. You could click on the number and you could see their uh, their or history. Just, or That's just read the yeah. number. Read You're the listening number to ninety five seven The Game KGMZ <laughs> FM and HD One San Francisco. Uh, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch, and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. One thing we found today is there are a lot of people more uh, that think Jonathan Kaminga is more important than the Golden State Warriors. That's one thing we're finding today. More important than what? Than the team. Will or don't fall for? Oh, okay. <laughs> more important. <laughs> It's more about him yeah. than it is about no, the team. Stop, God forbid Can they lose do tomorrow. It. Seriously, uh, now, God forbid they lose tomorrow and Kaminga only plays 16 minutes. I heard a rumor yeah. about your opinion. I didn't get to oh, listen to everything boy. today. and I, So I want to know if this was accurately shared with me. Steiny believes that Kaminga yesterday with his four shots was trying to send a, a Kobe-style message. No, Is I never said accurate? Kobe. No, okay, never well, said just, Kobe. Was he trying to send a message, period? So I said, Kaminga seems out of sorts. Okay. And yesterday, I said, why did he not shoot? Oh, he was trying to get others involved. That's what the boss said. And I said, huh, the last person we said that about Kevin was Kevin Durant. When everybody said, oh, there's nothing to see here. He's just trying to get guys involved. But then we found out later... That he was a little bit miffed about people saying he shot too much and his role. So okay. I so have. Do you believe he was trying to send a message? I believe get, he's get, out of sorts. Getting others involved is that's funny. Jonathan yeah. Kaminga is not out there. Right. Right. I think he had a seven season seven high seven assists. Assist. He's yeah. the new point guard. Right. Yeah. Is yeah. what yeah. he is. Yeah. I think Kaminga's. You think he's upset? What? I, I'm, I'm trying to. What word yeah, do you want to yeah. use? What do you, I, I want to know? He what, said out I, of sorts. Yeah, I, but, but out of sorts. M- what does that mean? What, like, it means that regardless of his attitude right now, mm-hmm. whether he's attacking this from maturity or whether he's despondent, it doesn't matter. He's he now has to find a way to be effective off the bench, most likely in a little less playing time than he's had three weeks ago, and that concerns and, me. And like, brother. And, like, it may concern you, but that's it. That's the end of the story right now. Why does that concern you? It it concerns me from this this vantage point. I don't know if he's mad. I'm not. We had Monty Poole on at 11 o'clock. He said he doesn't think he's pouting or trying to send a message. Okay. And what's scaring me is the Portland game, Dibs, it felt like something. Sometimes you could play yourself, your own mind. You could be your worst own right. enemy. And there's no doubt behind closed doors. He you knows I got hurt. I come back. I'm not starting. But Willard, I don't know if he can master being the the the, the dark knight, Jonathan Kaminga, who captivated us coming off the bench. Now, he gets the benefit of the doubt. And I think for this team to reach his full potential, he has to ma- uh, master that. Whether it be 18, 25, we'll find out tomorrow. But looking 0 for 4 in the port game and then Friday he didn't play and they needed his his youth Friday I'm just scratching my head he asked me the biggest fear and I'm like Jonathan is still important but as a 21 year old can he be the best he can be in this new role which just happened on the fly so that and he may master it will but that concerns me if upstairs is he looking around like, that's not telling anybody. I was just starting to hurt my knees or tendinitis, and now I'm de- relegated they to the don't bench. don't give him 35 can we, million. Can we so dive in for a second? Oh, do we need to do the thing? He did it. He I did, did it. it. Okay. Yeah. Do, uh, can we dive in for a second about, because we did this with Clay for a while, and Clay mm-hmm. would be the first to tell you, the difference between, quote, unquote, the role as a starter okay. off, yeah. off the bench is totally mental. Wow. Wow. They're, what else is there? You go play basketball with the same teammates yeah. that you always no, play. Right. 
and almost the same number of minutes. I, I don't think we should be giving these guys an out tomorrow night. Oh, but he had to do it off the bench. So what? So what? Chris, well, he's 21. Chris, Chris so. Paul had never... No, but my point is, is yeah. that I'm not saying it won't change him, but if it is, that's between the ears. And that's what and we if it's told between about. the ears, what I'm saying is then that it's a demerit. A 21-year-old is different than a 35-year-old in terms of like what you want for a role. Right. So a 21-year-old who's waiting for that first big bag, oh. he's thinking, and I, I'm not going to put myself in his mind, but if I was in his spot, I'd be thinking, give me 32 minutes and let me go out there and eat and get that big bag because the big bag is waiting for him. Right, but that's as opposed what, to Clay, who's made a quarter billion dollars right, in the association. The, the other way to look at that, though, is Clay is sitting here going, "This is disrespectful." While Jonathan could only be thinking, "Well, this is just a momentary blip. Like this is a game. It's one game. He's been on the bench here for like right. three games. Yeah. Big deal." I mean, honestly, everybody wants the bag. Everybody wants 32 minutes. Moses Moody wants 32 minutes in a new contract, too. He's not going to get it. And to me, in life, when you don't have what you want, if you pout, bleep you. Like, go out there and do something with what you've got and force the hand. This is what I've always said about young players, why I never understood the Trey Lance conversation. You can't hide talent. If you're awesome, you'll make it on the field. They'll put you in. They're just as motivated for you to do well as you are. They're not trying to save money. They're the Golden State Warriors. They're worth $7 billion. The money's there if you earn it. But if you, if, if somebody says you need to like come in halfway through the first quarter and instead of playing 29, you're going to play 26, and that kills you mentally, you're weak. Well... Just to play devil's advocate, okay. he, might, he might say, well, I don't play with the same guys when I come off the bench. I don't get to play with the starters. Um, but the other thing here to me is it's I, I just don't I just don't get it. They're better. They like Steve Kerr thinks they're better with Trace Jackson Davis at center. Like Gosh, if, if he wants you? if yes, we okay, all do. Absolutely. We all agree. All right. So if he wants to mollify Kaminga. Tell him the truth and say, Jonathan, it's not you. It's us. Right. We found, right. unfortunately, yeah, it's a classic we, break we, we found, worth. like, you, we love you in the starting lineup, but uh, you're not going to believe this. We found something better, especially defensively with Trace Jackson Davis. We're a better team. Okay. Now, Jonathan, can you take us to a level even beyond that? Yeah. How? Come off the bench and be a sixth man like an old-fashioned sixth man who can come out and get you 18 in 22 right. minutes. Right. If you can do that, now we get two levels yeah, above well, where we were I mean, when you were the starter. He can, can do can it. Can you do it? The game in December that actually forced Steve Kerr's hand and led to the Shams tweet and all of that was a game in Portland where he had been told you're not in the rotation. Yeah. Right. And then someone right. got hurt. And he played the entire second half and won them a basketball game. That's when game. I went on my rant. Right. Yeah, I was, yeah. And I thought, now that is a great, that's a great feather in his cap because that's staying ready and that is, that's how you channel motivation. You might be ticked off about something. You don't go pout. You don't go yell behind the scenes. You go out on the court when your opportunity knocks and you M&M the darn thing yeah. and force your way in. Mom's and spaghetti. That's what he did. And so that was great. So I'm not accusing him right now of being weak. You guys, this yeah. was a hypothetical. Yeah. Um, he, he should be fine tomorrow night. Yeah. And if he's not, that's... So that's something that I would remember right. into the offseason. Well, Let's last time they way. went to that's Sacramento in, in this kind of a spot, that he had to be coaxed into getting on the bus, right. uh, reportedly. <laughs> you know, Steph Curry with the big yeah. speech about, you know, who's with me, get on the bus, and if you're not, then don't. And that was directed, you know, at least partially at him. I, and I, yeah. I think there's a big, big thing here, too, is it's not like if he comes out and pouts, first of all, he's, he's not smart gonna, enough he's not, not going to do right. that. I don't right. think he's going to do that. It's huh. going to be about the actual practicality of him in a different role this late in the season when the games are really high leverage. And the one thing I'm going to be looking at is how much playing time Kerr's going to give to Kaminga and Wiggins at the same time. Because that, to me, is what I find most interesting. If everything Kerr said this season, which is two or three times about how they're just not in love with those two on the floor at the same time because of some redundancy. Well, then 
are we looking at a case of Wiggins plays 32 minutes and Kaminga plays 16? Mm. Probably not. Hope not. That's drastic. Yep. But is it 33 and 22 so that they only overlap three to five? And it minutes? could be vice versa well, if Wiggins right. is Mr. In. Sure. Not that and he's rooting for that, but we've seen that's right. what I'm really right. looking for. Yeah. That's dangerous. Take it from somebody wow. who rode the pine in high school quite a bit. That's like dangerous. When you go out on the floor... And the first time you let the ball fly, you're immediately like, if it doesn't go in, I'm getting like pulled. a tryout yeah, yeah. almost. It's, it's hard, and that's yeah. the one thing I worry about with these two guys, which is if in each game you're sending them out there in the first Man. half, and it's like, okay, whoever plays better gets the second the half. Ball gets heavy. That's tough. That's but a that, tough thing to hang over their head. That is, <laughs> that's where I wonder, though. I think if Steve, if you ask Steve Kerr, if Wiggins is great and Kaminga's great, are the which makes the Warriors better? That's a good question. I Wiggins think he would say me. Wiggins. Yes. Yeah. Probably. And so, He's older and more seasoned. So no, if, no shade of Jake. And better on both sides. If Kerr thinks that Wiggins is the guy who gives him the chance to best reach their potential, then he may give Wiggins a longer leash so as to get that player who he thinks can elevate him a little yeah. higher than maybe Kaminga would. Probably. Yeah. I mean, Samal is like a game seven in baseball. No doubt. How long do you stay with exactly. your starter when he gives up two runs exactly. in the first? Bye. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Drought. No and feelings. Maybe, but also maybe, you know, and I'm not ruling this out. Kaminga comes off the bench and helps him win a game. Wins the game. Uh, completely. Because we've seen that. Yeah. Yep. Am I, he scoffed at me. I know we're up against it. No, you're fine. <laughs> no you know GP2. That. You're not up against anything. No GP2 tomorrow. And right. if they win, fry. Yeah. Like, he is one of your best. And Scott, yeah. come on. That just, that's not good. That's all no, I'm saying. Who, guard, you can't who win. guards De'Aaron? Uh, and or he's or gonna, if you get to Friday, well, and GP2 bothering LeBron or whoever. Yeah. And Fox is going to play probably 46 I just, minutes that, That's mind-boggling that he's out, we know, for those yeah. two possible yeah. games. Well, yeah. And Monk's out for the Monk's, Kings. Yeah, which <laughs> I'll take that trade, by the way. As much as I love and, GP2. And this is the same guy <laughs> who texted on Friday killer. and said, why, did, why didn't he play Moody more? His texts come play, to you like that, he'll too? Play, no, he'll this. play Moody tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Moody's going to play tomorrow. Oh, boy. Guaranteed. No, nah, he is. Guaranteed. Yeah. All right. It's going to be a fun yeah. uh, I was gonna we'll say week. Hopefully. Hopefully. Sure. It's a fun week yeah. on 95.7. <laughs> uh, the game. They're longtime friends. Let me tell you something real quick about Dibs that I'm sure not everybody knows. <laughs> and first time partners. Hang in there, big guy. There'll be bright days ahead. Now these two homegrown Bay Area boys finally come together to take over sports talk. Get the hell off of my doorstep. Major League Baseball, you steam. It's Willard and Dibs <laughs> on 95.7 The Game. All right, tomorrow is automatically one of those games. These things happen in sports, and uh, it's not fair. Uh, that's the way it is. But um, this is automatically, it's already, it's already one of those games. This could be good, this could be bad. Um, but too much is going to ride on one night. So, no, And that's something that I think about. If they win or if they lose. Think about the opinions that are going to come out of tomorrow night. Based on how it looks, I mean, just look at the conversation we just had. What if? What? What? What if? What if Kaminga doesn't get to twenty minutes? What if Steph Curry looks tired? What if Clay Thompson shoots poorly? And what if they lose while GP two is in street clothes? Um, what if the rookies shine? What if they don't? We've reached one of those moments. It's just like uh, going to the eighteenth hole. The Masters tied. Or um, or pitching a game seven, you know, if your name's Clayton Kershaw or something like that, like all of these opinions potentially shading the entire off season, come down to one basketball game, one basketball game where who knows Harrison Barnes could get hot, score right. thirty nine points, right. and that's it. That could end the season right there. And so that's I don't think that's dangerous because I don't think the Warriors will do that. But this is one of those moments, and it's kind of it, it, it's fascinating because um, I think we should all admit it. You know, like you sit there right now. If I asked you your opinion, forget the money for a second. Right. Just, just, right. Do you think it's smart? Should the Warriors have Clay Thompson on the team next year or not? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Could that opinion change just tomorrow night? No. Okay. No. 
No? It's, no, for me, it, it, it comes down to the money, though. Three for 17. Fine. One for seven from three. It, I mean, clay is clay. Okay. So, okay. for me, it, it is about the money. So, it's hard for me to separate the idea from the money because if clay wants, you know, 30 million a year, then no. But if clay can, you know, be satisfied with a, a contract that keeps them under the luxury tax and maybe allows them to sign somebody else, then yeah. I'd rather have Clay here than Clay be gone. I'm with you. I'm with you. I Draymond's don't... a different question. Uh, well, what do you mean? I mean, I would love for Draymond to be gone. Gone. Draymond, awesome. Draymond, go bye bye. That's the last interview he does with you. Well, and the last interview he did with us was during the uh, the pandemic, right. which he did. Oh, I know. Because he was uh, sponsored by Subway. Got it. So he has not come on the station. I don't think since. And that was uh, Steiny Guru and Dibs, but if they're going to be this team, ten seed, eight seed, seven seed, whatever, uh, I'm good with Draymond being somewhere else. I've I've had enough okay. of Draymond Green being a warrior and going through what we've gone through with Draymond Green the last two years. Draymond Green has sabotaged one with a punch, one with a choke, one with a flail, and so for me, it's a question of you know. If you're gonna, if you're not gonna be that team anyway, I'd rather have a team that I enjoy watching, and I I don't enjoy watching Draymond Green anymore. Um, he ruined two seasons in a row, basically. If they lose this week, right, right, or maybe even if they didn't, exactly. Even if they they you win, feel two that games. way? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I mean, he last year he he created a certain situation with uh, Jordan Poole that I think permeated the whole team. And, you know, this year he missed 20 games. So, I mean, I don't know if you could say that he ruined two seasons, but he definitely made two seasons more difficult than they should have been. Um, I guess. I don't know. Sometimes I look at that one and, and it's a little, this is a little bit of like, it's it, the knife is sharp on both ends. Right. Right. Because it's like, he ruined this season because he wasn't there. But then the same person, if you're anti Draymond, will line up all the times that he wasn't there and and be like, look how well they play without you. Well, it's like, okay, if you play that well without him, then missing 20 games doesn't ruin the season. Um, or even if I just look at it at face value, you ruined the season because you weren't there. Well, that means that if you're not there, you're not good. So why would the Warriors want you not there? You know what I mean? That's the power that Draymond has always had. Right. The second you say, we got to move on from Draymond, you become a worse basketball team. And that's just true. That's why That's why Steph has felt the way he's felt. It's why the organization has behaved the way they've behaved. It's unforgivable. But we forgive him. Right. We forgive <laughs> him again. Yeah, it's and unforgivable. It's, you but forgive we, him because he's but, but we under forgive contract. Him. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly but, right. I mean... I look at the team this year, 46 wins. If he would have played all the games, aside from, you know, whatever injury and, you know, rest and whatnot, they probably would have 50 wins and they wouldn't be in the play in. But because of him, they're in the play in. So mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I like, I, I, again, especially when you look at it this way, I think, uh, is it five games separates the four seed to the 10 seed? Right. I think every single one of those teams right now, like you can hear, um, when the Sacramento, because now, of course, with this game being being set up, a lot of those who cover the Kings have been coming on 95-7 the game all day. Right. You can hear it from them. They all think the exact same thing we do. You know, if this, and then if that, right. and then right. over here, and if I right, and I carry the two, then the Kings would have been the five. Right. That's the way, the if the Pelicans had just not laid an egg yesterday, Jeez. they'd have been the six. They wouldn't even be in this tournament. But they are. So, I don't know. Sometimes I I pause with the whole, like, the Warriors should be the five seed because they blew a lot of games. Yeah, they did. But blowing a lot of games is part of what you do when you're not worthy of being a top five seed. That's what happens. Right. That's why games are 48 minutes long. Exactly. But I, I look at why they blew a lot of games, and I look at why they – you know, didn't have Draymond Green for a month or more, and it's because of his inability to control himself, and it's been a, a theme, it's been ongoing, and so I think about next year, and if I had a choice between yes, Clay or no, and yes, Draymond or no, 
it'd be yes, Clay, and no Draymond. But I know Draymond would have to be traded, and that's wildly unlikely. But for now, it's focusing on Sacramento. Yep. They should win tomorrow. I mean, they should, right? Should win tomorrow. Well, we say that on on, on paper. I can't really tell right. you if they should have won a game until I watch the game. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to come out and say you should have won if uh, you know two of Sacramento's three point shooters go absolutely bananas. Right. Like, sorry. Right. You know what I mean? When the Warriors went to play L.A. in L.A. the other night, like, should the Lakers have won? I don't know. I mean, you could argue that they should have and that they lost by like 12 points and the Warriors had a record-breaking number of three-pointers. Right. So if they just have a normal shooting game, the Lakers would have won that game. But I'll never say you should if people just absolutely go crazy. And that's right. what is both nerve-wracking and totally beautiful about this play-in tournament. Like, I wonder if how many of you can do this. Um, and I think that were, were they talking about this earlier? Um, Guru was talking about you know like uh, one one word. What, how would you kind of describe? And and a lot of people look at tomorrow night and you go, "You're nervous." Right. I get that. Or do you see it from the other lens, which I guess maybe is more of a national lens? Dude, this is great yeah. stuff. Oh yeah. The Western Conference is just absurd this year, and this is going to be great theater, and it's going to be that much more sort of cherished if the Warriors come out of this. This will be completely like the Warriors and the NBA have figured out a, 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 an equation this year where if all they do is get to the first round, it'll be memorable. Right. You'll right. be like, remember when the Warriors made the first round? That was great. <laughs> I made popcorn. It was really fun. They made the first round. They made the first they round. They lost OKC in six, but it was great. Yeah. Like, it will be that if that happens. These, if there are two games right. this week, are going to absolutely be as tense as the NBA gives you. Well, it'll be that for whoever makes it through the play-in. You absolutely. Know, for the two teams that make it through the play-in, you know, certainly the 7-8 uh, loser, if they beat the 9-10 winner, it'll be, oh, wow, you know, we made it to the uh, the playoffs. But for me, it's it's bigger than that. And, you know, the Warriors, if they don't make it through this week and get into an actual series... We can ask uh, hard questions about that when we need to ask them. But right now, I look at Tuesday, tomorrow, and I think this is one you should win. And yes, a team, Probably. a team can get hot and you can be cold. And yes, one game, you never know. But on paper and even in, in actuality, they're better than the Kings. They right are now. better than the Kings. Right now. Yes, right now, exactly. they're better than the Kings. No doubt. Um, and the Kings are still, they're less adorable this year, by the way. They're still adorable. Why? Because they don't have confidence this year. Ooh. You have and to understand. It's not the first time, too. No, either. but you have, yeah, like yeah. what was adorable last year was all their little like, we're gonna. Sure. You're not gonna. And the beam and all they're, that. They're, they're, yeah. Like they're so <laughs> excited to be there. And now it's angsty again. It's like, uh, right, we're hurt and we're the nine and we're the underdog and the refs, we hate the refs. Ah, like it's yeah. all the same thing that Kings fans have been saying for 40 years is what it sounds like. It's less adorable. Right. Last year was just so cute. People were in the street with beers and there were lights and they were just like, this is great. Yeah. And, and they were the three seed too. They were the three seed. Yeah. It was like, wow, we might actually, no. With you two won't. more wins than they got this year where they're the nine seed. Wow. They were the three two seed more wins. with 48 wins. Jeez. And wow. this year they've got 46, and they're barely in this dance. Right. Yeah. And the Warriors had two more wins also, right? No, the Warriors had two less last year. Right. Two, two more this, this year. year. Yeah, that's and, my but point. But went backwards. They right. went from the 6 to the 10. Yeah, with two more wins. Yeah. yeah that's what crazy. I mean. That's yeah. what I mean about the Western Conference. This is one to remember, and um, it's going to be the best play in tournament that, that has ever happened, although this is only, is this year three? Year four, year I think. Year four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'll be the best one ever. Like, this is... When Ye sat down and went, what do you think about this idea? When they did that five years ago, yeah. this was what they hoped would happen. This. Not the East? <laughs> with a 36-win uh, Atlanta going up against 39-win Chicago? Not as compelling. No. Not quite as compelling. No. But this, where you ended up with 10 teams that were clearly better than all of the other teams. Even 11. Right. 
Well, yes. Houston was a 500 team. 500 team. but, but They'd be the ninth seed in the East. Right, but but the rest, the 10 teams are five games clear of Houston. Right. So clearly you had 10 good teams. The records are all good. Um, you've got great players. Like, just listen, the play-in tournament oh, alone. Oh, jeez, yeah. Look at the list, the Olympic team that you could build <laughs> off of On these. On play-in teams well, only. Just the play-in. Right? Just the Western Conference play-in. You could build an absolute Hall of Fame epic roster that would blow you away. Right. Easily. You could win a gold medal with players off of these four teams. Ingram, Zion, LeBron, AD, Steph, Clay, Draymond. Keep going. De'Aaron. Don't say Sabonis. Well, he's not American. He could be a bench warmer. Well, that's true. true. He's not American. Uh, Let's go to Ray and San Rafael. Ray, thank you for calling. (laughs) We'd love to hear from you today. 888-957-9570. Hey, Ray, what are you doing? Oh, you know, I I was thinking about two things. One is the, uh, remember that early season tournament? I forget what they even call it. Oh, the the mid-season? The The in-season. Yeah, Yeah. the in-season tournament. The in-season tournament. I mean, what are your thoughts on that these days? It's like, what was that, you know? Do you remember who won? I I think was it, I don't know. Was it Denver? No, it's not. LeBron James. (laughs) Do you remember it was it was the uh, Lakers and do you remember who they beat? Wasn't they didn't they beat Sacramento? No, that's incorrect as New well. New Orleans. The New Orleans. Yeah. That's right. It is an IST rematch. <laughs> it was tomorrow. Indiana. They beat right. Indiana. No, you're right. They beat New Orleans and then Indiana. Yeah. New Come Orleans on. was in there too. Come on. It was the Indiana Pacers in the end. Um but uh but anyway, it is an IST rematch yeah. tomorrow night. Yeah. And it is a uh it's an Anthony Davis trade rematch. Uh, tomorrow night, Pelicans and Lakers. You throw the records out; they don't oh, yeah. like each other. Yeah, Brandon Ingram revenge game. Here we go. Totally. Yeah, Ray. Did you have more? The other thing was just the you know it's this it, you kind of see it in business these days, but fractional leadership, and you'll see that kind of what the war like. There's different parts of the season where people stood up, and I mean, uh, you know, carried the Warriors for a couple of weeks. That doesn't play into the. If that doesn't do well for you know in the, into the playoffs, it's like who are we at this point? But I think they're they're on the upswing, and if they can get if they can hit the right stride, they might go pretty far. Uh, Ray, we'll see. I mean, that's got to be. There's one word right now that I've decided. It's the mantra word for the Warriors okay. for 2023-24. Ready? If. Oh, I thought you were going to go with hope. Nope. If. if. Every single sentence that you say has to start with an if phrase. If Wiggins can play at the elite level. They can go a long way. If Clay can get hot from three. They can go on a run. If Steph can be an MVP Steph. They're as good as anybody. If Draymond cannot get thrown out. Well, now that's funny. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) But that's what you have to do. No, you're right. Right? And you're going to have to do it like eight times in a row. Or, Or just once. And the Kings will have more points than the Warriors tomorrow night. No. It's possible. It's absolutely possible. So how is this hitting you? I just, like, this is a very unique sort of a vibe. They're 46 wins, but they're on the road the whole way. The Kings are the opponent. Um, whether it's their chances, whatever. 888-957-9570. We'll take your calls. Let's rock. Let's roll. Ramona Shelburne is on the show a little bit later today. Uh, we're all over the Warriors and the Kings, and it is adorable, and it's Willard and Dibs. The Floor Store is your Bay Area Flooring Authority. Selection, expertise, price, guaranteed installation. Visit floor-
Well, we're happy to have a shot, you know. Um, it could have played out a number of different ways today and uh, played out as it did, so we'll, we'll get ready for Sacramento. Hey, Dub Nation, it's Steve Kerr. And you're listening to Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. I mean, that's a, that's another thing. And um, I think when you're the best at what you do, you take whatever hand you're dealt and you sort of go, let's go. We got this. In other words, um, great example would be you and I both love golf. Yep. Okay? Yep. Um. First time, actually the only time. Only time I ever went uh, to the Masters as a fan. Okay. I'll never forget this. Hello, friends. BJ Singh hits the ball on, what is that par three that's kind of early? Six or seven? It's a long one. You know the course almost better than I do, even though I've been there. Whatever. Super long one, right? 240 yesterday. Yeah. So he hits it high right, and it goes into the bushes. Oh, no. All right? No. That's not good. No. And he goes over there, and, you know, it out of the leaves, and, yep. and it pops out, and it and it goes. Anyway, <laughs> he made a double or a triple bogey. Yep. And then he goes to the next hole, and, and who I was watching with goes, do you see that? And I go, what? And he goes, that dude just made a triple bogey at the Masters, and then he pulled out a banana. Right. And I was like, it's actually a really interesting point. Potassium. Well, important. sure. Yeah. yeah, you gotta replenish, Dibs. Always. But that's what the best do. They're like, this is what I was dealt with. I got this. And then whatever the result of that is, whoop, Ant Hill. We're gonna get re- here we go. Next yeah. hole. Let's go, let's go do this. I wonder that about these Golden State Warriors. Your champions, you've let everybody know all about it for two years. You hold four fingers up. You've said, I can't get out of bed for games in March. Um, you you tapped out of a huge game in Orlando. You get yourself thrown out. Uh, you made one of your brethren cry. Like all of these things have happened in recent months. And now I'm to believe, and I hope it to be true, that the Warriors, as Steve Kerr just said, are, are you know, happy to be here. Like, are you? Right. Because I think that affects the game tomorrow night. Like, if you truly are like, this is an opportunity versus, oh, hell, we got to go do this. Right. That Get little, on a bus. right. <laughs> that little sort of like turn to your mentals, I think, has everything to do with how this week goes. Right. Especially when you think about like what it means to go there and win. Okay. So you go to SAC and you win. And then you take a bus ride back, and now you have to get on a plane and go to either New Orleans or L.A. and win again just to get an actual series. So I wonder about the vets, you know, Steph and Clay and Dre. They have four rings, and Kavon's got three, and Wiggs has one. And, you know, these are veterans, and so you're, you're trying to get them. Chris Paul is 38, almost 39, and you're trying to get him to get ramped up for a play-in game in Sacramento after a bus ride. It's hard to think about like the big mountain that you would have to climb to actually get where you want to get. How do you feel about it? Like I wonder I that feel good. Warrior fan is tomorrow night fun? Is it an opportunity? Is it is it make nachos and invite the friends and open up <laughs> and have a beer? beer. Yeah. Is it that where you're like, okay, man, let's go, one and done, yes. turf war, yes. sack in Golden State, or are you like, I can't believe we're in this cockamamie thing. Are you kidding me? The Warriors can't make the playoffs without having to do a double dip this week? Right. I wonder. I wonder, you know, like I think you, doesn't matter, we're fans, it's not like we're going to affect the game. Right. But I think those sort of mental aspects of sports they they infiltrate even the locker room. You can only fake it to make it so many times. Right. You can right. only convince yourself. Yeah, well, hey, great. I can't believe this is such an opportunity. It's like <laughs> if you hit the ball in the woods eight times in a row, right. the eighth time you might be like, you know what, today's not my day. Right. So are the Warriors at that spot? Because this was the point I made last week on Thursday. There's so many of you who are like, they could go on a run, but they need to trade Wiggins this offseason. It's like, well, wait a minute, then you don't, right. you're not here. Are you here or are you there? In your mind right now, is tomorrow night, April 16th, 
or July 1st? For me, it's April 16th. Good for you. And it's because of, in large part, Sacramento. And the fact that it's Sacramento makes me a little bit more dialed in than if it was New Orleans or Memphis or, you know, the Clippers or okay. whatever else. Because it feels like it's a game that is a rivalry, quote unquote. And I know how much they want it. Mm -hmm. So based on what they want, I want to keep them from having what we have, which is success. So for me, it's the fact that it's Warriors Kings makes it a little bit more important, a little bit more charged up. Let's get this win tomorrow, and then we can worry about Friday and whoever it'll be. Then, if it's L.A., then I'll be even more ramped up oh, cool. because, you know, it's L.A. And if it's New Orleans, it'll still be a little bit ramped up because New Orleans just came in here on Friday and took away your chance to get the eight seed. I really, this is going to sound weird. Yeah. I really want the Lakers to win tomorrow. Like, big, 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 big time want the Lakers to win tomorrow. So they don't have to go to L.A.? It's twofold. Yes, I do think the Warriors have a better chance on a would-be Friday night in New Orleans than they do in L.A. I like that matchup better, number one. Number two, a win for the Lakers tomorrow night feeds them to the Nuggets, which is their nice. kryptonite. tonight. <laughs> it is. They can't beat the Nuggets. Ask Who a can? Laker fan. Well, maybe right. nobody. Yeah. Maybe nobody. But the Lakers cannot beat the Nuggets. So feed the Lakers to the Nuggets because what I don't want is... Like meat to the lion. Yeah, I don't, want to, I don't want the Warriors <laughs> to be in L.A. Friday night because if they are, A, I fear that they might lose. Right. And B, if they did lose, the Lakers would go play Oklahoma City and they might win that series oh, too. Geez. And then we've yeah. got the whole stupid, here we go with the Lakers out of the right. playing tournament and LeBron... But, just please stab me in the face with a fork. <laughs> I don't want to see that. I will. So go Lakers tomorrow night. Feed you the Nuggets because you're going to lose in five, even though I've already said there won't be any five-game series. Right. That might be the one exception because they can't beat that team. Jokic completely takes their size away from them, and the rest of the floor is just better. And they won't win in Denver because they're old and they'll run out of gas and all that stuff. Anthony will get hurt four times. It'll be a wonderful series. They'll lose. And... Gives the Warriors, I think, a little bit of a better puncher's chance. Puncher's chance no matter what. Sure. But a better chance in New Orleans Friday night. And then you win that and uh, a, a series in Oklahoma City against the Pups. Yeah. I think they're a very good team. Um, and I would still favor them against the Warriors. But that would be more interesting than facing Denver. I can tell for you sure. that. Yeah, for sure. And when the, more, the Warriors yeah. are not in danger of facing Denver, obviously. No, and more viable, I think, to uh, take on OKC and a team that I think has an average age of 23 and a half, according to their roster, one of the youngest teams ever to make the playoffs. And so, you know, your championship pedigree against the uh, the young pups, as you said. It'd be great. It'd be great. And I, I think that the uh, the tempo that OKC plays with is is dangerous, but... You know, if they're not on, all of a sudden the Golden State Warriors have a little chance with, you know, the veteran pedigree to slow it down and, you know, get into more of a grinder game and beat OKC. But long way to go between oh. now and then, you long know. Long way to go. Yeah. Give me your current percentage of the Warriors getting to OKC. I'd put it at uh, 25. Ooh. You thought it'd be higher? I did. Not a lot. 25. I thought you were going to say something more closer to 35, e which is that's kind of where I'm at. Tomorrow is a 60-40 game. Agreed. 60 you should win, 40 you might lose. I might even, I might even tick it up a little bit. Okay, but even if it's 60-40, then going to New Orleans, I would put that at like 35-65, and yeah. going to L.A. would be 30-70 uh, based on, Ugh. I think, what... I mean, L.A.'s a worse matchup, but... New Orleans came in here on Friday, and they kind of handled you. Uh, kind of. Yeah. It, it, tale of four quarters. Sure. Warriors and the second the first quarter were awful. Yeah, yeah. And then the absolutely awful second quarter. Warriors came right back in the third yeah. quarter. Fourth quarter got a little bit like, you know, toss-up-y. And, um, you know, you had a shot there in that last minute. Right. And it didn't go in. Nope. It didn't go in. But, you know, they're right there. Um, and that's, what, that's how a lot of these games are going to go. And that's, by the way, one of the reasons why I'm going to try real hard to, A, we've already got formed opinions, and B, whenever this whole thing ends, I want to form opinions based on all the things that I've, I've seen because 
It is literally ludicrous, this particular Western Conference, to start making broad strokes based on what happens this week. Right. It's kind of crazy that, that it all comes down to this. These teams, I find them to be so incredibly evenly matched, almost up and down the whole Western Conference. I think Denver, I set them apart, and then, you know, all the teams in the top four, they're a little bit better, but they're absolutely capable of stinker games, and everyone all the way down to the bottom is capable of an unbeatable game where, like, you play so well, like, no one on, no one on the planet is beating you on that night. They're all capable. And so the fact that now you get these games where it's like, ah, you lose. Right. You go home is crazy because <laughs> it's like, I have no idea what the hell's going to happen when these teams all get together. Yeah. Yeah. And the Warriors have to have two of those games where they're unbelievable or at least very good. Yeah. Tomorrow they're going to be very good. Right. Be very good. And then you get to Friday and then maybe you have to be very good or maybe you have to be unbelievable. And then you get into a seven game with OKC, and you'd have to be, you know, very good four times or at least better than them four well, times. Although and, I'll add, like, tomorrow night is also intriguing with that first game to watch. Like, this is going to sound ridiculous, but who comes out of it healthy? There's nothing but players made of glass in that game. Anthony Davis, I will shock you with this if you haven't looked it up. Okay. Do you know how many games he played this year? Like 75? He. Is that the number? Look at the big brains on Dan. <laughs> I just ballparked Good it. Good Lord. That's I exactly know he played right. a ton. It's exactly right. Yeah. And it ties his career high. Oh, geez. But you would have thought with the number of times he's gotten hurt that he had played eight games this year. Right. And he was on the ground at the end of yesterday's of game. Of course he was. And limped off and couldn't walk. <laughs> and they're like, but he's going to play Tuesday. I'm like, right. are you sure? <laughs> And then LeBron is almost 40 years old. Brandon Ingram just came back from injury. And their other star is Zion. Like, I don't know who the hell is going to play on Friday. Right. Whoever comes out of that game, anything could happen. Well, and Zion's played, I think, 68. And uh, a lot of that was because they didn't want him to play back-to-backs early in the year. But he's played more games than ever before. So he's been healthy. And AD's been, like, really healthy, other than the fact that he... Seems to go out every other game uh, after he plays. He gets hurt, you know, finger in the eye or, you know, Dude, whatever it is. He's such a Paul Pierce. Totally. He's like, I'm in a wheelchair, but I'll play in an hour. <laughs> um, it's not untrue about the Warriors either, though. Chris Paul's postseason yeah. resume is what it oh, is. Oh, boy. Knock um, on wood. You know what I mean? Draymond's back. Yep. Steph and Clay. GP2 with the calf. GP2. Won't play this week. You know, GP2 staying healthy has been a problem. Um, all right, Jonathan in the city next up on Willard and Dibs. Hey, Jonathan, what's cooking? Hey, not, nothing right now, but I'm um, excited, super excited about uh, tomorrow and the possibility of getting a playoff and getting out of the play-in. You know, um, whatever happens, happens, and, and I'm going to be happy either way because it's a guy coming from the Joe Smith, Daniel Marshall, Antoine Jameson, three, a big three back in the day. And uh, one thing before I go, I just want to say, man, in my book, Raymond Green gets a passing perpetuity unless he does something very criminal because you know why? Imagine if Draymond Green ever happened, we might be talking about getting the Splash Brothers their first ring ever. Well, I, I'm kind of with you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. I'm kind of with you where um, I have a full understanding for why people, dibs like you, are done. I get it. Um... I don't personally, I don't get to a spot emotionally where I, it bothers me in that way, but I fully understand how many of you it does. Yeah. And um, whether it's compartmentalizing or whether it's giving people a pass that you shouldn't, is it being weak, you know, the Warriors not punishing him. I, I don't know what you want to call it, um, but I do whittle it down in the end to a couple of things. I, I will still, until it's not true, I will firmly believe the Warriors are a better team with him than without him. And that's pretty much enough for me, unless you're like some sort of crook. Are you like, are you hitting your wife? No. Are you, no, you know no, what I mean? No. Yeah. We're talking about somebody who emotionally loses control on a basketball court. And for me, that's not like a, a moral death blow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I get that. Yeah. I get that. But I, I think that you're uh, downplaying exactly what it is when he loses control on a basketball court. Maybe. And, you know, he lost control in a practice. And 
you know, punched a teammate in the face, and that cost uh, that teammate most of the year for whatever reason. But that kind of you know jaded the whole season last year, and then this year he lost control on a basketball court multiple times. Once he choked a an opponent. Once he flail punched a guy. And once he got two texts and got ejected three and a half minutes into a game. So for me, if you're not going to be a championship team, and I don't, I don't think that they are next year. I don't think they are this year. If that's the the way we're going to go, the the trajectory rather, then I'd rather root for a team that doesn't have him. Understood. Yeah. Like I said, I get it. I, yeah. I also think it is an oversimplification. Sensation. That's a yes. To come away from these seasons and say, this is on Draymond Green. Like, to me, oversimplification yeah. to say Draymond yeah. ruined last year by punching Jordan Poole and ruined this year by missing 20 games. I, there, there, there's so much more to that conversation. There is. So but, many more yeah. people who had an effect on it, positive and negative. But for me, the biggest negatives of those two years were around him. Yeah, that's fair. You know, last that's, year the that's biggest fair. negative was uh, he punched Jordan Poole, and this year the biggest negative was he missed twenty games based on two suspensions. Yeah, I, so, I, I mean, it's a fair yeah. opinion. It's a fair opinion. Yeah. Um, let's go to John in Richmond. Hey, John, what's up? You're with Willard and Debs. Hey, uh, thanks for taking my call, guys. I just want to say the Warriors, you know, when their three-pointers is going, they're very electric, but nothing is more deflating when they're turning the ball over. And I think, you know, everybody has lost a step this year, including Steve Kerr, the head coach, you know, there where he doesn't call out the team quite enough, you know, when like some of the passes, Steph Curry's got almost 3,000 career turnovers, you know, they're just as deflating. And it seems like sometimes he's just playing with too much house money. Whoop. Where'd he go? Why did Hunger turn, is not there. Why did he turn yell? Oh. Sorry, John, you yeah. got you got clicked off. Lucas got fat. That, <laughs> that was like when when some he needed to get auto corrected on his text. He just hit like four letters at once. Go. What was your point again about uh, Steve Kerr's got too much house money? No, I was just saying that the coaching staff has not called out the teams. You know, some of the passes that Curry's thrown, like in the game against New Orleans, it's you know King Kong on a ladder couldn't have caught that. Can I be can I be devil's advocate, John? Can I be devil's advocate and ask you a question? What what would it do for the Warriors if the coaching staff called Steph Curry out more? He needs to every time the you know the reporter or the uh, you know the media guys ask him. He says, "Well, they've been carrying us for fifteen years. It's just the hunger is not there. You know, there, he's still in his prime, but you know some of these passes, he's got almost three thousand career turnovers. It's so deflating. Nothing is more deflating." As a Warrior fan, when they turn the ball over, they're very electric. The key to success is getting shots up. When they put more shots up than the team, then their their opponent, they're almost unbeatable. But, John, what but, would it do if he called them out? That's what I'm asking you. Like, I'm not even disagreeing with you. I just, I like, uh, he, for me, here we go again with it's Steve Kerr's fault because people are throwing bad passes. That's Steph bleeping Curry we're talking about. And, by the way, the Warriors have always turned the ball over a ton, and it didn't bother us when they were winning championships. Now it's suddenly a problem, and you'd like them called out publicly. What would that do for the Warriors? In championships, they were having far too less games or a few games, you know, where they were, you know, losing on the turnover battle. It seems like the last two seasons, the Achilles' heel for this team is not rebounding, not defense, which everybody says they need size. That's not true. This, you know, turning the ball over just kills the momentum. That's what the Warriors' bread and butter is, to move up and down and but not do silly passes. Yeah, John, I hear you. You're, you're having a hard time getting in it to an answer to my question. Right, right. Yeah, you can yell about yep. turnovers all you want. They actually led the league in turnovers the year that they won the title two years right, ago. Right, right. So uh, my question is, what's it going to do positively for the Warriors if you start calling superstars out publicly? I'm sorry, that's not the way you handle adults. It's no. just not. It's no. just not. That's not a good leadership quality and at his all. Turnovers are uh, lower than they were during the championship game. There years. you go. So, so it's just, I like, understand how frustrating it is, but that's not, that's not what's holding them back. What's holding them back is that the other parts of their game are not 
as devastating as they were two years ago to cover up for the turnovers. Right. They've never not been this in terms of turnovers. Right. And if you look at Steph Curry's career, he's been between 3.0 and 2.8 turnovers every single year. And this year he's at 2.8, which is the lowest since 2020. And he's been this player his entire career. He'll give you three turnovers a game. <laughs> right. He'll give you six assists a game. That's the ratio. And and eight memories a game. Like, I mean, at honestly, least, like this right? is Steph Curry we're talking about. Um, and by the way, I'll also add this. Um, a press conference is not where you call a player out. So in other words, maybe he is. You're not going to know about it. Right. We're not going to know about it. That's not what you do. Steve needs to bury him right. publicly. <laughs> it's like, hey, call Monty Poole <laughs> and do a hit piece. Because I've had enough of the Curry guy. Right. That's it. Really. Honestly, Steph, I've had enough. Enough is enough. Exactly. You know. So, like, but we don't know what the hell's being said behind closed doors. Uh, you'll hear a lot of people with the Warriors say that the team did get um, into an accountability conversation with Clay Thompson at the end of last year and into the offseason in the yep. beginning of this year. Dude, you're chucking. And they're not good shots. And you might want to think about not doing that anymore. Right. That happens. And we also know they got into a little bit of a conversation with Andrew Wiggins about, you know, playing harder. Hey, Andrew, how about you try <laughs> they do uh, that on every, the regular? Every night. Right? Every night. Jeez. That's the one that they do take to the press conference. Exactly. Andrew knows that, you know, we like him to be aggressive and <laughs> we're not any good if he's not. And Yeah. So, you know. And when he is, that's then the they guy. go out there on the press conference and go, that's the Andrew we need. That's the guy we want. Exactly. <laughs> it's crazy. We're presented by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. Plenty more of your calls. 888-957-9570. Ramona Shelburne's a little bit over an hour away. Are, are, you, are you glad to be here? Are you happy the Warriors are in this? Or, or is this like the, the, the dentist twice a year? You know, we've got to go. Um, let's keep talking it out on Willard and Dibs. The Jeep Celebration event is going on right now with exceptional offers on a wide selection of Jeep brands.
Just like we need to go win the game. I don't really, I don't know. <laughs> Just feel like we need to go win. But it's exciting. You know, you know it's do or die. Probably feels a little more NCAA tournament-ish. Kind of give you that feel. But yeah, you know, we just got to go win. Bay Area is Draymond Green. And you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Uh, okay, day day. Yeah, it's exactly NCAA tournament-ish. <laughs> Winner gets another game, loser doesn't. That's what it sounds like. We're streaming live on Twitch and YouTube. We do it every day, all of our shows. Be there, twitch.tv slash 95.7 The Game, youtube.com slash 95.7 The Game, powered by First NorCal Credit Union, and you can get the Odyssey app there, too, if you want to listen that way, as there's now a QR code, bottom right corner of each of those platforms. You can scan it, and boom, you're all set with the Odyssey app. That's on our Twitch and YouTube streams. And it's on our YouTube stream, in fact, from our friend Nathan Hyatt, who just wrote, BS, Mark. Turnovers have always been a problem. I don't know how to answer that, other than to say that that's kind of my that's point. That's exactly what you said. Turnovers have always been a problem, except for that it wasn't a problem. So in other words, like, yes, they've always done it, and they have four rings, so therefore I'm not going to blame it on that now, that is still consistent across the board. What's not consistent across the board are the other aspects of their game. So you're either saying that it's something else that's the problem, or you believe that in this era of Warrior basketball, the Warriors need to do something different with regard to their turnovers because they can't cover up for them anymore, which sounds to me like what Steve Kerr's been trying to stress after every single game all year long, and they haven't consistently done it. They do it sometimes, but they haven't consistently done it, and uh, that's how you end up in the 10 seed. And and you, you can blame Steve for that. You want him to, like, sell out Steph Curry in a press conference. Right, Knock right. yourself out. I'm not going to help the Warriors. Not a bit. No, and if you look at their turnovers, they're eighth in the league uh, right now in turnovers per game. And when they won the title, they were second <laughs> in turnovers per game. So turnovers have always been a problem. And this year, they are as much a problem as they were before. They're actually averaging uh, 0. 0.5 turnovers less than when they won the title. Well, there you have it. But the bigger issue is they're Progress. not making as many shots, and <laughs> right. they're not playing as good a defense. That's the biggest issue. Well, it's not the turnovers. It's the defense. Of course. And... Let me throw this in, because this is a little bit of a prediction. I don't know if tomorrow's the last game of the season or not. Maybe Friday. Maybe not. But either way, if this ends in some sort of a unsatisfying way for the Warriors, I think a new conversation, it has been started, but really going to get into it in earnest. And, and more importantly, I think the Warriors are having this discussion. And it's this. Can Steph Curry still be a one? Now, I know we'll look at the numbers and our emotions want so badly to say yes. And it's so hard ever. Like you get just all tight, all parts of your chest and everything when you say anything that might be considered negative about Steph Curry. Mm, don't do it. I don't even look at the output. I don't look at three-point percentage and all of that. If you need to, if you're coming down the stretch for positioning and you twice in the final week decide to rest Steph Curry and have a number of times down the stretch done press conferences where you say, this organization has been putting too much on the shoulders of Steph Curry for years now. And so we have to manage the minutes and all of that. If that's your opinion and that's your behavior, couldn't I argue, well, if that's what April feels like, what the hell would June feel like? Yeah. Do you mean to tell me that this person who you are now hell-bent on taking pressure off of his shoulders, how is it that he is supposed to still be a one deep into the playoffs if he can barely get to the end of the regular season in this role? I know he can still fulfill the role, but can he do it for the whole year and into the playoffs? And if he can't, then in a way that means he can't fulfill the role anymore. Right. And how could he fulfill the role? He's 36. Right. And so LeBron is a one, quote unquote, Ish. but he has Anthony Davis. Yeah, he's so, a one A. 
And, you know, he's got Austin Reeves, who is actually a legit two. And you, you have two guys who are the one. And Austin Reeves is great. That's a little bit of a hot take on Austin uh, Okay, Reeves. a little bit of a stretch. Solid but, player. And I, I wouldn't call him a two. Well, he's the two for them because they have two guys who are the one. And so, and even at that, L.A. is a uh, an eight seed. Right. It's not like L.A. is, you know, with LeBron and A.D. It's not like they're a four seed. And if Steph is your one, and he is, and you're a 10 seed, that tells you all you need to know about whether or not he can really be a championship one. He can't. There's a, they're a playing team for the second year in a row, right? the Lakers. Um, let's go to Vic in Fremont. Hi, Vic. You're on with Willie and Dibby. What are you doing? Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on our show. First of all, I just wanted to thank you guys for everything you guys have done this season covering the Warriors. I mean, you guys are phenomenal, um, and I love hearing you guys' takes. Um it was my first time on the show, and I just had a quick question. So I was on Twitter this morning kind of um, scrolling, and I see a lot of Dubs fans are down in the dumps because uh, GP2 is obviously not available for these next two games, uh, potentially. Um, but I've been a big advocate of Moses Moody, as have both of you, and I think those 13 to 16 minutes that GP2 takes up, I feel like if Kerr just trusted Moody in these games, he would be amazing for us especially against the kings we saw what he could do against the lakers in the playoffs last season i just kind of wanted to hear your take on if you think we could get this job done with kerr giving moody the green light to do his thing tomorrow um i i do and vic i also think that steve kerr already trusts moses moody and i know a lot of you'll be like what then why didn't he play him because math i will buy the, the answer that steve kerr has given us all year long you have to get to this time of year with a very defined and somewhat small rotation. You just have to. I mean, my God, everyone's begging for more Jonathan Kaminga minutes. Right. And now we're going to be like, okay, GP2's out. You better give him all of those minutes to Moses Moody. And it's like, well, wait a minute, dude. Don't you want to give some of them to Kaminga or whatever? Here's what I mean by that. Moses Moody, unfortunately, plays right now with the Warriors a swing role. And that means that on certain nights, if people are out, he's going to be asked to play a key role. On certain nights when everyone's in, he's going to be asked to watch the basketball game. And on the nights where he watches the basketball game, he better be ready for something to go haywire, right. and he's asked to come in and play basketball. He's done that very well. And I, and, and I do think Steve trusts him. It's just he gets squeezed out. And, um, and, and it's not that I don't want to see Moses more, but when you look at what the Warriors have lineup-wise, I understand why he gets squeezed out. I would not be in favor of jamming him in there in favor of someone else who right now right. is doing what he's doing for the Warriors. And the minutes he's lost have been to uh, Pods. Brandon Podjemski, who is a better shooter than he is, and he is not quite the same uh, the same overall player, but he can defend and he takes charges and he does the little things. He's a better rebounder. Much and better so, rebounder, sure. Yeah, when you look at like why Pods gets minutes that Moody should get, it's because Brandon Podjemski is a better shooter, and he's better overall. Do the numbers bear that out? You've said that twice. Is he a better shooter than yeah, Moses Moody? from three. He yeah. is? Yes. What are the numbers? Uh, I will pull them up for you. I have them right here. Three-point shot. You have uh, Pods at 38.5 and Moody at 36. Okay. So a little bit better. Okay. And, you know, Pods shoots it maybe a little bit more often. It's almost identical in terms of how many attempts, but uh, you know Moses is thirty six percent on three threes a game. Pod's thirty eight percent on three point two threes a game, and you know the overall numbers would would show you that. I mean, Pod's has shot twenty thirty four actually more threes on the year than Moody, so it's comparable. But it feels like when they're both going to be open. It feels to me as a watcher that uh, Pods is more likely to make the three. Well, even if he's not, or even if it was even, Pods does so many right. things on the, which is what yeah. you're just saying. But I mean, that he does take so, charges and defend. And, I mean, you know, he just rebound. Like he is, he's got a little Draymond in him, where like you can look at the box score and just be like, eh. But like if you watch the game, there's all these little things that happen because of the presence of Pajemski. Dibsy, Scott Moxie. Yeah. There's he's Moxie second on the team in rebounding. Oh, he's incredible a rebounder. He's second on the team. It's Draymond <laughs> and it's Pods. That's, he's ahead of Kavon. 
That's so absurd. It's, I mean, it's absurd, right? But he does that. He's ahead of Trace Jackson Davis. Right. That's what's absurd because Trace is getting minutes. Yeah. I understand that Looney, you know, Looney uh, his numbers are, they've gone sideways. He doesn't play much anymore. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Brandon Pajemski has got that nose. He's got a nose for the basketball. Trace didn't grab a rebound yesterday. How about that? How many minutes did he end up like with? 20? Okay. Jeez. Didn't grab a rebound in 20 minutes. We're just watching the end of the game in here on replay. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know who these Seriously, people are. Seriously, Pat Spencer, stand like, up. Yeah. Who's number 61? I mean. I think that's Pat Spencer. <laughs> could be. Could be Garuba. Who, who are either know. of those people right. you're talking about? <laughs> who is Pat everyone Spencer in the Utah or, starting lineup? Well, that too. Charlie. That too. Yeah. There was a white guy with a beard. I'm like, I haven't seen that. Shout out Johnny Juzan. I don't Go know Bruins. what's going on here with these Warriors, but they won the basketball game. Good for them. Sponsored by In at the Tides. Look at you. Very, very good. Very good. Go to In at the Tides, Bodega Bay. It's really, really beautiful. Uh, we'll keep going with your phone calls. Uh, Momo, Ramona Shelburne, probably about an hour away. Uh, 888-957-9570. It's Weathered and Dibs. Relaxing days, stunning sunsets. Every day is magical in Bodega Bay.
our last eight weeks has prepared us tremendously for that. Um, we've been on the road pretty much the last month and a half, two months, quite a bit. Uh, we fared pretty well on the road all year, you know, so know we're capable of going to win some road games. And when this team's back is against the wall, I like how the group shows up. So not ideal. But it is what it is, and that's what we're faced with, and we want to keep playing for much longer into this season, so just got to go get it done. Now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. Maybe the Golden State Warriors are just like all of our relationships. Maybe that's it. You think? Yeah. One One and done? You're like, we got it. (laughs) We got it. We figured it out, and now it's going to be great every day going forward. And then you wake up the next day and you're like, I thought I had it. I thought I had it, but I don't have it. And I don't know what the hell's going on until the next day after that, where you're like, now I got it. We're good. Yeah. I got it. We're good. Yeah. (laughs) We got Sacramento. We can do this. I got it. Yeah. I got it. Well, um, yeah, they probably don't got it. Uh, but that doesn't mean they're not going to win tomorrow night. Right. That doesn't mean they're not going to win on, uh, on Friday too. Yeah. It's like mm. parenting a, uh, parenting, a toddler. Parenting's good, too. A toddler, yeah. Or, or I mean, any age. Yes, you've, but... You've been through every age. I have. My kids are 22, 20, yeah. and 19 months. And you don't got it. No. I mean, I had it yesterday. Right. And then today, it's like, oh, my God, I don't got it. And and some of us just say that. We got it. But, like... You don't got it. No. <laughs> no, you don't got it. Today, we did a, a 40-minute... Uh, Q and A with my daughter, who's almost twenty months old. A Q and A were there microphones? Like, I was, was asking. Happening? No, the Q was, "Honey, do you want to put your pants on?" <laughs> and the answer was, "No, no." And she proceeded and then, to. And then what about the conversation away. with your kid? Yeah, exactly. That oh, was, that wasn't that wasn't <laughs> supper. That was not me in the mirror. Put your pants on. Exactly. No. I was asking my my nineteen month old, honey. Do you want to put your pants on? No, no. And then I proceeded oh. to grab her and try to put her pants on, and she threw herself back. And it's like, no, all done, all done. I said, oh. you know what? Oh. We're going pantsless. You want to go pantsless? Why not? It's forty-four degrees oh, out. That's why, why. it's yeah. freezing kids, outside. Outside. Kids went to a preschool like that, where they're just like, oh, if if they don't want pants. Oh my God. We don't. They don't do- <laughs> We don't do pants. pants. Parents are showing up. The kids are running around naked, flying out into the street. Dude. They're just like, what the hell's going on in here? We're not doing Montessori. It's just great. They're just being themselves. It's great. They're free. They're they're smiling and happy and free. No, they're naked, and that's not allowed. Right. So it's okay. (laughs) You don't got it. No. Hey, Warriors. You got it? You don't got it. I mean, you don't got it, but you might tomorrow, and then we'll see after that. Right, one day at a time, brother. I mean, just can we can we get tomorrow? And I, I heard probably, Steiny and Guru talking probably. about this, and I don't. I was listening to them earlier, and I was like, you know what? I'm I'm kind of in, in Steiny's camp, and I hate to say that out loud, oh, and I just God. did. You think the Mavericks are going to win this? <laughs> Mavericks in five. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think that. If they lose Tuesday and or Friday, I'm not going to be okay with it. You have to win Tuesday and Friday for me to not be... What does that mean, okay with it? Okay with the fact that uh, this season was a... And I I don't want to say disaster because Monty Poole had a great uh, word for it earlier. And I can't remember what it was. uh, But it was basically like a disaster. And if they don't win Tuesday and Friday... It's going to feel to me like a, a total failure, like a disaster. Hmm. He didn't use calamity. Uh, what was it, Grandy? <sighs> you were listening. I'm trying to process this. You might have the sound. I can play it. You want to listen? I would love to. Let's right. hear I it. love Monty Poole. Okay. You got it, Willard? Do you want me to play? Oh, this is <laughs> right. like, I, mean, like, like, I have I it. Got I got okay. it. This is great. That was a this stare down. Great. We're like Total looking at each other down. like, this is going to be great. I can't wait for you to play it. Uh, here it is. Monty Pool. To me, if they lose, uh, this is a disaster. Everything from the Chris, well, the Chris Paul uh, prior acquisition was all about the postseason. They didn't bring in Chris Paul because they wanted to win 55 games. 
They just brought in Chris Paul so that when we get to the postseason, we have a guy on our bench who can lead our bench crew that's reliable, low turnover guy, high assist guy, an orchestrator, an organizer. And so if they get if they're one and done, that's that's a colossal failure. To me, they gotta get through at least two games. And I know the second game's gonna be a lot tougher. But if they don't, to me it says, Okay, guys, it's time to start turning the page. Okay, hold on though. Thank I, you. It, it, colossal, colossal failure. failure Thank but you. But did he say you just have to get to the second game or through the second game? To the game or through the game? Through the game. Well, through then the it's game. probably going to be a colossal failure. Well, then that's what it is. I don't care how big of a fan you are. You have to admit right now that, that the playoffs are a probably not. You have to admit that. Don't be myopic. Like, this has nothing to do with your belief Nothing to do with that at all. Please do not translate this. Oh, it's anti and you, Steph Curry hater. No. This is by mathematical and, and NBA odds metrics, analytics, if you will. The playoffs are a probably not. You are asking for the Warriors to win two road games in a row against highly motivated, good playoff level 40 plus 46, 49, 48 win basketball teams. That's a probably not in, in any way, shape, or form. That is a probably not. Yeah. And so yeah. if I read what Monty Poole is saying correctly, this is probably a colossal failure. Yes. And I think that you look at this season in totality and you could make that assessment and you wouldn't be wrong because of all the things that have happened and, Yes, 46 wins, and you know you, you went under the the Vegas total, which was 48 and a half, but 46 and 36 is not totally shameful. But when you look at this year in totality, and you look at everything that happened, Draymond missing 20, and Wiggins missing you know five or six, and then CP broke his hand, and he was out, and Steph Curry looking a little bit more mortal than maybe we were ready to admit. I think that having pods and TJD get a playoff series has such value that if you don't even get to that opportunity, it becomes a colossal failure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is set up for though. This is set up for them to come out of it. It it's, is. It's set yeah. up like, I, I mean, I'm sure those two statements I just made sound absurd right next to one right. another. I do. It's, it's probably not. However, if the opponents and things go the way I think they may go, you're asking for the Warriors to beat the Kings and the Pelicans right. in back-to-back -back games. Neither one of these are, are playoff championship DNA-type teams. Um, the Kings are wounded, and the Pelicans are just like the Warriors. They're not great in their home building. Their, their, their home record is 21-19 and 19 this year, which, by the way, begs its own question. Why do the Pelicans only play 40 home games? Instead of 41. The hell happened there? Only 40? That's what it says. That's weird. It says they're 21 and 19 at home and 28 and 14 on the road. 40 and 42. They like they played an extra road game or something. Yeah. How's that even possible? That is weird. That's not possible. It's got to be uh, in season <laughs> tournament related. Oh, maybe you're right. That's probably a good point. That's probably what it was. Yeah. Stupid yeah. in season two. I mean, I love it. And the Lakers <laughs> hung a banner. Absurd. Of course Absolutely they did. Absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, they've essentially got. And the Lakers did the same, by the way 42 home, 40 road. Yeah. Well, that's cheating. Yeah. And they beat the Warriors by a half game and they played an extra home game. There you go. That's a protest. <laughs> exactly. Close the bridge. I'm sorry. That's probably not. Too soon. I probably shouldn't have said that. No, you shouldn't. Um, no. <laughs> Although, I mean, and don't get me started with that. You better it's, be careful. I won't. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's. I won't. I didn't even know what what was what was what was going apparently on. Apparently, the people who were protesting had chained themselves together. Okay. And they put PVC pipe around the chain. Oh. Which is why it took so long for them to clear the protest. Well, what was it about? I don't even know what, like, I, I Palestine. was... Palestine. Okay. Yeah. That's what I figured. Pro-Palestine. That's what I figured. Yeah. That's what I figured. Yeah. Uh, ben in Oakland. Hey, Ben, you're on with Willard and Dibs. What's up, Ben? What are you doing? Uh, I'm fixing my batting cages. Oh, I didn't know they were broken. Look at you. 
Yeah, yeah, Dibs has been up here before. I'm from Oakland. But, uh, hey, before I forget, I've been meaning to say this. <laughs> yeah, um, do you know that Gary Payton and Patrick Mahomes sound exactly the same? I don't know if anyone's ever picked up on that. Gary but, um, Payton? Really really called... Do you mean Gary or Gary Payton or GP2? GP2. Because I've always thought boy, Mahomes sounds a little bit like Kermit the Frog. And Gary Payton the second. Eh, I don't know if GP2 <laughs> sounds and, like Kermit. Well, anyway, go ahead, Ben. Go ahead. But what I was going to say is um, I think that the Warriors are going to blow the Kings out just so that I pay attention again. I've already decided not to watch the game after we lost to uh, New Orleans. Whole year, you start rooting for the team. They do great. And, oh, terrible loss. Okay, I'm out. Then they pull you back in. It's been back and forth. And just for more pain for the fans, we're going to blow out the Kings. We're going to look amazing. The national media is going to get back on the horse. Then we're going to lose the next game. So okay. That's hey, what ben. I think is going to happen just because of my emotions. Batting cage, Ben, can I ask you a question? <laughs> I love it. Why, why did you decide Friday night that you're not even, you're out? You're not watching? What, what happened that night that made you say that? Uh, well, we lost to New Orleans. I mean, like, so yeah. we, we have a chance to be in the 7 8 game, right? And so as soon as we think we got no chance to even get up there, then we start winning again. 7-8 game, they're a young team, we're supposed to be veterans and win at the end, and then we lose again. It's just just so back and forth, and now we have to win two games. I don't care about road or home, but it's just extra wear and tear. Um, well, who knows? I'd still like to play Denver, but uh, now it's, I guess we still can, since they're the two seed. No, but we that can't. Was another discussion. We cannot, Ben. No. The Warriors cannot be the seven seed. They no. will be the eight seed, or they will be the no seed. No, no, you're right. You're yeah. right. I mean, yeah. He was talking about the in the uh, Western Conference Finals. Oh, in the finals. In the yeah. finals, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. Oh, yeah? What are we doing? The the, the rare 210 uh, final. Hey, uh, and thank you, Batting yeah, Cage, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. I love it. Dibs has been up here. What, like you've been to everybody's home in no, all but, of Oakland? Uh, ben knows that uh, as a former Little League uh, coach in the Noel Soul, North Oakland Little League, South Oakland Little League. Yes. Uh there's the batting cages at Caldecott, which is where he's talking about, or the batting cages at Chabot, Chabot Ballfield, and Got he it. he knows that I've I've been in many a cage, you know, with my ain't that the truth? With my yeah, cut that. <laughs> I've cut been many that. a cage. Yeah. I've been in many a cage. <laughs> Although my coaching days are over. Until my baby girl gets to be five and I coach her in under six Thank soccer. Thank God. Now you're just fighting with coaches. Oh, yeah. Everywhere you go. it's And that's going to be a T for you, little T. <laughs> that's going to be a T. And you're going to have to watch yourself. I should have brought my whistle. <laughs> Blow the whistle. Yeah. Um, no, why Why is that so offensive that they lost to the Pelicans on Friday night? You're going to be disappointing. It's not I was, offensive. I was disappointed, too. But the Pelicans are a good basketball team. Right, but that's a game where you need to win. And turns out if you would have won it, you'd, you'd be, be the, the eight, eight, eight seed. Yes. My God. You'd be the eight seed. Win a game at home. You turned the ball over nine times in one quarter, yes. and they turned it into 45 points. Correct. In a game in which you lost by five. Wait, that, nine that, that, turnovers that, turned into 45 points? Oh, it was nine turnovers okay. turned into 15 points, well, but well, they scored okay. 45 okay. Yeah. In the yeah, but yeah. we're, we're wow. having two different good conversations. Call. Like, I'm not, I'm not telling you it was a good performance. I'm just telling you that, like, I don't know if you've reached now and you can't figure out that the Warriors are a inconsistent and b probably going to pull the rug out from under your feet. That's a little bit of a you thing. Like, my point is this: I'd have been much more offended if they had lost the game in Portland, which they almost did. Yeah, Portland I'd have been, showed up. I would have been. Portland showed up. Portland showed up big time. I love when we say stuff like this. Portland tried. Portland got up for that game, no. Mark. <laughs> you know that. Oh, God. You know that. No, the Warriors played like butt in a can. Okay, on Friday night. Yes, although they also sat players, which like threatened to be a really horrible decision if they had lost that basketball game. But then again. That's sort of the cadence of the NBA season in the Western Conference. You're going to see stuff like that, like what the Nuggets did in San Antonio. You're just going to have nights where the other team is like squirrely. You don't quite have your good stuff. But it's like when the Lakers were in Memphis on Friday night. You're watching that one, and, and you're thinking, hey, hey! Like, I watched that 
at my brother-in-law's house. He's a Laker Down fan. south. So he's sitting there like... Was he rocking his purple oh, and gold? No, but he's freaking out on every single possession. And it's so funny when you can watch these games and take the emotion out of it. Because I, I watched the Portland game with the Warriors the night before, and I was losing my, my S yeah. because your emotions are wrapped up into it. I'm watching the Lakers in Memphis. He's freaking out at every possession. I'm sitting there picking my teeth, and I'm going, dude, the Lakers are going to win this. This is how it works. Right. The playoff team and the non-playoff team, the young versus the old, the inexperienced versus the experienced, and it gets all crazy, and the little engine that could's like, we might win! Yep. And then you're like, no, you're not. LeBron's going to steal the ball with five seconds left to go and dunk it. And 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 laugh at John Moran in the face. Like, that's the way that always goes. I should have known the Warriors weren't going to lose to Portland. New Orleans, that's a different team. Different story. And if you have a bad quarter, yeah, you lose. You play like that, you lose. That's what this team does. That's why they're here. Right. But you can't play like that in that spot. And that's why it was so frustrating because... <laughs> you can if you want to be a 10 seed. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So and so are. you asked me about, uh, you know, this week and, you know, tomorrow, Tuesday at Sacramento, I expect them to win. But do I expect them to win both of these games? Not really because this no. team has been that team. This team has been that team Friday night. Good first quarter, dreadful second Good third and fourth, not enough, you lose. That's what I mean. Right. Like, we've been talking about this for weeks now. The idea of coming in the day after a game and being like, okay, we got action. No, no, they just played well last night. That's it. Or the idea of coming in the day after a loss and being like, I'm discouraged. Let's let Clay walk. It's just an overreaction. Every And I get it. Right. We're in it. We love this team. And it's an unbelievable story. But that's sort of like, that's why they belong in the play-in tournament. I have, use the word expect. I have no clue what to expect this week. Yeah? None. None. They could win these two games by 20. Um, they could lose tomorrow, or tomorrow by 20. night at 9.30. Yeah. The beam could be uh, oh, don't mention the carving beam right through your heart. Totally. And, it, and, and and I have zero trouble believing either of those realities, either of those possibilities. So they've been the whole year. Why, right? would it, why would it be different this week? But they've been different in the second half, and they they wrapped up the year going twenty eight and fourteen over the yeah. last forty two. So the the second half they've been great. Well, if we're talking about the first half, the Warriors wouldn't even be a playing team. Right? They were a complete mess. They had to play good basketball even to get to this point. Um. Let's go to Leroy in Oakland. Hi, Leroy. You're on with Willard and Dibbs. What's up? Hey, what's up, guys? I just wanted to uh, call in real quick. I'm a, I'm a big Warriors fan. And um, I just wanted to stress how important I think it is for uh, the Warriors to come out fast against SAC. And if they get this game, I think they get better and better as the playoff goes along. And I'll tell you why. I think if they get this game against Sacramento, the veterans, people who have won championships, even some of the younger guys that have won championships, they get that this game, and then that old feeling comes back, that winning time. You know, that old feeling, hey, we're here again, and we know how this feels. We know what it takes. The, 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 the lights are not too bright. And then you got the young guys who haven't won a, a, a playoff game or a play-in game and you get that game and then that instills the confidence in them and then they start getting the feeling like hey we can win and so i just think that if they get this game <laughs> look out i think the warriors just get better um as the games go along guys leroy i do not mean to chuckle at your point i, I but you fell right into something that we were saying about 45 minutes ago you have to start every single sentence about the Warriors with the word if. If they get this game, then watch out. Right. Or or if they get this game, they'll lose on Friday. Or, I, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's or, so many ifs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's not that, Leroy, it's not that you're wrong. You're not. You're not. The Warriors are a very capable basketball team as are the other nine right. in, in this dance. All of them are very, very capable. 
none of them are terribly consistent. That's it. Even the ones at the top have shown that they are totally capable of a, a, a complete duff job, chunking one right into the water, if oh, you will. Oh, jeez. They're all capable of it. I think that's why it's going to make a, for a great playoff, but it's very treacherous for the Warriors this week because of that, because you're asking for two sort of like throw a feather up into the wind and see which way it blows. Right. You're asking for it to blow the exact same way twice. Twice. And that's less than likely. It's a coin toss, exactly. Yeah. And, and you're favored by two and a half over sack, which means it's a, a three-pointer you make or a three-pointer they make away from winning or losing, and that's a coin toss. And then you get to, to Friday, L.A. or New Orleans, I think that they'll be underdog in either one, but probably not by more than three or four points again. So, like you said, it's a feather in the wind, and it's a coin toss, kind of a ball game. What's the number in that... Uh... What's the number in that uh, Lakers that LA, Pelicans game? Let me yeah. look. Yeah, here. Let me see. I've got it at uh, uh, L.A. favored. Yeah, no, I know. I know. No, it was favored. New Orleans favored by one and a half. It oh, opened really? with the Lakers favored. I was going to say I saw it yesterday. I'm looking at ESPN bet, and it's uh, New Orleans favored by one and a half yeah, right now. Okay, I got it at New Orleans minus one, but yeah, and it opened with L.A. favored by two and a half, and the Warriors opened at two, and they're up to three. Okay. Big, I saw the Warriors open at one. Ooh, there's big money coming in on the Warriors. Yeah, the I've sharps, got it at two and a half. The yeah. Sharps like the dubs yeah. tomorrow night. And they should. I mean, <laughs> they're probably eight to ten points better in a one-off, and they're they're as good on the road as they are at home. They're better on the road. That Pelican spread is a head-scratcher. I mean, the Lakers completely dominated their you-know-whats yesterday in that same building yep. in a game the Pelicans needed. They absolutely needed that game. Would have avoided the play-in tournament entirely. And the Pelicans have lost three or four to the Lakers this year. They are not good at home. All of those factors, you put them in a bucket and come out with the Pelicans being favored? Does somebody know that Anthony Davis isn't playing or something like that? And the other talk was that the Lakers would punt the game to somehow, oh like, I mean, no. that was out there, though. No. How about a different like, conspiracy okay. theory? The Pelicans Please. didn't care about yesterday because they wanted to avoid the Nuggets as the sixth seed. They'd rather be the seven, take their chance in this game. But the Nuggets are the, the two. Tables. But the Nuggets are the two. Oh, you're right. Yeah. But they the didn't know that. The I mean, no, but it was that's all why, concurrent. But that's so. why you can't mess around with it. You have no idea what, what how this was all going to play out. The tiebreaker scenarios with those top three teams were ridiculous. Right. Like, I thought when the Nuggets beat the T-Wolves last week, I'm like, oh, the Nuggets have got it. Yeah, they're and the And they one. did. All they had to do was beat the Spurs. Dude. But they blow that, and then all three teams end up tied, and somehow that spits out uh, Oklahoma City. <laughs> and I'm like, what is going And then Minnesota gets blown out. I'm like, what are, the what are y'all doing? It was crazy. What are what y'all are you doing? doing? What are you doing right, right. now? So maybe the Lakers want to, uh, you know, donk this one off. That way they can be the eight and they can take on OKC. Donk it off, yeah. huh? Yeah. I hope they don't. I want the Lakers and Warriors to win tomorrow night. I think that's best for the Warriors and worse for the Lakers. They'll go see the Nuggets. Then they'll get beat. We're presented by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. Ramona Shelburne is coming up in somewhere between 30 to 45 minutes. We look forward to that. We continue to take your calls. Have you achieved... Uh, total consciousness. Have you achieved um, feeling good about this game as an opportunity, or is this an eye roll and you wish the Warriors just weren't here? 888-957-9570 is the number. This is Willard and Dibs. I've been in many a cage. It's truck month at your local Ram dealer with great deals.
Hey, Dub Nation, it's GP2 here. Willard and Dibs is live on YouTube and Twitch right now. Time for you to like and subscribe. I'm sorry. I love all of our callers. That sounds nothing like Patrick Mahomes. Nothing. At all. GP2 is not even half as nasally. I'm Patrick Mahomes. It's not like easy him. being green. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, Kermit. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes might be number one ranked like athlete that when he opens his mouth, you're like, that's not what I thought he'd sound like at all. Patrick Mahomes number one in all of sports. We're like, that's that's your voice? Right. I I mean who's got a who's got a stranger one? I've won two Super Bowls. <laughs> I mean, I I don't even know what I'm doing here. Like I'm the best quarterback in history. Watching him on quarterbacks in Netflix. Because he's kind of a dog, like watching him go crazy on the sideline yeah. in a Kermit voice is very unsettling. It's off-putting. I'm for like, sure. that is not what you're supposed to sound like. I'm sorry, it's just not. That's hilarious. Um, all right, glad you're with us. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Wither and Dibs in the Free Odyssey app, or wherever you find your favorite podcast. And while you're there, you can check out uh, how both the Morning Roast and Steiny and Guru handled uh, their shows and reacted to the final day of the NBA season and previewed the Warriors and Kings. You can do it every single day, all the shows, all three of us, Bonte and Joe, Steiny and Goo, Willard and Dibs, free Odyssey app. And again, you can go to our Twitch and YouTube feeds, and there's a QR code right there on the bottom right. And that's one way that you can go ahead and, uh, and download the app and get all the content for free every single day. All right, so... I think we've done an okay job so far. Yep. Sticking to our plan. All right. All right. Staying in the moment. We have a game plan. Yep. We have a whiteboard. Yep. We write on it. Yeah. The whiteboard says, do not turn this into uh, salary cap offseason talk. Speaking of whiteboard, did you see the Laker whiteboard uh, for their game no, in New Orleans? I did not. It said, and I, I can't get it exactly right, but to the effect of... Uh, Check back into hotel. Like, oh, you're going to win. They were right. And you're going to stay. We're so, just, yeah. yeah. Win and stay. Yeah. Win and stay. Yeah. So, that's basically what uh, what it was. So. That's usually the uh, motto or slogan for like Vegas hotels. Yeah. Yeah. Stay and win. Exactly. Yeah. That's what the Lakers win, did. Win and stay. Win and stay. Yeah. Good so, for them. They, and they checked back in. So, I, I, listen, if it was going to go the way it was going to go, I was glad that the Lakers won that game. Because if they didn't, the Warriors would be playing the Lakers tomorrow night in L.A. As oh, opposed wow. to yeah. the Kings. Yeah. The Kings had the tiebreaker on the Lakers. Right. If the Lakers had lost last night, then um, then or yesterday afternoon, yeah. then uh, yeah. It'd be Warriors, Warriors in L.A. Warriors at, at the Crypt. Yeah, that's no a, thanks. That's a worse matchup. I'd rather play them on Friday at the Crypt. I'd rather not play them at all. Of course, but... Yeah. And I don't know how that's going to go on uh, Tuesday for the Lakers in New Orleans, but you got to get past Sacramento first. Sure. And if you don't, then, I mean, dot, 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 then we can have the conversations that I you know. and I have agreed to not have. Well, I'm, We can have that conversation on Wednesday. I am so conflicted by our own question, which is I am, I am tremendously excited about tomorrow night. Like, this is great stuff. Yeah. It really is. But it's very difficult to remove your emotions and your fear and your nervousness about what it would feel like if the Warriors were to lose that basketball game. Oh, and I geez. guarantee you, like, sign up now. Just be ready. There will be at least three commercial breaks tomorrow night where you're like, <sighs> season's over. Yeah. It's over. I'm not going to do it. It's just not our night. We're just not going to be in the turnovers and Steve Kerr and Steve Kerr and Moody. Steve Kerr. Yeah, yeah that's going to happen because there's a game of runs and flow and there's going to be yeah. at least two or three commercial breaks where you're furious and you think it's over. Funny you mentioned Steve Kerr because Larry on Friday, oh, uh, you were out. What Larry, did, we what did, did this our. Uh, what did he say? At, at uh, two o'clock on Fridays, we do What's Bugging You. Mm -hmm. And uh, What's Bugging Me was uh, people on their scooters on the sidewalk. <laughs> And e bikes and all that. You've done that one already. No, no. You haven't? No, that's a freshie. Okay. It's a freshie, but it, it definitely bugs me. You're always mad and, at people who are doing, are moving out in the world. 
on the sidewalk. You don't want the it. The sidewalk no, you is for no, walking. No, but you argue with other people in cars, too. Oh, that's different. Well, it's, that's different. It's different. What's bugging them <laughs> is me in my car. Because, and again, today, and I'll get back to Larry in a moment. Give me 30 seconds on this one. Please but, do. Uh, I'm driving by the Embarcadero, and I'm in the lane where you're going to go straight. And the lane to my right is a right turn only lane. Yeah. And there's a car next to me at the red light. And I know what this car is going to do. This car is going to try to beat it's me off the go line straight. Yeah. and try to, to try to knife in on me. Why don't you just let him? No, no, no. But why not? You know why not? Why? Not on my watch, oh, God. Buster. <laughs> and so the light turns green. And That's they, enough for me. Doug. Thank you, Jose. They don't know that I know that they're going to try and go straight, <laughs> but I know. And so the light goes green. And I beat him off the line, oh, and now gosh. this guy in his little Austin Mini Cooper, this little D bag in his Mini Cooper. And what's wrong with a Mini Cooper? Nothing. Okay. What's wrong is Austin in his Mini Cooper. He's gonna try to he's gonna try to beat me to the spot. Not so fast, my friend. How do you know his name? It it felt like it was Austin. Okay, was it definitely was wasn't name. Chip. I'm <laughs> I'm up on Chip. I love chips. Okay. So Austin and his Mini Cooper, yeah. so now we go a block down, and now he's going to try to get me, but no, he's not going to get me. So now he tries to, like, cut in, but I'm not letting him in. So I even veer over a little to the right to let him know, if you want to veer in, we're going to swap some paint Why, here. why, why, but why? Because it's a win. But what it's you, a win for the what Dipper. Are you, what are you getting out of this? You know what I'm getting? is a win. Because this D bag, Austin in his Mini Cooper, he has to hit the brakes. And you know what he does, Mark? He goes behind me. He goes behind me. Yeah. Yeah, Austin. Score one for the Dibber. Anyway, Larry, <laughs> what's bugging him? Stop uh, whopping me. What's bugging? What? No, Uncle Looney, I'm not a jerk driver. I keep it real. Yeah, you are. I keep it a buck. Just get home safe. What are you doing? I haven't had a, an automobile accident in about 27 years. Yeah, but, but and you, that was my fault. Don't but say you that. Had, yeah, first I of knocked. all, don't say that. I knocked. A, knock, that's not good enough, and that's not wood. Yeah, but point. anyway, second of all, you may have not gotten into an accident. You have exited your car and gotten into arguments with people. Right. You are tempting fate. What are you getting out of this? They're tempting fate. What are you getting out of they this? They don't want a piece of the new oh, slender God. dibs. I'll tell you that. No wonder someone threw a potato at you. It, like, dude, just chill and go home. Why are you doing this? That was a case where I was just minding my P's and Q's. That was a bad Does beat. Does your P stand for potato? I, I mean, mean, come on. The Q what? stands for uh, quinoa. Yeah, oh, well. That it can be delicious in a salad. Can I go back to what what's bugging Larry? I thought that's where we were to begin with. We were with. trying, but then you you derailed me, Mark, with uh, my road rage. What are you going to do? Cut me off in traffic now? You try it. You try me. <laughs> yeah, you, you're lucky you get out of the parking garage ahead of me. I do always wonder, when I get out first and I drive off and I always run into you on that final block of yep, the walk, yep. I do wonder if you're going to wave at me or flip me off. Always a wave. Uh, yes. But I've I got wonder, love what for are you. you really feeling on the inside? It doesn't matter what okay. I'm feeling on the inside. <laughs> anyway, I mean, go ahead. you know what I'm feeling is, uh, yeah, because you have your windows up. It's like, yeah, yeah, you're silent now for a change. I see you. I see you not talking. You think I'm silent, but I'm not. <laughs> exactly. I'm talking. You're running material. I'm like, yeah, anyway, go ahead. What's bugging Larry is people who are coming for Steve Kerr. He did a whole thing on it. and Good for him. It was great. And, uh, you know, because we do what's bugging you. And uh, what's bugging Larry is people who are constantly coming for Steve Kerr. And you mentioned, like, after Tuesday night, if it goes bad, we're going to talk about, like, A, B, C, D, whatever. But one of the biggest things people will say is, oh, Steve Kerr, he didn't play Kaminga enough. He played pods too much. Why did Moody get a DNP? Where was Kavon when he needed him? People will come for Steve no matter what, and that's what's bugging Larry. Good for Larry. Yeah. Larry's absolutely right. Yeah. I don't understand it. I haven't understood it all year. I haven't understood it all year. Like, I really do wonder, and I'm not, like, gosh, the audience is not one living, breathing thing. You all have a thousand opinions out there. The latest example, we had a caller an hour ago call in and say, this is Steve Kerr's fault for not calling out Steph Curry. Honestly, I say this with the utmost respect. What is going on in your brains right now? What the heck are you all watching? 
with this warrior group, and I've said it a hundred times, and so has he. Steve has not been perfect this year. You can't be. It's not possible. They've coached 82 games. 82 games. But you are dealing with all at one time. You are dealing with young players who want more. You're dealing with veteran champions whose egos cannot fit inside the area code. You're dealing with aging players. You're dealing with developing players. You're dealing with suspensions. You're dealing with people who disappear for who nobody knows why. You're dealing with all of that at once. You have four players on your team who are going to be in the Hall of Fame. Four of them. Okay? I don't know if Phil Jackson ever coached a team that had four Hall of Famers on it. Yeah. Anyway. Michael, Dennis. Well, he coached the... Scotty. Fakakta the Laker team with Peyton and Malone. But, I mean... Good point. Yeah, yeah. but whatever. They were... Fakakta. They like barely Aaron. had a role. Focaccia, underrated as a bread. Delicious. Thank you. A little oil. Anyway, you're dealing with all of that at once. And you all act like there's only one clear decision in every given moment. It's obvious. Of course, you only come to that decision after the fact. Of course. After something didn't work. Can you think about your own lives for one second and think about what it's like when you've got a hundred things on your plate and what that feels like? I'm not asking for sympathy for Steve Kerr. And I'm, again, not telling you that he's perfect. But I think this is the weirdest take that we've heard all year long when people are like, got to move on. Got to move on from Steve Kerr. Yep. Got to fix it. Because, because what? What exactly is this picture that you have in your brain? He doesn't develop the young players, Mark. So who's the coach? He's keeping Moses down. What's the roster? He's screwing Kaminga. What's the rotation? Go ahead. I am all ears. Paint the picture for me with these human beings that are available or currently on the Warrior roster that would have this team in a one, two, or three seed right now, this year, or next. All because you moved on from Steve Kerr and hired who? We were Luke Walton? Phil Jackson. Like, what? where does this come from? Where does it come from? When are you going to point the finger at the players? Right, right. I just, I don't understand. Yeah. I have not understood all year long. Yeah. All year long. And it, I don't think that the uh, management understands either, which is why they gave him a contract extension. And he's been there now 10 years. And in those 10 years, Steve has been there. You've won four finals and you have been to two others. He's six for 10 in terms of making it to the NBA Finals, and he won four of them. He's literally got the NBA Midas touch. Right. He has spent a, a, multiple decades in this league, and everywhere he goes, amazing happens. And we're out here going, this idiot. Right. I, I just, like, even if you don't love his rotations, Steph Curry's allowed to throw a bad pass. You don't want him to be removed from the team. Yeah, he, of course he's going to make mistakes. By the way, he's the first one who usually shows up on the show the very next day. Right. Hey, Willard. Hey, Dibs. Yep, messed last night up. Did you see me, dummy? He's the best at it. And, and, and somehow a bunch of you have decided that the key to the future for this team is to get rid of him. I've not heard anybody ever come up with a solution. Right. They just right. want to get rid of him. And that's what we do as fans. You want to run the coach well, and you, can you be don't mad think at about him, but not run him. Right. And and if you run him, then you always have to think about, you know, who you'll replace him with and there's never an answer. Um you're listening to 957 the game. KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Twitch and YouTube powered by First Norcal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First Norcal first class money market. Today, uh, Ramona Shelburne. This hour, let's keep going on the phones. Mike in Santa Clara here with Willard and Dibs. Hey, Mike, what's up? What's up, guys? Long time no talk. How are you guys doing? What is Good, shaking? Mike. We missed you. 
Yeah, I know, man. And Divinator, I wish that, uh, you know, I had uh, seen you on a little bit more, but, you know, how'd you enjoy the, uh, how'd you enjoy the, how'd you enjoy the Masters? Oh, I loved it. Uh, I had Scotty in my fantasy league, so uh, that was a big positive for me. Nice. Well, you know what? I hit that prop bet, so I'm not worried about it either. So happy about that one. Nice. Um, yeah. Hey, so guys, uh, uh, Willard, you said something a little bit earlier that, you know, Kerr is screwing over the uh, young players. I don't know how much I, I can agree with that. I mean, you have – well, uh, unless that was Dibs. No, 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 sure no. no what I, 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 I think what you heard was uh, us, us giving examples right, of right. what people have said about Steve Kerr. That's not coming from us. No, oh, okay. No. Got it, got it. My, that, that's, my, that's my fault then. But because I was going to say, I mean, he's still playing pods, and he's also still playing TJD because I was going to say uh, young players are getting played in. And so with that being said, it's almost a matter of like, you know, who's performing, who's not in this case. Yeah, I like I've always thought and this goes well beyond even Steve Kerr. Mike, great to hear from you. Thanks. This goes well beyond Steve Kerr for some reason. And I think that this is just baked into our own excitement. When a player gets picked, especially early, it's like a new present over the holidays. You're like, I don't know what's in this package. And just like Christmas presents or Hanukkah presents, when you look at them sitting under the tree, they're very exciting because you're like, I don't know what's in there. Right. And it might be amazing. And we refuse or we're very late to the, oh, it turns out what was in that box, not that good. Not really a good present. Nobody wants to feel that way. So that excitement that we have when we don't even know what it is, we marry ourselves to that. And then when it doesn't become that, it's like we've got to point at someone, and for whatever reason, we have a very hard time pointing at the player. And so we give reasons. Team doesn't know how to develop young people. Veteran, though, well, they're a championship-level team, so can't play the young people, or Steve Kerr doesn't like young people, and Kyle Shanahan doesn't like young people. When the opposite is absolutely true, there's nobody more incentivized other than the player themselves, to have that player be good than the head coach and the general manager. Right. Like in any other non-Brock Purdy world, Kyle Shanahan would have gotten fired for the Trey Lance move. So the idea that he didn't want him to be good is crazy. And the same is true for the Warrior young players. Like James Wiseman. Nobody was holding him down. The Warriors, like, in fact, you could argue that it set the organization back that that pick wasn't good. But they finally had to admit, he's not. Right. And that's on him. And it not didn't hold him back. Him, they, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. They won the title. So if they hadn't won the title, where, where would we be as far as that pick goes? We would be much more critical about that pick if they hadn't won a title when he missed the entire year. So for your point, it's a good one that, yeah, that pick held them back, quote unquote, as far as, next year and this year and, and the future goes because he would be a great asset, the number two overall pick. It'd be great to have a pick that you made be a player who could help you in the future, but they won the title even though he wasn't any good and he didn't even play that year. Um, we do have a, uh, a quick bit of breaking news, I would say. This is developing news okay. that just came down, um, and this is from Adrian Wojnarowski. With a blue check, so it's real and spectacular. According to ESPN, Team USA Basketball is finalizing its 2024 Paris Olympics roster. And that team includes uh, Anthony Davis, Bam Adebayo, Drew Holiday, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, Devin Booker, Joel Embiid, Jason Tatum, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and Steph Curry. And Steph Curry. And Steph Curry. You buried the lead. I did. On purpose. Reverse pyramid. It was not in that order, right? No. It was actually, I actually read it from the bottom up. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Not and good. that's confirmed. I don't think that's good at all. No, it's great. I think it's terrible. Why? I don't want my favorite players playing in the Olympics. I want my favorite player to do the one thing that he's never done. What, which win is a win a gold medal. Yeah, good for him. Well, that, to me, that's forgettable in terms of that, that resume. I wonder if he thinks it's forgettable. I'm sure probably he, not. I'm sure he doesn't. Yeah. 
And so I'm happy for him. Right. Obviously, it's something he him. wants to do. As a fan, when I watch a player coming down the stretch of the NBA season and he needs to be rested every other day because he's completely exhausted and is like unable to be at his best uh, just when the team needs him most. Sorry if I don't want him playing more competitive basketball this summer. Plus, he could get hurt. Sure. That's just sure. me. Yeah. I, I, I'm surprised I, that that's, uh, that's, no, that's good your take. For, good yeah. for him. But, you know, and LeBron's going to be 40 and Steph's 36. I get it. Yeah. But, I mean. And the gold is no uh, no guarantee. Oh, hell like, no. I mean, it, it's even tougher close. now than ever before. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I just think that's a, it's a funny look when players who cannot play all the games in the regular season are like, sign me up for more when the season's over. Yeah, go I get down. that, but. He, go, go I mean, he could have played Sunday if he had to. He would have played. But he had to uh, in these games, to me, more so than the Olympics. Like, right. I, I, I'll be real with you. I, I, I kind of, I, I've moved past that whole, like, oh, my gosh, wrapping my pride up in. In the flag? In, in, in Team USA winning an Olympic gold medal. The redeem team, like, good. Got it. Right. We're big. We're bad. We're best. But like now, I, it, <laughs> I'm the other way because now for me, this is more. It's more of a an actual gold than ever before because you have other teams who are for sure good, and the host nation France is going to be really good, and you know Canada's got a team, and you look at the all the other teams around uh, Europe and whatnot. It's no longer just a cakewalk. Um, 888-957-9570, and uh, we've got a few of you uh, hanging out. We're coming to you, okay? Keep going on the phones. Ramona Shelburne in about a half hour. Captain Clay Report is brought to you by City Cruises. Plan a birthday, anniversary, or a company party on a spectacular dining cruise at citycruises.com. While Steph and Draymond rested yesterday, had to get ready for the Olympics, uh, Clay played, <laughs> nice. and, uh, and he played well. Game high 25, 7 of 13 from the field, 6 of 12 from deep. In less than 20 minutes on the court, that is some efficient play. Clay played 77 of 82 games this year and closed out the year playing his best basketball of the year. That after last year, he couldn't do back-to-backs. This year, 77 out of 82 games. Pretty good. Very impressive. You definitely take that at the beginning of the year if that had been No doubt. And if you look at his numbers over the last 20 or 25 games, much better than he was earlier in the year. No doubt. We're sponsored by Safeway. Who knows? He might, uh, you know, get a good contract offer or something like that in the, uh, in the offseason. Yeah. Uh, more of your calls next. It's Willard and Dibs. This week at Safeway, get more savings when you buy more with your Safeway membership.
Hey, Dub Nation, it's Chris Paul, and you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. They said Chris Paul wouldn't be health, uh, healthy for the postseason. Dibs, they were wrong. Well, it's not the postseason yet. It is the postseason. It's not the playoffs. It is the postseason. Gotcha. Season ended yesterday. Right. So this would be post season. Interesting uh, the way you uh, describe that because it's, it's a little bit of a tweener. It's a tweener. It is but postseason. Yes. Right. Yeah. So there I you think go. That's it's the, not I the think playoffs. that's the way we can all shake hands on this when people do the whole like it's the playoffs, it's not the playoffs. It's not the playoffs. It's the postseason. Right. It's a postseason game. Okay. Is it? I guess. I'm not trying the season, to poke at no, you, but no, I mean, the season is over. Right. So we are post season. Yeah. The season is over. It's not pre season before the season, and it's not the season. It's not the in season tournament, which feels like it's you know a lifetime away. It is after the season. So yes, it is post season. I'm glad. We, I'll give you that. I'm glad we came to an agreement on that. Right. So the Warriors are a postseason team. But I think the idea was uh, Chris Paul wouldn't be healthy for the playoffs. Not for the postseason, but uh, now we're splitting hairs. Yeah, now we're really splitting And hairs. hopefully he's available for the playoffs, and hopefully they have games in the playoffs. Uh, that would be good. Uh, da -dee, da -dee, da -dee. Um, yeah, 445, is that good with everybody? Yes. Sorry, live, uh, live texting. Right here on 95.7 The Game. Momo? Yeah. You want to do 445 or you want to do... I would do, love to. You want to do right now. Let's do 445. Let's do 448. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 445. Yeah. Boom. Perfect. Okay. Boom. Boom. All right. Ramona. Let's go to... Uh, yeah. yeah. Ramona Shelburne. It's got to be fun for you to to uh, actually hold down two jobs on this show. What's my second job? Producer. Oh. <laughs> Is he back there? He is. I'm taking shots. Yeah, but he's not. He's not paying, listening. He's doing what he normally doing. He's not paying <laughs> attention. Yeah. What's going on? Hi, Lucas. Hey, guys. Yeah. yeah. We got guys, we got Ramona got Shelburne at 4:45. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm in it. here taking shots. Okay. All right, I'm she's taking great. Shots. Yeah. She is. Yeah, it's good booking. I'm glad I thought of it. Uh, let's go to Matt in San Rafael. Hi, Matt. What are you doing? Uh, just uh, heading home after work day. Um, Job well so done, before sir. Before I get into my takes, I I I realize. One of the reasons why you guys work well together is because e you each fall on the opposite side of one of the human spectrums that delineates personality types. Dibley's foot goes to the accelerator. Mark's foot goes to the brake when in traffic. So it's it's just the approach to the whole thing. Huh. That's uh, I've never heard it put that way before, huh. Matt. Yeah. Like, I think I get what you're saying, although I don't I don't. Like, if somebody was like, after I pass away, here lies Mark Willard. He always hit the brakes. I I'm like, I don't know if that's a compliment, man. Hey, it's a little, bit di a little bit different from that. If someone is going to cut in front of you, you'll break to allow it. And Dibs is going to go, nope, that's not happening. Got it. Right. Yes. Okay. Exactly. That's true. No that's doubt. True. No doubt. That's true. Yeah. In other but, words, no, I let... I'm not, I, 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 gotta, I don't... I, I, I let everybody walk all over me. I've got no boundaries. That's basically what you're saying. Uh, it's true, too. Yeah, no, that's... that's uh, anyway, yeah. um, anyway, the point I wanted to make is you were anyway. talking about people ripping on Kerr. Yeah. And I think I think it's a, an interesting San Francisco phenomenon. I don't include Oakland because the A's and the Raiders don't fall into this category. I think it all comes from the Niners winning in the 90s and the 80s in that Fans develop this sense of entitlement, this expectation, so that as soon as things don't go the way they think they should go, they immediately start looking for people to blame. I know this is consistent with a lot of fan bases, yep. but here, here it's really extreme. Like with the Niners, they lost the Super Bowl, and it hurt like hell. But I'm reading and hearing all these people saying how Shanahan should go and how he sucks. The, the Dubs win four titles, and then Kerr does what I think is maybe his best coaching job this year, given the huge number of distractions, the young people, the problems with age, blah, 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 and people are ready to toss him under the bus. Now, the exception to this is Gabe Kapler, who I was on the bandwagon with the kick out of town because I thought the guy was just more into his Instagram post than he was coaching the team. Um, by the way, did you see uh, Gabe Kapler? And uh, Bob Melvin, uh, earlier today, 
in Miami having an on-field conversation, I would have paid $1,000 to be able to stick a microphone in between both of their faces and record what was being said. You'll find that so, platooning is a much better so, route than starting the same guys so every day. So, how is my job? <laughs> Are you enjoying it? And how many burgers have you had since you got it? I've noticed your coaching staff is a third of the size of mine. <laughs> Do you feel lonely in the dugout? Oh, gosh. That guy. Yeah. Um, Matt's right. And I understand that that's just, he's also like, he said it, that's sports. You're not going to stop a fan base from yelling about a coach. I, 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 I totally get that. Right. And I do think that the majority of the Kyle Shanahan conversation last year was more like frustration with specifics rather than we should fire this guy. Like I, I really think it was a high level lunatic fringe that would suggest something like moving on from Kyle Shanahan because, yes, I'm sorry, I don't want to offend you, that's stupid. Right. Like, that's legitimately uneducated blather. Now, as far as Steve Kerr is concerned, um, that one is, it, it's a different case. I find it to be equally as ridiculous. Or more so, in my opinion. But my point is, is that I do hear people, like, People who I think are, you know, like they get sleep and they have a brain and all of <laughs> right, those things. Right. And they legitimately think that it's time to move on from Steve Curry. And I do think that that largely is the reason why. It's just the amount of time. We get to a certain point with people. This is what happens in it. Even It happens in relationships where it's just like it's too long. It's too long. And you won't say it's too long, but you'll say things like, yeah, the voice. It's time for a different voice. Or it just things started to wear thin or whatever. I, I, I think that what has happened with the Warriors is a predictable spot on the journey. Like this is the backside of the rainbow. Right. And it was always coming. So to get here and say that Steve Kerr did something wrong is a head scratcher to me. If you think that the Warriors should move on from Steve Kerr or that Steve Kerr is at fault for what's happening this year, I would argue you're a bit myopic. It, it, it means that you think this team should still be championship level with its core in the mid-30s. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. That's not and how it works. If you think that Steve Kerr was at fault in, you know, however many games, however ever many games do you think that they would win if you had a different coach, if you had the best coach on the planet, would this be a 58-win team? And now they're the one seed and you're better than OKC and, and Denver and Minnesota? Or how many wins did Steve Kerr cost you as a Warrior team versus how many wins did he help you get? Yep. That, to me, becomes the, the interesting way to look at it. And you know that he's the third longest tenured coach in the association and that's, I think, partly a big part of it. And it's it's part of what you're talking about, which is you get to a point where it's fatigue and you look at every other team other than San Antonio and Miami. Those are the two teams with Popovich and Spolstra. They're the only teams who've had a coach longer. And yet those teams, San Antonio has won, what, four with Popovich, four or five with Popovich, and Miami's won a couple with Spolstra. So... You get to that point where you start looking at your coach after 10 years and you think, well, we need to change. Well, well, you don't need to change there. Yeah, think about San Antonio right now. I mean, they have the second worst record in the Western Conference. But nobody's expecting it to be any different. I could be wrong. I don't live in San Antonio, Texas. But I wonder, is anybody there like it's time? We got to move on from this guy, Pop. This is about done. It's not working anymore. They went 22-60. and 60. But he's dealing with a completely different expectation because people look at that team right away and go, "Well, that's not. We're not. We're not in the conversation right now. Right. We're doing the Wembenyama thing." Well, how would that change your view on Steve Kerr if a the Warrior roster had already been turned over, or b you had what I would argue is a more realistic expectation or thought at the start of the year, like? Coming out of last year, was it reasonable to be like, 
championship contention. I didn't think they were going to be in championship contention. They won more games than they did last year. A um, couple things go differently here, there, or otherwise. They absolutely could have been in the top six. And, uh, and I think that's who they are right now. I think they're a good basketball team. Their record could have been a little bit better. They were only three games away from being in the actual six seed right where they were last year. Um, but I think that's who they are, even if they had been the five of the six. It's probably going to be one or two series. Right. And then go home. That's probably who they are right now. Yeah. And if that's not okay, then if you think that uh, changing out the head coach is the the solution, then I would tell you that you are woefully wrong as far as like what the fix is. So if you took any other coach on the planet right now and put them in going into next year, does this team suddenly become a 54 win team? You said a minute ago, like if you gave them the best coach on the planet, who is that? Right. Is it Spo? I don't know. Who's the best coach on the planet? Uh, for basketball, maybe it's, yeah. it's Spo. Let's, I mean, okay. I think it might be Steve Kerr. Honestly, for this team, and every team is different. So if you have this team, this team is replete with veterans. You've got guys who are between you know 36 and 39, and you've got a bunch of youngsters. So who is the best guy to coach this team? And I think it's Steve Kerr, somebody who is more able to navigate egos and you know also coach the young people but you know be able to coach a team full of superstars that's not easy um eric spolstra has veterans yeah he has a team that went to the finals last year um jimmy butler bam out of bio yeah tyler hero got a good young player in jaime jaquez your veteran presence players like kevin love and patty mills the exact same record as the warriors Right. In a crappier conference. Well, Spo is amazing. He's got a process that absolutely dwarfs the rest of the league. Why has he got the same record as the Warriors then? Right. In an easier conference. In an easier schedule. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know. The NBA, largely, I think, in our history of all... I mean, baseball, it's a completely different deal. But, like, it feels to me like a coach in the NFL is more important than a coach in the NBA. It's different. It's yeah. different. It's but totally like, different. The NBA is built on who's got the top player or two and then who's been doing it for a while and has cohesion. You know, when you watch the Denver Nuggets, I mean, I could argue, like, yeah, is, is Malone the best coach in the NBA? Like, when I watch them play, they feel different. Boston feels different. They feel different with the way they operate. I think that that's just cohesion. That's just, that, that's just a group of people that knows where the other one is going to be. Um, all of that. Like, that's all that is. I think most NBA fans don't even know who the Boston Celtics coach is. Right, exactly. And he's I, brand new. And I'd argue that actually... Big time NBA fans would have a hard time if I just rolled through all the teams. Okay? All 30 teams. I'm looking at the list right now. How many could you name? Probably half. <laughs> if you're lucky. 15? Yes. If yeah. you're lucky. And I'm I'm even looking at the list right now and I'm looking at names and I was I, and I'm like, "Oh, gee, I've never heard of him." Like for example, Orlando Magic, Jamal Mosley. Sure. Uh, Okay. That works. Yeah. Yeah. I know Chris you could Finch also be, because... You could be lying to me right now, too, and I wouldn't know. Right. Right. I mean... I'm not afraid to admit that, even though I'm a sports radio of course, host. I don't yes. like... You, who's the coach of the Charlotte Hornets? I have no clue. There are only five coaches currently in the association who were hired before 2020. Okay. And that's, you know, we mentioned Popovich, Spo, Kerr, it's Michael Malone, and Taylor Jenkins. Yeah. The other... 25 all were hired in the last four years yeah. and that's i think to the point of steve kerr okay get rid of steve kerr it's time he's got to go who are you gonna hire because you're gonna be one of these other 25 teams who hires you know bickerstaff or you know chauncey well, billups or mosley or <laughs> darvin ham steve clifford and Darvin charlotte Hamm. here's how i'd say it. right i would say it this way 
if if your thing is, well, the Warriors have underachieved because of Steve Kerr, how many times have you watched an NBA team post up a good record and you, when someone says, boy, why are they so good? And you're like, well, <laughs> coaching. Right. You don't say that. You say Jokic. Yeah, exactly. You say Giannis. You say Jason Tatum. You're not looking at the coach. So if the coach is not what makes it good, then I have a hard time believing the coach is what makes it bad. I mean, we could have a very interesting conversation about 46 and 36. Did Steve Kerr help or hurt this team? And if you think he hurt them, that means that you think this was a 50-win squad that was held back. I don't think that at right. all. No. I didn't go into this season thinking 50-win squad. Like, I didn't. And and they could have. You could argue that they should have. Right. Right. But, but I don't think they didn't because of Steve Kerr. Agreed. I think it's more because of Draymond Green, and it's because of Clay Thompson, and it's because of Andrew Wiggins. I think those are bigger reasons why they didn't win 50 as opposed to Steve Kerr. Um. It's a player's league. Right. It's always right. it's always been that. Uh, it doesn't mean that coaching is not important. It doesn't mean that there aren't good ones and bad ones and everything in between. You know, I take Phil Jackson and go, yeah, that was a that was a great coach. Um, but go ahead. Go ahead and look at his record when he doesn't have Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Shaq, and Kobe. Right. Go ahead and take a look at it. Not great. Not great. Not great. Greg Popovich, no one would argue he's not a great coach. He went 22-60 and 60 this year. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> you know, I think that being a, a coach in the NBA is more about managing egos and personalities no than doubt. it is about, you know, the X's and O's. And would you argue that Steve Kerr, so let's just spotlight that. Does Steve Kerr do a good job of managing egos? Yes. Does a great job at it. Yeah. And even like if you look at the Jonathan Kaminga situation where – his camp came out and said that he's not happy and Steve Kerr's not sold out for him or whatever the quote was. He has found a way to turn that around and make Jonathan Kaminga again a productive player. Yep. You know, and that was a situation that could have gotten sideways and it didn't because of Steve Kerr, I think. Did you guys hear a moment in, in Steve Kerr's post game press conference yesterday when he was interrupted by Chris Paul? Did you guys hear any of no, that? I did not. Right, I'll, I'll play it for you guys. Okay. So the question was, he was asked about their road success and their home struggles, and okay. if they can carry their road success uh, into the postseason. Here's what Steve said. It's actually more surprising that we weren't a good home team, that we were a good road team. I expected to be a good road team. You know, we've got veterans, uh, champions, guys like him right there. Oh, they need me. Sorry. We'll see you later. All right, where were we? You, you were in the middle of a good answer. Um on, on the road and just how much that your success on the road matters and can translate to the postseason. Yeah, I mean, we, we should be a good road team. We've got uh, a lot of guys who have won, won championships and, you know, veteran players like Chris who, um, you know, are unfazed by by the road. And so, yeah, we're very confident heading out um, for these next uh, couple of games, hopefully. And then there was a follow-up, which is where it, it kind of relates to what you guys were talking about. Here's the follow-up question. Steve, just curious, does Chris boss you around like that all the time? Yes, they all do. All of them. Yeah, it's uh, NBA coaching 2024. You just, you just do what they say. <laughs> I tell you what, um, whether you want to make this about the world in 2024 or not, I, I would argue that great leadership always involves the, whether it's employees, the soldiers, whatever. Like they have to have a voice in the room, and I and a good leader is one where the the employees whatever can come in and and rib that person or have an idea or make fun. I mean, I, I'll say this right now, more so than any other point in my entire career, that's true right now. Like I could come in and and you know I could come in and say whatever I want to Matt. Because we have that, like, we, we, we have that. Yeah. And you have that. And we've all been around the block a, a, a bunch of times. But I don't need to worry about, like, oh, gosh, the boss is here. Mr. Nahigian? Take a shower and put on a collared shirt. Right. The boss is here. No. That's Matt. I don't call him sir. Right. That's Matt. And I bet for this locker room, that's Steve. 
Right, Steve. especially when you have a team like that. And I wonder about OKC with their young squad, if it's a little bit different, dealing with 21, 22, and 23-year-olds. But if you're Steve Kerr and you're coaching the Warriors and you've got CP3, who's been in the league almost, and I, I should check to see if he was playing when Steve actually was still playing, because it's probably pretty close. Ooh, I, I doubt it. No, but it's close, is my point. Because Chris Paul's in his 18th year, and I would guess that Steve Kerr has been out of the league for... Well, Steve Kerr was 40 18 years ago. So, Steve Kerr's He's playing, already 60? Uh, he's 58. He's 59. 58, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. His playing career his last year was in 03. 03. So, that's 21 years ago. Okay. So, you're not wrong. It's like no. a little bit close, but no, they're right. not playing And I guess the that's time. the point is, you know, if you're dealing with guys who are not quite your age, but at least of the same... Ilk, yeah, Chris Paul was 05, 06. So there was a three year gap without uh, Steve or Chris. Two years, actually, because Chris started in 05. But when you have a team like this, how is Steve going to come down and be like, I'm I'm the father figure? No, it's, you know, you're, you're one of the group. And that's kind of what we have here. That's good leadership. Yeah. That's good leadership. You have to, you have to create a, a comfortable environment. And I often like, it's not just, oh, are the players saying nice things about him? Um, because people are always publicly going to say the right thing about teammates. And I'm sure behind the scenes there are frustrations. And there are no, there's no doubt. Like, it, I feel like, by the way, we have to say this over and over and over again because you can tell that it doesn't always sink in. I'm sure there have been frustrations with Steve Kerr. Some of them we know about. Yeah. I'm sure that Steve has made plenty of mistakes this year. Some of them we know about. Yeah. Some of them we don't. Steve has admitted them himself. I am not sitting here saying he's had a perfect season or that he's a perfect coach. Um, but the idea that there is some sort of plan that would work better, the idea that he's holding them back, I always, I laugh at that. It's, it, 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 it's, it's quite frankly, it's an absurd thought. And, and you'll simultaneously, the number one, thing you'll hear people say is, well, you held the young people back, right. should have gone to them earlier, and if he had gone to them earlier, then what? That's always my question. Because never in the history of ever has a team been like, you know what, time to hand it over to the young people, and wow, we went crazy up to the two seed. Right. As soon as we start, as soon as we told all the 21-year-olds, all right, you're running the show, bam, championship. That's right. Like, dude, if you watch Victor Wimbanyama lately, he is going to be the most unstoppable force in the history of the NBA someday. He won 22 games. Yeah. He can barely win a game, but he's going to be absolutely insane. But you can't hand your team over to people who not can't drink yet and, and think that you're going to win more basketball games. Jonathan Kaminga included. Yeah, Kobe Bryant included, and LeBron God, James an included, air ball machine Michael Jordan yeah. included. You know, you look at any of the the all time greats, and you look at the the arc of their career. And I was thinking about Giannis Antetokounmpo, and you know what Milwaukee was when he came in as a nineteen year old, and they were fifteen and sixty seven. Giannis's rookie year, fifteen and sixty seven for Giannis as a rookie. That's what happens when you're nineteen. Yeah, I'll say it this way. If the Warriors had turned everything over to the young players earlier, well, you wouldn't have tomorrow night. Right. You're Houston. Right. You would not get tomorrow night. You would not even get tomorrow night if the Warriors had decided, yeah, we got to get all these young people going back in uh, back in November. Um, we're presented by Fremont Bank, full-service banking, no compromises. Plenty of time for your calls into the 5 o'clock hour. But coming up next, Ramona Shelburne of ESPN joins us live on Withered and Dibs. And it's Dan Dibley here to talk about Golden.
Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Well, sometimes, you know, they say in life, timing is everything. Timing. Yeah, timing. Yeah, ti timing. And timing. Yes. Yeah. And uh, sometimes things just come together perfectly. Yeah. Like when your friend and a great basketball writer and speaker like Ramona Shelburne, who just wrote a piece on Caitlin Clark. Big fan. I really hope that we didn't ruin this for her. Oh. But there is breaking news, Ramona, as you come on our show. Wait, what? Uh, Caitlin Clark has gone number one overall ah, there you go. in the <laughs> WNBA draft. Yeah. Uh, I was watching this on my phone as I'm driving through L.A. right now. Um, the ESPN app, right? Oh, such a company woman right there. But uh, I was <laughs> watching it on. I'm watching it on it, and it's like, even though you know she's going number one, it's still kind of exciting, right? Like, it's yeah. so exciting with it. You know, they, they didn't take too long to Billy Dallas. You got to tell me those two. Do they take it to the Sparks State Camp break, okay? Yes, we'll we'll I'm tell you. Right. It has yeah. not happened as of yet. I into this interview, Carl, because it's, it's coming up next. No, for it's sure. A big, a big, long commercial break. Yeah. After the Caitlin Clark cliffhanger. You know? I bet the uh, Caitlin Clark to go number one. I bet $100,000 to win a dollar. So I feel pretty yeah. good about that. <laughs> yeah. You can go ahead and, you know, yeah. cash me out one time. Uh, risk reward. And, and uh the uh, the sparks are on the clock. Yeah, no, the pick, this is pretty exciting. The pick is in. The pick is in. The pick is in, and it will be Cameron Brink yes. of Stanford. There it, there it is. Let's go, Cardinal. Yeah, we'll Come go on, right Ramona. Now, we'll, go, we'll go all right now. We'll go. I love it. Hit those right. notes. Yeah. She's she's crying a little bit, Ramona. She's crying a little bit. Are, yeah. Are you? I'm excited. Yeah. Man. That's exactly, you know what? It's like we have this pipeline here with the Sparks and Stanford girls. Like, exactly. Today, Cam Brink, like it's pretty good. Oh, love it, love, love it. it. Yeah. All right, now, yeah. now, will you be this excited when the Warriors beat the Kings tomorrow night? <laughs> I do think that's going to happen, but um, you know, I don't know. Like, how did we end up here? Like, all, like <laughs> I keep saying this on the show. Okay, how crazy is that? All these teams have better records than they had last year, and they're in the playing. All of them. Seriously. The only better record, like the Kings, I think had forty eight wins last year. Okay, so that's the that's the only that's the only one, right? But the Lakers had a better record than last year. The Suns had a better record. The Warriors had a better record. And they all like last year the Warriors were six. This year they're tenth. <laughs> it's like it's so crazy in the West this year. Like you, you're looking down on them, like oh they ended up in the play in tournament, but they they won an extra game this year than what they had last year. And they could have won probably five or six more had yeah. they not, uh, you know, coughed up so many games and Draymond suspension yeah. and all the rest of it. But looking at this game on Tuesday, tomorrow, how much confidence should anybody have in the Warriors considering how uneven even the past three days have been for them? I, you know, I don't know what to make of them because I, I felt like Steph Curry was kind of worn down. I'm glad they gave him that day off and they still got, and they still got the win. Because that, would have, I mean, I guess it wouldn't have mattered. They ended up ten, right? Yep. But um, can you imagine if they could and if they could have moved up? You know, like if Sacramento would have lost, and they could have moved up, and then woo, that step in that game. But he, he seemed pretty run down to me, and I also thought like they were just leaning on him so hard this year that they had to give him a little break. Um, and but it's, it's like we, Mark, I was doing a show last like a couple hours ago. We were showing shots of the year, dunks of the year. And they show that, like, that Jokic uh, three-pointer that beat him, right? Yep. And I was like, man, when you look at all the games, like, think about that shot right there. That, that win right there is the difference between seven and, and ten. Jokic throwing up a heave from the corner. You know, like, it's, it's crazy how, how tight this is. And, and, like, what do I make of the words? I don't know. I just had to beat the Lakers pretty handily in L.A. Um, I just saw them, you know, I, I, I thought it was – you know, a little concerning with them in the Pelicans at home, right? But but uh, I still think the same thing I've thought all year. When they get healthy and when they get right, they, they could beat anybody in this league. And I think they're starting to get healthy and they're starting to get right. The question is, is it, did they just dig too big of a hole? And, and you know, I don't know. It's going to be a tough road. 
Well, from, and, they, they come from the tent spot here. Yeah, so Ramona Shelburne's with us. I, I mean, to that end, uh, in, in your opinion, how far away will we go from chalk in the West? Because these teams are also even. Wait, like, where? Who? Who's vulnerable, and and who could really make a run? I mean, it's weird because the Mavericks have been the hottest team, right? And you think, and you look at them, and you go, okay, let's say they, let's say they, they keep it up. But I'm not sure the Mavericks beat the Clippers. Like, I'm really not. You know, I think the Clippers could go all the way in this on this half of the bracket. Like the Clippers kind of thought they were going to have to play Denver in the second round, and then all of a sudden the Spurs come up and beat Denver and send them to the two seed, other half of the bracket. So I think whoever wins that series, I think that's your, I think that's your dark horse. Like either the Clippers, the Mavericks. But those two teams feel real dangerous to me. Um, I, you know, I'm not. This is not to take away from Oklahoma. Um, I think I, I would not shock me at all if the, if the Thunder goes to the conference finals. Would not shock me at all if they lose in the first round. Like that. That's. That's how evenly matched this this Western Conference is. But when people are talking about the Thunder, like them losing in the first round is is expect like they they're not even going to be favored, even though they're one seed. Come on, they're the one seed in the best conference in basketball. Like that's a really good team. And Che Gilgis Alexander was like sitting the last three weeks because he's, he had a thigh bruise. He's going to be fresh. Like Chet Holmgren played all eighty two. Like that that team is young and good, and they don't even know what they know. They they don't even know they're not supposed to win yet. So if that's the if that's the road you got to go through, uh, if if you're the Warriors, like come, you have to go through that one seed, right? If you're going to come up through the nine ten game, that's that's no easy task either. So I I'm gonna I'm gonna say I, I think whoever wins that that Clippers Dallas series is your dark horse. What do you think about that part of it, though, Ramona? The idea of championship pedigree, and you mentioned they don't know yeah. what they don't know yet. Does OKC? Are they hampered by the fact that they don't have that experience of going into a best of seven and going through the rigors of a of a two month jaunt to the championship? Yeah, a little bit. But I, I, you know, my my biggest question with the Thunder is their their interior, right? Like, they, if you if you haven't watched them play, they they have a really interesting style. It, it sort of reminds me a little of the Warriors, right? Like they they play up and down, they get up and down, but they they play five out. Like they're like Chet Holmgren is your center and he plays on the three point line, right? Like he stands out there in the corner and shoots threes. So they certainly play five out because they need to have room for Shea. And I don't know how that's going to work against the Warriors, right? Like if that's your first round opponent and you have Draymond running that back line defense, like that's going to be a tough, that's going to be a tough matchup for them. Um, same thing if the, if the Lakers end up being their opponent, like they just have, big tall trees, you know, and it's hard to, if you don't have a tough interior, if you have a tough interior defender like that, it's going to be hard to create the kind of space that they need. But they also, if they shoot the lights out, which they mostly do, I think they have a really good chance of, of beating either their first, any of their first round opponents. Cause they, they it's just the, stylistically and the age, you know, you, you, you wonder how they match up against certain teams, right? Just because like Chet Holmgren, I, I love Chet Holmgren. I, I know, I was a little bit skeptical when it came out of Gonzaga because I just saw him as like a you know, tall guy, skinny, whatever. I watched him play in a summertime run once, and he was so competitive and so tough. I, I totally changed my tune on him. And he is, the fact that he played all 82 this year, being the skinniest year. I mean, we, I caught him in LA. He had a black eye, and he was playing with it, and he was, couldn't even open his eye, eyeball up because he caught an elbow three games ago. I mean, that dude is he's he, he might he looks are deceiving when you see him. And so he's not your your typical tough guy on the inside, but he he's he's a matchup nightmare if you don't have the right personnel. I, I I'd be curious to see that series if the Warriors come through and play them because it's I, I don't even know who would defend him. Like I mean, maybe they would have Draymond do it. Maybe they would just maybe they'd have Kaminga out on him. Like <laughs> it's weird. I don't think you're gonna put Trace Trace on him out there because he's he's gonna be on the perimeter. I mean, it's a, it's a strange strange matchup. Well, uh, I'm glad you brought up the name Jonathan Kaminga. Ramona, yeah. a- a- around here, uh, there's a lot of angst about Kaminga, yeah. Wiggins. Can they play together? Is Kaminga now upset that, that, that he's been moved, at least for the moment, to the bench? What, what do you know about that dynamic, and, and how do you think that will play out, not only yeah. in whatever this week is, but, but into the offseason? Well, he got a little while he tipped, right? I mean, he, he, he got yep. hurt, and then he came back, and then he took his his job, um, you know, that's just, the thing about the Warriors is like, every, Draymond said this the other day, I forget where the interview was, might have been in LA, 
Um, he said, you know, you, all of us have come off the bench, right? Like, all of us. Steph came off the bench in playoff games. Draymond comes off the bench. And last year against Sacramento, he came off the game of the bench. So Clay has been coming off the bench. Like, that's just kind of how it goes with the Warriors. Like, when, when a lineup is clicking, you can stick to that lineup. And if you can't deal with that, then you can't be on the Warriors. Like, that's just their culture. And I think... I think J.K. got a bad rap because of that one story that came out, which I don't think he had anything to do with. He might have been frustrated earlier about not playing certain games, but I don't think it was his choice to leak anything. I think he had a pretty good attitude. Maybe he, maybe he vented to somebody and then that person told told the reporter. But I, you know, I've I've always heard positive things about J.K. in terms of how he handles things, and so if you want to get back on the court, like I think a first round series against Oklahoma city would probably be a great opportunity for him to get back on the court because like matchup wise, he makes more sense to me than, uh, than Trace Jackson Davis does. You're listening to 95, seven, the game KGMZ FM and HD one, San Francisco always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube powered by first NorCal credit union. We're talking with Ramona Shelburne of the, uh, of ESPN. Ramona, Mark and I have made a, a pact to stay in the moment and try to take it game by game. We haven't been willing to talk about the off season, but we don't get to talk to you very often. So I'm going to ask you about the off season and whether or not you think the next couple of days will play into what they're going to do. Or do you have an idea that this Warrior team will go either way next year, either stick and stay and run it back or try to blow this thing up and, and make wholesale changes? Uh, I think the core will be intact, right? Like, I think the big three will be intact. I'm curious about whether they take a big swing because they certainly have the ammo to do it. They have the draft picks, they have the young players, they have, they have good, they have, they have a contract, a couple contracts they could trade. Um, and there's some very interesting trade candidates out there. Like, I know this sounds very war- Warriors, right? Like, but, like, you know, you think that they should cut pay. I think they will try to get under the second apron. I do. It makes the most sense for them. But um, but I also think that they are always in the market for stars. <laughs> and there are going to be some stars this summer that, that might be available. Um, I'm thinking more front court rather than, rather than back court because you already have Stephen Clay. Um, I assume Clay Thompson will figure something out. I, I, I just can't see the Warriors without him. But yeah, I could be wrong. Maybe Orlando throws a bag at him. I don't know. Um, but I, I think, I think, I think Clay stays. Um, and then the big question is Chris Paul. Like Chris Paul's been great for them when he's been healthy. They, I know they really like him. Um, how do, if he comes back? How does he come back? You know, what is, does, he, does he come back with the contract he's under? Does, do you know, is there, do they renegotiate something? Is there an opportunity to get him for a lesser, lesser cost? Like, what would he think of that? Does he have a market elsewhere? Like, that's all, that, those are the two that I have the biggest questions about. Like, what do they do going forward? But I, to me, um, to me, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they go big game hunting again. Okay, you mentioned some front court stars might be available. Mm. Do tell. Mm-hmm. We want names. I know you do. I'm gonna I'm gonna let that one sit. Ah. You have to figure that out. You have to figure that one out. Well, uh, uh, but, I mean, but, one of them we've already reported on. One of them we, they tried to get LeBron at the deadline. Sure. Right? Um, and that's more complicated now. Uh, but I but I think like you know what's what's the biggest you know they didn't this group didn't fit together the way that they wanted them to or the way that they have in the past, right? Um, and I think they could use a little more shooting. They could use another dependable score. So I, I I would just I would just watch watch to see what they do. Maybe 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 they'll just stand pat and kinda, you know, get under the second apron and run it back next year. But I how, how do you have a team that still has Steph Curry? He's if he's not squarely in his prime, he is just just a little south of it. Just a little right? Like he's I mean he's ninety five percent of what he was and you know, back when they were rolling. And how do you how do you not give him the best chance to win again? How do you not take a few swings? I, I, whether they pull those off, I don't know, but I, but I think they try. Yeah, you you think that the 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 trade assets exist for them to do something like that? Hundred percent. I mean, they have their draft picks. They have young players like Moody. Uh, you know, who, a lot of people really like Moody a lot. People like Kaminga. I don't think they'll ever trade Kaminga. Or at least they'll really fight hard not to. Um, people like Pajemski. I don't think they would want to trade Pajemski. Same thing with Trace. But, like, people are going to call about their young players. Those are good players. Especially in contracts like Wiggins' contract, like Chris Paul's contract is interesting. Um, 
even some of the other guys on the bench, like Looney, Looney or Gary Payne, like they have the kind of assets that teams want. Like that's that's they don't have albatross contracts on the on the Warriors. Like I I actually think like for as expensive as that team is, they're actually very well positioned to to recalibrate. Wow. And and do you think that uh, what happens over the course of the next couple of days will dictate their course? Or do you imagine that the owner, Joe Lacob, is already dead set on trying to make this big swing, knowing that what he has in Steph Curry in a, a fading core is not going to be enough to, to run it back and win another, ch- another chip? Uh, I think it would help if they got out of the play-in, right? I think it would help if they had a playoff series and showed some signs of life. But I don't think it dictates anything. I think everything in the Warriors' DNA is that they're going to try to contend for as long as they can contend. They just gave Steve Kerr two more years. Steph, Steph's got two more years. For as long as those two guys are riding together, like I think the Warriors try everything they can to, to give them a, a chance to win. Uh, Ramona Shelburne, ESPN. Hey, uh, you started off by saying you think that they will handle tomorrow night well. G- give me a little bit on that matchup. Why do you think the Warriors will win tomorrow night? Um... I don't feel that strongly about it, right? Like, I wouldn't be shocked if Sacramento won at all. Um, they have, they've had an entire year to think about that game seven. I just, Sacramento's been, you know, they, they just lost two, they lost two really key players. That, that does matter. Like, I, I was at that game seven last year. Malik Monk was important. He was really important in that series. And I also think they have the, as much as they're, you know, both teams have made changes this year. Both teams are different. It's also both teams, have the blueprint for how that that series shape, shook out, right? Like they, the Warriors have a have an idea of how to defend the bonus. They have an idea of what to do with with De'Aaron Fox. Like they didn't really stop De'Aaron Fox. You know, he just broke his finger, and <laughs> right. only they really stopped him in that series. Um, but they have different personnel, right? They mostly stop the bonus with Kevon Looney and 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 Draymond. Uh, Kevon's not really in the rotation right now, so. Do we see him make a cameo? I don't know. It wouldn't shock me. Um, wouldn't shock me if he, if he, you know, he, he played the other night when they were resting everybody. He, you know, got a little of the rust off. Like, we'll see. I think they go with what they've been playing with. But they these teams know each other so well, and the Warriors got the better of them last year. Plus, I just think losing those those two reserves really hurts. Like, Malik Monk was going to win sixth man of the year. Like, he's... He's really important for what they do. No, and, he, and he's a warrior killer. A- absolutely. Yeah. So, no, that I, I, I'm i with you on that one. Uh, Ramona, thank you. Thank you so much. There were more picks in the WNBA draft while we were talking, but I didn't catch all of them. I hope that's okay. Uh, looks like looks like uh, Camilla Cardozo went yeah. to Chicago. She went third. Yep. Yeah, yep. she went third. Yeah, and then Rakia Jackson went to the Sparks. Okay? Yep. All yep. right. And I was that- kind of thinking they were going to take Angel Reese there. Angel oh, Angel oh. Reese is still available at yeah. this hour. And She's Dallas still on the clock. Yep. Yeah. Listen, I, I talked to Lisa Leslie the other day about for that story I did on Caitlin Clark. And Lisa cannot understand why anybody would why she's falling. Like she's like anybody who can get five offensive rebounds, twenty rebounds in a game, so competitive. And plus, like I'm from LA, Mark. You you spent some time down here. Isn't Angel Reese made for LA? Made for uh-huh. it. Made, I don't know made if anybody. I don't know if anybody's watching this, but I draft her for her outfit alone tonight. She looks unbelievable. She was awesome. She was awesome. Yeah. Like, I was like, I was hoping they would take her for, but I guess not. It's okay. All right. We'll see where she ends up. Yep. Well, so hopefully, it's a big market where she can shine because she is a huge personality, great player. I know she, you know, maybe she doesn't shoot the way people want her to shoot, but like that girl can play. Uh, congratulations yep. on Steph Curry's god sister from your university coming okay. to your town. Did I say that right? I think that's right. Okay. Can we do a little? Can we do a little Stanford? Five, six, seven, eight. Woo! Yeah, you did it. You did it. <laughs> it was perfect. Uh, I did it. Okay, Momo. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, boys. All right, there she goes. That's yep. Ramona Shelburne. And uh, by the way, I know where everyone's head is suddenly at. That that took a turn. Giannis. <laughs> Giannis. Well, everybody. Front court star. If, if you're like, Giannis. yeah, if you're like you and me, we're all doing the same thing. Who are these front court stars? She's like, well, I'm not telling. Yeah, I'm just I like when that. somebody had a crush on you in seventh grade. Somebody's got a crush on you. Oh, who is it? I'm not telling. Right. Well, what do you, what good, good does that, that do anybody? No good. You got to tell us. Who are the front court stars? Front that, court star that could become available. Maybe on the move. The first name I thought of is Giannis. 
And you looked at me like... I don't think it's Giannis. No, but you looked at me and you're like, who do you think? And I tried to mouth it. Yeah, and no, I, I knew think, what you... No, oh, I, I knew. Okay. I got I went, it, but I'm... No, my, hard to, yeah. my response was not, I don't know what you're saying. My response was, no, nah, I can't be that. Right. Giannis is going to... Like, she's sitting here today assuming the availability of a front court star and right. the Warriors would have the necessary assets to make it happen. That's the part that I'm curious about is, you know, and she said teams like Moses Moody and, yep. you know, Pods, of course, and great Poughkeepsie rookie kid. year. Yep. And, you know, you do have the draft picks, uh, not this year, but F future Pod years. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if teams like Moses, and she actually mentioned that the Warriors probably wouldn't want to trade Kaminga, and that was good to hear. Uh, so she said they would fight like hell, right, to not trade Jonathan Kaminga. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I'm still in that mode. I can we let's go ahead and slip and fall into the offseason conversation for just a second. Yeah, yeah. She, since she brought it, it up. Yeah. yeah. Well, you. Well, I asked it because we we won't <laughs> yeah. talk to her. Yes. You know, we only talk no. to her once a month. So you, you yeah. were, your your instincts were a thousand percent correct, but. Um, that idea that she was so firm that the Warriors 100% have the assets to get into that conversation without including Kaminga is very, very interesting. It, you know, the idea that not only are teams interested in, in, in the likes of, of Moody and Pajemski, but, but yes, forget the future draft picks. Right. And if you do start to follow the breadcrumbs, you can see that the Warriors are still all in on the remainder of Steph Curry's career. From Draymond's contract to Steve Kerr's, um, could Chris Paul be someone where you you pick up the option and then trade? Or is Chris Paul someone you could bring back at a greatly reduced number? Right. Um, there are ways to do this, and it's it's interesting to note that she thinks the Warriors are already of that mindset, sort of irregardless of what happens yeah. this week or next. Yeah. I find that comforting, to be honest with you. I really do. It's comforting, but it's also a little bit upsetting, perhaps. Why? Because it may involve, you know, players that you like or players that you have grown accustomed to. It's not as easy as, you know, Pajemski and Moody and picks and you know here comes the star you may have to part with clay or you may have to part with other players who you don't want to part with and you know if you're a wiggins fan if you're a wiggins lover then maybe if wiggins gets dealt that becomes upsetting to you as well i personally wouldn't be heartbroken if wiggins got traded but you're you're not going to be able to make sweeping changes without some losses to some of your core um i'm googling Front court stars. I'm Googling hard. Yeah. Who is it that could be available? Well, I'm thinking, of, and I'm looking at the the Eastern Conference standings top to bottom, and I get to New York at number two, and Jerome Randall is a guy who mm -hmm. maybe, but I don't think that he's the fit for this Warrior team. For me, if, if you're going to bring in a front court star, it's got to be somebody who's a little bit more dynamic i think in the offense that the warriors run yeah i mean again she's talking about um front court big names yeah like yeah. bleacher report did a thing about a month ago they're like okay now that the trade deadline's gone here's some off-season trade possibilities and they've got the warriors um sending uh andrew wiggins to the raptors along with looney and gp2 and a future pick for uh center Jakob Pertl. Uh, this is my, my, one of my favorite names. Jakob Pertl. Yeah, Pertl. It, it's, yeah. Anyway, and Bruce Brown. Okay, that's front court. That's a trade. Could it make you better? Sure, but that's not That's not what Ramona was talking about. No, she's talking about a she's star. She's talking about big Jakob names. Pertl is not a no, front he's not. court star. Front court star. Who the hell is it available? <laughs> Who is it? I don't know. Because she's like, you know, some people might be available. I mean, sure, there's the LeBron thing. Um, okay, high-level players that could ask for a deal. I mean, okay, 
NBA executive whispers on big names who could ask for a trade this offseason. Kevin Durant. Yep. Yep. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns. Okay. I mean, we'll see where Minnesota goes. Joel Embiid. New Orleans has got to make a decision between Zion and Brandon Ingram. Okay. Mm hmm. Those are some big names. Those are big names. Yeah. 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 I mean, Drew Holiday has now been locked up. Um, the free agency area is not what we're talking about here because they're not going to have the dollars to go out and do Pascal Siakam or, right. or anything like that. Tyrese Maxey's a restricted free agent. He's also not a big, not a front court player. I don't know. I don't know. Because when I, you know, when you hear it from someone like Ramona that, that like is so tapped in on these conversations and then the fact that she wouldn't really expand on them, you're talking about some players who will either demand or request or there's like some discord within the ranks that we may well not know about yet. I mean, the Durant one is super interesting just because, <laughs> because it's Kevin Durant, yep. number one. And number two, maybe one of the more under-discussed things in the Western Conference, why the hell do the Suns stink? Yeah. Like, and they don't stink, but you get, they should be better. Yes. They should be better than they are. And so will they look to shuffle their own deck? Quite possibly. That'd be a big name. KD. I mean, <laughs> KD back, reunited, and it feels so good. There you go. It's possible. But Phoenix wants uh, Moses Moody and Brandon Pajemski and uh, 27 first-round picks. Yeah. Wiggins. I don't know. Well, and I that's, don't know. You make it interesting about the Chris Paul contract part of it because if you're going to trade for a big name with a big salary, you're going to have to send some big salary out. No doubt. As well. And so if you're going to bring in Kevin Durant, who I don't have his, his exact number, but he probably makes about oh. 45 million a year yeah, or so. Probably at least that. So you would have to include a dead money Chris Paul as a part of that uh, at least Kevin Durant's number next season is 49.856 right. yeah. million dollars and is also locked up for 25-26 at 53.2 right so that's not happening <laughs> we're not doing we're not doing that as far as uh you know being below the uh the second threshold uh, the second apron well i I'm, i don't know I have no idea. A name that I thought of as we were having this conversation is Lori Markinen, somebody who I was thinking about. Well, the that would be fantastic. Right. Right. And he's making uh, 18 flat next year. Okay. 18 million. There it is. So Wiggins in a pick for Markinen. Done. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Wiggins, Moody, Pajemski in a pick. Uh, although that the money wouldn't work there for... But I, th I think that yeah, Wiggins has got to be a part of... Anything that you're going to do. Well, I do believe, again, as we slip and fall into our offseason season, trying not to. No, but I, I, I do believe, just put it this way, it is likely that the Golden State Warriors have internally decided that this town ain't big enough for Wiggins and Kaminga. Right. That's probably true. And if you really do want to clear the way for Jonathan Kaminga to be the star that many of us think that he can be, and every time we talk to anyone on the inside, you'll hear them say, God, they would be they would just despise the idea of trading Jonathan Kaminga. Would would they do it if somebody offered them something that was just like, oh my God, we cannot refuse this? You never have to close the door to anything. You can't do that. But the Warriors do not want to trade Jonathan Kaminga. They just don't want to do it. And they shouldn't want to do it. And so if they are going to continue to feel what it looks like they feel right now, which is that Wiggins and Kaminga are probably, to some degree, in one another's way. Yeah. you got to clear one of them out, especially since, look, it didn't work. Like, the most important thing that Ramona Shelburne just said to us, on the eve of the postseason, it didn't work. So... File that, especially for those, even if they go on a run. Right, right. Whatever, like, you can't, 
They're not. Bob Fitzgerald said to us last week, they're not going to be stupid enough to be like we are. We're stupid. We're fans. Right. We're just sitting there being like, okay, let's find out tomorrow night if this Warrior team works or not. Well, that's not how they're running their organization. They're not going to base this on 48 minutes in Sacramento. They have already decided you are the 10 seed. That's not good enough. Dot, dot, dot. It didn't work. Right. So right. the whole idea of will this playoff run stop them from making big changes or force them to make big changes? I think that that decision has already been made. Agreed. Next year will look very different. No doubt. And I, I think uh, back to the discussion we had about uh, Kyle Shanahan and Steve Wilkes. And when Kyle Shanahan came out publicly and said he can't do that, he knows he can't do that, at that point, it was the kiss in the cheek from Michael Corleone to Fredo, and that was going to be it for Steve Wilkes. And even if they would have won the Super Bowl, I think that they would have parted it would have been maybe more amicable, but the parting would have happened nonetheless. And I look at this Warrior season, and yeah, you can look at seven different things. Well, you know, the the tragic loss of Decky and what that did, and Draymond missing 20 games due to suspension, and Chris Paul broke his hand, and Andrew missed five or so games with his absence. Well, you know, if none of that would have happened, could we have been a 50-win team? You bet your sweet bacon we could have been, but at the end of it, <laughs> You weren't, and you're the 10th seed. You really got my attention there with Sweet Bacon. Yeah. Or actually kind of distracted me. It's I'm hard sorry. to listen to what well, someone else is saying when they say bacon. And I have found... My mind goes to a completely different place. In this uh, weight loss journey, and I'm, oh, down, I'm down 20. Dude, you look fantastic. Thank you. I feel great. I want, like, You're in this little vortex right now where you look... You're like a baby where you look different every day. <laughs> like, I just saw you on Thursday. Right. And I walked in, and I'm like, oh, my God, yeah. you're down another six. Pretty funny. Or so, are you? Yeah, what, down what? three since Thursday. Since Thursday? Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe it's just your outfit. You looked no, different. And it's my face. I'm down at least one jowl. In the face! Maybe a jowl and a half. I might be down a jowl and a half. In the face! Dude, you can't go. You can't start getting giggly. It's oh only Monday. Oh, no, we're fine. But, yeah. Fine. Uh, but I... I'm finding I'm finding that my references now are more about food than ever before. Yeah, you're comfortable with it. You yeah. can say bacon but oh, not God. eat it. No, but think about it you all know, day. You know, like we yeah. talked about our donut bet, and you're going to bring in donuts, and you will have the willpower to not eat them. Yeah. I think. Well, we're going to find out. You, and not, I'm going to try and do that this like, week. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. I'm going to try and do that. That'd yeah. be great. Well, and I normally wait for uh, the morale to be low, but... The morale around our show and our station has been so good for so well, long. We'll, 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 we'll see what happens tomorrow night in Sacramento. Yeah, good call. Morale Maybe I'll bring Wednesday dough. Wednesday. <laughs> when the Warriors, next time yeah. the Warriors lose, I'll bring does the next day. Oh, so they're not coming for weeks. Well, I mean, they might lose a game you heard in the here. first round. They could. They could. So They could lose next week. They just can't lose this week. Next Warrior loss, I'll bring donuts. Um, okay. Yeah. That's uh, that's a deal. Let's Doug. go to Doug. Let's do it. Let's go to Doug in Berkeley. Let's go to Doug. Um, on Willard and Dibs. Hi, Doug. What are you doing? Hey. Hey, I'm just uh, sitting down uh, with my honey. Uh, we're about to have a couple of margaritas and, uh, you know, maybe even more. So <laughs> things are pretty good. And listening to you guys. Um uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, but Steve Kerr sounds like a broken record. Um, I don't care who you trade for, or I don't care if you run it back. We're not going to do anything next year if we give the other team extra chances, if we don't stop cut, turning the ball over. And aren't you guys tired of hearing Kerr say this for like 10 years and it doesn't change? And oh. we're not as young and as quick as we were when we could get away with it. I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, and I think you guys really know it. I don't care who we trade for. I, I don't care if Kevin Durant comes back. We're not going to win if we give the other team more chances than we get. Okay, but Doug, but Doug, here, here's what I would love to know and find interesting. When you hear something like that, in other words, you watch the turnovers, you hear the coach say, uh, we got to stop with the turnovers, but then you feel like it doesn't really happen. Who is that on? Is it not on? It's on the players and the coach. But yeah, is I mean, it not on the coach. I'm asking you. Don't you don't, 
I, I think it's on. I think it's on the coach. I think it starts at the top to get the team to play low turnover basketball. Okay, five fewer turnovers a game. I mean, aren't you guys? I mean, you. We've been watching this for ten years. Yeah, we we happily got away with it. You know, four times. But it's it's the same, and we're not as young as we used to be. Come on, do you really believe? That these guys, I love them. They're, they've given us so much joy. Uh, do you re- really believe a trade for a big name is going to is going to make a difference if we keep turning the ball over? Well, okay. uh, uh, maybe. I mean, Doug, here's how I would answer that. Yeah. I, I think that Jeez. you're you're asking Steve Kerr to do something that's not easily done. If you buy the idea that this is sort of locked into the DNA of the Warriors. I certainly believe it is. You have three core players who have been playing together for a decade plus. They've learned a certain way of basketball. It's been very, very effective. They're not quite what they used to be, but you want Steve Kerr overnight, because remember, championship less than two years ago, you want him overnight to remove that from their DNA. Um, and, and, and my God, that's hard. I actually have wanted them and you, <laughs> this is the first time I've called in with this complaint. I've wanted them to remove that from their DNA for years. It was, they, they got away with it, you know, like four, three out of five years or three out of four years. And then the last championship, they, they won it. They played who was in front of them, Yeah, but they were somewhat fortunate they were somewhat fortunate. It was somewhat unexpected. It, 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 other teams don't turn the ball over as much as we do. Don't tell me that these guys can't do it. They, they can't, it's impossible for them to do it. Okay. I, I'm not uh, the only political thing I'm going to say. I just, uh, I'm not. Whoa, you're about to get political. Careful, I, Doug. I, 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 I remember when George Bush was president and oh. every three or four months he'd say, Boy. we have to, uh, decrease, uh, stop our dependence on foreign oil. And you just say it like every three or four months, just be saying it. <laughs> You're talking about okay. the first George Steve Bush, Kerr, right? You're Steve, talking about the first one? HW, not W. Yeah. I'm talking about W. I'm talking about W, not no, HW. Not HW. About w. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, 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 and every, every, every four months or so, he'd, he'd come on the TV and he'd make that statement. The oil man would make that statement because it's, it's, we should have done that. We should do that. It's like her. Kerr says we should do it, you know, I, I, and, and they don't practice it, I guess. I don't know. It, it, it gets worse. No, sure well, they, sure they do, yeah, Doug. Thank yeah. you, Doug. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. I, I, I'll just give you some numbers, Doug, and this is not only for Doug, but for all the Dougs out there in the audience. But when they won the championship two years ago, per 100 possessions, they turned it over 15.1 times per 100 possessions. Okay. This year, they're at 14.3. Okay. So they're actually slightly better this year than they were in their championship year. But the the biggest part, Mark, is two years ago when they won the championship, they were number three in points allowed. This year, they're number 18. So it's not, Doug, and I apologize for coming down your road, you and all the bushes, but uh, it's not about the turnovers. It's the defense. It's not about that end of the floor. It's the defense. It's the other end of the floor. When your defense is good or when your defense is elite, then... You win games, and this is why. And I know you're gonna you're coming in hot, and I I want to let you because I I don't like to do all the talking on this show. It makes me uncomfortable. It, I, it's gosh, been a lot. It's, been too much of me on Friday, quite frankly. Larry just sitting there staring at me. But yeah. that's my biggest problem with the Draymond Green factor is he's so good on defense, but you can't rely on him to actually be around. Because he gets suspended all the no, time. No, that's completely fair. That's completely fair. No, what I was actually going to do is I was going to admit a shortcoming, uh, I think, of mine in this conversation. Okay. Because I know a lot of people, want you want to be mad at Steve Kerr, and you want to be mad at the turnovers, and I know a lot of you think that no matter what happens that's bad, I'm always here to tell you it's not the coach's fault. He, here's what I think might be going on, though. When you sit here and go, okay, here's a coach... He's telling them to not turn the ball over, but they're still turning the ball over. They are turning it over less, but they're still kind of turning the ball over. And it leads a Warrior fan to go, they must not even practice. They must not care. He must not tell them. It, they're not doing it, so it's his fault. I am 
potentially personally triggered. I have two teenagers at home. I have two teenagers at home. Two teens. So please explain to me about the idea of when you tell people to do something, they do it. Oh, oh really now? <laughs> is that how life works? That's how it works in my house. So this is Steve Kerr's fault because he goes, hey, Steph, maybe stop turning the ball over. And then Steph automatically will stop turning the ball over because other people, they always do exactly what you tell them to do. Especially if they're in an artistic career where they don't even always have control over the results of their own actions. Is that what I'm to understand? That's what coaching is? Steve forgot to practice? Yeah. Quote, not turning the ball over, which, by the way, I don't even know what that means. Right. What does that mean? So today, guys, gather around. We're going to practice not turning the ball over. Today, we're going to focus on throwing it to our team and not to their team. And therefore, if I see any of you throw the ball and it gets touched by someone on the defense, are we doing up-downs? Gassers. Are we not Suicides. allowed? Do we not get lunch? Do we take your keys to chase? What is exactly, what is it that you would like this to look like? I, weak point for me, I I acknowledge. It's not a weak point. Weak point it's, for me. It's really not because the idea of, you know, hey, don't turn it over so much is, it's kind of a, a laughable thing for me when your entire offense is predicated on passing. You pass the ball more than any other team in the association. So when you pass it more, you're going to have more turnovers because passing it, every time you pass the ball, there's a chance that the other team is going to steal it. And that is, I think, the majority of turnovers come from passes that are intercepted or bad passes thrown out of bounds and the rest of it. So I think that if you're going to be a high assist team, you're going to be a high turnover team just by the very nature of the way you go about things. Um, granted. Yeah. Exactly. And, I, I, you know, like, I, I think I just, if you look at their assists year over year, last year they were number one in turnovers in the association. This year, you're number eight. So, and you're down a couple of turnovers per game. Jordan Poole, go bye-bye. From, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's part of it. Yeah. And also, you brought in the point guard. Yes. And he's a guy who doesn't turn it over. Right. He so had listen, fewer turnovers than Brock Purdy this year. Listen, when they go on their little runs and start hucking the ball into the stands and everything, I'm with all of you, too. It's frustrating. It's very frustrating. It's just funny to me where, like, a lot of you, it seems like your view on the TV is, Clay, like, this has happened a lot in the first quarter. I feel like they've had some sloppy first quarters lately, right? Clay turns to the left. And uh, and he just hucks the ball right over Kaminga's head, and it goes out of bounds. Do you all go, Kerr? Damn it, Kerr! <laughs> I, 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 um, yeah, I remember when I played in high school, and if you threw the ball at the other at your teammate's feet, and it bounced off their shin and rolled out of bounds, I know what my coach did. He did not go. My da bad. <laughs> da damn it, I'm really doing a bad job coaching. No, I got hucked the hell out of the game. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it, Isaiah, know. Isaiah and Concord says yeah. this is the worst coaching year of Kerr's career. Let's hear it, Isaiah. Welcome to the show. What's up? Isaiah? Zay. Hey, can you guys hear me? We yeah. can now. Yeah. Talk to me. Okay, so the reason I'm saying that is because there's three primary events that I can remember. One was the Moody game. I don't know if you guys remember when Moody was hot as fish grease, hitting threes, and Kerr sat him down for no reason, and we lost that game. He did admit that he screwed up that game. That was on this show. We remember. Like there was several incidents where Kerr just, I don't know. I don't think he's as into it from a coaching perspective as he's already been because 
Like, you look at um, what he did with Kaminga. My wife took me to the game for my birthday when they played Denver at home, and we were up, I want to say, by 25. And um, he sat Kaminga for the last 18 minutes of the game for no reason. I don't know if it was to, to prove a point or what, but we got killed in the fourth quarter. I was completely ticked off because it was a great game up until that point. And then if you look at what he did with Looney, like Looney can't finish. Everybody knows that he's great on screen and rolls with smaller guards and he's a great rebounder, but he cannot finish at the rim. What took him so long to make the switch to TJD? TJD has been winning games for us. Oh. That alone, I think that I, that's a horrible oversight. Can I answer your question, Isaiah? You want to know what took so long to switch to TJD? You want to know? Yes, sir. He's a rookie. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have looked like this if you played him in November. Isaiah, I get the frustration, and I'll say it again. Nobody's saying Steve hasn't made any mistakes this year. He has, and you're right, Isaiah. He called this radio show. Yep. It was the first thing he said. I messed the Moody thing up. He's messed a couple of Kaminga games up. Yep. I'm going to acknowledge that. And, and actually, yes, give him a pass because as we've detailed, I think, a number of times on this show, when you have these lineup problems, when you have a roster like this and you cannot predict from night to night who's going to do what and you've got redundancy and all of that, you're going to have some missteps just like the players have. Like every one of you who wants to be mad that Jonathan Kaminga didn't get this, that, or the other uh, as far as an opportunity – do you go stir crazy and freak out when Kaminga goes 0 for 4 and scores nothing? Do you get mad at him? They've all messed up at one time or another. That does not equal Steve Kerr did a bad job this year, in my mind. And it does not equal the Warriors need a new coach. No. I don't know if Isaiah was saying that. He was just saying that this is no, his... No, but he, we said it was his worst year. Right. His 10th I mean, best year of his 10 but years. But then you point to two things, and you're like, those were bad. Yeah. And, and, and Steve would be like, yep, mess those up. Well, and you could look at Steve Kerr, and even if this is his 10th uh, best year of his 10 years on the job, this is probably his toughest year that he's had on the job, other than the year where they all punted on it. Draymond basically quit on the team, and Steph got hurt. I wonder and, if he feels like this was tougher than last oh, year. Oh, absolutely. This is tougher than any year, I, I would imagine. I, I don't know. I don't know what he feels. Well, last, in, last, yeah, last year, year was, yeah, you know, you're for sure. Dealing with, you're, when you're dealing with infighting, literally, I would imagine. Literally that, yeah, infighting. Literally infighting. Right. And it going public. I would imagine that that is harder than, I don't know which lineup to pick. Right. But I don't know. No, you, you might be right. You're probably right on that, especially when you look at what he had to work with and you know, last year he didn't have the same sort of uh, bench that he had this year, and he even mentioned how much uh, you know he's like this year and how how deep they are. They got eleven or twelve guys that he can play, which is you know makes his job more difficult certainly than when you only have eight guys who you feel like are playable. Which is what last year you got down to the playoffs, and he only had seven guys he would play in the playoffs. Um, I I just think uh, sometimes we ask for these coaches to be psychic. You know what I mean? They want you to move off of a veteran player before you're even sure that that veteran player's not performing anymore. I'll agree with you. Looney has has been frustrating at times with uh, with what happens around the rim on offense. I can see that. But Kevon Looney was selling jerseys in this town a year and a half ago. And so you want Steve Kerr to suddenly know, like, Kevon has one bad game, and it's like, that's it. We're putting him on the bench for the rest of the year. Like, there's a process there. Right. And he was open to it. He did it. He benched yep. one of his favorite players. The guy who had the second champion. longest games played streak in the association. Who's a champion. And he said on our show how hard that was because he knew that Kavan had that streak. Second longest in the league. And yep. yet he knew that he had to make that call. And so he made the call. Um, how about, uh, let's go to Justin in Menlo Park. Don't go to Justin. Why not? I'll go to Justin. Okay, I, I hi, Justin. Around. Around. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just what are you doing, that. Justin? Dibs hates you. I have to. Uh, I am good. I, uh, I I can't wait to get a name drop drop for this, but I just got done playing Palo Alto Hills uh, nine holes there. So oh. thank you very much. Palo Alto um, Hills? Yep, thank you. 
Never heard of it. I don't even yep. know it. Yeah, uh, neither of us have heard it. You would it. expect it to be in the hills of Palo Alto. Is it private? It is private. My uh, okay. my one of my relatives works there, so I get to what? play for free on Mondays. Yep, exactly. Because well, yeah, it's closed on Mondays. Yeah, yeah, it's the country goes too fancy. Palo Alto exactly. Hills it's closed on Mondays. I have never. Yep. And I'm between Mark and I, a couple of big time golf guys. Big time. Big time. I'd never heard of it. Yeah. I'm on the website right now. Better P-A-H-G-C-C dot com. Better question, you crazy person. Why did you only play nine if you got that kind of an in? Yeah. Uh, it's very hilly, and they don't let you take a golf cart out after four, and I only got on at 3.30. Oh, so and a little, so a little load easy, management, little I see. Much. Yeah, okay. Load, exactly. Exactly. All right, Justin. Um, Justin. I am. I'm not shedding the weight like Dibs is, though. Di are you doing SOTA or what's the? No, 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 no. What's it's abundantlifeweightloss.com. Yes, it's wow. incredible. Okay. If you're looking to to shed some pounds or inches off the old waistline, although my problem now, Justin, is I I need belts. I'm shopping for belts okay. now. Okay, my pants are falling off. There's one available okay. named Brandon. I know that. I need a belt that actually works. Justin, we're trying to wow. shed some callers here based on our <laughs> clock. So, can you, yeah, like this was fun, but I, I bet you had something else to say. I, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it fast. Yeah. I, I hate um, piling on to this Steve Kerr thing because uh, I am a big Steve Kerr fan. I think he is the right person for now and for the future because there's no one better. Um, the The point on like he has no impact on the turnover so i'll ask this more as a question that I, I feel like one of the things that does contribute to the turnovers is the schemes getting predictable and so people jump routes and that could be in his control potentially and another thing is some of the schemes uh promote cross-court passes which are also kind of turnover machines um so yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you think those two are in his court or not. Justin, I'll, I'll, I'll buy what you're saying for a second, but also acknowledge I do think the whole, like, oh, he's been around a while, so his offense is predictable and the other team knows what he's doing. They addressed this a few weeks ago. Every team in the NBA knows exactly what the other NBA team is doing. They all know. It's not like they got to Minnesota. It was like craziest thing. They ran the offense through right. uh, Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns. I had no idea what those two tried to do. These teams know Exactly. Like, you don't think LeBron James has seen it all from every team and every player out yep, there? Yep. So you may have a point, but I don't think it's, it's you know, because of uh, longevity or anything like that. We're sponsored by Prize Picks. Uh, more room for your calls next on Willard and Dibs. Cash in on basketball's biggest moments with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Use code Guru957 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy.
some front court stars might be available. Mm. Do tell. Mm -hmm. We want names. I know you do. I'm gonna I'm gonna let that one sit. Ah. You have to figure that out. You have to figure that one out. Well, uh, uh, but, I mean, but, one of them we've already reported on. One of them we they tried to get LeBron at the deadline. Now back to Willard and Dibs on ninety five seven. The game. Ooh, spicy. Totally. Momo. Spicy Momo. With a little side of guacamole. Seriously. Oh baby. But we can't do this. Name names, Momo. Um, what kind of radio is that? I can't tell you. <laughs> Come on, Momo. Put your name on it. I did used to get really mad when the when the people would do that with with uh, when you're in middle school and high school and people had right. crushes. Like I, it, like what's the point? What's the point? I know someone who has a crush on you. I know someone who liked you. Who? I'm not telling. I, I'm not telling. Well, I can't do anything about it then. Exactly. What 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 are we? What we're we playing a board game right now? We're playing a match game. Like what are we doing? When girls would say that to each other, the answer was invariably me. <laughs> I had a crush on you. <laughs> Fill in the blank. Uh, Marine Catholic high school Dibs female. Dibs would walk up to girls. I know someone who likes you. Who is it? <laughs> it's me. Yeah. Spoiler alert. He's five <laughs> one actually, with orange hair. It's not a bad line. Wish I had it there. <laughs> I know someone who likes you. Yeah, who is it? Yeah, it's hey, me. how you doing? I give you a clue. He's five one one fifty with orange hair. Hey, but he really likes really you. like 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 he's not about begging. I mean, you figure if you have a crush on a hundred girls, one would maybe <laughs> say yes. But it turns out the no. odds are not forever in your favor. No, it's like Johnny Cueto at the bat. Seriously. Oof. Um, took me a long time to run into one, so well, to speak. I, I um I do think that it it would be fun for speculation sensation. That's a buck. I think that there are some names out there that uh, here's my takeaway today, being that a Ramona didn't tell the listening audience exactly, and b it ain't the off season yet. No, we're not doing that, Mark. I think the takeaway is simply this. Yes, the Warriors do potentially have some moves at a high level in their hip pocket. Because I will admit, I've been asking the question for weeks. What moves are even out there? Oh, they're going to make this big move. What move? What move are you going to make? My takeaway from our conversation with Ramona is twofold. A, yes, it is possible. And B, there are going to be some people available that maybe we didn't realize were going to be available. Right. And C, if I can add C to your of A and your you B, C, they're going to make things happen in the off season when we get there. And we're not there yet as a show. But I, I don't imagine that Joe Lacob, no matter how this thing eventually ends, I can't envision him you know, rubbing his hands together and saying, well, let's just go ahead and run this back. Of course not. He's going to do whatever he needs to do to make this thing better in his own mind they're, next year. They're going to try. I mean, it doesn't mean it's automatically going to happen. But yes, yes. Like, she made some points that I think opened my eyes a little bit. You know, if we're all sitting here going, okay, what does it mean to maximize the remainder of Steph Curry's career? What does that mean? Well, just start looking at their... Uh, it's like we always talk about. Stop worrying about what they say and watch their behavior. Right. And the behavior, which you can freely disagree with, but their behavior has been such that they continue to push chips into the Steph Curry jackpot. Right. Steve Kerr, line it up. Draymond Green, line it up. They're going to continue to make moves that suggest we are not moving off of Steph Curry's career in favor of development. So if that's who they are as their DNA right now, then add in that they ended up as a 10 seed and realize that Steph will turn 37 next year and this team is not going to waste another minute. So what does it mean to not waste another minute? Well, the word development does not come up. Right. That's not what they're doing. I don't think it means trade Kaminga. It might. 
she said they would really, really, really don't want to do that. But um, I think that they will be obsessed with the idea of turning things over on the fly at uh, at a high level. Doesn't mean they'll get it done, right? but they'll try. And they may end up expending more assets than they want to to get it done. And they may end up getting a player in that is not as much of a star as they wanted, but somebody who's better than what they currently have. Because you look at Steph Curry with two more years under contract, he, he might play more than two years, but... Thinking about it in those terms, he's got two more years under contract, and Draymond's got three, Wiggins has three. You're looking at two years, maybe three years of Steph Curry remaining, and so what are you going to do to try to get this team better between now and then? You're going to have to do something dramatic. So as someone sits there and goes, well, they don't want to trade Kamenga, but, but, but they want to get into conversations at a high level. And my question was, okay, so how? They, right. have, the, they have the assets right. to get that done? Here's her answer. Ramona Shelburne, ESPN. I mean, they have their draft picks. They have young players like Moody. Uh, you know, who, a lot of people really like Moody. A lot of people like Kaminga. I don't think they'll ever trade Kaminga. They'll really fight hard not to. Um, people like Pajemski. I don't think they would want to trade Pajemski. Same thing with Trace. But, like, people are going to call about their young players. Those are good players. Those are contracts like Wiggins' contract. Like Chris Paul's contract is interesting. Even some of the other guys on the bench, like Looney, Looney or Gary Payne. Like, they have the kind of assets that teams want. Like, that's... that's they don't have albatross contracts on the on the Warriors. Like I, I actually think like for as expensive as that team is, they're actually very well positioned to recalibrate. So you want to know who to thank for what she just said there at the end? They do not have albatross contracts. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, you can thank Mike Dunleavy. You can thank the Jordan Pool for Chris Paul trade, and whether they keep Chris Paul or not. However, that all looks, whether it just was a one-and-done season for him where, you know, he played a a solid enough season for sure. I don't know about all that, but I know this. What she's talking about is they have reached a point where they are largely financially flexible. Um, And that is because Klay Thompson's about to be a free agent, and it's because Jordan Poole's not on the team anymore. And it's because the players that they do have under contract, you've got Steph Curry and you owe him $114 more, and... You would give him a billion dollars if you had to to keep him. Totally. And so that's fine. You've got Wiggins two years and a player opt, and you owe him eighty four million. You owe Draymond seventy eight million. End of list. Yep. And you've got you know Kaminga, who you're going to pay. You would figure if you don't trade him, Moody with a team option. Looney's not guaranteed for next year. GP two has got a player option, but I would guess that if GP two wants to be here. He probably tears up that nine million dollar option and signs for you know three more years and you know twenty million or something Ooh, to bring down next year's number. I doubt that'll happen. I I would be. I think they keep him, but I don't think that they want to pay him nine for a year. I, I think GP two will will take that option um, because he has had such problems with health and he would not make a whole lot of money on the open market right now, in my opinion. So I think he's going to take the $9 million option, and because he represents 9 mil and is a player that you can slide in you know, defensively pretty well on almost any roster, I think that GP2 may well be someone who ends up in a trade. Like That's the kind of player that right, when you're like, nine oh, million, yeah. need another $10 million here to make this salary, that or that or fit. Like... Teams will not be like, we don't want that contract. Well, no. for $9 million, it's not $9 million, yeah. it's expiring, exactly. and, and it's an elite defensive player. So I'm not saying they're trying to get rid of him or that they will. I know he's a fan favorite around here, but that that's a useful contract if you are in trade discussions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Wiggins plus GP2 is $35 million. So as you're looking at possible yep. like package deals, those two alone are $35 million on the move. Um, what's coming up on the game is brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. It's Warriors Roundtable Night already on a Monday as we get you ready for the play-in tournament tomorrow, which will be right here on 95.7 The Game, of course. That means here comes Kevin Dana and Gary St. Jean to keep talking dubs hoops. Thank you so much for all the engagement, the calls, the uh, the YouTube 
comments, everything today. You want to do it again tomorrow? I got to check my schedule, but I think I'm free. Okay. I'm going to list you as probable. Okay. Uh, for Dibs, for Granny, for Lucas, I'm Mark. Shoot your shot. That's all you got. It's truck month at your local Ram dealer.